Hello, and welcome to Legal Bites. If you're new here, my name is Alita. I'm a lawyer licensed in California and DC. And on this channel, we explain the law one bite at a time. We don't give legal advice, but we do talk about how the law works and try to look into our crystal ball to see how things might turn out. If you're enjoying this on YouTube, we'd love it if you could like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it with friends, all the great youtube -y stuff. And if you want to listen while out and about, we're now offering our live streams in podcast form where you can leave a rating and review. Links are in the description below, as well as to our clips channel, where you can find some of the best clips taken from our live streams. Otherwise, if you want to catch me elsewhere, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so on Locals, Patreon, or by becoming a YouTube member, or by buying some really awesome Legal Bites merch. Again, all links are in the description below. And with that said, let's get into it. Hello, hello. Welcome, what welcome. Up? Good morning. Good Week morning. Week six. Here we are. Yes, this is the end. This is the this end. Is, this is this is the end. We are we are in in the home stretch. We are making it. I am in full comfort today. Excellent. I'm I'm, I'm in full athleisure wear. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> because we have just gotten there. We've gotten to this point. Um, now it could be, um, you know that. Uh, Maybe I'll maybe I'll wear like normal normal clothes again later. But right now, I figure you guys you guys know I'm 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 already running a few minutes late. I don't I don't like that. I don't like it being late. Fun. I like being on time. But um, before we get started, so um, super chats. I wanted to make sure that everybody is aware. We've got a new super chat policy down in the description below. I mean, it's not really that different, but we're just making it very clear to people. Um, so we're gonna keep this overlay on the screen here for folks so that, you know, before, before you spend any money, I know that, that we've, we've already got some in the, in the chat, but you know, those, those will be, um, you know, addressed as, as always, but, you know, so I just, I want people to, to understand that, um, we are going to do our best to get to every single one. Um, we still have to make sure that I am getting sleep and rest for my physical and mental health, because I also have a, um, you know, an obligation to everybody for, the uh the daily recaps um that i want to i want to keep you know going throughout this week um and so because of that it's sometimes it where we bump into some issues with the with the super chats so um check it out down there like i don't want to be making any kind of a distinction between like like dollar amounts and stuff like that um because i i know that that even as it is there are folks in the chat that um can't afford to super chat and whatnot i, I get questions from folks all the time um, so I, you know, trying, trying to, trying to do my best to answer everybody, um, whenever possible. Um, but you know, if it's, if it's just a statement, it's going to be flashed on the screen. If it's a particular question that needs to be addressed or that you want to be addressed, um, you know, start, start it with Q or question colon, and then we will, you know, we'll, we'll do our best to reserve it and whatnot, all that good stuff. But all the details are, are down below, but I just, I do want to express my, 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 sincerest and greatest gratitude to everybody for all of the 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 super chats that everybody has been giving us because it has been so so generous super chats super stickers super thanks and comments to other videos as well um so i really really do appreciate it i i don't want that to be lost upon anybody here um and also the folks that that can't afford to super chat i appreciate all of you being in the chat engaging liking the videos subscribing to the channel all of the wonderful things that that you guys have been doing over the last I mean, it's already been six weeks. We're, we're technically going into week seven because of that that break week, right? Yeah. Um, since we since we got started on this massive, massive journey, so I just wanted to let you guys all know um, so that that everybody is fully aware before they before they give us any money, <laughs> you know, um, moving forward in, into this week. So, okay. On that note, um, oh, thank you so much, Nikki Honders. Thank you. Um, on that note, let's. Let's get let's get started. Kurt, how are you doing? How are you? I'm feeling, I'm feeling good today. I'm feeling really positive. Uh, finally getting some decent sleep. That's been a plus. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to seeing what this week will bring in terms of what witnesses Amber Heard has left. She had a very, very long witness list. In fact, her witness list was longer than Johnny Depp's. But yeah. um, it looks like she has used all the real ammo she has. So I don't really think she really has anyone left to bring, to be quite honest. Um, looks like she, the rumors are that she's going to bring Johnny Depp to the stand. I am hard-pressed to imagine what good can possibly come from that. 
um, because the only question you really want to ask Johnny Depp is a question he doesn't have to answer, which is what he told his lawyer. And you can't ask that question. Right. So, like, you couldn't get it from the lawyer. You can't get it from Johnny Depp. And uh, so yeah. I don't know what else you want to get from him. Yeah. But, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, DCRU seeds. Thank you so much for the generous super chat. I'm 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 excited to have you on. We've been we've been emailing back and forth. I know he finally he finally caught me. Um, I've been a lot of folks have been have been emailing about mods and all that kind of stuff. I thought I would have time over the weekend to get to everybody, but I I ran out of time. I'm sorry, guys. Um, so I'm going to try to. <laughs> I, I'm not Hermione. I don't have a time teller. Boom! Harry Potter reference of the week or of go. the day in. There we go. Um, so, so yes, but th thank you, DCR are you seeds. Um, I'm looking forward to having having you here during during jury uh, deliberation as well. Um, it'll be some great conversation to have have your expertise in here. Um, Rick, hey, Rick. Rick, how's it going? I'm excited about today. This is this is a day today. If, if if the leaks are right, we got Depp coming back. We've got motions to strike probably today. Come on, yep. get excited. That motion to strike will be interesting. Let's see if the see if the judge has the. Uh... Coney, Coney's for it. Now, this judge seems like of any judge she would. So the the motion to strike would be for to get it would be what other people would call a motion to dismiss. It's called motion to strike in Virginia. So it's the is the motion to get rid of Amber Heard's counterclaims. We heard this from Amber Heard when Johnny Depp's case was over. All those have since been resolved. All those claims are still live, which of course we expected. But the reverse is still true. Johnny Depp still gets to ask for the motion to strike, motion to dismiss. For Amber mm -hmm. Heard's claim, and I figure there's a pretty decent chance of that being ha of that happening because the evidence that exists is kind of non-existent. Yeah, with and, the caveat that we don't know what happens today before they rest, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, you know, but you know, it's a, it's a judges judges don't tend to like it as a matter of policy um, because yeah. you know they takes things away from the jury, especially you know I, I think they're a little bit more prone to do it before case starts like in a, in a summary judgment or motion to dismiss kind of stage of the proceedings. Once a case mm -hmm. starts and once the jury started hearing things, I think they're more loath to do it. They're more likely to come on the back end and like reverse a jury's verdict that's unsupported by the law rather than take it away from the jury because the idea is like, the idea would be in principle, if the jury does what they're supposed to do and comes to the only right conclusion, then yay, I didn't have to interfere and yeah. the jury did what they were supposed to do and everything's right in the world. If yeah. they don't do what they're supposed to do and they defy the law, then I can intervene on the back end. But yeah, I, I so will the judge grant that motion to dismiss now or potentially wait until a verdict comes that's not supported by law? I don't know. But this judge seems like the kind with the no, no no nonsense that if anyone was going to do it now, this judge is likely more likely to do it now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, Cosmina Ratio, thank you so much for your generous super chat. It says, I will miss a great deal of today. I hope for your sake it's better than Thursday. Also, I'm getting way too serious about the what if any tally. Hogue might remember. Are you the one that's trying good. to count it? There's there's a person that came into my chat and said, uh, uh, I, I'm thinking seriously about going through the streams and counting the what if anys. I'm like, oh, the, good Just Lord. do a what if any super, uh, super cut. Just a video of what if any supercut. Do you know how long Let's that would drive, be? Drive drive Alita to what little bit of the wall she has left. It's gonna be Alita, like watch thousands. This video. Watch it. Watch it. Put it. Put it on your. There, there are thousands of false leads to it. Thousands. I will say. I will say that after after you know last week when I when I just about went insane on Thursday of, with yep. with the what if any's. Um, I, I the Reddit the Reddit community started to make some some very funny memes of me basically losing it over what if any and it was pretty funny <laughs> I'm not gonna lie um someone someone happened to catch my um uh someone happened to catch my face from when actually it was the four of us uh, you, you two with me and Emily and then with uh with Rob when Rob was was telling us about his his like 1 million views video that Emily and I both had this like, like shocked and amazed face. And you guys were both just like, Oh yeah, it's very nice. Um, <laughs> it was, it was, it was really funny because some of the commentary from people were like, this is like mom and dad, <laughs> like, like mom being super excited and like, Oh my God. Yeah. And dad just like looking on proudly like, yes, yes, son. <laughs> but we did. But we anyhow. both have, we, we, we have the, the, the you know, this, the, this one. 
Yes, 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 exactly. So, uh, so somebody goes to uh, to take my face from that, and it it just looks absolutely crazy eyed and insane. Um, and and you re re repurposed that for the purposes of the what if what if any memes. Um, it was great. Um, uni I can't even question. I can't even fathom going and counting them. So more power to you. I know. Yeah, I I I can't. I I, I don't I don't think I could just just for my own mental health. <laughs> Uni Len says, question that Lita, please tell us what you think about Gone Girl. Thanks to you and the panel for everything. Greatly appreciated. Hi from Germany. I still want to do like a full like breakdown of Gone Girl. Well, I... I'll do a postmortem, literally. Okay. With okay. You. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Have, so you've you've seen it too? Oh god, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm okay. a big David Fincher fan. Yeah, no, okay. I've seen Gone Girl. That was one of my favorite highlights of my Saturday, by the way. If you guys haven't seen it, uh Alita uh live tweeting and like uh, trying to work through the mystery in real time as well. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect Twitter content. Uh, so uh, go, go thank check you. that out. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No, it was like, you got all of my thoughts, including like the wayward thoughts of like, wait a minute, are her parents not really her parents? There are there's um, some sojourns into, uh, into red herring land that I, I rather enjoyed. Yeah. 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 For sure. So, um, but it was, uh, it was, it was, it was good. It was really good. I really enjoyed the, the story. I know that a lot of folks have been saying you've got to read the books, plural, because apparently there's a series. Um, so that is going to be on my list for, I mean, way post-trial for sure, like way post-trial. Um, so, um, but, uh, but yeah, it was, it was really good. And I, I can see where people see parallels between this case and the movie. I also see, you know, instances where it's different, you know, it, there she comes from wealth. She's got a trust fund, all that kind of stuff. I was just I think amazing. When they, told you to watch, when they told you to watch Gone Girl, I think one of the things I said is, well, it gets a little more extreme than what we've got in front of us. Uh <laughs> I think, I think, yes. Well, so far, as far as we know, no one has died. Um, <laughs> so there is that. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it was it was really good. You tell me that Amber Heard good. knows where the bodies are buried. I'll believe you. Yeah, Alex Jameson <laughs> says thank you so much for your generous super chat. Says guys, come on, thousands in the chat, barely five hundred likes. Show the likes. What? Show, show what? The guys you don't love. You don't want seconds to get like the video, please. Love from Australia. Yeah. You don't want me to go full telethon here before the court case has even started. You guys can like. I know you can. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Why not? And I'm also, by the way, I'm still, I'm still, I'm, like while we're chatting, I'm still trying to find the, the feed for it because for some reason, sometimes they make it hard to find. I don't know why. Everybody wants to watch this. Why? Why? Why make it so hard? Eliana, I totally just did. By the way, I totally just did. In answer to your question, <laughs> the, the emojis, the emojis. Uh, Doctor Kartoffel Salat, thank you so much for your generous super chats. It's Hogue's almost at 100k. Let's get him there. He does deserve it. Yes. Yes, that's another thing. That's another thing. Is that okay? Let me let me refresh the screen. He's at ninety eight point nine. Y'all you know, get in I, there before hundred thousand. I could not agree that Richard Hogue deserves it more because he, he's one of the people that was there and uh, inspired me in a lot of ways. Um, yes. In 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 developing my channel and he yes. I I chased him really really hard for a long time to be able to do a collab with him because of how much respect I had for him because I was yep. like I want that Richard Hogue infusion in my life and i want his you know i i want to be friends with him and all the rest of it and it was so worth it because of how great a guy he is how generous he is uh he does his content in a very i i don't know how to describe it but it's just a very smooth smooth way i guess would be the way i would describe it and i i really i really appreciate that about them and he's been grinding it for a long long time so if anyone yeah. deserves a hundred thousand, Richard Ho deserves a hundred thousand. So fourteen hundred of you more. need to get your ass over to virtual legality and subscribe right now. Uh, I, you know, you know, this uh, this stuff is difficult for me. I very much appreciate it, Kurt. Um, that is very well, very. Well, this nice is the other benefit say. is we get to make you uncomfortable. <laughs> And we get to watch you score. I like to think it's rare, uh, but yes, this is the kind of thing that I, I yes, I appreciate it. I really do. I, I you, you guys are the best. I sincerely appreciate it. Let's see. Let's see how how much above one hundred thousand we can get him. And I we okay. Get some, all right. Some okay. Real all right. Tears. Some right. real tears. Real tears. Yes. Let's do it, Don Lionheart. Let's 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 get some real tears for Rick Hogue because you you know they're going to be more real than Amber Heard's tears. Oh no <laughs> doubt. It'd be hard not to be, but yes. Because that's real emotion, right? Real emotion, real sincerity. It doesn't get more sincere 
um, than Rick Hogue because he is he is genuinely one of the best people you will ever meet. If you want to know, like, what is he really like? Like, what is he like behind the scenes? Like, is this is this the genuine Rick Hogue that you're getting? Yes, yes, one hundred percent. Like, literally, Mr. Bites is a massive fan of Rick Hogue. Like, I, I think like you're gonna do it right now, Alita. You should. <laughs> yes. You should. Yes. Yes. Let's do. Let's because... do hundred thousand so I can do my my dance. You have yes, my live number. I shared my live 99.5. number. Ninety nine point five. I, I live shared number. the live. Yeah. Oh, you did. You did. Let me see. Oh my goodness. Yes. 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 Ninety nine. Good. Come on. Let's do five hundred. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Do it. Do it. Yes. 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 Almost there, guys. Come on. Come on. Let's get it. So, I. Do it. Do it now. Subscribe. I don't know. I. I, I don't know what to say. I didn't, you know, you can't, uh, you know, me, I'm often very, it's very difficult for me to speak in long phrases. All always, you know, it's, I'm, I'm not much of a talker, <laughs> we uh, have to, like, draw the words out of you. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's what, that's what I'm known for really is not stepping over everybody. Chat doesn't yell at me for talking too much every single day of the trial. Uh, but no, I, this is, this is very cool. It's, it's, it's crazy. Um, I, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what to say. I, oh. I'm looking at it right now. There. So we're it. almost there. We're do almost it. there. Come on, do guys. It. Do oh, it. Oh, less than do 20. It. Yes. Yes. We did it. We did it. We did it. 100,000. 100,000. 100,000. Yes. Come on. We did it, guys. <laughs> it's a celebration. It's funny. I have I have these clappers from when we got a lead to 100,000 halfway through. Oh, my gosh. Halfway through. <laughs> halfway through this trial. Um, and in the back of my head, I know I talked to Alita about this before the court case. I said, you know, we're going to get you to a hundred thousand, um, during the trial. I don't, I don't know that any of us thought like we're going to get everybody to a hundred thousand. Um, and, um, I, all I can say is, um, you know, remember to like and subscribe to everybody, you know, Kurt's on the grind. He's, he's right yeah. there at a hundred thousand too. Yep. Um, you got to get him there too. I, uh, I'm very thankful. Uh, and I'm I'm very appreciative of this community and this group of folks. And um, uh, yeah, you're not you're not going to hear me like this very often. Uh, but uh, it's been a goal for a long time. Um, and I really really appreciate it, Alita. I really really appreciate it, Kurt. I really really appreciate it, the rest of the panel, everybody else. Um, and yeah, I'm going to try not to get too emotional right now because uh, we have a, we have a really big trial today. But I will say this: I'm super excited. Thank you all for making it possible. And um, yeah, uh, we're having crazy fun here. So uh, thank you. I'll say something more erudite and wise uh, later on, maybe. But um, thanks. Thanks, guys. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yes, Rick, we love you. We, do we love, love you. Rick. I appreciate sure. it. You accidentally sent it to like 101 here. So, you know, that's that's your power. And not accidentally. Right not accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> it was all intentional. Also, yeah. Michael Gaunt, thanks for the generous super chat. He says, grats, Hogue. Yes. Thank you, Congrats. Michael. I appreciate Congrats. it. Um, Congrats. That is, Absolutely. uh, yeah, I'm uh, ready for a group gameplay after trial. I got, I yes, I got plans. I got plans. We're going to play games. We are people really want to watch you play games. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, um, yes. Thank you to everyone who has been, who has been liking and subscribing to everybody and continue to do it because genuinely like, like this is, this is like one of the best things that you can do to show your gratitude to everybody is to is to is to bump up this entire community right like because we are all we are all constantly like crossing over to one another's channels and um ah that was a real tear i nah, saw leave me alone Alita. i saw that rick I i'm gonna turn it. this off <laughs> <laughs> no no but we 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 love you we love you we love you um and and there's just there's so much love in this whole community like all of that is real we are all like such good friends and um, yeah, silver play button for you, Rick. It's about damn time. <laughs> it's a, it's so about much, damn Alita. time as far as I'm concerned. Thank you so, so much. Yes, guys. of course, of course. You're so welcome. And thank you for all of your time that you've been spending. And also like, you know, in case anybody that is here is, is new enough, doesn't know, Rick was, was the first person that I reached out to that, uh, that, you know, said yes to a collaboration with me when I had less than 2000 subscribers. So um, I I will be I will be forever forever grateful to him um, for you know for 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 a, you know being cool with that. <laughs> absolutely. Um, no, so absolutely. Yeah. You get great yeah. stories. You get great 
Uh, you get great things out of life by being open to relationships and possibilities. And Alita asking me if she could be on the channel. Uh, one of the best decisions I ever made. Uh, and you can see what I saw back then, which is that she was going to be a force on YouTube and I could not be happier to know her. Um, so uh, Alita, keep kicking ass. Thank you so much for all this help. Uh, and I'm looking forward to a last week where um, LawTube continues to change the world. Do it. Agreed. Do it. Agreed. Agreed. Do it. Unu uh, usually grumpy. Thank you for generous super chats. And Kurt is at 80K. I couldn't get through the day without his his sickly sweet optimism and cheerful outlook on life. <laughs> that's the most hilarious. That's the most hilarious super chat in the history of mankind. Kurt is my spirit animal. We'll get him to 100K. Let's do it. Let's do it, guys. 80K. We could totally get there by the end of the week. We could do it. Let's let's uh, see if we can if we can get get Kurt to 100K. How many law tube folks can we get to 100K? We've got to do it, guys. We've got to do it. Um, Kurt deserves it. Kurt shows up early in the morning on my channel to try to bring me down. Uh, every every you episode. Try to bring me down. I, well, yes, that's true. But that's what journalism. Much. No, no. I, I, I was actually you, did, you gotta let me finish, Kurt, because I was gonna say I, it is a fantastic kind of uh, balancing effect to my natural buoyancy, uh, and it gets better information <laughs> yes. and, and better uh, analysis out there. Um, so yes, please do go like and subscribe to Kurt. He deserves yes. it. Um, yes. yeah. yeah, and and uh, and Indy is, is giving her congratulations to Indy. Quiet. Thank you, Andy. Um, uh, Brick Cormier, thanks so much for your generous super chat. Hogue has officially shed more tears and AH than AH in the past six weeks. Good times, congrats, congrats, Rick. Yes. Also, Mr. Thanks, Bites uh, wanted to give you his congrats too. He's that's that's actually why Indy was uh was was barking is because he came. Thank home. you, Mr. Bites. I appreciate it. Of course, of course. Um, and there was another one that that came in that was another uh another uh where is it? Um, I think we are, we're, we're trying to, uh, okay. Miriam, thanks so much for your generous super chat. It says question when the jurors decide how, uh, how will we be informed? Um, also will they live stream it? What time will it be like during working hours, uh, or at any time of day? So as far as, um, as far as, as, uh, like the, the decision is concerned, it's just going to be when they have made a decision as to, um, as to, like how they've decided they will let the, the, the court know, they will let the judge know through the bailiff. They'll send a note saying we've, we've, we've arrived at a decision. The judge will inform the, 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 the two legal teams. So they'll, they'll have a chance to come back into the courtroom because they, they're, they're able to go back to their offices, get other work done, like all kinds of stuff. So they, they don't have to just hang around all day. Um, and then basically like word will get out to the media. We'll find out people will come back into the courtroom. Um, so my, my assumption is that, the cameras will be in the courtroom for the actual verdict. I don't know if the cameras will be in the courtroom like while we're waiting or if they'll be turned on while we're waiting. But on this channel, like we will definitely be, um, we will definitely be um, um, live streaming that whole time until a verdict verdict is reached. We'll we'll be we'll be hanging out. We'll be chilling. We will be talking about the UK trial. We'll be going over um, the the audio that we haven't been able to listen to that everybody's been wanting us to listen to. Maybe we'll talk about Gone Girl. Like we'll 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 do all of this stuff. We'll have so much time for all of that kind of stuff. Um, Jury deliberation so, is fun. Jury deliberation it, is a fun time for us here. And if you're interested in like me reacting to things that aren't entered into the record. After I give my jury prediction, yeah. I, I, you'll get to see that. People have yep. people noted that Camille is in the cross examination spot. She sure is. So uh, that would imply we're about to call Johnny Depp. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Glacier Legal Solicitors and Advisors, thanks for your generous super chat. Says now that Hogue's at 100K, can I get to 100? Huge inspiration, Rich. Well deserved. Congratulations. Yes. <laughs> agreed. So agreed. Agreed. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's, let's get there. And Mike, look we're gonna have some, some, some Australia United States relations there too. Uh, we've we've got a couple emails back and forth with uh, with uh, with Gleister over there. Um, and yeah, hopefully we can uh, we can have that all all uh, split up too. So hey, Mike, how's it going? Good. How are you doing? Good. I'm good. Doing so good. <laughs> Rick is doing amazing. He just hit 100k. <laughs> Congratulations. That is awesome and well deserved. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. He's done everything he can to promote the rest of us. We know that. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. So I try. Um, I'm better at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aren't we all right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I know. It's like I keep, I keep getting, I keep getting hounded to like, to like, you know, ask people to like the video, and I'm like, <laughs> like yeah. 
yeah. yep, yep. I will, I will, yeah, I, I'll, I'll do that. But I would rather, I would rather just, you know, tell everybody to go everybody every, everywhere else. You know what I mean? Yeah, I am uh, more than happy to do that. Goose your yes. numbers, if you will. I can do that. <laughs> Um, and then also let me, there's, there's one super chat that we weren't able to collect ahead of time because it came in, you know, in between hours. Um, so let me, let me make sure that I, that I catch that before I have a chance, uh, before it gets away from me. Let me see here. Um, do, 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 do. Mrs. Unknown says, will AH team save the best witness for last, uh, for last H's last no. hours? Uh, love you all. I don't think so. I, I don't, they, I think they're basically that they are trying the to scramble. That. Same for the worst witness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's also a relative scale. I mean, they haven't had a good witness yet. Uh, who yeah, was their best yeah. witness? That's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um Suk Medik D20 predictions. Heard shows up dressed like a pirate. Judge patience waning for nonsense. Circus barely contained. H team will score at least one point. Maybe one. Maybe one point. <laughs> Don Hinton says, question average hours per day equals five. So only around 20 hours available through Thursday. Does this mean they lose the rest of the six hours or can it spill over to Friday? If only through Thursday, then different uh, seems more like JD plus four, not plus 10 thoughts. Well, let's see. It's 18 plus 18 and a half plus eight and 45. Um, I, I, I think that the judge will, will go over time on the hours per day that's, if uh, necessary. That's, that's enough to that's that's enough for three four days that, yeah, that should work on the math yeah no i think so yeah. i think i think you're right about that <clears throat> let's see if we can get another question before jury comes in the art of zem says question i noticed that in several of the pictures shared during the jo the trial johnny is not wearing rings why has the defense not brought that up i don't know that would be that would be an interesting interesting question right um Let's see here. Oh, all right. Did, did you uh, get this I see Larry. Oh, I see Larry back there. It looks like, looks like it. I think so. Let me see here. Uh, yeah, I see Larry. Yeah. I don't see James or Joe. Where's Joe with his NYPD hat? <laughs> I don't know if he tried that. He was wearing a hat in the courtroom. He would never hear the end of it from me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, he was wearing a suit with the hat. At least there was oh. that. But maybe, well, actually, uh, I don't know. Uh, he might have some space next to Larry that maybe he's saving a seat or something. It, it's kind of hard to tell with, with folks uh, around him like that. Although the other guys could be sitting on the other side too. So let me let me check Twitter uh, to see if, if Joe and the others made it. <laughs> Well, I did, the, um, I did the circuit this morning. Runkle's back in Canada for a couple days. Uh, sorry? Oh, yeah, yeah. Run Runkle is back in Canada. Yes, yes. That that we do know. Oh, Joe's in the back left corner. Okay. That, that's awesome. Okay. Good, good. Glad to hear it. And now we've got... Okay, I'm trying to move the... Okay, the captions. Hopefully it'll, it'll show up in a sec. <sighs> Whitney Hurd is on the front row bench. Is that true? I see that in the chat. Interesting. All right. We're ready for the jury then? Ready for the jury. Okay. Wow. So we only had uh, two minutes of prelim. It's a record. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Darth151 says, question, are there any precautions in place in case AH or PR team decide to be vindictive and dox the jury in case of unfavorable verdict? I don't think so. It doesn't sound like it. Um I uh, I hope that they don't. Fix oh, well, although afterwards, if it's after the verdict, then um I mean those folks can also reach out for for publicity anyway. Like at that point, like the 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 trial isn't uh like the as far as as far as the, the trial process is concerned, like that's not disrupted by it. Um yep. but it would suck to be doxxed if they if they want to remain private. Big surprise, this question will the jury verdict be televised? I believe so. Um, I, I've got to double check, but I, I believe so. Um, let me see. I'm looking for another question. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Have a seat. All right. Your next witness. Okay. Your honor. Amber calls Dr. Richard Moore. All right. Dr. Moore. Dr. Richard Moore. Here we go. Okay. Now it's up top. So we can see that won't be bothered by super chats. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to turn this all down. Keep your mics on so I can adjust the volume. Good morning, Dr. Moore. Good morning. Can you please tell the jury your full name? Uh, Richard Salter Moore, Jr. Where do you work? Uh, Emerge Ortho in Wilmington, North Carolina. And what is your position there? I'm a uh, shareholder physician, orthopedic surgeon, uh, practicing hand upper extremity microvascular surgery. For how many years have you been an orthopedic surgeon? So I completed my fellowship in 1997. Um, so for 25 years. And I believe that you, you mentioned this, but tell the jury what area of orthopedic surgery in which you specialize. So, so I'm a uh, um, orthopedic surgeon. I, I finished medical school, went to a five-year orthopedic surgery residency. At the completion of my residency, I wanted to specialize in hand surgery. So um, I did an additional year of training specifically in hand and upper extremity surgery before starting uh, practice in my first year as, a, as an attending. Where are you currently licensed? North Carolina. For how long have you been licensed? Since 1991 or six. I, uh, I think it was 1996 when I was licensed in North Carolina. <laughs> Beginning with your undergraduate studies, Dr. Moore, could you please tell the jury a bit about your educational background. I know you, you mentioned. Do we figure this is the finger? So we think I, uh, this is the finger. Attended University of North Carolina at Chapel be, Hill. Let me turn uh, you down. Graduated in 1987 Sorry. with a no, BS no, in okay, biology. Okay. I went on to medical okay. school at UNC and uh, graduated in 1991. I then went to the hospital, at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia, uh, and did a five-year orthopedic surgery residency there. And in 1996, mm -hmm. I went to Duke University Medical Center and did a year fellowship in hand, upper extremity, microvascular surgery. Um, and, and on completion of my fellowship, I was invited to join the faculty, um, and my role was was hand and trauma. And so I went to Los Angeles for about six months for a, a preceptorship in pelvic trauma, and then went back to Duke and uh, practiced uh, as a director of the orthopedic trauma service and a member of the hand upper extremity and microvascular reconstruction team until 2000 when I relocated in North Carolina to, to Wilmington. And you maintained an active clinical practice since 2000? Yes. And before that, when you were at Duke, correct? Uh, yes. Just very briefly, can you tell the jury what is a residency? Uh, residency is an, a, largely an apprenticeship. So when, when you finish medical school, you have an MD medical degree, but you really um, can't practice medicine um, in, in take a tract of internal medicine or pediatrics or OBGYN or orthopedics. And then it's a graduated training program anywhere from three to five or six years. And what's a fellowship? And a fellowship is a year beyond training. When I completed my residency, had I chose to, I could have practiced as a general orthopedic surgeon, uh, but I wanted to subspecialize and, and therefore that required an additional year of training. And I believe you mentioned this, but your subspecialization was in the hand, is that uh, right? That's correct. Why did you choose to specialize in the hand? Um, patient population, uh, the types of problems we treat, uh, the, and the anatomy is really the, the biggest reason I chose it. Um, I mean, for lack of a better term, it's really pretty beautiful anatomy. And uh, let's talk about that anatomy. There's, there's bones in the hand, right? Correct. And then there's tissue and blood vessels, right? Objection leading. Overruled. I'm sorry, you can go ahead and answer that. Yep, that's correct. And what, what is the surgery um, called where you operate on tissues and blood vessels in the hand? Uh, well, um, that, that would be hand surgery. I mean, there are different components of it. There's, there's trauma where we do repairs of tendons or blood vessels. There's a microvascular element where we repair injured nerves. Um, in, in my practice at Duke, I was on the replant team, and so we would we would do replantations when digits were cut off. We would, uh, we would try to reattach the bones and tendons and nerves and vessels to to uh, uh, reattach the digits, and hopefully I'm survive. Um, and have you performed surgeries of that nature? Yes. When you perform surgeries of that nature, what assessment do you make of the cause of those injuries? 
So, so cause is a, is a big element. So it's a, uh, it's an, uh, an important um, element to appreciate because it can impact management in a lot of those settings. You know, there's a, there's a difference between a laceration caused by a razor blade and a laceration caused by say a serrated knife. There's a, a larger zone of injury. So what we anticipate having to manage is, is based on, on uh, uh, how the injury was created. There's also other elements, contamination, you know, farm, farmyard injuries are totally different than clean injuries and kitchen injuries with raw chicken so are totally different the than, than um, some other, other settings. And so it does play a large role in, in management. After your fellowship at Duke University, I believe you mentioned you had another role at Duke for a few years. Is that right? Can you tell the jury about that? So I, I did my fellowship and I joined the faculty as an assistant professor. And I, so I was uh, in charge of teaching residents and fellows. I was the director of the orthopedic trauma service and I um, was on the hand call team uh, in addition. Have you had um, academic appointments at any universities other than Duke? I, I have a um, adjunct uh, assistant professor um, appointment at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, which is has affiliated training programs in the center where I practice now. Have you held any leadership positions in your field? Um, I've been the uh, <clears throat> an officer and the past president of the North Carolina Society Surge of the Hand, the Duke Hand uh, Club or Society now. Um, uh, I'm in a member of the American Society of Surgery, the hand of the Orthopedic Trauma Association, of the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgery, and of the uh, uh, American Orthopedic Association, the AOA. Are the majority of your surgeries hand surgeries? Yes. How many hand surgeries ballpark would you say you've performed in your career? Over 25 years thousands. Have you seen finger injuries similar to the ones sustained by Mr. Death in Australia? Yes. And have you evaluated injuries like that? Yes. Have you treated injuries like that? Yes. Have you operated on fingers that looked like that? Yes. How many times? Ballpark. Uh, uh, hundreds, if not, if not more. What does it mean to be board certified? in your field? So uh, board certification is a process that um, that you pursue after you complete training. So at the time, there have been some changes, but at the time that I finished my training, um, after residency, we took a written examination. And if you pass the written examination, you had to practice for two years. At the end of that two years, you submitted a list of cases over six months to the board and they picked 12 cases and then you gathered up 10 and went to Chicago and, uh, and had an oral examination based on those cases. Um, and if you pass the oral examination, then you were board certified. And your board certification is in, is in what? Orthopedic surgery. Do you, what is a certificate of added qualification? So in the, in, in the event that you elect to, to do a fellowship and subspecialize, hand surgery is one of the, the um, specialties that, uh, you can uh, um, apply for a certificate of added qualification. And so once I was board certified, I practiced uh, for an additional year or two, had to resubmit a list of cases and take a written examination to become certified in hand surgery. Do you teach other surgeons how to do hand surgery? Uh, occasionally, on occasion, yes. When was the last time you did so? Uh, day before yesterday. Tell the jury about that. Um, I was uh, over the weekend. I, I went to um, Miami to um, serve as faculty for a course, a bio skills course, we call it, on shoulder and wrist surgery. And um, surgeons come in and we have case presentations and panels. And then um, they had a uh, cadaver lab and we were able to, to um, allow them to perform the surgery and cadavers to become familiar with the equipment. Have you published in your field? I have. In peer-reviewed literature? Yes. Your Honor, at this time, um, we'd like to offer Dr. Moore as an expert in the field of orthopedic surgery and specifically hand surgery and injuries to the hand. All right, any objection? No objection, Your Honor. So moved. Yes, sir. 
Dr. Moore, now we, we get to talk about this case. Um, at, at our request, what have you reviewed, just general categories of information, have you reviewed at our request in this case? So, uh, so a tremendous amount of material. Um, I reviewed the uh, video deposition and, and uh, trial testimony of Mr. Depp regarding the injury, um, the medical records from Australia, the photographs of the injury from Australia and Los Angeles, um, texts and emails, the deposition of Dr. Kipper, um, and I'm sure there's more. And when you reviewed the deposition of Mr. Depp, was that just in paper form? It was a video deposition. And so what did you review of that deposition? Uh, the section where he describes the injury. And did you see a video of him describing it? I did. And you, you watched the testimony from this trial of him describing it? Yes. And you mentioned that you reviewed some texts as well. What are those? Uh, there were, there were, mul there were communications amongst, um, Mr. Depp and his physician and, and, and others. And, and what did you specifically review in those texts relating to the finger injury? Well, the, with relation to the finger, there was a, there was a text where he had stated he, he cut his finger off. Now, Dr. Moore, I'm going to ask you some questions about this case regarding the opinions that you formed uh, relating to Mr. Depp's finger injury. Um, when I ask you those questions, do you agree to answer my questions to a reasonable degree of medical probability? Yes. Ashley and do you agree Hamilton. to advise the jury Very and the court you, if you are not answering any of them to a reasonable degree of medical probability? Yes. Dr. Moore, based on your analysis, did Mr. Depp's finger injury happen as a result of a vodka bottle being thrown at him? Objection no. leading. Overruled. I'm sorry. Uh, no. And what is the basis for that opinion? Well, the, the medical data is inconclusive. Uh, it's it's uh, not consistent with what we see in the, in the described injury pattern or in the, uh, the clinical photographs. And there are, there are several elements. There's, there's, uh, you know, the description was of the hand being flat on a bar and the, and the bottle crushing the finger from the top. But looking at the images, there's really no, no significant injury to the dorsum of the finger. And to create the type of injury with that, with that, uh, uh, type of a crush injury, we would anticipate both injury to the fingernail, um, and other parts of the finger. Um, Hey, you know, can, I, can I stop you there and just, sure. just break down a few things? Um, you said the hand resting flat on the bar. Can you show the jury what direction the hand was resting based think, on the documents you've reviewed? I think that the demonstration was, was with the hand flat like this um, across and maybe even curled over the edge of the, of the bar like this. Which side was facing upward? Which side the, of the hand? The, back of the hand or that we call it the dorsal surface of the hand was up. Doctor, if you could get closer to the microphone. Oh, just appreciate sorry. It. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. So you referred to the back of the hand as the dorsal side of the hand. Is that That's right? That's correct. Sort of like the dorsal fin on a shark. <laughs> correct. Fair. And All right. what is the works. other side of the hand called? The palmer surface. Palmer. Okay. No, the so palmer. what direction the was Mr. Depp's hand <laughs> resting on the bar. So the dorsal side was up, which with the descriptive um, mechanism of injury or the injury, the bottle would have struck the top of the finger at the fingernail. Didn't you and say you also mentioned a term side? that I'd like Didn't you to explain testimony? to the jury, crush injury, please. So, so the, with review of, of the images and the x-rays, I mean, this, this was a crush injury. That, that's the, that would generate the findings clinically on x-ray that we saw. Um, the fracture is, is a, um, we call it comminuted and the, and the tip of the finger is in multiple splinters. So there are, are multiple fragments and typically you see that with a, with a crush type injury. So co a comminuted fracture is one where there's multiple fragments of bone. That's correct. And what was the basis other than what you've read and heard, but from the, from the pictures, what was the basis, um, of your opinion that the, the, the hand was resting palmer side down. 
Well, that was, that was the way the, the injury was described um, and demonstrated in the videos. And so um, in that position where the bottle to strike the finger, the way it was described, it would have, it would have struck on the nail. Um, and, and, and the nail was really not injured. And, and so that's not consistent with, with that but pattern of injury. I feel like this is a stretch. Michelle, could I get you to pull up uh, like, exhibits? I'm really interested if there's a different uh, testimony from Johnny 369, Depp page 26. Because he said it curled Your Honor, this is admitted. Court. Ask okay. for permission to publish. Yes, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Dr. Moore, is this um, one of the images that Ooh. you reviewed? Yes. Thank you for the warning. What tell us in relation to your Jeez. expert Jeez. opinion Trigger warning, on the everybody. cause of Mr. Depp's injury? Tell us what you see in this picture, please. So, so this is a um, it looks like an avulsion type injury uh, where tissue is actually pulled or pinched away. Um, I think it, what's important in this picture is that the tissue loss is uh, on the palmer aspect from underneath the finger rather than than all uh, transversely in the finger, which you would anticipate if the if the bottle struck the finger, you would expect more of a this this level of injury rather than isolated to the palmer aspect. And what do you notice about the condition of the fingernail in this picture? So, so from this image, the fingernail appears to be uh, intact. Um, you you can't necessarily see the entire nail, but um, there there are other images that have a better uh, uh, profile of that. Um, and, and the nail's not elevated. It's not, there's no um, subungual hematoma beneath it, or there's no bruise underneath it. Anyone that's ever stuck their finger in a drawer or caught it in a car door or hit it with a hammer knows that almost immediately there's typically um, bleeding underneath the nail, which creates this hematoma. So not being a doctor, I'm, I'm going to try to, to, to summarize what you just said. Are you saying that in an injury like this, if, something had come from the top that there would be an immediate impact to the fingernail bed? That's correct. Michelle, could you please pull up plaintiff's exhibit 144? Your Honor, this has been admitted as well. Thank you. Dr. Moore, I believe you mentioned just a few minutes ago that there were other pictures that showed uh, uh, more of the nail uh, is this one of those pictures? Yes. And, and explain to the jury again, and I'm sorry for the, the graphic nature of this photo, but it's important that the jury understands the basis for your opinion that a bottle couldn't have caused this coming in from above. Yeah. So it's, so it's, it, it, again, the mechanism described would have almost certainly led to uh, severe nail injury. You know, I see no subungual hematoma. Again, it's, it's a palmar tissue loss. And the loss is from distal to proximal, which is in which is from the tip back far below the nail. And so, for it to to create that tissue loss down there, there would almost certainly have to be injury dorsally with that described mechanism. So, what you're saying is that something coming from the top could not have left the nail intact and yet caused injury from the tip of the finger underneath the nail. Objection, leading. Overrule. You can answer. So, so, uh, so I believe that um, it, with the mechanism described, that if the if that the bottle struck the nail, there would have certainly been an injury to the nail bed. Um, and in order for the for the uh, soft tissue injury to be created by that mechanism, there would have almost certainly been tissue loss on the top of the finger as well. Does Mr. Depp's description of what happened line up with the undisputed photographic evidence that you've reviewed? No. Now, we mentioned the term crush injury a few minutes ago. Um, I'd like to show you DX360, please. Hmm. <laughs> and Your Honor, this is, um, we won't publish this at this time. Um, did, are these, is this a document that you reviewed in connection with your expert opinion in this case? Yes. And um, Michelle, if you can please go to pages, uh, I believe they're five and six. Your Honor, I'd ask for permission to publish these as a demonstrative to the jury. Just page five and six. Um, sorry, uh, sorry um, 09 and 10. 
page two oh, pages nine and ten. Could you go to ten also so plaintiff can see it? Okay, any objection to oh no nine objection, your honor. Okay, oh nine or ten can be published. Dr. Moore, are the what are these pictures of? So uh, these are x-rays of the uh, injured digit. And what do you observe in these x-rays? Explain so, to the jury um, what you see. So these are, these are uh, two views. So one in the plane looking through the finger in this direction, one in the plane looking through the finger sideways. And you can see that the, the tuft or the, the tip of the finger, uh, the last bone in the finger called the distal phalanx is shattered. You can see there's multiple little spicules of bone. Um, and there's also a transverse fracture uh, at that level, um, which runs through the bone. Uh, so this is this is what we would describe as a common injury fracture, and it's and it's commonly associated with crush injury. In your decades of practice, Dr. Moore, have you ever seen a comminuted fracture like this result from an object thrown in the way that Mr. Depp described? Uh, well, not in not with the constellation of findings shown on the X-rays. I mean, I think. That could create a fracture, but in the in this setting, it wouldn't create a fracture with the without the associated um, other injuries that we would anticipate. And in your decades of practice, when you see a comminuted fracture like this, what are some things that have typically caused it? So crush mechanisms could be um, slammed in a drawer, caught between two logs in the in the fireplace, uh, car door. Um, uh, sliding glass door, those are all any mechanism that that squeezes the finger between two hard opposing surfaces could create this type of injury. In the statements of Mr. Depp that you reviewed, how did he describe what happened to the alleged bottle when it hit the bar? I, I believe um, he said it exploded, shattered. If a bottle had exploded near his finger, um, in the way that he alleges, what would you expect to see in the documents that you have reviewed? Uh, well, I, I think that that the uh, physicians uh, did a good job of documenting the presentation, the appearance of the wound. Uh, they, they did not document the presence of any glass shards um, and there were no other associated injuries elsewhere on the hand. And I just wanna step back for one minute. Uh, Michelle, can you pull up the next page of the X-ray here? Um, thank you. And Dr. Moore, just before we move on from x-rays, um, can you, I know that this you, one is blown up like this, it's a little bit blurry, but can you point out, um, or describe to the jury where the, where the multiple bone fragments are in the finger? Um, so they're in the very tip, you know, the, if, if you see the joint and then there's the, what we call the transverse fracture, which is across the, the middle of the bone in the, in the same plane as the joint. And then the multiple fragments are in the tuft. Um, and and the, with a Xerox copy, the quality is not as detailed as a, a true x-ray. You can take that down, please, Michelle. Thank you. So, so back to, to, to the glass. In the records that you reviewed, Dr. Moore, did you see any adjacent injuries? In other words, injuries to any other part of Mr. Depp's hand other than the tip of his middle finger? No. And is that observation consistent with the explosion of glass type phenomenon that Mr. Depp alleges? Well, I think in the setting of a, of a glass explosion like that, where there's multiple fragments and the tip of the fingers cut off, you would, you would anticipate that there would be other lacerations. Did you review the documentation in the medical records from the hospital in Australia? Yes. Did any of those providers report retrieving glass from the wound? No. What about any glass near the site of the injury? Uh, no. What about any glass in other parts of the hand? No. What about any glass in any of the other fingers? No. Is there any reference at all, Dr. Moore, that you've seen to any glass in the records that you've reviewed? No. And Dr. Moore, in your decades of practice, have you ever seen an injury associated with a glass explosion that was focused on the end of a single finger in the way Mr. Depp describes? Well, not consistent with the, with the clinical images and the findings in this case, no. Have you ever seen an injury associated with an alleged glass explosion where no other glass 
was found on any part of the patient's body or clothing or anything? No. And because there's been talk of a, of a glass explosion, um, Dr. Moore, there's, there's seems to have been a suggestion that somehow glass may have sliced off the end of, of Mr. Depp's finger. Is that what's going on here? No, uh, this wound doesn't really appear to be a, a sharp glass laceration. You referred earlier to an avulsion, um, which is a term I, I had never heard before your opinion in this case. Explain to the jury what that is. Please. So, so often with crush injuries and, and, um, yeah, I've seen and it. we'll see uh, tissue loss that we call an avulsion or uh, where the, the tissue is actually um, pinched or, or pulled away uh, rather than, than sliced or cut. Um, and and it, it's not uncommon with crush injuries to see that. In your decades of practice, Dr. Moore, have you ever seen an avulsion injury with a partial amputation that results from an object thrown um, from the top of the finger in um, the way that Mr. Depp describes? No. Again, I think that the description differs from the clinical appearance on the, the images. Michelle, can you please pull up exhibit 369 at page 12? This has been admitted, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. published to the Bit posh pub. I appreciate you. <clears throat> I have questions, but this is Dr. Moore. You you said with. you've treated um, yeah. thousands of hand injuries over the course of your career, correct? Correct. Um, what is that on Mr. Depp's hand? Uh, so we we describe that as a objection. As calls a, for speculation. Oh please. The picture just changed. Sorry. Page twelve, please. Okay. He's an expert. Give Thank me a break. You. Thank you. What is that on really, Mr. Depp's hand? It's also really so really that's a, 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 a plaster oh, splint. Overruled objection. Okay, sorry. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Please tell the jury what that is on Mr. Depp's hand. Uh, so that's a that's a plaster splint. Hey, Liz. Um, a half a cast. Let me, is, let me adjust that's how I sometimes me. describe to patients, okay. and it it provides stability uh, for comfort and to protect fractures in the course of treatment. Is that plaster splint hard or soft? Uh, What's well, plaster Paris? It's it's uh, it hardens like a cast does. Dr. Moore, um, does Mr. Depp's description of how his finger became injured line up with the facts that you've seen? No. I have no further questions. All right. Cross, Thank you, Dr. Moore. Cross-examination. So interesting. I feel like I'm at work. This is, this is what I do every day. Mm -hmm. <coughs> they yes. got these opinions. They should be able to hammer them. Good morning, yeah. Dr. I mean, Moore. There's definitely room to, to critique. You said you reviewed Mr. Depp's video deposition, is that correct? That's correct. And you said you reviewed Mr. Depp's testimony at this trial, correct? That's correct. And was that also a video of his testimony? Yes. And you testified that Mr. Depp demonstrated that his hand was flat on a surface, is that correct? That's correct. That's not entirely accurate, is it though? No, it is not. No, uh, his, his description was relatively uh, consistent in both, um, including turning and and resting the hand on the on the edge. He definitely curled Isn't it true, over, Dr. Man? Moore, that when Mr. <laughs> Depp did the demonstration in his deposition, he showed that his fingers were hanging over the bar? Well, even hanging over the bar, it still leaves the dorsum of the hand or the nail vulnerable. That's to not my question, Dr. Moore. My question is, isn't it true that Mr. Depp said his fingers were not laying flat on a table they were hanging the over the bar. She would be a little bit less intense right now. Yes. <laughs> okay. And in fact, you knew this that. This is an expert. When you made that it's opinion. Not Amber. Isn't yeah, that correct? Well, I, I believe that I, uh, as I demonstrated sitting here, that I said that he had, he had said they were slightly curled or slightly curled over, I think, was the description that I gave. Your description in this courtroom was that it was laying flat. And I think you've done that now twice. But in your deposition, you testified that his fingers were actually you hanging only over have the bar. One Isn't that correct? Motion. Objection, Your Honor. Misstates the volume. witness's testimony. He oh. clearly indicated they were curled. Over over curled. Over I'm over. matching her. So that's a page, so so, so that's a distinction that that perhaps I um, misstated in one of the two descriptions. However, oh, that's not substantially changed my opinion. Wow, he's got to say it. Impact it would have on the mechanism. You can't crush something that's overhanging. It has nothing to hit against. 
Isn't it true that Mr. Depp also testified that the bottle came from an off angle? Yes. And you consider that in rendering your opinions today, correct? Yes, I believe he stated that uh, it came from between six and 10 feet. Uh, I think it was off to, I think he demonstrated it was off to his right. I can't recall specifically, but it was off angle, yes. Okay. So it didn't come from the top as you previously testified just a few minutes ago, correct? Uh, well, no, it would have struck the, the top of the finger, but it may have been slightly off angle in yeah. its approach so based on the, the description. Recognize the difference. Mr. Depp described it as off angle, correct? Correct. All right. Dr. Ooh. Moore, just at the outset, your billing rate for providing deposition exactly. testimony is $1,000 per hour? That's correct. You are not. And you were deposed in this action for several hours on March 22nd, 2022? That's correct. And your billing rate for providing trial testimony is $5,000 per day? That's correct. Holy That's crap. You were retained in this case by Ms. Hurd's legal team, correct? <laughs> Diagnosed correct. cause. And over the last few years, you've provided expert services for one of Ms. Hurd's law firms on at least two other cases, right? That's correct, yes. Dr. Moore, is it fair to say that you have no personal knowledge as to how Mr. Depp injured his finger in Australia, correct? Uh, no, I, I have no personal knowledge. My, my impression is based on his, uh, his description of the injury and the uh, available medical records for review. But you weren't in Australia I, with I Mr. Was, Depp and Ms. Hurt, correct? I was not in Australia, no. And, and so therefore you have no personal knowledge as to how that injury was sustained? Correct. You also never personally examined Mr. Depp's finger, did you? Correct. You didn't examine Mr. Depp's finger at the time it was injured? I did not. And you never provided any medical treatment to Mr. Depp in connection with this finger injury, did you? I did not. Now you've testified that you identified Mr. Depp's finger injury as a crush injury, correct? Correct. And a crush injury is when a body part is crushed or trapped between two opposing firm surfaces, yes? Yes. And a crush injury to a finger can occur when a foreign object hits the finger, right? Yes. And uh, based on the pictures that you reviewed of Mr. Depp's finger injury, you cannot determine what particular object caused the injury to his finger. Yes? Uh, well, I, I, can't, I can't determine exactly what, what object did it. I think that um, I, can, I can say with confidence that the described mechanism of the bottle hitting and shattering the finger um, was not consistent with the appearance of the injury. I understand that. And My I think question it, is just very specific. You can't determine the object that caused the injury to Mr. Depp's finger. Well, it's, it's a little bit more of a maybe of for a thousand dollars an hour. Specific I answer. I mean, I, you know, I, it, I again, I, I can't determine the exact object, but I can determine that, that that it's unlikely that it was uh, <laughs> sustained in the manner described. Okay. A bottle is a foreign object, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So you can't rule out that the injury to Mr. Depp's finger was caused by a vodka bottle. Correct? Correct. Well, based on the injury pattern, I can say that the described mechanism of injury is inconsistent with medical findings. Right. But because a vodka bottle is a foreign object, you can't rule out that a vodka bottle is what caused Mr. Depp's injury. Well, I, I can't rule out that a vodka bottle caused the injury, but I can rule out that it was caused in the manner described in his testimony right we already know that you misstated you can't rule out that the injury said, was right? caused by That's a knife right right i think it's <laughs> unlikely that the injury was caused by a knife but you can't uh, rule it out well it, a simple so knife laceration wouldn't impart the energy to the distal phalanx to result in the comedy fracture um now a a chopping type uh but again that would likely come from a direction that would that would create a dorsal uh, injury to create the fracture that was developed. Do you remember giving testimony in this case, Dr. Moore? Uh, deposition? Yes. Yes. Okay. And you were under oath, correct? Correct. Uh oh. And that was on March 22nd. Oh, here comes the impeachment. Yes? Correct. Okay. Yeah, here I love comes. Style. Yes, yeah. I'm not sure why this answer is bad for them, though. That, that if, they, if he can say, well, it wasn't caused by a knife injury, that kind of excludes the possibility that Johnny Depp cut it off with a knife. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought that answer was great. I actually think I have a whole... trapped him into over answering there. I, yeah. I really do. Yeah. I have a whole video where I talked about the different types of injuries. Dr. Moore, may I please have you go to page 163 no way that was of your knife. deposition? Or a crush injury. Specifically line 17. 
because of how the skin fully got knowledge. chopped out. Yeah, I don't quite it's... understand what Camille's doing here. 163. Maybe it'll become apparent because it wouldn't be the first time I didn't see it in advance. Actually, I this is just a standard or... bought and paid for biased opinion that, that you see every day. This is, I feel like I'm at work. I don't know. I want to see what the jurors, or jurors are saying. Correct. Question, but you can't rule it out completely, right? Answer, I can't rule anything out completely. I can't rule out that he caught it in the door, cut it with a knife, or slammed it in the car door. Or again, as Dr. Gilmore Basically said, Basically saying, we can't definitively say what caused the testimony is pointless. Did I read that correctly? You did. Okay. Your, Your Honor, I, I would object as to the incomplete impeachment. I think if she's going to read his answer, she also needs to read or give Dr. Moore the chance to read the paragraph below. She just picked out half of his answer. You, you can redirect. Oh. Yep. There you go. There you go. Uh, Dr. Moore, there's no question pending. Ooh, Thank you. Though. Good. There's no question yep. pending. That's a good way. Good. 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 Good work, Camille. That's how you control. So you it. can't rule out the injury was caused by a cord car door either. Is that right? Correct. Okay. He's but it's your testimony he sitting to here today that, that you can rule out that the injury was caused by a vodka bottle. Hey Mark, is that I your testimony? So I can adjust your volume. My testimony is that I can rule out the injury as caused by the mechanism described by Mr. Depp in his deposition. But you can't definitively say what caused the injury to Mr. Duff's finger. Well, the definitive injury is a crush injury. Um, but I, but it, uh, again, I, I, I can't say. I mean, I think it's, I think that, that it's quite likely that the initial uh, uh, mechanism described at the time of presentation of the accordion doors would, would classically create this injury pattern. You know, the, the hand up in front, injury, picture accordion doors as the end, as the, Edges closed if the hands when up, did accordion palm doors come exposed, into play? If the doors pushed, but, Dr. Moore, closes about the I understand that. once. But, but my I, question is I think it's important that they understand someone, that. I think. This uh, is the time for me oh. to ask you questions. Your counsel will have the ability to rehabilitate you yep. and ask you questions yep. on redirect. <laughs> yep. Right now, the door would let's try my question off. It okay. wouldn't you can't out. definitively say what caused the injury to Mr. Depp's fingers, yes or no? No. I think In conducting your analysis like of Mr. Depp's finger up. injury, you did not attempt to reconstruct the incident. Is that it's right? Not. Well, I think the, the incident was reconstructed. You mean did I throw a vodka bottle at something? No, you're, no, Dr. Moore. I mean, you didn't do any type of accident reconstruction, either computerized or any. You didn't conduct no. any type of accident reconstruction of the alleged. No, that's correct. My opinion is based on the medical records and the clinical images and Mr. Depp's description and and your analysis is based on an understanding of, of how mr depp described the exact position of his finger at the time of the injury yes yes the position that you got and your analysis right. is also Fire based on the assumption that mr depp's hand remained completely still in the instance yep. that a vodka bottle was hurled at him yes no my assessment is on his description of the vodka bottle striking the top of his finger exactly Notice but his hand stayed to still according to your an analysis yes uh, I, I guess it was still long enough for the bottle to hit it, but natural reaction would be to try to pull away. When you perform traumatic finger surgeries, you inquire about the cause of the injuries, correct? Correct. And your best information on that is typically just the self-report of the patient, yes? Ding, ding, ding. Correct. And your assumption is that the patient is trying to get care. Because the patient is trying to get care, that person, that patient is generally telling the truth, right? You would hope so. You reviewed Dr. Kipper's deposition testimony informing your opinion about Mr. Depp's finger injury, correct? Correct. Informing your opinion, did you consider Dr. Kipper's deposition testimony that while Dr. Kipper was providing emergency treatment Objection, for Mr. Your Depp? Objection, Your Honor. Uh, we approach. Okay. Objection for what? Hmm. Ian, I, I think you're clicking is coming through the mic. Yeah, I think so. Is it Ian's? I yeah. So. Are you guys hearing a clicking right now? Yeah, yeah, I was hearing a lot of clicking, typing, typing on the... mouse clicking. Oh, I... yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you're if you're just typing, maybe mute yourself. Or turn down the game you... or your mic or something, but yeah. Yeah. Stop playing StarCraft during the live stream, you know? <laughs> I am not. <laughs> Mark, Mark, can you... Yeah, keep yourself unmuted real quick, and I will adjust your volume, too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. 
Ugh, this is we so require more py pylons. That's what I'm hearing a lot of. <laughs> exactly. So like Amanda said here, they would have cleaned it. Dr. Kipper, there's no way he would have just let the glass sit in it. And I'm very sure that they would have cleaned it out, pulled all over. the glass out. Because it's important the jury hears this. The so informing your opinion, did you consider Dr. Kipper's deposition testimony Camille won. that while Dr. Kipper yeah. was providing emergency treatment for Mr. Depp's finger injury in Australia in the driveway of the house, Mr. Depp told him that his finger was injured when Ms. Hurd threw a vodka bottle at him. Uh, I, I don't but I, I don't recall that from the deposition. I'd, I'd be happy to review it if you have the deposition available. Did you consider Dr. Kipper's testimony that he recalled that Mr. Depp's finger was found in the kitchen? I do recall that. So you must have also seen Dr. Kipper's deposition testimony that he wasn't the one who actually found the finger, correct? That's correct. Dr. Kipper testified that someone he thought was the chef told him he found the finger in the kitchen area, correct? Uh, I'm, I'm going to assume so without reading the deposition now. Did you review uh, any testimony from Ben King in rendering your opinions today? Uh, not to my knowledge, no. Did you see any of really? Mr. King's testimony at this trial? I did not. So you're not aware that Mr. King testified that he is the one who found Mr. Depp's finger, are you? No. And you're not aware that Mr. King testified that he found Mr. Depp's finger in the bar area, right? Correct. And you're not aware that Mr. King testified he found Mr. Depp's finger in a piece of tissue in the bar area either? No. And you're not aware that Mr. King testified that multiple broken liquor bottles were also found in the bar area, right? Correct. If we could please pull up defendants exhibit 1817, which is already in evidence. This is always such a wonderful sneaky way to get in direct testimony and cross. <laughs> yep. That's what it feels like, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> About what other people testify and to? And it may be published, please. But this is really appropriate for an expert because you have to oh. basically say, hey, you don't know, you didn't look at what was actually help. going on. Yes. Oh, yeah. I wasn't you saying it was inappropriate. It's just that yeah. it sounds a lot like direct. So, Thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah, they won't Have be you ever seen this picture before, her, Dr. Moore? Face. No. So you're not aware that this is the bar area where Mr. King testified he found Ooh. Mr. Depp's finger? No. Do you see that broken vodka bottle in the back corner near the bottom of the bar? <laughs> yes. So you haven't seen any of this. This has not been I part of your analysis. Do you see the blood drops program. on the floor? <laughs> yes. Can we please pull up defendant's exhibit 1820, which is already in evidence? Camille is an absolute beast on cross. <laughs> have you seen this picture before, Dr. Moore? I have not. So you're not aware that this is also a picture from the bar area where Mr. King testified he found Mr. Depp's finger? Correct. Do you see the bloody tissue on the ground at the bottom of the bar? Yes. Do you see the blood drops around that tissue? Yes. So you didn't consider any of this evidence in rendering your opinion about how Mr. Depp injured his finger in Australia, did you? I did not. Nothing further, Damn. Your Honor. Thank Damn. you. Redirect. Damn. <laughs> Damn, Camille. Shit. Yep. Yeah, she came out make, swinging make on that. Make the 25 year um, board one, eight, certified one, answer that was just shown to the witness, Jesus please. Lord. And can you um, blow up that what what Miss Vasquez referred to as a broken vodka bottle, Michelle? Please. Dr. Moore, what, what, based on your review of the documents in this case, like what did you understand to be the size of the bottle of vodka that Mr. Depp alleged uh, cut off his finger? The description was that it was a, uh, a handle, a half gallon bottle. And that's bigger than a, a 750 mil or fifth of liquor, correct? Yes. And what size bottle, if to the extent that's even a bottle, what size does that appear to be to you? Culture speculation, Your Honor. I'll yep. sustain the objection. Does that appear to be a handle? It is Objection not. calls for speculation. Hey, dude, no, no, dude. That one's funny. I'm, I'm fine with that. that I would have done that too. <laughs> um, <laughs> Dr. Moore, Ms. Vasquez oh, yeah. just, just um, asked you about Dr. Kipper's deposition testimony. Um, and she said, is that uh, where, where she claims that Mr. Depp allegedly told him that the finger was severed from a vodka bottle? Do you remember that question a few minutes ago? Objection <laughs> leading. Overruled. I do remember that question. Yes. Thank you. Is that consistent, that 
alleged account, is that consistent with the texts you, the texts you reviewed between Mr. Depp and Dr. Kipper? Uh, no. And what did those texts say? Uh, as I recall, um, Mr. Depp indicated that he had cut his finger off. <laughs> now, Ms. Vasquez wouldn't okay. let you finish when you were trying to explain to the jury um, how Mr. Depp's account of injuring his finger in an accordion door would be perfectly consistent with the photographs you saw. Could you please explain that to the jury? Well, well no, so it didn't, uh, again, couldn't happen uh, we way. tend to, to try to believe patients. We hope that they come in with an honest history initially, and, and that's a reasonable mechanism for this to have occurred. And it, again, if you picture your hand up with a with a, either a, a closure of a hinge or a closure of the door, the palmar surface is exposed. If it's caught in that hinge as it closes, it could be it could slightly be slightly off center. It would pinch that tissue away in a similar fashion, but because it's below the level of the nail bed, it could create this injury with the fracture, the tissue loss, and preserve the nail bed. Except it would shear the skin off. It wouldn't slice it out. Can you look at page one sixty four of your deposition, the one that Ms. Vasquez just showed you? Yes. Objection, okay. Your Honor. I'm going to object on hearsay grounds. Your Honor, she only. Oh, overruled. Thank you. It's an expert. Yeah. Miss Vasquez expert. asked you a question, <laughs> and then she read your answer, trying to impeach you. But she only read half of the answer. So I, I'm going to read the whole answer to the jury, and I'm going to ask you to tell me if I'm reading your answer right. Okay. The the question is on page 164, line four. But you can't rule it out completely, right? And you answered, "I can't rule anything out completely. I can't rule out that he caught it in the door, cut it with a knife." or slammed it in the car door, or again, as Dr. Gilmore said, we can't definitively say what caused this injury. And then you go on to say, this is where Ms. Vasquez cut you off and didn't let you finish. What I, the I don't question, think that's in the transcript objection. <laughs> I'll sustain oh, that. Oh, come on. The rest, the rest of your answer. <laughs> come on. That she didn't read to you, Dr. Moore, is what I, the question I can answer is, is that the mechanism that was described by Mr. Depp and demonstrated by Mr. Depp is inconsistent with the injury pattern that's found on the images and the description. That's what he testified. Did I read that right? Yes. And does that remain your opinion today? Yes. Has anything that's been presented to you on cross-examination changed any of the opinions that you hold in this case? No. I have well, nothing further. Thank you, Dr. Moore. Thank you. All right, Dr. Moore, you're free to go, or you can stay in the courtroom. It's up to you. Okay. Thank you. So I thought the doctor right, was your pretty Your next good. witness, uh, Your Honor, we'd uh, like to call Dr. David Spiegel. Dr. Okay. Spiegel. Dr. Two. Uh, yeah, I, I thought that I thought that doctor had a nice air about him. I agree. I thought Camille came in too hot. All right, I also that's think fine. That doctor yes, was speculating too much. So yeah, he, he I, was. I he also misrepresented the testimony. Yeah. that everyone heard so yeah. i don't know how much they are going to be able to really succeed on that if the jury was paying attention which i, think I might have were. dropped the mic when camille got him to say I, yes i might have misrepresented that I, I don't know that you can get much better well, yeah, I agree. yeah i mean her her ending was still strong she like ended well but i don't yeah. know if it was better than that he also ending. kicked off his testimony with the evidence is inconclusive which he did I, say I that mean, where i practice is pretty much going to knock you out from offering an opinion right yeah. there well, well, the weird part yeah. is he says no, like it can't be a vodka bottle, and then he follows but it up. But it could be anything else. It's inconclusive, and you're like, right. what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know what yeah. it is, but it's not a vodka bottle. Okay. <laughs> it could if be a crushing injury, say, but it was can't be a, a crushing injury bottle. due to yeah. a vodka yeah. bottle hitting on top of his finger. Exactly. And it doesn't even matter. Like that, that is not something that he needs to ever do is diagnose how something happened. You need to look at it and be like, oh, okay, this is fractured into lots of tiny bits. Like, I doubt, like, the type of fracture is going to dictate the type of care he gives, not how it happened, especially well, since he went so like it was going to need to be treated like it was the most contaminated thing ever because it was such a long period from when he had the injury to when it happened. So it wasn't like they weren't going to clean it or he wasn't going to treat it like a dirty wound. Like that whole thing is just such BS. I did like I can him. find I like five hand experts today in... that will say that that's consistent with with the uh, that avulsion injury is consistent with the testimony. It's just that simple. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. But you know, that be I, I don't disagree with you on that aspect that you can find other experts who will be yeah. as credible to give the contrary opinion. That being said, I felt that his expert opinion was very credible um, in terms of what he was saying. He's he's well experienced, well credentialed been doing this for a long time. I mean, he's like any doctor able to review someone else's notes and 
pictures and x-rays and you know form opinions about stuff not everything oh, he said oh. squared to me i like for example as i just pointed out just now if if it can be a two two hard objects coming together if that's one of the things that could cause this injury and he testifies oh the vodka bottle hit my finger i'm like hmm i don't know that seems like that might be something that would be consistent with what you just said so i i had, well, I had problems well, he presumes with that, he presumes I mean, that it struck it on the nail yeah and that I wasn't mean, the yeah. testimony yeah and that's, and yeah, that's, 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 that's the matter. Yeah, and, and and that would change everything, right? Like, yeah. and he he's also assuming that he can that he can that he can determine all of that based on that one. Yeah, no, I I yeah. I, I completely agree. It's relying that, too hard on it. So when he said the fracture was comminuted, that just means it goes into lots of little pieces instead of being a clean break. Right. If you have a small digit, it's very like, and you break it, it almost always, if you're hitting it, especially from an angle, it's not going to snap like this, like a big bone because it's so little it's going to fracture into a ton of little pieces and it's especially at high velocity it's just going to like yeah. poof, like explode yeah. so like the fact yeah. that he said that makes me think he's never seen a hand injury <laughs> like michael gaunt thank you so much for your generous super chat says uh his opinion is based on jb perfectly placing his finger in the exact position on the bar who expects that level of accuracy for me that that, that threw his opinion out right away i agree true. i i yeah. completely and agree once, yeah. once camille gets him to say that, that okay that's that might not be exactly how it was it's, it's almost virtually worthless and we also yeah. at some point have to talk about the most serious matter which is he looks exactly like stephen root so that threw me from the start. Yeah. It does, it does require, well, I also it thought it was telling that he did, he did not say it. this injury is consistent with smashing uh, an antique phone, which is what you'd want him to say. But he, well, he didn't feel I, comfortable. Camille very they carefully asked him was to like, say that, and he didn't feel comfortable. Mm -hmm, Camille's very yeah. careful about not um, asking about whether it's consistent with a phone crush. I did notice like, that. She's asking about like everything else on the yeah. earth, except would, it, would this be if you hit uh, an, an antique phone into the wall? Because you don't yeah. want that answer. <laughs> Yeah. Also, right. I don't like Emily Taphouse. Thank you so much for your generous super chat. Says, can someone tell me how AH's testimony that he did this with a phone will be reinserted into all of this? Clearly, that was a lie. Yeah, it's it's they have it's like it's like her team is trying to have these two parallel theories of like what happened with the finger. Neither of them by by running with two possibilities, neither of them is believable. Listen, right. don't believe our client, but also don't believe Depp is sort of the yeah. argument here. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Well, it's the money middle strategy, but they went in a different strategy for the last three weeks. <laughs> yeah. And Mike, is that normal to invite like a surgeon in who fixes things versus like a forensic pathologist or like a medical yeah, examiner? No, no. That, that's exactly who you do it. He's testified for them before, which I'm surprised they, they, they chose him because they knew they were going to eat that on cross. Right. He's a right. good orthopedic yeah. surgeon, but he's a defense-minded guy. He does insurance defense, and they know it. Simple as that. Yeah, paraded doctors. A little unexpected. <laughs> Thanks, Angry Vandalin. There's Dennison. Dennison has entered the house. He's got this one. I know you guys all love old-school lawyer Dennison. Yes. By the way, thank uh, you. To, thank you to the mods. Yeah. Thank you. I haven't told thank you yet. You, Congrats on 100K. Will you please tell the jury thank your you full name and business it. address? Uh, David uh, R. Spiegel. I'm a physician. I uh, work at uh, 825 Fairfax Avenue in Norfolk, Virginia, as part of the Eastern Virginia Medical School. And what is your occupation? I'm a physician psychiatrist. And and where do you work? Happy do you birthday. work at? I work at Eastern Virginia. I'm employed by Eastern Virginia Medical School, but I also work at uh, Norfolk General Hospital, which is a teaching hospital in Norfolk. How many years have you been practicing as a psychiatrist? I entered residency in 1989. I graduated residency in 1993. So from 1993 to today, I've been in physician uh, practicing. So that's almost 30, that's 30 years. years yeah. Okay, thank you. Please describe for the jury the nature of your clinical practice. So my clinical practice is comprised of both inpatient care at Norfolk General Hospital, as well as my outpatient practice at Eastern Virginia Medical School. Um, about 85 to 90 percent of my day is clinical between the two components. And what is involved in a comprehensive evaluation? So in a comprehensive evaluation, 
in addition to reviewing historical information that you receive from collateral or other sources, uh, you undertake a history from the patient. You get, whether it's the history of current illness, the past psychiatric history, family history, social history, legal substance history. Then you do what's called a mental status exam, which is the psychiatric version of the physical exam. We are actually giving a description of what you see in front of you. Uh, then you can do cognitive testing, which tests the patient memory, attention, concentration, et cetera. Uh, then you come up with a working and a differential diagnosis, describe any other additional testing you may need or not need, and then you come up with the treatment plan. How many for the 30 years? Uh, Quite a lot, uh, probably in the tens of thousands. And how many patients do you regularly see? So inpatient is generally about five to eight, sometimes more. Uh, outpatients, probably five to six, sometimes more. Uh, I should point out that my inpatient work is divided between uh, consultation, psychiatry, and I believe we're going to talk about that as well as working on the inpatient service. So hopefully we can talk about that. Um, what if any differences are there on how many patients you see on weekends as opposed to weekdays? So when I'm on call, which is uh, on a, either a Saturday or a Sunday meeting, I have to be in the hospital and around, that's probably an additional 35 plus patients. How frequently do you treat patients who abuse drugs and alcohol? Uh, unfortunately, drugs and alcohol are part of psychiatric practice. Uh, and so probably three-fourths of my patients have substance abuse problems. Does this include both legal and illegal drugs? Yes. Put them both together, probably 75%. And how frequently do you treat patients who have suffered from someone in their lives who abuses alcohol and drugs? On a regular basis, like I said, on a daily basis. This is part of what psychiatry is. And as part of that treatment of patients, who abuse drugs and alcohol, do you evaluate the impact of the abuse on their brains and personal interactions with others? Yes, uh, substance of abuse, both in the short term and the long term, can affect the brain in terms of mood, behavior, cognition, meaning uh, attention, concentration, memory, ability to control your behavior, as well as your overall uh, level of functioning. It can affect it in the short term, uh, such as alcoholic blackouts. It can affect it by causing strokes, such as stimulants can. Um, and so at the end of the day, uh, it's a rather lengthy uh, list of what substance abuse can do to the human brain. Dr. Spiegel, how frequently have you treated patients who have suffered intimate partner violence? Again, it's very unfortunate that probably 50% of my patients suffer from trauma. If I had a guess of those 50%, probably 25% of my practice is people who have suffered uh, intimate partner violence. And how consistent is that with the national average? In America, unfortunately, uh, it's about 20 to 25%, depending on the study of uh, uh, women have complained, have reported uh, uh, intimate partner violence. And how frequently have you treated patients who have perpetrated the intimate partner violence? So again, in the outpatient setting, I don't see it quite as much, but in the inpatient setting, again, it's a really relative uh, common phenomenon that I will see uh, perpetrators of intimate partner violence. Uh, and, you know, they're patients who need treatment too. And overall, how many patients have you treated who have been perpetrators of intimate partner violence? Perpetrators? Yes. Uh, probably five to 10% of the patients I do is in, of perpetrators. And would you say uh, tens of thousands over the 30 years? Yes, to the leading. Overall. Thank you. As part of treating patients relating to intimate partner violence, do you regularly evaluate these patients? Do I regularly evaluate the patient? Evaluate the patient, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, regularly. I mean, they do get the same comprehensive evaluation that I described before. Are you licensed in Virginia? Yes, I am. And when did you first become licensed in Virginia? 1993. 
Have you been qualified by courts as an expert witness? Yes, I have. In how many states have you been qualified as an expert? What does that matter? Three, which would be Virginia, Maryland, and South Carolina. And chat, Dr. Spiegel, can you please review for the jury your educational background beginning now with your undergraduate recorded, studies? I that was a slip from so uh, I went to Duke University there. undergrad. I went to medical school at the State University of New York Health Science Center in Brooklyn, formerly known as Downstate Medical Center. I did my internship and residency between Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center and Penn State Hershey Medical Center. And, and I'm also fellowship. Uh, uh, board certified in consultation ways on psychiatry. Okay. And uh, did you, so where did you do your residency and your internship? Center? So I did my residency for Penn State and internship at Dartmouth. Okay. And what is your current title and position? So I am in the acting chair, uh, endowed chair, and professor in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at Eastern Virginia Medical School. Are you board certified? Yes, I am. And what are you board certified in? General adult psychiatry and consultation ways on psychiatry as a subspecialty. Okay, so you have two board certifications. Yes. Okay, can you explain to the jury what's involved in board certifications in those two fields? So board certification is the standard we strive to in uh, being a physician or any other uh, mental health practitioner. Uh, it involves uh, taking a very comprehensive uh, test at the beginning of your career to initiate board certification. Then you get tested again after 10 years. Then you have to go through continual medical education uh, throughout the entire period. Um, you have to do what's called performance in practice, which is basically ways to improve things uh, in, your, in your practice. Uh, and again, this is throughout, this is, occurs always throughout the, the years. Okay. Now, are you a member of any professional organizations? Yes, I am. Could I'm a member the of the American Psychiatric Association, uh, as well as the fellow of the American Psychiatric Association. I'm a member of the Medical Society of Virginia. I'm a member of the uh, uh, Psychiatric Society of Virginia. I'm a member of the Tidewater Academy of Psychiatry. And I'm a member of the uh, Academy of Consultation Liaison Psychiatry. Do you have any teaching responsibilities? Teaching Teach, responsibilities? Oh, yeah. Teaching, yes. So, yes. So, teaching is a daily occurrence as part of my job when, I'm in, when I do my inpatient rounds. Teaching uh, is a daily residents, occurrence is a weird way to put students, that. Physician assistant students are assigned. That sounds so like a professor. Together, and there's teaching. Who's with there to get published first? And to teach uh, in addition seconds. to that, teaching I teach is lectures required. to the residents, it happens. It's a to thing. the, it uh, I mean, that's, every, that's, that's, that's almost everyone, right? Medical students, yeah. yes. as well as a fourth year medical but student But I still will be critical, well. Mark. <laughs> so I'm constantly Fair. teaching. I'm with you. <laughs> Have you engaged in any hands-on training of psychiatrists practicing in Virginia? Hands-on training with the residents? With psychiatrists. Oh, yeah. So again, uh, I'm teaching at bedside. I mean, we don't speak in front of the patient, obviously, but I'm teaching at bedside, meaning after we see a patient, we discuss the important points to, to learn. And again, that includes residents at every level. That includes medical students, third, second, and first year physician assistant students. So every day is a teaching explanation session to the uh, students and residents. What is your role at Eastern Virginia Medical School as the acting chair? Please tell the jury what that means. So as the acting chair, you are not only accountable they for have, your own practice, but you are accountable for your faculty members' practices. So I have to make sure that everyone is treating, seeing, evaluating a, a, a certain number of patients. I have responsible for their academic requirements. So in terms of publishing, et cetera, I'm responsible for their uh, 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 teaching assignments to other residents, to other students. I'm responsible for fiscally that they are uh, accountable to their uh, fiscal productivity. So I know a heck of a lot of other administrative uh, meetings that I go to. Have you published in your field? 
to the tune of about 80 manuscripts uh, in I have my own book on catatonia and the consultation liaison setting. I, I have a book chapter in on uh, the uh, uh, current and uh, trying to co current and contemporary approaches temporomandibular disease, at least the psychiatric portion. I'm also in a dissociative uh, identity disorders chapter on a, 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 a wiki book. And have you peer reviewed literature? Yes, so I'm a, I'm a reviewer on, I've served as a reviewer on uh, uh, Lancet, I've served as a reviewer as uh, Innovations in uh, Clinical Neuroscience, I've served on a uh, reviewer for Clinical Neuropharmacology, and I'm actually editor-in-chief of, at this point, of Clinical Neuropharmacology. Have you lectured on the effects of drugs and alcohol on the human brain? Yes, uh, I teach to the residents. I teach, I uh, lecture to the second year medical students, third year medical students. So I am fully aware of not only what I teach, but what I see in the emergency room and the consultation and in patient settings. Have you published and lectured on the causes and effects of intimate partner abuse? Yes, I've punctured, uh, I believe, two articles on the effects of trauma and in that trauma was intimate partner violence. Are you familiar with the hallmarks of intimate partner violence? Yes. Are you familiar with what causes intimate partner violence? One more, excuse me? What causes intimate partner violence? I'm a, yes, I'm a, there's a multiple explanations that cause intimate partner violence. And if, I kind of just uh, mentioned at this point too, that when we are discussing intimate partner violence, I think it's imperative for the jury to know we are talking about repetitive behavior over periods of time. And the type of abuse can be any physical, psychological, sexual, but just as important is for somebody, one of the parties to maintain some uneven element of control or to maintain power, control, or authority. So there are a lot of facets to intimate partner violence. I know people tend to think of it as just the actual abuse act, but there's more to it than just the actual abuse act. Abuse act's important, but it's not the sole thing. I feel like there's a way to pivot this. Your Honor, I move favor. to qualify Dr. Spiegel as an expert in the field of psychiatry and behavioral sciences with specific emphasis on drug and alcohol abuse, intimate partner violence, and the effect of these as they pertain to the issues in this case. All right, any objection? Your Honor. Yep. You wish to avoid dear? I do. Okay. To his qualifications. His qualifications. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I agree with this. Avoid dear. I mean, he's going to ask him a bunch of questions, try to poke some holes. Sir, you talked about two board certifications general adult psychiatry. Yes. And liaison consultation psych psychiatry. Uh, other way around, but consultation, consultation liaison. liaison psychiatry. Subtle point. Right. Now, that is not intimate partner violence. That deals with an with a issue of comorbidity between people who have medical problems and health problems. So you're saying it's subspecialty? Yes. So consultation lays on psychiatry does have that, but you're also treating patients who have medical illness who have comorbid psychiatric illness or people who have psychiatric illness that have comorbid medical illness. And many of the patients that I see on the trauma service have tried to take their own life. And unfortunately, as part of that, intimate partner violence and trauma in general is part and parcel of that. So it's very, very uh, narrow to say it's just a medical psychiatric interface. It's much more of uh, psychiatric patients who need medical help medical patient develop psychiatric problems, but also that interface. So think, is Johnny's team trying to as a subset of your trauma right patients, now? yes, which okay. you say are about 50% of your practice, as a subset of that practice, some people have been involved with intimate partner violence. So as a subset of my overall practice, 50% have suffered from trauma, about half of that number have suffered from, I'm sorry, about 20, so it's 20, about 20% that have suffered from IP, intimate partner violence. I think he's going right. to try to You've at least knock down some of his qualifications, if not all of them. any research on individuals Thanks. who experience yeah. intimate partner violence, I have you, sir. If your definition is trials, is that what you're saying? Yes. Like pharmaceutical trials, or what are you saying? 
is I was saying, because I've done review articles on patients who suffered from trauma. So the answer is, oh, I haven't done any studies like where you uh, could be. give them medication for treatment or try one treatment versus another. I've reviewed the body of literature on intimate partner violence to get two review articles, yes. So, you're, so you've read about it is what you just testified to. I would have to disagree with you on that, sir. Reading about it and writing a review article are completely two different things, sir. All right. You haven't authorized, authored any articles specifically on IPV, have you, sir? As a subset of trauma, the answer is yes. In terms of in the name of the title of the article, the answer is no. You've never written any books specifically on <laughs> IPV? I've yeah. never written any books on IPV, although, although temporomandibular disease, okay, in terms of psychiatric issues, does have a higher frequency in those patients who have suffered from trauma, including intimate partner violence. You've never- And I am part of that book. Okay. Temporal mandibular disease deals with problems with the jaw. Is that what, a is question, temporal, sir? what is temporal mandibular disease? Temporal mandibular disease problem with oral issues. Yeah, but there are many patients who complain of oral issues where the, uh, where the oral surgeon cannot find a reason for it. And the reason why they can't is because people who have suffered from trauma and intimate partner violence are prone to increased sensitivity of somatic sensations, which can manifest in temporal mandibular disease. Thank you. I appreciate that. Nice plug for my book, too. Thank you. Weird. Didn't hear it. That's a weird. There we go. This guy's not um, coming off all the time. No. I think it was you riding the line with that one. Was not good. That was a little sarcastic there. He's too punchy. He's too glue. Again, I think I've gone over that. I've written two articles on that, and I've written parts of chapters in dissociative identity disorder. I should have, where I did write a chapter on. Honestly, I think this has already done the job to some extent. on trauma yep. and intimate part of violence. Right. I'm not asking you about trauma because you want to talk about trauma. I'm asking you about IPV specifically. I will reiterate again, you cannot separate intimate partner violence and say that is a separate rubric aside from trauma. Trauma is overall, intimate partner violence is part of trauma. And the answer to the question is, any individual who suffers from a dissociative disorder, which I am the author of a chapter of, suffers from trauma, whether it be at the hands of childhood or it be at the hands of an intimate partner. Right. But you've already testified that half your practice is trauma and a subset of that practice is IPV, correct? Which is, a, actually, I treat the national average of patients. About 20% of patients suffer from it. And that's about my practice number. That, except you're discounting the fact that half your practice is not trauma at all. So 10% of your practice is IPV. I don't know if the numbers add up exactly like I'm that. I'm just using yours. I don't know if I'm doing... Uh, I don't know if those numbers add up like that uh, because I'm not sure if that's the case. Oh, wait, that sounds bad. No, that sounds 12. bad. Twelve point five 12.5% of my practice. If you're average, are you an expert? Being rather specific. So again, a significant oh. number of my patients have suffered from intimate partner I, This is already won. This, this on a warfare daily warfare already won for them. And I'm not yeah. sure exactly why I'm it, It's interesting because I didn't question. think yeah. he's doing great at the beginning well, like you, the sniping so, of yeah. trying to like you listed six snipe your references his credentials, articles, but then they just saw how defensive he got about it. And so they just um, honed in on that. I said around, sorry, I said around, I said around. Look, I think you're 60, right. 60, 80, whatever it is, right? No, no 60 and 80 is not. If you go to the like PubMed who gives, app, you want, who gives you a shit PubMed about right now percentage Google, right now? Yeah. Google, yeah. Google, yeah. PubMed, Spiegel, DR, yeah. and you'll find that number is 72 with two waiting to be impressed. One submit is going to be 75. Yep. Yep. So it's this around 80. Brown. So again, what's on my CV is not necessarily the most updated version because I still publish since the CV has been uh, uh, given to you, sir. Right. And not one of the 72, 80 articles has IPV in the title, right? Correct. Not one of them has IPV. It does have trauma, but not IPV. Right. Except the one I'm writing in my head right now. And you've never presented uh, on the week. topic of IPV specifically. As a function of trauma and as a function of somatic illness, uh, again, as a function I would of, say to you that it's part and parcel of these illnesses. So the answer is yes, I have. The one the answer is yes, I have. That this, like, and IPV doesn't IPV appear in your CV at all. It's pretty semantic. Yeah, I agree. 
if if you say it's not in my CV, I will believe you. Okay. There's a lot of things that are not in my CV that I do. Uh, I do not associate. Why? That sounds like a you problem, dude. Yeah. 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 Oh. I'm sorry, repeat the question, sir. Is there any professional literature that That's you've really contributed combative. to relative to IPV specifically as as opposed to trauma general? The answer to the question again, sir, is that you cannot separate this artificial separation you are trying to do between trauma and intimate partner violence. It is part and parcel so of the answer trauma. to that is no. We don't thread it, it like can't that. Be your position that all trauma is IPV, Honor, doctor. Uh, would Especially when such a small subset of it general is psychiatry, yeah. but what he specializes in. So you can't be a specialist. Drug usage issues that um, Ms. Fred Under what circumstances did you first discover the question of passing? All right, over objection. He's entered as an expert, as, as uh, stated on the record. All right, you may continue. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Wait, so uh, I'm they sorry, guys. For the record. Dr. Spiegel, yes. at our request, what have you reviewed in this case? And just go ahead and give me more. So chance it's, a, more it's a who decides review, if he's an expert, the judge. Filings, yeah. Uh, psychological testing that was done on Ms. Heard by both uh, Dr. Hughes and Dr. Curry. Uh, other physicians, medical records, other physicians, you know, Dr. Kipper. Um, counsel, uh, counselors and therapists that both parties and psychiatrists that they went to. Uh, text messages, depositions. Uh, snippets of uh, the uh, UK trial, um, and I'm sure uh, pictures of uh, physical injuries. So I've, I've seen a lot. What, if anything, have you seen in terms of emails, audios, videos? Things? Yes. So I've seen videos of uh, uh, Mr. Depp. I think the video was showing right of uh, Mr. Depp. Uh, destroying, uh, slamming cupboards and breaking glass and yelling at Miss Heard while having a wine glass in his uh, with wine in his hands. Um, I've seen videos of uh, destruction of property in the house. Um, okay. Uh, and what, if any, review have you conducted of the deposition and testimony of Mr. Depp's uh, hired witness, Dr. Curry? Objection. Sure. Objection. I will come up with one as we get to the bar. <laughs> Give me a second while I walk up there. <laughs> you know, no. even though the judge overruled the uh, four deer attempt, I think the attempt overall was still effective because the jury heard all those things, right? The exactly. jury heard, heard all the issues and heard his arrogance and all the rest of it. So I'm going to yes. I'm going to say it's a win on the uh, yeah. four deer. Good job. I think so too. It was yes. very wordy yeah. though. I don't know why he couldn't have just been like all intimate partner violence is trauma, but not all trauma is intimate partner violence. Because yeah. He's yeah. arrogant and he wanted to seem smart. Yeah. He's and so to clarify for folks, kicked. yes, he is he is still an expert on all of the things that uh Elaine Redhoft requested. Um and mm -hmm. uh but but yeah, but but a lot but, all of those questions have now been asked in front of the jury and those responses were still fairly questionable to a lot of us. And I think that I'm very curious to, to hear from our guys in the courtroom to hear, you know, what, what their impressions were from the jury during that process to see if they were like, if they were reacting at all during, during these parts, because yeah, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of, of questions there for, for the jury to consider. Um, as far as whether or not he really is qualified or, or whether they should really pay attention to to what he has to right. say about IPV here. And part of the reason I see a lot of people kind of talking talking about how, like, you know, it seems like he's not an expert on IPV. It's not his main course of study. But one of the and it may or may not be. But one of the things that the courts will sometimes do with expert witnesses like this is you can you can argue specialization down to the nitty gritty where maybe only one person even exists in the world who specializes in the one thing that you're saying you can specialize in. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there's a little more broader deference provided in these sort of areas where mm -hmm. I think his argument was actually okay. Like I specialize in trauma. All IPV is trauma. I, you know, I can speak to these things that in, in and of itself is not a bad answer and probably qualifies him as enough, as enough as the court would require. However, gotcha. as we discovered, those answers were garbage, and now the jury may or may not discount that actual expertise, mm -hmm. or whether or not he really was expert. Right. 
Oh, well, that's helpful perspective. Cause I would think, oh, you need a specific interpart, like it, interpersonal violence person, but I, taking a I step think, back and yeah. I totally think they should. The mm -hmm. realism of often with how many trials of these are going on and how few expert IPV, you know, or not necessarily mm -hmm. IPV, but in any given field, you know, you would need at any time to do these things. There is a little deference uh, that at least that mm -hmm. I've seen in my experience. I'm not saying it's right. That makes sense. Just saying it's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's, it's for, for the realism of putting on all of these sort of cases constantly in a full trial. Yeah, that's helpful to contextualize it. Yeah. For not legal people. Yep. 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 Anyway. <laughs> 1. Right. 1.21 1 gigawatts. Great, Scott. <laughs> that's heavy, Doc. <laughs> His hair is way too combed for that. <laughs> well, you know, he's just, he's, he's coming in for court. He's got to get a haircut for yeah, court. That's true. You know what that's I mean? Fair. No, that's fair. Um, and you know, but it, it's also, you know, something. he has the added benefit for Amber Heard's team of also saying that he could go back in time and bring the Milani makeup palette to her prior to 2017. So I expect him to testify on that as well. I'm kidding, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> I, it, it looked to me like did, Dennis did you was review the, about the, how that the, the deposition and <laughs> testimony of Dr. Curry. Dr. Curry. Who? Yes, I've viewed Dr. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, I've viewed Dr. Curry. Dr. Curry. I've viewed Dr. Curry's. Bring it, bring in the Dr. Curry hate hours. Go. Okay. And <laughs> what if, it, did you review <laughs> what the if deposition and trial testimony of Dr. Hughes? Yes. Yeah, actually, Your Honor, beyond the scope of the school. Uh, uh, I'll allow that. Thank you, Your Honor. Overruled. Did you interview Mr. Depp? No, I did not. Did you request? I requested to interview Mr. Depp twice, and both times Mr. Depp and his lawyers refused. Dr. Sure. Spiegel, I'm going to ask you some questions in this case respecting your opinions and, and the opinions you have formed and the basis for them. And I'm going to ask you to provide me with, in a reasonable degree of medical probability or certainty. Can you do that? Yes. Okay. On what were you requested to analyze and opine in this case? So it's fourfold. Uh, one, I was asked to opine about the risk factors that are associated with intimate partner violence and behaviors that are shown, risk factors that are shown in intimate partner violence to be consistent with behaviors that Mr. Depp has demonstrated. Two, I've been asked to opine about the acute effects on alcohol and substance use, and I mentioned that including mood, behavior, cognition, <laughs> functional impairment. Three, talking about the psychological profile, if you would, of, I'm, is there a question? I'm sorry. Oh, no. Okay. Of uh, psychological and medical sequelae of patients who have suffered uh, intimate partner violence and perpetrated intimate partner violence, and whether or not Mr. Death's behavior is consistent with that. And lastly, about uh, alcohol and other substance use disorders, their diagnostic criteria, their medical and psychological effects, psychiatric effects, their cognitive effects, and their functional effects. And I think I would like to just, just go with the jury one other thing. When we talk about, when, we, when psychiatry talks about substance use disorders, I, it's imperative to understand we're not talking about someone who rarely uses and happens to have a bad night. We're not talking about someone who uses on a weekly basis and has a bad night. We're talking about repetitive patterns of behavior that meet a list of 11 criteria that can be deemed mild, moderate, or severe. Because I think people get confused when they hear the word substance abuse that they think of, oh, I may abuse this because I use it twice. There is a whole criteria of behavior and sequelae and consequences that go with a substance use disorder. I'm not just talking about someone who will occasionally smoke a joint or smokes a joint or snorts occasionally coke, okay, or has alcohol on weekends. So I really need to reiterate that because I think when you look at psychiatric behavior, we tend to look, people look online and say, my gosh, I have all seven of these, right? And they, they're reading it not quite the way the psychiatric literature is supposed to go. So please, when I'm talking about this, I need you to understand, one, that that's what's going on. As I told you about intimate partner violence, it's horrible that anyone would strike anyone, okay? But again, we're talking about repetitive behaviors for means of control. 
right? So that's real important to understand when you're moving forward. And I may say occasionally substance abuse, but what I'm referring to is substance Objection abuse. beyond the scope of the question. I, I, I don't look at the expression okay. when the objection came in. Dr. Spiegel, could you please just summarize for the jury the conclusions you came to with your opinions, and then we'll take you through the specifics. So in my opinion, based on my re a review of the evidence, based on my clinical experience, based on my publishing experience, based on my teaching experience, that Mr. Depp has behaviors that are consistent with both someone who has a substance use disorder, as well as consistent behaviors for someone who is a perpetrator of intimate partner violence. This is Amber Heard. Thank you. I'm going to start with the impact of drug and alcohol abuse over time. First of all, based upon your review of the record evidence, what type of drugs has Mr. Depp used? So Mr. Depp, and I will get, I'm told about use, we're talking about a substance use disorder here. We're not just talking about use. Okay. So we are talking about alcohol. We are talking about amphetamines. We are talking about marijuana. We are talking about cocaine. We are talking about LSD. We are talking about ecstasy. We are talking about opiates. We are talking about prescription benzodiazepines. We're talking about we'll get into you directly into your veins. The ability of Seroquel yeah. and or Gabapentin in Iran. And we're we'll talking about much of the time concurrent use, meeting simultaneously. The way he talks seems really common. In your practice, do some I'm patients for, suggest like, to you, you that like, drugs like, and alcohol them to be able to say what the jury looks them? like while he's talking to them? Yes. So I think it's patients who lack insight or are in the very early stages of recognizing they have a quote unquote problem will sometimes actually say that they have this medication actually calms me down. This medication makes me feel better. And in actuality, they may not acutely feel anything, but chronic and continual use will take its toll on the brain. So the answer is, Yes, but again, people who have substance use disorders have a very have lack of insight and a lack of judgment about what's going on. They very all have poor, lack of insight and judgment. Uh, moderates of their own behavior. Has Mr. Depp suggested, based on your review of the record evidence, that alcohol and drugs actually help him? In a review of the evidence, he has suggested that alcohol, uh, Xanax, I'm in the list of medications, do help. Although I will also tell you on review of the evidence that there were at least two times I can remember that uh, Mr. Depp was referring to uh, at least short-lived periods of sobriety, and I cannot exactly tell you what that included, that both times he said that he functioned better and that he recognized that alcohol and drugs was at the root of his problems. Now, there have been, there's been testimony that Mr. Depp is quite charming, both off and on the drugs and the alcohol. Elaine, what is how charmed you are by him. So again, let me put one thing clear here. I am not here to impeach Mr. Depp's acting skills or his persona. He has way greater skills than I do in that. What I'm here what? to say is talk about how drugs oh, and alcohol ah. affect what we all have in common. We're all human beings. We can all only get so much, take so much when something is going to happen. I'm sorry. And that's what I see every he's day. Some weird asides that he's adding in. On a consult service, an inpatient psychiatry, bad things happen. Not because of anything special, except we're all human beings and our brain substance of abuse are not titrated. They're not regulated by the FDA. Bad things happen like we you have to know what we're getting. We don't know how much we're getting. There is no control over what makes it to our brain. So it is not the actor. It is not the persona. Okay. It is a person just like the rest of us who are human beings who will have these effects. And that's what we all share in common. Everyone in this courtroom shares that in common. Okay. When Mr. Depp was in his relationship with Amber Heard, was he a poly substance abuser? Was he in what substance abuse? Poly substance. Yes. So Can you explain what own. that is? Oh, overruled. I'm sorry. Okay. Get, go ahead. Okay. So, poly substance abuse is the use of three or more substances. 
and I answer, like I said, concurrently. Um, so Amber was too. He was, even while I was getting ready for rehab on the island, he was. So yes, he did engage in that. Did Mr. Depp's drug and alcohol abuse affect him cognitively? Yes. So if, if nothing else to look at, uh, Dr. Uh, Blaustein, a psychiatrist at Valley, Mr. Depp, uh, did a mini mental state exam on him. And as part of that mini mental state examination, you're asked to remember three words and then come back five minutes later and repeat those three words. And in the meanwhile, you're getting other types of testing for attention and concentration and visual spatial. There's also an language. attention so deficit. Other things that are I was going to say, if he pins this uh, on drug, like there's Mr. so Depp many other things that cause short term memory, any of that be great. And that is very unusual for a 50-ish year old male. I don't remember how old he was when he took that. Um, generally speaking, um, uh, that age group should be remembering two or all three of those Unless words. Unless they have ADHD um, or something else. I fail one, that. I do I know that remember. his uh, lines were also fed to him by earpiece. Uh, again, affecting memory. I did see in deposition, I'm sorry, video deposition about having to have uh, questions. I don't want to say repeat as much as completely forgotten. So the answer is yes. And, and you know, any, again, any one of us who use alcohol and cocaine to that level of degree, and I'm talking about a severe level of substance use disorder, are going to have effects. Is is odd, we saw him testify. Because we days. all have brains that are malaffected by extensive substance use and potentially sometimes less, mm -hmm. but certainly what we're talking about here is extensive. What if any, uh, anything did you, did you observe from the record evidence about Mr. Depp having difficulty focusing his attention span, processing, whether he could function as that. an actor? So Objecting compound. I, it, compound is only oh. if it's overruled. Thank you. So again, in terms of the acting part, we do know that he needed his lines fed to him for movies. Part of that could have been also due to, uh, and I don't know which movie, and please forgive me about that, that he actually confessed he did he a movie entirely wasted. So I imagine it would Especially be harder to do that. Um, yeah. Let him Additionally, go. like That's I said, when I looked at that position, you can tell that the processing we speed a very was reasonable down. explanation for him needing his lines fed to him because he was changing if the script thinking on a daily rate basis. Is down, and I'm not talking about again. I'm getting older. My I'm probably not as sharp as I was at 25. Okay, but I'm talking about it so slow that when we're trying to move on to other questions, we're still trying to answer the original data that's presented to us. But so attention span all of this stuff, is so I don't know very much impaired, and if your attention span is impaired your memory is going to be impaired. It is inescapable that that's going to happen. Uh, so, so all that- There's so many issues with what he's saying. Yeah. That, like the but, jury's able to evaluate it on their the, own because uh, they saw him for several days. The, uh, they were able to, uh, to, to see him with their own eyes. Fortunately for Mr. Depp, I do and see that during like this trial. The only way he would ever have uh, impaired- uh, Cognition has improved some of which will happen if you are sober. Uh, so I commend him on that. Which is not true. But again, I'm specifically referencing the time with Ms. Hearns and Mr. Depp's relationship. So we're talking about that. What, if any, uh, uh, observations from the record evidence did you have about Mr. Depp having alcoholic blackouts or foggy mind? Again, there were reported times where he would be essentially, quote unquote, passed out drunk. You saw pictures of him passed out drunk and not being able to remember what he did, which is, again, if you look at the record evidence, you will see that and this is linking intimate partner violence and substance use together. I know we're going to get to that, which is basically if you have blackouts and you're using alcohol or using cocaine, it's going to be near impossible to remember what happened the night before. I don't think I'm the first person that's ever told you that alcohol can cause blackouts <laughs> and basically alcohol, uh, decreases a brain Nicole, chemical glutamate, which is involved in memory formation. If it blocks that to an extensive degree, 
the individual cannot remember what happened because they didn't have enough time for their brain a great plug to process the memory. We need this brain chemical. So okay. does alcohol blackouts happen every time? So no, of course not. But are they complication of a use disorder? Absolutely, yes. And there was record evidence of that. Dr. Spiegel, you said at one point alcohol and cocaine. Is it possible to have blackouts with alcohol to watch and trial. different He's types expert. of substances? Yes. So uh, my clinical experience, and I'll be, I'll date it back within the last month, uh, we had a patient who was using both, especially cocaine, and she mm -hmm. had these kind of stroke-like lesions around the brain center known as the hippocampus, which is involved in memory formation. So- Objection combined, relevance. She's giving an example. Yeah. Overruled. Combining the two subs together increases the likelihood, even if you don't get what is a major stroke. And again, we think of a major stroke as someone who has speech and difficulties. That's exactly the problem. Difficulties. There's a mm -hmm. lot of different types of stroke that can just affect cognition. They don't necessarily have to have severe movement deficits or severe language deficits. They can solely affect you in terms of your cognitive symptoms and actually known as a vascular neurocognitive disorder. So I, I, you need to understand, that's part of the psychiatric diagnosis. You need to understand that you can have these insults, these lesions, these strokes without demonstrating physical features. And at a minimal, we know that he was using both substances concurrently and in the middle, we know he has cognitive issues that we talked about, or at least had some of them. Thank you, Dr. Spiegel. What, if any, correlation is there between domestic abuse, heavy alcohol abuse, and cognitive disorders? So um, the risk factors, if you would, for intimate partner violence, okay, and there are probably many of them. I don't have time to go over all of them, but the ones in particular, characters in particular, are one, having someone in the relationship who is jealous or suspicious. Two, having someone who has an, a, a higher than average acceptance of violence ideations. Three, someone who has rapid and extreme mood shifts. Four, someone who has limited self-control. One of the roles of cognition, one of the roles of our brain is to prevent inappropriate behaviors and acting out on thoughts. We all get angry at people. That's human. We all get angry at people. We all think things about people. The difference is when our brains are intact and working well, most of us don't act them out, okay? Most of us do not act them out. So that's, part, part, that's because your frontal lobe and other parts of the brain are involved in making sure these negative thoughts don't get acted on, okay? So, when you have the effects of alcohol, okay. acutely, it causes disinhibition, which means you are, by definition, losing control and having rapid mood swings. Two, you are affecting parts of the brain that are involved in what we call social processing clues, cues. So, you no longer can interpret what's in front of you that is, I would say, right or wrong or what I should act on and what I shouldn't act on. So we act on them. Even though sober, and I've seen it in with Mr. Depp's, uh, Depp, uh, Mr. Depp's record evidence, I've seen it clinically, sober, we can contain that. We can contain that. But when you have these mixtures together, knowing, by the way, that about 40 up to 60% of intimate partner violence is, is uh, uh, done under the influence of alcohol and or substance use disorders, okay? Knowing that treating it gets it better, improves, I'm not saying removes it, but improves it. Hearing from Mr. Depp's own uh, text to Dr. Kipper that he was better with that, that things are going better, will show you that given those confluence of factors, given them all lining up the risk factors, combined with something that when any of us, any of us use to a certain amount, if we're novice at it, it'll be a lot less. If we're more experienced, you have more tolerance dependence, it's gonna take a lot more, but inevitably will make us disinhibited and will make us act out and acting out could be done in a lot of different ways in intimate partner violence, okay? With also remembering control is the end game of intimate partner violence. 
So that's how they basically interact in a nutshell. Ms. Bernhardt, I assume you have. I, I have quite a bit more. Let, let's go ahead and take our uh, morning recess, ladies and gentlemen. Just do not okay. discuss the case and don't do any outside research. We'll be back with you. She has quite a bit I'm more. Sorry. 15 okay. minutes. We're just, Number we're one. Taking, like, no, no. We're just taking a break. We got, we got an update from James from court, from the first witness that we saw today. Okay. Uh, okay. He said uh, 20 minutes ago, he said, taking a quick snack break. J9, juror, juror 9 was having none of the orthopedic surgeon, and G8 smiled several times during Camille's cross, not starting off on a good, good foot for Team Amber Heard. So at least two of the jurors are like, nope, nada, nothing. J9. Not All right, let's just take a break till 11. Thank you. Out for uh, Amber Heard. Is J9 I? Is 9 I? I guess. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> okay. If, if they had so, those reactions, so Ian, the what, first what do you remember from, from that juror? Was that somebody who was generally sympathetic from, from what you could see or harder to read? Uh, that's a guy who was openly napping when Amber Heard was, <laughs> you know, when Amber Heard's team was trying to make points. <laughs> he was rolling his eyes at them. He was like, he is 100% done with uh, Amber Heard's team. Okay. Uh, he sat up and listened a little bit when Depp's team was doing things, but I think he's decided this and basically just wishes he could be home now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, and let me get some some questions here. Jadine Verhoek says, "Sorry if I missed the answer to my previous super chat. Will you stream the verdict live? Plus, will court open on the weekend if jury is done in the weekend?" Uh, love you i don't think that they are going to go over the weekend especially since it's a holiday weekend i don't think so some courts will sometimes do that but i think that's only if it's been taking a while they're not going to start off that if way there's someone in jail right i mean like we're talking about we're talking about money between celebrities they're, they're not right gonna go exactly over memorial day i don't think right so um but we will be live streaming we will be i i will be live streaming until we have a verdict so if there's no cameras that are streaming in the courtroom, we still will be live streaming and preparing, waiting for it, getting ready for it. Um, we'll be having all kinds of conversations. Mark Gonsalves says, hey, Alita, what was the name of the book you mentioned in Day 18 Trial Video by Dan Brooks? I meant David Brooks. Um, thank you for asking because it was David Brooks, The Road to Character. It's a really good book. He talks about the difference between resume virtues <clears throat> and eulogy virtues and basically like – like uh, it, it's 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 great. It's great. It's wonderful. Amber Heard should also read it. Um, hi, you, you, sure you sure that wasn't you sure that wasn't uh you sure that wasn't Angels and Demons though? That's no, Dan that was Dan, that's Dan Brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're mixing the two. I thought it was Spaceballs, but you know, hey. Anyway, it's well for Spaceballs is also a good movie. Um, <laughs> Hiya, thanks for your generous super chat. Uh, it says, update, keeping track of their time. AH team has seven hours and, eight, and 10 minutes left. JD's team has 18 hours and eight minutes left. Do they really still have that oh. much time left? Because, wow. Uh, you know, that's an older yeah. super chat, right? I mean, like, oh, that's, that's not really No, this point. just came in. Okay, so that's just came like, in. I, as I was screaming in super chat, I was just screaming clock. Clock. Well, it was interesting for Elaine to say we have a lot more on this. Yeah, I was um, like, witness. do we, though? Because what have you been talking about for the last half hour? Was it... Was anything said in the last half hour? Because if so, I missed it all. Yeah, um, but no, seven. It's, it's yeah. really calling into question whether Johnny Depp is an actual leak. And yeah, guys, yeah. I, again for the Google reviews, please don't, please don't review yeah. bomb any of these people. I, I hate you to see it. You only make whatever time. side you're advancing look worse. Seriously. Yeah. And yes, exactly. To add, there are yes. two famous David Spiegel psychiatrists. So not oh, only you wrong one. should you oh. not do it, you might actually be leaving Google review on the wrong one. So oh, no. in addition to being terrible and something you shouldn't do, you might also yes. not uh, even be doing what you think you're doing. Oh, geez. That's I'm awful. Sure Thank you for pointing that out. For somebody. Yeah. Um, also, <laughs> CD Nighthawk says, I knew I loved you. What's your connection to the Academy? Thank you. Um, well, I actually have had this sweatshirt since like middle school before I knew anybody that went to West Point, but then my brother went. And then that is also how I met Mr. Bites. So um, yes, but a, a few connections to the to to Yisma over there. So uh, yes, West go Point. Army. Yes. Um, okay. Cadencia, Cadencia Viva says, I'm wondering where the leaked content on social media comes from, like Dr. Kipper looking for the fingertip slash Josh Drew's whole testimony. Any thoughts? Josh Drew's whole testimony. I don't know. I, there there could be multiple sources, whether it's one side or another. I'm I'm not sure, but um, I, I I I don't know. Liam M says, question, why were they able to play the plain audio with Jerry Judge if that clip has more than just A.H. and J.D.? Thanks to the panel. That's actually a really good question. I, I hadn't thought about that uh, because you do hear his voice at one point. That I, I wonder if that was a mistake. Johnny's attorneys didn't catch that. I don't know. What do you guys think? 
there was one fight early on that said essentially there's a de minimis voice at one end of the recordings uh, and they let it in. And I wonder if it's that one. Like th there was definitely a, a discussion that was like, I don't know though, because they really focused in on it. They were like, yeah, what did he say there? Oh yeah. Like, like the guy's okay. been thrown up or something, you know, like it was, it was one of those that they ended up seizing on that yeah. seemed more than de minimis. Well, yeah. I I depression, right? If the guy says he's throwing up. He, exception to hearsay, present sense impressions. So why well, but it's not about hearsay because we appear to be operating under a stipulation that says only Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, so we don't fight over the legality of the tapes. Um, yeah. As so to gonna, between yeah. them, sure. Uh, yes, but I, I mean, I think that it appears that, that would that's be one of those that's included. Yeah. 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 I, I, I'm, I I'm guess they had that a separate right. argument about that and decided they didn't care. Yeah. Probably. Probably. Uh, Meryl Vanden Herc says, question one, when would Marilyn Manson trial begin? 22, 23, 24. So generally speaking in California, uh, in, when it comes to a civil trial, um, you have generally one year from the filing is, is, is about where the court will initially set a trial date. Um, if you need to extend it, you can get continuances. That's, that basically means you extend it to get a continuous means you, you push it back, um, based on the, the requirements for discovery to, to get evidence from folks. Um, those, uh, basically so, so my, my guess is a year from this last March, cause he just filed it. Um, but maybe extending from there, I'm not sure. Uh, why is JD testifying again? Because Amber Heard's team wants to for the um, uh, for the purposes of of proving the counterclaims issues, and okay. they're not going to get anything out of him because no. of the attorney client privilege, though. So no. it's a waste of time, in my opinion. It yep. also could be a red herring uh, by by yeah. saying publicly that that's what they're going to do. Yeah. Erica says, "Question FYI, will you explain uh, with uh, why Johnny uh, why is able to testify?" Yep, just talked about that. Uh, Rath G says, do you think the bruise kit from JD's ice cream spilled over pick will be mentioned today? TikTok has been blowing up about it. They've already brought that bit of evidence in. So I don't see them blowing up about it just because TikTok is. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Woohoo. Go army. Um, uh, <laughs> another question here is Jane. You Benjamin. might get a line about it in close. That's as much as we're going to get at this point. Probably. Probably. Uh, Jane Benjamin says, question. Can we assume that all you law two providers have been working is how AH and JD's teams have, have been working on their clients. Wait, what can we, Do we work as we... hard as them? Oh, uh, I mean, I, I've, I've been working hard. <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but, but uh, you know, I, I assume that they've all been working hard too. We um, all represent our clients zealously. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Uniland says, question, Alita, can you tell us what you think about Gone Girl? Thanks for the <laughs> panel for everything. I greatly appreciated Hype and Journey. I will have a, a whole conversation about it at some point. We don't have time during these trial streams, but at some point I will be, maybe when we're talking about jury verdicts, this is when I'll like, we'll, we'll do like a too, full. I, I post more on my channel. We can break it down. Let's we do can, it. We can have some fun with Gone Girl. Yes. Yes. Um, but I, I think, I think maybe when we're, when we're waiting for a jury verdict, I think that's, that's a perfect time to do it. And if, and if the verdict comes in too soon, then I'll do one anyway, when we're just, you know, deciding to hang out. Um, because I think, I think it's, it's a, it was a really good movie. Um, it was great. Um, David Farlow says, can you explain how time management works when either side questions a witness? Is it actual time used or is there a minimum amount consumed regardless? Curious how accurate the recording is. So the recording is done by the, the, the court clerk. So you know that it's being done as, as objectively and fairly as possible. She's she, she or he, um, I, I, I thought it was a woman, but I don't know. Uh, the, the clerk, I'll just say the clerk has been, has been tracking that very meticulously. Um, and in all fairness. So and it's actual time used minute by minute is my understanding. Can I make a rather fun announcement, Alita? Yes, always. So this morning I did a Hangouts and Headlines uh, about an article in The Observer, which basically posited that um, uh, Me Too would be over if we didn't listen to Amber Heard right <laughs> now. And, and we looked at that. We went through the lines. The author reached out to me this morning and said oh. they would like to come on the channel to talk about it. So we've set oh. it up, and she's going to come on. We're going to have a conversation about her article on Thursday morning. So the day before yes. the last primary case of the trial. And uh, yeah, reasonable minds can That's differ. That's super we say cool. I said to her, I said, it's gotta feel hostile. So that is awesome of you. Come on in, I'm gonna give you your piece and absolutely we can we can talk about whatever you like. And so 
Uh, we're going to have somebody from the Guardian over on Thursday morning. So, you know, nice. put that put that in your calendars. It's going to be pretty Well cool. done, Rick. Well done. Yeah, I, awesome. really she cool. to me. I, I remember I'd the walk to credit. invited She's to this like, hangout. I want to come on there. I was like, fantastic. Yeah. I was going to say, reasonable minds are probably going to differ on this one. But uh... <laughs> will I, they I be think, reasonable I, I is another question. <laughs> the trick is chat. It's like, okay, chat. Yeah. We're going we to do this. Yeah. We're going to do it reasonable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. That's that's awesome. Yeah, I All just right, wanted to get... tell folks because I think it, I think it's gonna be pretty cool. I'd love to see the I'd love to see those streams advance to that uh, and have Question more number one. Come out yeah, you been a fault. Let's chill. Yeah, Question yeah. Number... I don't, I don't know if that's gonna be. Will Dr. Stuff. Curry come back? I think Dr. Curry is is expected still to come out come back on rebuttal for sure. Um, Kate Leslie wants to know is the if the case is dismissed, what if anything happens? Sorry, I can't give more. Grad school is expensive. Oh, dude, I mean, this is amazing. I, I don't, don't need, no need. Um, uh, but uh, and yes, I, I completely understand education, higher education, it can get real expensive. Um, I know from experience. Um, if the case is dismissed, what happens? Um, the case just gets dismissed. That's it. That's, bye -bye. that's it. That's all you get. Um, careless. Or Carlos Cuevas. Okay, that's a Lithuanian name. I recognize it. Uh, just a random question before it starts. Uh, Alita, do you have some sort of Lithuanian roots? Taip aš turiu. Labas, Karolė. I saw last week you spoke to a couple people in the chat. Yes, I'm born in California, Lithuanian roots, super proud of it. Went to Lithuanian school on Saturdays, did Lithuanian uh, uh, scouting, folk dancing, all the great stuff uh, in the in the L.A. area. Um, part of the community. So, and yes. correct me if I'm wrong. You also do the fishes, yes, for for Christmas, or you know fishes. you know Lithuanians who did do the fishes. Okay, never mind. I don't wanna, wait, wait, not... wait, uh, what do you mean? What do you mean by it fishes? A, it's a big thing in the Italian community. It's a big thing to do the feast of the seven fishes um, on Christmas Eve, and yeah. Lithuanians are the other you know kind of kind of Catholics who get in on that. Yeah. They often generally yeah, yeah, do yeah, thirteen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, but, we do uh, we do we do the like twelve different fish dishes yeah. on Christmas Eve for the for the twelve apostles. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So, yep. so I remember you and I were commenting on that. We're the only people who eat a bunch of fish on Christmas Eve. So yes. Is, uh, and then for for Easter, I do the Lithuanian style um, um, uh, Easter eggs with the with wax in different colors. Oh yeah, yeah. People yeah. comment on how they look like fireworks. Merguche. Um So yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Fun, fun, fun stuff. Fun little details here and there. Um, let me get some more some more questions here. Um, Alice Potter says, hi, Alita. Uh, question, watching you from France, it seems like we're on the same time zone. From which country state are you streaming? I don't like to say because I don't want to get docs, but I am in Europe is basically what I can say. Um, Layla says, regarding Waldman, even if JD was okay with the statements, if the jury decides they are in fact true, would there still be an issue? Love from Sweden, or Switzerland, Sweden, sorry, Switzerland. Um, I can read, right? <laughs> mm. um, if he was okay with the statements, if the jury decides they are in fact true... Uh, yeah, the, the question is a, a matter of fact for the jury. What did those statements yeah. mean in the article? What is their construction? Yeah. So the, jar, the jury could, uh, they, this is also a win for Amber Heard, they could just interpret them literally on the words they say and just be like the statements literally as they're phrased are literally true. That is a possibility for the jury. Absolutely. So, yeah. Truth is an absolute defense to defamation. Truth is an absolute defense. That is true. <laughs> yeah. It is. It is in fact. Uh, Maxine Hammond says, oh, by the way, hey, Peter, how's it going? Also, congratulations to you, 100,000 subscribers. What's up? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Wild yeah. ride. Yeah. Um, Rick Rick just just hit uh, 100,000 this morning. Nice. And you, hit it, you hit it yesterday. So we've got more and more folks hit, uh, getting into the 100K club. Kurt has got to be next. He's a, he's our last we checked around 80,000. It's a so, wave. It's coming. Yes. I will take yes. a wave. I like yes. the wave. <laughs> and on and on that note, I, I I've got to I've got to mention it, you know, as much as I possibly can. If you guys are enjoying the stream, you're enjoying the commentary, you are enjoying, you know, all of the folks that are that are giving their their commentary, their brains here. Everyone here has a channel, except for the Muffin Man, of course. <laughs> Everyone here has a YouTube channel, including Mark now. Mark, Mark, Mark. He has a channel now. Um, it's called Attractive <laughs> Nuisance. Everyone is linked in the description below. Please do go and check them out. Subscribe to their channels. Check out their content. Like their videos. Watch their videos. All that stuff. It really does help to sort of build up the whole community and to, um, you know, just, just – uh, help show YouTube that we are a community of folks that people are interested in. Um, and uh, it, it, it's, it's just, it's, 
it's good. It's a good thing overall. So these folks are donating their time for us here. Um, and the, the best way that you can, that you can say thank you to them individually is to go and subscribe to their stuff and watch their stuff and, and like the videos and all that, all that great stuff. But you know, Alita, who they should really like and subscribe to, right? There I we mean, go. You know that. There we go. Johnny Depp, you know that's what's who. Right now. <laughs> is it gonna be Our right? morning the stretch. Last week of the trial. This is the last week of the trial, folks. As uh, did you say, stretch, Nurse Liz? That's right. I, I did. I said that's very stretch. healthy. We're gonna do the morning stretch, as Nurse Liz has pointed out, the proper form in which to hit the like and subscribe button for our dear friend Alita uh, here at Legal Bites, who is putting in so much time and effort. I can't believe the hours of the day that her summary updates videos are coming out. I have no idea when she sleeps. She continues to be a robot that lives solely on likes and subscribes. So please do keep that robot fed today because we've got four <laughs> more days of this. And honestly, I think that Amber Heard's team's got a chance of running out of time here. So don't you want to be here to see that when that happens? Uh, so if you do like subscribe to Alita, definitely like and subscribe to everyone else. Uh, yeah. But Alita won't do it for herself. She needs to be helped by all of you and the rest of us because she is the reason that we are all here talking about this trial with y'all. I really hope the judge has a big hockey buzzard so that right. when the time yeah. runs out, they can just go. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, even see. even better, the 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 Academy Awards like shut up music when they start yes. to play. Yes. <laughs> Get off the stage music. Da, 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 da. Except that won't work. They'll have to They're actually just yell at them. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I hope they that don't. That would be appropriate honestly. here. <laughs> I, I, I think they want to reserve at least enough time to at least put the fear of God in, in the depth team rather than just free reign. Uh, so I, I think that they'll they'll try to cut it off early. But yeah, I mean, if the I, judge I, actually has to step in and stop a questioning, that'd be that'd be something. I, I need I need medical help from Nurse Liz. I need to know if it's if it's normal to have a completely sober uh, blackouts because you're so bored. You just you just feel all your sensation moving away, <laughs> and then you come back and you're like, "Wait a second, I've missed time." Is that a normal thing? It's called a coma. Um, okay, <laughs> good. I'm having many comas. That's fantastic news. It's good. It's good. Now, out of curiosity, before we hit the super chats again, so now you've watched two doctors. Elaine has said she's got a lot more for them. Who who here still believes that Johnny Depp is coming to the stand uh, in their in their case in chief? Do, do in we think he's going to believe it? In what can't time? Believe it. It's so stupid. They'll be under they'll be stupid. under the seven hour mark by the time this doctor gets done. I mean, like that's just that will happen. So I think they could ask him three questions. Did you tell Adam Waldman to do it's, this? Did you agree with Adam Waldman? Did you ever tell Adam Waldman to take it down? Yeah. Nothing further, Your Honor. Sit down. No harm, no foul. But they continue on with the. We all know what happened, even if they hide behind these objections. Johnny's team won't have much to cross him on, if anything. So it could be a five or ten minute thing just to put him back up there, but. It's not going to be. It's not going to be some fireworks. Be Mr. Depp, you would never Are use ready for the attorney jury? to organize yes, a jury campaign. Right. Okay, right. sure. Oh, please, anything that doesn't okay. involve him speaking. Anything. Let yes. me uh, talk to the judge. Let me, let me get some more some more tweets here. Sorry, from James. Sorry. No, 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 no. That's okay. So apparently there there was a a a woman that was there in the in the line at four twenty in the morning with her baby. Apparently a newborn baby. Yeah. Um, James James was like, if you're coming to this trial, please do not bring a newborn baby. I, I would agree with that. Also, in a courtroom, I'm sorry, babies can be very, uh, not destructive, but disturbing to the overall. I mean, come on. Disruptive. I know we talk the over them, but like, what I you can do. commit to Babies are never a good idea in a courtroom. Boss. Love babies, disruptive. Wine. Yes, I absolutely adore babies as well. <laughs> They're disruptive I love it when they in any situation, make all kinds not of noises, but not in a courtroom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, also, but the, uh, uh, an update on that. <laughs> So there's an update on that. Uh, an James update on the baby. said six minutes ago, he said, after judge leaves, baby lady from the line gets up and shouts, Johnny, I love you. Our soul's connected. What would you do if this was your baby? Wow. As she pulls up her baby to Johnny. Pro no, I hope wow. she was taken out of the courtroom because that is disruptive no shit. behavior. The UI guy has You're not that supposed she was to address. Out. Yes. Oh my God. She had so to have been. I, 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 she's, yeah. she's gone. Good. Okay, good. Good. Yeah, that that will do it, Johnny. That is I the kind of thing that they are talking connected. about here. Yeah, they're yeah. not about to give her a second try on that. Mm -mm. Uh, oh that's my not god! Just no, you're, down, don't you're not that. supposed to go up to either of them. <laughs> wait, 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 Mark. Let me, let me, let me pull this up here. People who <laughs> bring toddlers to R-rated movies. Oh, is that, is that people are? Is you that, need to I add, feel attacked, Mark. You need to add a card now. Pe people who bring babies to a courtroom. <laughs> babies to court. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, sometimes people have to, sometimes it's but, uh, 
You could have a legal oh. version of I, I Feel oh, Attacked. Here, here's a oh, don't worry, it's Hurt. in development. It's in development. Hurt, what is your legal specialty? Well, my legal specialty is intellectual property, specifically Thank patent you. law. Thank you, Inventions, Dr. Spiegel, before technical we took break, you were talking about science. correlation between domestic right. abuse, Can I just promote it over the muffin? abuse, and cognitive yes. disorders. Sorry, guys. Does the literature the support uh, your, your testimony on this? Yes, the literature fully supports yes, everything Sorry, I just said okay. through that interaction. Thank you. Um, now, you indicated that you reviewed Mr. Depp's video depositions. Is that correct? The yes. ones from November 10 through 12 of 2020 and December 14 of 2021. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Did you reach any conclusions about his cognitive symptoms, insight, and judgment in watching those? So during the uh, video deposition, what was readily apparent was a gentleman who had a significant delay in processing speed. Uh, and like I said, when you have a delay in processing speed, never many other cognitive though. functions are gonna follow. You're going to be impaired attention, concentration, memory, all that's gonna ha happen. In terms of um, uh, having to, uh, the, the, the speech process, if you heard the deposition, the way the thoughts were conveyed were much more in the way of kind of disconnected, disjointed statements. It wasn't that they were not necessarily understandable, but they didn't have any coherent pattern until he was more structured by uh, Ms. Bredehoff to kind of get to the point of the question, which happened throughout most of the deposition. Um, and so you could see there that there was obviously some form of cognitive issue that should not be happening in someone in their mid fifties, and it, probably due to the alcohol. And Why substance. is his cognitive issues? Relevant what if any observations did you make about impulse control, anger, and so, abuse? Okay. Or, yes, or, okay. and, or any and other on the record evidence either. Um, so again, I, I think that under the guise of not being acutely intoxicated. I think Mr. Depp was able to control much of his behavior, much of his thinking, even if it was uh, aberrant or negative, he's able to control that. I think that once you start getting to the point of adding substances to that, that will set it over. Um, if you saw the the video, I think you you all did about the uh, in the. Uh, kitchen where there was smashing of glasses, slamming of cupboards and yelling at Miss Her that you don't exist. Um, and throughout the deposition of uh, Dr. Kipper, uh, Mr. Depp is firing him and rehiring him and yelling and screaming. And I, and I do believe that a lot of it had to do with the interaction of, hey, we're trying to help you get sober. Okay, and it is obviously something you are resisting, not ready for, not wanting, and so you saw a lot of yelling, a lot of uh, a lot of acting out, if you would, which puts you on the state of, hey, this is a gentleman who has really significant trouble with delaying gratification, okay, delaying reward, um, and certainly one way to one way to uh, 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 make that significantly worse is with substances. There's no question about that. And you may have subsumed this in, but what, if anything, did you observe relating to erratic behavior based on the record? Evidence? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, thank again, you so much for the generous talk chat. about erratic behavior. Um, the uh, uh, I, I, uh, D uh, Dr. Kipper's deposition, I believe it was, where it's not redirect um, I, I yet, think I've made particular notice because I'm, yet. I'm a psychiatrist myself. Um, there was a very uh, large ranting about Dr. Cowan, who was Ms. Hearn's um, uh, psychologist therapist. Um, and the, the language, I, I, you can be dissatisfied with your provider. I have no problem with that. You could be dissatisfied and you have the right to go to wherever you want to go to. But the the texting that it were involved in this in terms of erratic behavior um, was 
disturbing in terms of the verbiage used, the, the phrases used. I, I, I'm, Strategy. Am I free to uh, use some of the language, or should I reserve that? Go ahead. I can. The jury, believe me, the jury's been hearing it. Okay. All right. I want to make sure. Jury, I want to make sure. Okay. So it's something along the line that uh, uh, Dr. Kipper is an effing charlatan. Um, he ought to Objection be, hearsay. It was, he's entitled to rely on it and he's to give his examples. He, he can talk about what he uh, developed from the hearsay, but not repeated himself. He's entitled to give examples of it. I'll sustain using... the objection. Uh, without giving the exact words that you recall. Oh, without giving the exact ahead, words? Just, yeah. Okay. Um, so, I mean, without giving the exact words, it was basically vulgar language directed towards Dr. Cowan throughout multiple tests, texts, multiple um, things that Dr. Cowan were doing in, uh, in therapy. Uh, 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 it was, like I say, it was without relaying it, the exact thing I'm trying to be as accurate as I can. Um, and I think at the end of it, I think he was also talking about that Dr. Cowan was filling Amber with positive thoughts or therapeutic- Objection here saying. I think he's keeping it more general. He's, rely, he's entitled to rely on it. Thank you. So more along the line of giving Amber psychiatric uh, 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 jargon to put on him. And, and, and actually, what I read and interpreted what Dr. Cowan uh, was getting blasted for was he was t you know, kind of teaching Amber how to be heard, how to use conflict resolution in a more appropriate manner and learning to express things more rationally rather than express things as irrational as they have been expressed. And, uh, and for that, uh, there were a lot of negativity being sworn at. So again, erratic behavior in terms of writing a text, but I have no problem with people being angry, okay? None whatsoever. It's just the expressing of it and the continual ranting of it is, is, was, was very uncomfortable for me to read. But regardless, I think we have seen in terms of erratic behavior, uh, much of the psychological and the physical uh, maltreatment uh, we talked about. Objection before. beyond the scope of the question. I, I don't agree. Uh, sustain next question. Okay. I don't agree. Mr. Depp is 58 <laughs> years argument. old. Are the behaviors that you have been describing for the jury, are those typical? and age related? No, so, well, I don't consider 58 years old, I'm 59, okay? I will tell you that the age related changes that occur in humans are very, they're very um, erratic, hit and miss, meaning they'll occasionally bear, be there. You may need a little bit more time to answer a question or pull things out of memory. Just, you're just a little bit slow and a lot more inconsistently slow. Um, you wouldn't describe what uh, Dr. Blaustein's changes were or what I saw on the deposition attributed to age. Could you imagine this guy at a party? Dr. Spiegel, what is Seroquel? Seroquel or uh, quetiapine is an, actually an atypical antipsychotic, which is indicated for many things, including schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, uh, adjunctive treatment for major depression. So it's indicated for a lot of things. And but what what uh, what effects may it have? I and mean, this is this is one of the drugs that that Mr. Depp was taking. Yes. correct? it was a prescribed drug. Yes. Okay. So what? what yeah. Please explain. So the effect that. of Seroquel is, is is it's very often used as a sleeping agent uh, because it doesn't have a lot of the side effects that are associated with conventional antipsychotics, movement disorders, tired dyskinesia, et cetera. Or at least it's a very low risk of that. So. Uh, people have used it off-label. Physicians have used it off-label to help them sleep. The problem is the effect is very barbiturate-like, and it really knocks people out, or certainly if you use it at high enough doses, it can, okay? And the problem is, the problem is it also has street value. So it's absolutely used on the street for that downer-like effect. And obviously it's a little bit more readily available because it's prescribed. Um, so it 
So it does have that street value portion. And, and Dr. Spiegel, what effect would this have on Mr. Depp based on the dosages he was taking? So I think what you're looking at is a- Objection a, speculation. Overruled. Please continue. What you will see in patients who have substance use disorders are people who unfortunately kind of wake up and fall asleep only through pharmacological assistance, meaning that their own circadian rhythms are no longer in control of that behavior. So you will take stimulants to quote unquote, get you up in the morning, and then you will take things like quetiapine, Seroquel to knock you out. So basically what these are being used for is, I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna get knocked out. And that's very characteristic of what would be actually legal prescribed substances. That's not illegal at all. That's very legal. Um, and that's the seemingly these, what these medicines affect are on patients of substance use disorder. Dr. Spiegel, what is neurotin? So neurotin uh is actually an anti-seizure medicine, which it's, I think is in, it's, uh, it's indicated for seizures and it might be indicated for one chronic pain condition, although I can't swear that to you. That said, that said, again, in a substance use disorder population, it has significant street value and people who misuse opiates often supplement that with neuron because it has this anti-pain calming effect. So unfortunately, it also can cause respiratory suppression. And so when you use it with opiates, they're very, there are uh, people that are lucky enough to succumb to respiratory suppression as a result, but it has a very additive calming effect that people use it for. Anna S., and thank you for the very generous would this super chat. What have on Mr. Depp and the dosage he was taking? Again, I'm still waiting for him to judge it. Okay, again, what it would do is have the street value of using it with the opiates. The advantage is you're using with opiates and it's making, because opiates in general, despite everything else it does, are calming. And you use it with it, it offers further calming, which is why doctors have been warned not to prescribe medications like gabapentin and opiates together unless under significant strict following because it can cause serious problems, such as death, respiratory I suppression. And Mr. Depp was also taking Adderall, correct? Yes. Can you please describe to the jury what that impact would have and particularly in connection with the dosages? So Adderall is a psychostimulant, which is prescribed relatively regularly for uh, ADHD. <clears throat> um, the problem comes again when you're, you're you sh shouldn't be prescribing or receiving Adderall when you're already using misusing cocaine. Okay, you're now doubling your stimulant dosage here. And basically what you are talking about, again, it comes down to in the substance use disorder population, you are using it to stay awake, have energy, keep yourself going, getting high, getting energetic. And then the only way to kind of combat that because you have this effect is to kind of take down it during the day and down as being anything that's calming. So anywhere from opiates prescription, anywhere from new rotten, anywhere from Seroquel, all medications that are potentially, not potentially, which are infusible. And so that's what this is going on. That's what the substance use disorder patient has. And you, you know, it can't be given with someone using cocaine because that's an extreme risk for, for death. It can't be given together. And what, if any, effect would these drugs have if they were mixed with MDMA or cocaine? So when you combine the two together, like I talked about before, there are effects where you are looking at, right, the, the, the predisposing traits of intimate partner violence. So jealousy, rapid mood changes, poor self-control, and to some degree, and to some degree, condoning violence to a certain degree. Um, when you combine them all together, you get this disinhibiting euphoria effect from 
cocaine and Adderall. Then when you combine the two together, what happens? You get too much and then you start getting irritable. You start getting agitated. Okay. You start becoming suspicious, jealous, potentially uh, disinhibited, psychotic, and these are the risks. And again, we're talking about not your average everyday use of these substances. We are talking about chronic use together. And we also know that alcohol and cocaine use independently increase significantly the risk of intimate partner violence. These aren't statistics I'm coming up with. They all depend anywhere from reports up to seven to 27 fold. So you are quote unquote colloquially playing with fire when you're talking about substances and intimate partner violence. You are playing with fire. And, and that's all of us. And the substances that Mr. Depp was taking and the record evidence relating to those, um, did you draw any conclusions concerning uh, whether he met these this criteria or these risk factors? So in terms of substance use disorder, when you, when you look at it, um, so major role obligations not being fulfilled, don't have any evidence about operating under the influence or not. Keel Brown, thank you for the generous uh, social chat. Social issues, we'll address especially it later. disagreements and arguments with your spouse or family. Obviously, there was tolerance and dependence for the amount he was using, because if anyone is naive to this, these medications, most of us would be dead. Uh, unsuccessful efforts, difficulty cutting back, using more than intended, giving up social uh, occupational obligations because this, I know it was part of, in, right after the rehab on the island in Australia, we, we, Mr. Deb went out partying with Marilyn uh, Manson. Um, oh, boogeyman. Objection beyond Bingo. the scope of the question. Actually, boogeyman for the day. Record Got him in. Um, okay. What other record evidence did okay. you have supporting um, this? So, uh, psychological using despite the fact you know it causes known psychological psychiatric or medical effects and i think that's been pretty well documented so in this case you're talking about someone who has a severe substance use disorder i, I do want to emphasize uh ladies and gentlemen the jury that intimate partner violence and substance use disorders are two scourges in this country they are two plagues this is very serious stuff we're playing with and when you are just getting someone closer and closer to the threshold. Objection, Your Honor. Relevance. This is highly relevant. Uh, I'll overrule as to relevance. It's beyond the scope. Go ahead. Beyond the scope of the question? Yes. All right, I'll sustain that. All right. Um, to tell me more <laughs> about the relationship like signaling, like substance that's abuse not the basis, but I'll but sustain it. Yeah, so again, that Objection you are talking about this, annoying. and you are, you may be able to control the risk factors for IT, uh, any of us may be able to control the risk factors for IPV. Any of us might be able to, okay? When we're thinking and we're not disinhibited, not having these hyper intense emotions from substances. Once you add that to this mix, you, your brain can no longer do what it's supposed to do. And it's supposed to prevent Just you do in the chat. from this doing this, direct. quite frankly, because it's wrong. Still. Did you arrive at any conclusions concerning substance abuse and potential self-harm that may have led to Mr. Depp injuring his finger? So I think the physician uh, before me uh, explained that pretty well, but I'll tell you that Mr. Depp has a history of self-injurious behavior, meaning cutting himself. Mr. Depp has a history of burning himself does he? Um, well, that's according I know to Amber. When only. the actual event happened, there was uh, texting to Dr. Kipper, paraphrasing, not saying exactly, that Amber and him got into a disagreement related to her wanting him to be sober. And then as a result of that, he said he got so angry, he, uh, he cut the tip of his finger off. So if you're asking me, can someone who has or have I seen and can someone who cuts themselves, burns themselves, can cut a tip of their finger off with or without alcohol or cocaine or the rest? The answer is objection yeah. beyond the scope of the question. That's a hell of a lot of assumptions, isn't it? Thank you. Yep. <laughs>
Please continue. Was it overruled? Big it problem was overruled. Oh, okay. That um, is a conclusion so off of what Amber said. Big that, problem. That is not a very far jump. I've certainly seen patients do a lot worse than that who started out with similar risk factors. This is such an improper cell result. and cutting cell. I'm not going to get into the descriptions, but I improper conclusion. Worse than that. Yes. So the answer is yes. Agreed. Okay. I'm going to turn now specifically to intimate partner violence, and I know you've you've talked certainly about it. Um, but can you tell the jury, please, uh, a little bit more about intimate partner violence and and I thought their first witness basically established that he didn't cut his own finger so, off. Uh, <laughs> the APA task force yep. on violence in the family. They don't even have a consistent theory. It's more or less this topic so of domestic abuse, in, intimate team. partner violence, as recurrent abusive behavior by means of psychological, sexual, or physical maltreatment for the purpose of achieving control or maintaining power, authority, and control. Can it include threats and intimidation? It includes, so in the part of psychological like a knife? abuse, which is done essentially as a means of emotionally and mentally hurting someone, but with the same end goal to achieve control, it can be uh, destroying property. It can be financial, which is part of that. Verbal abuse, verbal outburst, I'm sorry. Um, sorry, it's just English. Threats, intimidation, body language, all of that goes under the concept of psychological abuse. And you may be able to divide it verbal, nonverbal, what's right. exactly emotional like, versus verbal, but they're all under that rubric and they're all under the guise of maintaining control. Do survivors of intimate partner violence experience mental health issues? Can you repeat the question? Do survivors of intimate partner violence experience mental health issues? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So survivors of uh, intimate partner violence. And by the way, I should start out by saying we don't expect in psychiatry, we don't expect our victims to be perfect. We don't expect our victims like that article, to be unscathed Rick. by what they Oh, received. they're cribbing off the so, net. starting with that, okay, it is not unusual as survivors to see substance use substance abuse, substance-induced symptoms, chronic depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, or sub-syndromal sub post-traumatic stress disorder along the lines of Banner Wise syndrome, and some emotional unpredictability. Um, that's, and again, you are a victim here. You are a victim. Do perpetrators typically seek treatment or counseling? No, perpetrators are, are not receiving counseling uh, treatment. One, because they're going to be probably having to tell someone that they actually struck someone, which is what their thought is about the big problem that it's a part of violence, just hitting, again, important, but not the sole part of it. So perpetrators very rarely will go into uh, any type of formal counseling. Victims go into counseling. Victims are seeking actually couples counseling. Victims are seeking couples advice to try to repair what's happening, okay? But in terms of actual perpetrators, no, they don't do that. In your review of this case, is there record evidence of physical violence by Mr. Depp? So- Objection, Your Honor. Uh, no foundation. Do you like question? Yeah, this is so problematic because what he's trying to say is Johnny has done a lot of drugs in the past and therefore his memory is bad. He's never he's never actually talked to him personally. He's never evaluated him personally. And yet the jury got to spend several days with them themselves. They've been able to see, does his story corroborate with other witnesses? Does his story corroborate with other documents? Does his, like, ha, like they've been able to evaluate that. So what they're trying to do is to put this, this expert on the stand to be like, like, no, his memory is bad because he's done so many drugs in the past. 
and like therefore you can't trust his memory which of course that's that's been the whole point of johnny johnny's always drunk and does drugs all the time that's always been the point of what the, why, why they're trying to have a swim in the, in the drugs and alcohol that he's been doing for a long time which arguably yeah like everyone agrees at this point it's it's a it's a non-issue but the jury's able to evaluate on their own right now as to whether or not they think that he's credible as to his memory so they're 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 really bending over backwards here to try to like get this in through some expert. I don't think it's going to do what they want it to do. No, and they'll be an hour worse for wear for it. Yep. Yeah. I yeah, I mean I I agree. Like I mean like I understand what they're supposed to have called him for and he's kind of talking about this now. He's like trying to talk about the link between, you know, kind of imperfect domestic violence victims or IPV victims. Like that is something that you might call an expert for, you know, and in this trial you can, but yeah, the whole talking about his memory issues when he was on the stand for days, it just seemed, yeah, you're right. Later that it seems like they're trying to like get it in, you know, and like remind people, but it's, you know, yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. know, man. I don't know, it's, man. It's, it's I just want to hear that hockey place. buzzer. <laughs> I, I, I want it to be the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Oscars music. <laughs> Just a I, giant air horn. Stage music. That's what I really want. That would be that would be most appropriate in this case. <laughs> the hypothetical generalizing really bothers me, and I don't know whether that's yes. just me or whether that'll have yeah. a juror yes. juror say that also. But it's like, but as a as a professional, I have an issue too with the fact that he's saying yes. You will like this is this is what will happen in a case with a victim that has you know PTSD issues or whatever following it. It's like, as a professional, I feel like what I would expect him to say is, is there is a reasonable possibility. This is the likelihood. This is the statistical possibility. This is what I've seen in my practice very often. Like that's the kind of language that I would expect to say, but like he's, he's using some very broad and strong, hard conclusions to say like, this is what happens when you have somebody that does drugs and they have memory issues. Therefore they have memory issues. This is what happens when you have somebody that goes through IPV and therefore they have trauma issues. Yeah. Yes, and and probably in in the vast majority of cases, probably. But he's to me the language that he's using goes too hard for me to be like, okay, I will go go along with you like down this road. I I see what you're saying. I think I mean I don't know if I 100 percent agree on on that that portion, but I certainly think that his own language, how he couches things, and how he speaks, is like undercutting his own potential. Let's assume he is an expert. Arguendo, this man is actually an expert. He knows exactly what he's talking about. The way he's talking about it makes it makes people not want to believe him. <laughs> you know? like, yeah. yeah, I don't really. Yeah, I don't really question his knowledge base as much as I I uh, question the way he's wielding it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Yes. And I think one I, of the super chats. Oh, go ahead. I think this is a general problem. We let experts get away with way too much, in that we say, "Oh, you're an expert," and then we just let them. Do whatever. We saw this with the social media guy where it's like, Ugh. I am, you know, big on Unix. And so let me just bullshit some crap up about stats that was completely inappropriate for his area of expertise. Um, we see it. I see it in criminal courts here where they have these, uh, you know, drug trafficking experts who basically are just police officers here to tell you that the guy was totally trafficking drugs because the police thought so. And right. like a lot of this stuff has no scientific merit to it. It's just, we brought this guy up to have an opinion and we're going to sort of gussy it up with this guy seems real smart, doesn't he? And this is his <laughs> notion. Like we You're need to wrong. actually start confining experts to some area of scientific expertise and, you know, not just, Hey, these are my feelings on things. And I really, this seems to be really into well, this is totally, you know, how I think it happened. You know, he's basically playing playing juror here. Yeah. And I think that's a real, I got an well, issue with that. I'm only going to push back slightly because I agree with you for the most part that we do not rein in experts half as much as they should. If But is this guy using scientific data to back up that when uh, that people who are victims of IPV often suffer post-traumatic stress some sort of post-traumatic stress related to that and often abuse drugs as related to that, that is true yeah you know I like the problem said, with that said often when... i would i would agree on that if he said often but he's not he's, he's using much yeah. much so, stronger language that's the problem that i have with it what I have you reviewed that Thanks. correlates with 
the risk factors for IPV that Mr. De related to Mr. Depp? So risk factor review that correlated. Uh, so starting uh, with the, I guess we'll start with the physical because that was the question that was put out there. What I have reviewed has demonstrated uh, pushing, shoving, uh, grabbing. Objection, Your Honor. Let me, let me see if I can direct this a little differently, Dr. Spiegel. Um, rather than giving the summary of what that was, what did you review that correlates? In other words, did you review witness statements? Did oh, you okay, review okay. depositions, so what, uh, photos? Yes. So what I reviewed was in terms of uh, um, uh, witness statements, Dr. Kipper's, notes very very interestingly actually early on in the in, i think it was 2012 or around that time circa 2012 2014 uh miss heard was uh it shouldn't be on the scope of the question what he reviewed is the question all right let's uh let's so i viewed oh, just the so ms heard's objection there's no question if, pending if he's he's okay. answering go ahead and answer what you reviewed Please continue with what you reviewed. Therapists' notes, counselors' notes, text messages, depositions, video, uh, pictures, um, psychologists' notes and evaluations, uh, and I said, I said physicians' notes that's what i reviewed all right now you've indicated that uh intimate partner violence includes physical violence sexual abuse and psychological aggression can you please describe for the jury what psychological aggression is and what it entails so i said psychological aggression would be the engaging in behavior but the sole purpose of emotionally and or mentally harming someone with the main purpose of, again, to maintain and control. So behaviors that can occur with psychological aggression include uh, insults, intimidation, um, by holding things financially against someone, um, uh, jealousy rants, um, property destruction. So all that is involved uh, a nonverbal communication. So threatening looks, glances, things like that. All that is involved in okay. psychological maltreatment and intimate partner violence. What if any, uh, what if anything would be psychological aggression if it was trying to control somebody's career? Would that be a factor? Yeah, so Section leading. So yeah, trying to so, trying to control someone here that would be and under the financial. Super chat. The trying to uh, to uh, mistreat someone, uh, especially you know someone who wants to succeed uh, and trying to have a career, and you're preventing them from doing so by maltreatment. That's another example. Okay. So I'm going to ask specifically about the risk factors for intimate partner violence. Is substance abuse a risk factor for intimate partner violence? Yes, it is a risk factor as well as a precipitating cause. And what uh, record evidence did you review that correlates to Mr. Depp engaging in substance abuse? So the record evidence of, I'll just start with Dr. Kipper and uh, the substances that Mr. Depp was using and misusing both in terms of prescribed and on urine drug screen were uh, brought out through that. Okay. Uh, is lack of behavioral control and impulsiveness risk factors for intimate partner violence? Yes, they are. Okay. Um, and what, if any, uh, record evidence were you aware of that Mr. Depp had lack, ex exhibited lack of behavioral control and impulsiveness? Uh, again, threatening. Uh, Objection. Record evidence. 
the correlates with, and I'm on the risk oh, factors overruled. at this point. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, threatening, um, um, uh, destroying furniture, property, breaking things, uh, writings on uh, walls, mirrors, um, writing in blood on furniture, um, all that would be go with, with that. Okay, all right. Um, and what if any risk factor is narcissism for intimate partner violence? So a patient, before we get into narcissistic personality traits or disorder, the overall, let's categorize under what's called cluster B personality. Objection, disorder. Your Honor, beyond the scope of the question. He's explaining the narcissism. Well, I'll sustain the objection. If okay. You ask Can you explain to the jury what's involved with narcissism as it relates to the risk factors of intimate partner violence and so what that realm is? So narcissism patients have, again, poor self-control, okay, rapid mood shifts, okay, as a result, they they have an undue Is sense the of South Park? Okay. admiration. They worship power. They worship control. Um, they are they have lack of empathy, and people are generally kept around as long as they're useful to them. Um, a, a large sense of entitlement. Um, anything else? Uh, Need, need, for, need for need for praise, so that would go under narcissistic personality and, and IPV. What if any uh, uh, require? What if any traits would be yeah, requiring yeah. admiration? Would that fit into it? Yeah, oh yes, I'm requiring admiration. Need to be admired part and parcel of uh, narcissistic personality disorder. Yes. Would would being envious fit within that? Yes. Fragile self esteem. Yes. Like and uh, what, if any, record evidence do you have that correlates with Mr. Depp uh, being narcissistic? Sounds like every celebrity. Well, I do think that the fact that he thought that Amber owed him, Ms. Heard owed him. Objection, Your Honor. Speculation. Thank you. Go ahead. The fact that Ms. Heard owed him and only wanted to be together with him because of his fame uh, is an example of that. Um, I do think the jealousy aspects are uh, an example of that. Um, I do think, you know, uh, as I think Mr. Uh, Mr. Tillett had testified that, you know, being admired is one thing, but then behind your back saying something else about people is another thing. Um, and I can probably say with a reasonable certainty that to some degree, this whole trial is that. Objection, Your Honor. Whoa, well, that is way me? out of bounds. That's are you not kidding me, sir? Record evidence. That's <laughs> way, way out <laughs> of bounds. Continue. That this whole trial so in terms far. of narcissism, narcissistic insult is what's going on. I believe. Would that, you say uh, he's so vain? Mr. Depp, Doctor. was very much a mainstay <laughs> appropriately in, in, in Hollywood. And then this was pulled the rug without. Objection, Your Honor. Can I we think be able to explain uh, what he sustained that? Man, I kind of love this answer. Can this is hilarious. By this whole trial. Yeah, this proceeding would go, yeah. the, this court yeah, case would go. Hey, this is a super approach, chat sir. described this guy as human chloroform. I think he's more like human mace. My God in heaven. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Nikes. I'm sorry, but that is like. Uh, Did you see his expression? He filed right a lawsuit? Oh, she does look like Colonel Sanders today. You guys are right. I, oh. I, didn't, I didn't catch a glimpse of her yet. I I've been seeing a lot in tie. super chats and stuff. I really love that style tie. Not necessarily oh, on her, but in general. I almost, yeah, I almost yeah. wore it to my wedding, actually. Oh, what well, other was, that was, that was conduct there. is in the record evidence that correlates uh, with Mr. Uh, Depp having being narcissistic, having those traits? Was the thing about the trial rule? I can't yeah, speak. Yeah, you're, right. you're, you're not allowed to say not that. Not to say that. Yes. Okay. Um, yes, it's, dumbass. It's so inappropriate. The only thing about like... narcissism, I think, in terms of the trial would be in order to maintain any sense of control, 
a, a narcissistic person really has to have this is so lack inappropriate of because in order to engage in behaviors that quote unquote are used to keep individuals in control you don't really think about the other person you're not really caring what happens to that other person so i think that's another facet i think his credibility so is just shot are attitudes accepting or justifying intimate partner violence a risk factor for intimate partner violence? Yes. Um, do some perpetrators in intimate partner violence try to minimize the IPV? Yes. So it is unfortunately not uncommon, especially during especially during the calm phases of the abuse cycle where punch there's you. no I increased you. tension, there's no acting out. Okay, you are talking about more of the honeymoon, apologetic phase, begging for forgiveness, telling them how you're gonna change, maybe giving them gifts. And then when the dust settles later in the day, a day or two later, it is not uncommon for the perpetrator to kind of switch the blame over to the victim, saying that, hey, you know, this either denial, this never actually happened and trying to make me look bad, or a allopathic defense where um, you instigated it, or an altruistic effect where I'm doing it for you, transformative effect that society kind of accepts this. So it is very uncommon for all of a sudden for that to start shifting during that time, because it is during the calm phase and everything is, is relatively calm. This of course is when the victim wants to engage in, in treatment. But beyond that, uh, the ability to kind of quote unquote, for lack of a better phrase, win people over, family, friends, uh, the law. I mean, the very ability to do that is part and parcel law. of that calm about that? charming phase where it looks like the victim is you know they're, just they're saying they're more than willing to engage talk to the police um, talk to the whatever and is when victim things are blaming uh, a characteristic charismatic yes like i said okay, i mean to okay. blame the victim I that guess. one of the defenses are the yeah i mean i'm not saying it's great but that uh, defense yeah uh, comes along yeah, okay, with yeah. no thank, thank you that's what the sense you're doing i'm blaming you for what you made me do and is there record evidence that you reviewed uh, that correlates with Mr. Depp engaging in this type of behavior? So uh, I think for a lot of the issues seen, the big precipitant was going to be the need for sobriety. Coming again, coming back to that severe subjection, you're utter non responsive. I, I think he's trying to explain it. Thank you. Please continue this severe substance use disorder and many of their arguments but what i reviewed in the record stemmed around ms hurd's desire for mr depp to maintain sobriety and that what was happening so as a result she was blamed for you know bothering him in a way he didn't want to be bothered and triggered what was going on are you familiar with the term gaslighting um i'm familiar with the term gaslighting okay yes it, i what am if any what we're trying to do to the jury right now uh, is consistent <laughs> with intimate partner violence and the risk factors so again when you start being able to be when a person starts to be able to be manipulative and charming you start to be able to win people over and especially when you see someone who's a victim who is essentially vulnerable emotionally uh emotionally uh labile okay you see that person and then you see this calm demeanor in front of you who is very charming very engaging very personable and then all of a sudden it starts looking like the victim is just a a was essentially losing it and i.e. they make their being gaslighted. Is, is there examples where an liability. intimate partner, uh, violent okay. uh, perpetrator uh, claims that the victim is the person who's actually committing the abuse? Yeah, oh yes, oh yes. 
How common is that? That's very common. Again, that's part of the, that is very common in the occurrence of the, like the, the, the um, honeymoon phase, like a lot of this could the calm period them. of the abuse cycle. Very common during that time where the victim, where they're shifting the blame or anything along that line. That's very common for that to happen. And you indicated that you reviewed some audio tapes in this case, correct? Yes. And, and what, if any, evidence did you review there that correlates with Mr. Depp attempting to claim that Amber was the one? Well, I think that was what was said, that Amber uh, was the abuser. Objection, Your Honor. I don't understand the objection. What record evidence? Yeah, overruled. Thank you. Please, please continue. So that claiming that uh, Amber was uh, the abuser in this particular scenario. And what, what I will reiterate again facts. is that one, victims aren't perfect. And two, it is not uncommon in the context of being a victim when you know that person is about to proceed or relapse into a substance or going to a substance and anticipating what's going to happen that you anticipate the next mood and start initiating self-defense. But by and large, that's not what's going on here. By and large, Mr. Depp, behavior. Objection, Your Honor. Behavior was uh, consistent. There's an objection, sir. Oh, sorry. I'll sustain the objection. Okay, yes. All right, we can, we can move on to the next one. Is prior victimhood of abuse a risk factor? For intimate partner violence. Yes. And also, so, go ahead. There is something known as intergenerational theory of violence, which is basically along the line of uh, observation, imitation, and reinforcement. So you observe a behavior that occurred in childhood, you imitate it when you see that there's no significant negative consequences, but you do get the positive consequence of maintaining control of a situation, solving the conflict in your way, if you would. So that theory is, interestingly, it's, it's, it applies to not only the victims, I'm sorry, not only the perpetrators, but also the victims, because there are many victims who grow up in a house of abuse that are not abused, but they're the victims of abuse. What are the warning signs of intimate partner violence? So, Warning signs would be increasing the tension, escalations of tension. So that's when you start seeing, hey, partners getting angry, okay, starting to starting to break down the communication. Honest, she said to testify. Starting to engage in verbal, nonverbal threats. Victim concedes due to this tension. And that leads you to the actual act. So these acts progressively build and then they occur. The more he's talking, what the if more anything, the cross is just like gets more and more have pointed. Have you seen it's an intimate so partner violence about apologies them. and promises? Yes. So again, the apology is part and parcel of the honeymoon phase and promises are part and parcel of the honeymoon phase. And, you know, the victim wants to believe it's going to work. They want to believe their spouse is going to be faithful to this. And as part of the abuse cycle, um, it ends up, the, as I should say, in the, in the calming cycle, like I said, the victim tries to get some help to try to resolve this until the tension buildup phase where something bothers them. So again, it could be... Um, bothering someone about substance abuse. It can be bothering someone about finance. It can be bothering something about your career. Anything is liable to build up tension when you have this framework of limited self-control and erratic, intense mood shifts. So what, if any, record evidence did you review that reflected Mr. Depp engaging in these warning signs, including the apologies and the promises? I think it's, that was almost routine, that after it was all said and done, that he would apologize uh, for letting this monster out, letting this anger out. 
uh, almost routinely. Um, and there's very well record evidence of that starting as early, early on in the marriage uh, in, in one of the therapy from his herd. So um, that's, that's very common and very much occurred, recognizing what happened. And the other part of this is, again, when you can recognize that when you're sober, even short-lived sobriety, when you could recognize that, that things are better, things are happening better, life is better, then even that should show you that, hey, there's an issue here. There are issues here that when I don't use can be resolved. Thank you, Dr. Spiegel. I'm going to now move to the Goldwater Rule. Can you explain the Goldwater Rule, please? Uh, so the Goldwater Rule is when Senator Goldwater was running for presidency. And I, I'm going to be honest with you, I think it was in the late 60s when he was, early 70s, because I was too young to even follow politics then. So I, please don't call me. <laughs> I'm not that old, exactly guys. Not that old. Um, okay. But basically what's happening is... Um, Clinicians, psychiatrists were making these quote unquote armchair diagnoses from their homes or offices because they saw this person on TV, the way they acted, and were asked to comment about what they think their diagnoses are. And therefore, it was felt that that should not be done by professionals in these public settings. It, does it have any applicability here? No. Objection. Not. Why not? No foundation. He was explaining what the gold water you want to approach. He's going to try to say, even though I've never seen him and 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 right. you know talk to him personally, that I am fully able to to diagnose him here. That's what he's going to. But how did they not? Yep. That's what he's going to try to say. How did they not set the foundation for that question though? Like I totally, yeah, that's definitely the direction they're going. Uh, I, don't, I don't really see a good foundation objection there, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually while we're up here. So this is something I've been thinking about. Um, I think we all seem to agree on this panel that the more this guy talks, it, it's not helping his credibility. Right. If he were yeah. shorter, he probably would have been. But Johnny's team has been objecting fairly regularly and being kind of overruled every time. So they yeah. must be going after a strategy, or they, they don't think running out the clock for speaking, one. Yeah, I that's think, fair. That's fair. Yeah, I think that's one. That's one thing they're trying to do here. Their objections on merit have been terrible today. Yeah, yes. they have. Um, yeah. But, and also, why even break up his rhythm? Because just he just keeps rambling, and don't they just want him to keep rambling? I I you think know? I think that it's not just breaking up his rhythm; it's also breaking up Elaine's rhythm because she okay. doesn't do well with objections. Yeah, that's she true. does not. So, so it's the more that you can interrupt her and, and bungle her up, she already is not good on time as it is. And then on top of that, when she's being objected to, she's especially not good on time. Yeah, okay. well, They're not so, going to rest before sense. lunch, it doesn't look like, obviously. No. So it's like, nope. that's, I Dr. thought. Dr. Spiegel, do you remember the question? Does the cold the water rule have any applicability oh. so, here to your testimony and your conclusions and opinions? Uh, no, it does not. And why? Multiple reasons. One. Uh, the basics of expert witness testimony would almost be thrown away if you are not allowed to base things on what you evaluated of an individual, what you've read about an individual. I so wouldn't be I'm allowed to allowed cash to this check if it were a violation of the rule. Records, or <laughs> charts, or information that I look that expert witness testimony can't be done. But more specifically for this case, um, in the Goldwater rule, the pure version of it was the armchair diagnosis of watching someone on TV. Just you don't make a diagnosis. More recently, I think that's even more recent. We've had examples of that. So you don't make diagnoses like that. Um, this is not the case here because I, like I said to you at the beginning, I have reviewed a lot of professional, uh, a lot of professionals and their evaluations and their treatment course. Uh, Video They're deposition, picture bullshit, deposition, though. court filings, uh, emails. I mean, I reviewed a whole lot of things that directly describe uh, Mr. I thought Depp hand and surgeon was behavior. much more palatable. So I'm not commenting on Thank a public opinion, and I have absolutely no knowledge of of uh, 
what's in Mr. Depp's history. Um, if I was just doing that, it would be like watching a movie. I, I, that's not relevant here. And in fact, I think you testified earlier, you invited Mr. Depp to- Oh, yeah. Give it again. Exactly. Objection Depp. leading. Uh, overruled. Thank so you. To, to be fair, uh, for an evaluation from my own direct evaluation, again, I was offered twice that I can do an evaluation of Mr. Depp directly. And both times, Mr. Depp and or his lawyers decided that that was going to happen. Was it not clear then? So, and, and in fact, the court did not require Mr. Depp to. No, and the court did not require Mr. Depp to undergo this evaluation. That was okay. actually nice, Elaine. Dr. Spiegel, these opinions yeah, that you have yeah. offered here, do you hold them to within a reasonable degree of medical and psychiatric probability or certainty? Absolutely. Thank you. All right, cross-examination. Thank you, Good Mr. Luck. Dennison. Dennison. Yeah, he's... They could so much literally say, you said narcissistic personality disorder and uh, sure, I'm has Wayne this Dennison. trait. Yes. Uh, we have a map. <laughs> but you could do Let that. Let me ask Absolutely. you, let's start with what you finished with. I'm sorry, one more time? Let's start with what you finished with. You understand that the court was twice asked by Ms. Hurd's counsel to order a medical exam of Mr. Depp, and those motions were denied. Well, I think the the your team told the court you didn't want to have them, and the court ruled on them. Right? I don't think the court proactively did. You kind of had a motion to them, right? No. When I can't believe they're allowing this. Heard's yeah. lawyers moved for them <laughs> and asked for them and did not get them. Is so, that right, sir? If if you're saying that's what happened, my understanding of was that you, you all did not want him to ha undergo one. That they is petition not... for it. The court said no. Yes, that's what my understanding of it was. The court said what is no happening? to ordering Mr. Depp. This is so, to do oh my gosh. The this is a bad exam. question by Dennis. Right. That's, that's yeah, what did not require, right? This. And Dennis there was, was one that was ordered, in fact, right? Yeah, he is. He's not the best. There was. Class. I, I don't know why they keep bringing right. him in. Objection. Did what the hell? Did, did Elaine object <laughs> there? She, she wasn't using her mic. She doesn't ever use her Ask, Asking a witness what happened in behind Sorry. the scenes, like motion ruling. I phrased that wrong. <laughs> uh, what right. if so, anything the hell? The last thing you <laughs> talked about uh, was the Goldwater rule. It's like we're playing Jeopardy. Yes, sir. Been around for almost 50 years, right? Yeah, I love that. Uh, yeah, I'm 59. That sounds about right. Yeah. Why does he keep and saying it's been that he's around 59? I don't think, I think that I'm 59, but I'm actually 59. The presidential election that you referenced. Yes. And who has that rule? What organization uh, maintains that rule? The American Psychiatric Association. Uh, an association you're a member of. Associated that I'm a member of, yes. Aren't you a fellow or something? Yes, I am. Okay, so <laughs> and this is an ethical rule, right? I have to mute. It is an ethical rule. And yes, it's ethical. They say rules. It's an ethical guideline. Yes, they're guidelines. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Did your witness just say they're not really cool. guidelines? They're more like guidelines. They're more like the American guidelines. American Psychiatric <laughs> Association has <laughs> amended the rule, so it's not I'm just sorry. about diagnoses, but it's also about professional opinions. Could you be more specific? Say about professional opinion in regard to what? Well, let me. Let me read this and see if you're familiar with it. It is unethical for a psychiatrist to offer a professional opinion about an individual based on publicly available information without conducting an examination. That's the rule, right? If you're reading it directly, I will believe you. Okay. However, a diagnosis is not required for an opinion to be professional. So my question is, it's not just diagnosis that this Goldwater rule applies to, it's professional opinions. So again, I, I will reiterate that that would come down to essentially nullifying witness testimony, That's not a good expert answer, witness man. testimony without a direct evaluation. And as we know, it didn't happen, but regardless of that, the whole expert witness testimony thing would be basically Render null, bullet, null and void. I could get rule, in fact, if I follow the rule. That issue, doesn't it, sir? Curry looked at the, that. Again, looked at I'm Curry. just telling you the answer to the question. When you're reading me those statements, I'm telling you the response by the other side, who is publishes also, is that 
If that was the case, there could be no expert witness testimony in the courtroom. That's not Which, an answer. Psychiatrists are ethically Half prohibited answer. from evaluating individuals <laughs> without, permit, without permission or other authorization such as a court order. That's the rule, right? Again, if you're reading that, then I have to believe you're not misrepresenting. Yeah, we are. And I would come back to, again, then this whole thing, on effort, we might as well get rid of all the expert yes. witnesses we've had throughout all of yep. time. Let's do that. Because what you're I saying guess. is unless a court orders it, and that's you what you just said, you know, the APA said, and Holy therefore shit, expert dude. witnesses cannot do an evaluation based on an <laughs> observation smarter. of the medical records. Insurance companies cannot do evaluations solely based on the medical record with our doctors rendering professional opinions. So at the end of the day, you are essentially saying that unless someone has directly evaluated it, there this whole medical system we have, this whole legal system we have, the is whole no court is out of order, I, Your Honor. No, yes, you are, sir. I, no, you are. Give me a give me a oh, second. No. I'll, okay. I'll give you more than a second. <laughs> okay. What what I'm saying and what I am reading to you is a rule by your organization I'm not a professional that psychiatrist takes witness. into account <laughs> that there could be court orders that would permit the, the exact kind of evaluation that you say I'm eliminating. And I think we're going in circles because I think I just said that means expert witness testimony would not be allowed and the branch of forensic psychiatry would be especially hindered, and we like know the branch of forensic psychiatry does times. not prohibit uh, that. So He's not as good a I am a member sure. of the APA. That well, doesn't like, necessarily like mean that every but single the thing is so that there, I don't care. everybody has to uncategorically yeah. agree with, because clearly that's not the case. Did you agree in your deposition that the the professional opinions you, you rendered were um, inconsistent with the Goldwater rule? Yeah, my first is inconsistent. If we're saying. That I, you, if sir. the Goldwater rule says, and I very much said that during deposition, that the Goldwater rule was made for presidents and public figures such as that. But regardless of that, because that's what it was made for, it's not made for Hollywood. But I'll even take that Mr. Depp's a public figure. What? What I'm saying to you is that the Goldwater rule is saying we cannot do any expert witness testimony in our field. That is exactly what. The Goldwater Rule is Unless saying based on exactly what you I, read. What you and about? I'm just telling you what you are saying that rule encompasses. What I'm okay. asking you, sir, okay. is did you comply with the ethical requirements of the APA? I mean, he's going to say yes. What kind of question is Rendering this? the professional That's not a good opinions question. that question. you've no. rendered today. It is a it is a requirement of the APA. It is not the requirement of the APA. Secondarily, <laughs> so the answer, no, no, secondarily, no. secondarily, I pledged it. I didn't donate again, it. Again, <laughs> in order to not, you, we, we really waste our whole morning because of an expert witness one standard. before what other me. Ethical standards There's an expert violate, witnesses doctor. everyone brought in. So all I'm saying to you, that means the whole field of medical legal law is corrupt and unethical <laughs> for engaging I mean, in an answer. act that the APA clearly <laughs> says we should not do. So if you're saying that, then the answer is yes, I'm agreeing with that statement. Okay. Oh. Wow. You're agreeing that the okay. APA would deem your <laughs> testimony and your professional opinions rendered unethical. I, again, I am saying you are saying that the whole I'm an expert witness. I'm saying as an expert witness and solely as an expert witness, uh, this guy should Mark just turn it that guideline the the is door. permitting that from occurring. I would say then that the whole field of expert witness testimony, again, would be disavowed by what you are quoting in the gold order. And we know that's not the oh. case, because if it was, we would not be allowed to do it. And you said the rule was for presidents, right? And that was initially for presidents, yes. But, and the name of the rule came from that. But the rule says it is unethical for a psychiatrist to offer a professional opinion about an individual. That's right, sir. It's not just presidents, it's not public figures, it's individuals. Funny, it was named after the. According to your logic, if you don't, that's not true. Rules, that's that's, that's a bad misquote. That's what you told me. That's a bad misquote. He's misquoting the rule. So here, what I would I mean, say I to you then, sir, is that 
if you say this about an individual, yeah, again, the response by the witness is any court would have to render an expert witness testimony invalid. You're any wrong, doctor, doctor that reviews it? charts would have to render it invalid. Yeah, he, that I is can go on the list of docs on. that do he not see or interview patients directly, on. and that's a violation. So basically, you are saying that unless you do a direct clinical evaluation, then all of the field of forensic psychiatry and all of uh, managed care is doing an unethical violation because we are not seeing the presence. We deny patients medications all the time without seeing them. We deny patients treatments, unfortunately, without seeing them. And I'm on the receiving end of that. So the answer to your question, again, unless you were saying to me that all of this is unethical, which is what you are saying, this is what you are, this is how I'm interpreting what you are saying to Just me. Let him talk. That unless you do the evaluation directly yourself, Therefore, it could not be considered ethical. And I'm telling you how that applicable to not just expert law, but also managed care, it applicable to multiple brands of medicine. Hospital, duration of hospitalization stay to get evaluated. So tell me, tell me where you want me to end this. Well, Whoa. why don't we, why don't we, <laughs> Whoa. Why don't we talk about what? what you just testified to? Because I didn't ask you anything about that. I asked you whether... <laughs> Under this rubric, oh, under God. this principle of Damn. medical ethics, the have you acted Sorry. unethically? Yes I, or no? I, no. As no, an expert witness, I have not acted unethically. As an and if you witness. want the jury to believe that expert witnesses are unethical, then I guess that's for them well, to decide. That's, yes, and that's no, for them to decide. Said no, yeah, let's go to the next question. Okay. Right? My goodness gracious. At this point, Psychiatric diagnosis occurs in the context of an evaluation just... based on thorough history taking. You think so? I really like that. I really liked what he and did where there. Applicable we'll talk about it later. Collated or collateral information. He sucks across. Agree with he that. Sucks I believe I said that earlier. Yes. He really, he really, he's not good. And it's good. a departure he's from the method from the methods of the profession not good to render an opinion without an examination. And without conducting I mean, I an evaluation so in water. accordance <laughs> with the standards of psychiatric practice, correct? Well, again, it, by the way, for the record, intimate partner violence is not a psychiatric diagnosis. I'll start with that. Substance usage by themselves not, is not so why are you a psychiatric diagnosis. If you want to cut to the chase, psychiatric is not a diagnosis of that. Mr. Psychiatrist. Narcissistic personality traits is not a diagnosis. Ergo, what? I am basically commenting on the things that were brought to me, which are not diagnosis, yeah, but, but, but an evaluation. So if what I are was you doing here? Professional opinion what? or anyone here. What are you Those doing are the here, steps witness? I would take. What? We, I think, started with the notion that this Nar rule applies narcissism broader isn't than diagnosis? diagnosis. It applies to professional what? opinions. I believe you, you just quoted the... professional opinions relative, relative to narcissistic personality traits yeah, you, sir, relative to mr death again we can, we'll i talk believe later. you just commented yes, on what it takes to do in a psychiatric evaluation to establish a diagnosis i'm almost I certain that's what I you said to go maybe i'm wrong know. maybe you didn't say that but i'm sure you did and therefore what i'm saying is neither ipv nor substance usage nor narcissistic personality traits a psychiatric diagnosis and then under the rubric of expert witness testimony really, really? you are saying i acted unethically on the rubric of expert witness He's testimony so if you so would like to perceive that expert witnesses are unethical based on that i am not going to sit here and disagree with you and waste everyone time i think it's fairly obvious but thank you there I'll is such a better way to answer these all were your words oh, oh my God. Yeah, yeah, he mark. comes across as okay. so pompous um, yeah this is why I think Dennison is doing a good job. Let's start with the easy talk, question. Every time he's doing a him sucky him. job. That was pretty easy. Go ahead. Doctor, you're going to have to just answer the question. Letting okay. him talk Sorry is one thing, that. but he's yeah, he's yeah, he yeah, is you, just you, stuck you in the weeds here on this issue. Okay. This okay. one okay. issue, and there are so many other things he can get into. You are not rendering any diagnosis whatsoever of Mr. Depp today or ever. Ooh, Ooh. Nice question. That's actually a good, a good, yeah. a good question. No, I now. probably would He's... say to you that certainly I would not say narcissistic personalities or I would say traits. Certainly, from what I have read, uh, intimate partner violence not a diagnosis. So the answer is no fair. for that. Uh, narcissistic personality traits is not a diagnosis. The answer is no. But if you want to tell me that substance use disorder is a psychiatric diagnosis, the answer is yes, and I. But that wasn't an issue, was it? Whether Mr. Uh, Mr. Depp used substances. 
I mean, you said you've gone through the record. That that wasn't really an issue at this trial. He's said it from day one. Yep. Oh, so you're saying he's already admitted to the diagnosis. He's uh, already admitted to the use of the substances. Oh. Well, again, there's a difference between admitting to substance Did use and substance use testimony? disorder. Let's go back to uh, what you just said about this is narcissistic such a personality traits. Yes. Narcissistic personality disorder you don't need to is a DSM-5 oh. diagnosis. Correct. Mark's going to die on his on his. He's just going to diagnostic. They're just both so bad. <laughs> and you haven't testified yeah. that he, Mr. Depp has um, narcissistic personality disorder. Have I would certainly, if I didn't, I'm certainly thinking that. But at least I'm going to say he has traits, which are characteristics of provisional diagnosis of. It's a provisional diagnosis of probably narcissistic personality disorder. But yeah, I mean, I do believe that. Well, when you say provisional diagnosis, you know the DSM-5 requires, in order to find that diagnosis, five of the nine factors. Mm -hmm. And you haven't done that analysis. You've never made that diagnosis. You've just identified certain factors. That are criteria for what the is that? diagnosis. That's an open question. Right. What is that? But you yeah, need five of nine to get to the diagnosis. That, that you've, you've already it. told us that you didn't make a diagnosis. Stop giving them the opportunity. You're just ide themselves. identifying traits, correct? I'm identifying traits that are consistent with the diagnosis, yes. Right. Move on. And you, you, did you testify in deposition that the existence of traits, as opposed to the disorder, doesn't have a correlation with IPV? Uh, I, if I said traits do not have a correlation with the, if that's what I said, and I don't remember saying that, but that wouldn't be a correct thing. Narcissism has a correlation with the diagnosis. Yes, that part's true. Or how far are we going to back this up? Because there's a diagnosis of know, narcissistic leading, personality yeah. disorder. Is he right? leading? Yes, sir. And that one is tied, <laughs> has some correlation with IPV, right? Narcissism has correlation with IPV. Again, you, sir, I'm, you're not allowed to answer. I'm, you're splitting hairs. You're splitting hairs between the traits that are consistent with, which all I'm commenting on is behaviors and traits that are consistent with the diagnosis. And Mr. Depp, narcissism absolutely has uh, risk factors associated with IPV. Let, let's go back again, and, and maybe we can we can focus on the question. Are we going to keep going you, back? Let's go back and really we can get an answer that's now. addressed to that question. Mm -hmm. Narcissistic personality disorder is a risk factor for IPV. Yes or no? Yes. And you previously testified there, it, that there is no literature at which you are currently aware that the mere presence of narcissistic traits, traits. is a risk factor for IPV. Am I answering the question? Yes. That's incorrect. Cluster, you didn't testify to that. A cluster, cluster B traits. Ooh which right. narcissistic personality disorder is part of, is a huge risk factor for intimate partner violence, which include, cluster B traits include narcissistic personality disorder, antisocial personality up, disorder, amongst others. So the answer to the question is every, every resource on intimate partner violence will support that cluster B traits where narcissistic personality falls under is a risk factor Worst for intimate partner violence. Any single ever. trait under is a there risk factor yep. for yeah, IPV. That was a good question. Nice Again, I will repeat. Cluster not gonna get caught. B traits. I didn't say any trait. I said cluster. No, I, oh, let, me any, be, let, let me be more precise then. Okay. Any narcissistic trait in and of itself is a risk factor for IPV. But you are, you mischaracterized what I said. What I said, I, I'm pretty sure I said cluster, if you look at all the intimate partner violence literature, and I would behoove you to do so, you will see that cluster B traits. Specific, I didn't say narcissistic per se, cluster B traits. Dennison, just to ask you Narcissistic exactly personality disorder is part of our risk factors for intimate partner violence 
part and parcel uniformly it's, true. The plan has to be to swing like this around. And I'm not sure. Right? I'm, the thing I don't understand is I'm not sure why we're arguing psychiatry because I'm telling you what why. it is. Dr. Siegel, you just need to answer the question. Okay. Ooh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Reprimand so you want from to talk the about judge. Uh, cluster B, so let's do that for a minute. I mean, he deserved it. Borderline personality <laughs> disorder is a risk fa factor for IPV. As part of cluster B traits, yes. Histrionic personality disorder yep. All right. okay. is so a risk factor the swing around. for IPV. Less so. But it less so. Less so. Okay. I mean, it's a risk factor, but less so, yes. Yeah. Less so. <laughs> Significantly less so. But it is. All right. So which traits under narcissistic – oh, and bef before I move oh. on it. You know what? There's only been we rest. one diagnosis <laughs> in court <laughs> of personality disorders, correct? I'm not sure who you're referring to. Are you referring to Mr. Depp, Ms. Her who I'm not sure what you're no, talking about. No, he's not. Do you understand that there was a medical <laughs> examination done of Ms. Hurt? Yes, I did. Do you understand that the testimony was ultimately that Ms. Hurt suffers from two personality disorders? Okay, so I'm, I'm just being specific. I just wanted to know if you're talking about Ms. Hurt or Mr. Depp. So that was just exactly doesn't I was matter asking. to your expert testimony. Yes or no to my question. He's Which was his only getting one diagnosis. Is a good of part of the cross. Miss Hurd was diagnosed with that. After burning yeah. a lot and of minutes. Both of the diagnoses are in cluster B, and both of them are risk factors for IPV. But, but both those cluster B things are. I'm not, I'm not allowed to comment on the testing, so therefore, You're, all right. I can say is that you can say the word cluster yes. B trace, and I'll tell you what they are. And by the way, I, I, I testified this before, which was that one. I don't. I, don't, expect I honestly don't care what this victims. guy ever said. Two. I I absolutely, there are cluster B traits. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, 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 given that you've testified point, to it before, so let's move on to a new. And anything that okay. he says. All right. You this guy's going to leave the courtroom, find a woman to explain in your today, dissertation you thought, to her. <laughs> well, why, don't we, why don't we move a little to Are you a member of the American Medical Association? No. Okay, so you don't know what the ethical rule of the American Medical Association is relative to doing... Um, oh, my God, do they have a gold water corollary? Clinical diagnoses about oh individuals God. you've never talked to. So you're saying in terms of doing expert witness evaluations oh, geez. under that rubric, right? Oh, no. I'm just asking you, do you know the AMA's rule? Remember that ditch we were in 10 minutes ago? <laughs> yeah, under let's go back the, in there. You're saying the a, AMA's nice rule ditch. under the rubric of hey, well, kid, not like to evaluate guy. something you Parliament. did not see. And I'm, and I'm questioning, I'm asking. So you are talking about expert witness testimony. No, I'm talking fun. about, let's go play do you it. know the rule? I'm not a member of the AMA, so I, okay, I don't great. read the rules. Okay, we move on. You I'm don't know the right right now. Wants to just walk out there and smack this guy. All right. You rendered an opinion about uh, Mr. Depp's purported cognitive impairment. Yes. Yeah. What do you use as a baseline? No. That's a baseline a for well, processing that's speed? Question. Damn Damn it. Come on, Dan. Analyzing Leading Mr. Depp. Only. Before you watched his deposition, that yeah. sucks. What is the baseline for that? Oh. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess my baseline would Come probably on. be what I how I've seen him interact in public. I how I've seen him interact with other. Oh, I've seen him interact that's in brutal. the media. I've seen him interact. You all, walked right into the gold water room, my man. Not Wait, slow. What? I've seen so him do how commercials. Is that, yeah, how is that his not? His process <laughs> speed was not slow. Oh yeah. A deposition. So saying things just say that what you did was compare. You Mr. can criticize Depp's Jennifer as much as you want. He, he rolled him right into Lots that. of pirate movies <laughs> against his deposition <laughs> testimony. What I, what I said was I've seen Mr. Depp. Oh, that was beautiful. Pirate movies. Apology ads. I remember he did apology <laughs> ad with pretty, Bad Dog. No delay in process speed. I've seen him interact with the media regarding to that. I saw no delay in process so in speed. Words, All I'm saying, jury, let me ask you about pirates. You're able to do the stuff. same thing. You compared you literally pirates evaluated him based on to the public appearances. Yeah, to, to the deposition. Pirate, and, I, and I apologize for what I said. <laughs> then I misspoke. You misspoke? <laughs> you didn't make the comparison? Right now, uh, just a second ago? Just a second ago, I may, I may have said that I misspoke. I apologize. Oh, I okay. Oh, yeah, Back that right, truck up. The mm -hmm. fire. They're Did both in bumper cars. The 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 pirates, pirates to sworn testimony, right? The, the question should be yes. like, uh, okay. What do you think was going on? But, you can, but as a you can judge someone's processing speed 
at any time. Like I'm judging yours right now. You're judging mine. We all judge processing speed as a baseline because of what we know about each other. I would say your process speed right now is not slow. So we I mean, we're Thank judging process speed. I'm just saying if you're doing it as a human. Speed is slow. Yeah. Um, so, what? but no, any of Mr. Depp's other portrayals in movies, did that affect your analysis of processing speed? <laughs> Only I've seen him interact on interviews and that was He's it not on when he wasn't in. testifying so, right but willy wonka doesn't matter to you you see in that movie charlie and chocolate factory i'm gonna die <laughs> you look at that one when you were comparing this process and speed <laughs> yeah. he I'm made sorry, fun of it. he hates it so much <laughs> i can't how do you feel about his grindelwald doctor <laughs> You have to answer questions. Yes, sir. You have to no, answer. No, you'd be questions. happy. No, I didn't see Willy Wonka as a. I didn't see Twenty One Jump Street when it happened. Whatever was about. No, I did not. God, All right. this guy is ridiculous. That guy was spiking a whole, football. Total total you made a, a very kind admission, I think, early on He's in your deposition, that you're not claiming to be a better actor than Mr. Depp. What? <laughs> That's correct. Isn't there it? we go. Get back to this. One hundred percent. But with respect to Everyone acting, would know that. you know that actors actually rehearse for their parts and work on the language, diction, timing of their dialogue as part of that rehearsal. If you say that, I'm not an actor, so I don't know what goes on. I can't tell you. I have no idea oh, what goes okay, on. Okay, dude. Okay. I can't I've never even heard you, of You don't know enough about is. acting to know whether actors rehearse Sir, I am not an expert in acting. I have no idea what an actor does. Okay. And oh, yeah, wow. Okay you These are okay answers. No, that's not. That is so not a, okay. Oh, come on. It's okay answer. No. It, it, that just, that comes off as weaselly as heck. I wouldn't it's an okay that. answer if the jury During your deposition, like you know what I mean? Right. What were the right. circumstances under which you decided to call Mr. Depp an idiot? Under somebody call Mr. Depp an idiot? Yeah, you called Mr. Depp an idiot in your deposition. Why oh, I think. Oh, oh, okay. So I think it was in the context. I think it was in the. I should, probably should read the context of it because I think the context think was. It's up to you. And I'm trying to think back. And I'm trying to think back. Okay. Got and it. what I thought it was related to was if you're coming to some deposition. Okay. And again, I'm thinking back. So I may, you have it in front of you. Right. I don't. So I'm thinking back where was he's coming in from. Europe for a deposition, a uh, video deposition that he gave, and he took an overnight the night before. And what I think I said was that if you're going to take a, if you're going to do a major thing to a, a trial that you're involved with, I have to think you'd be an idiot to come in the night before. All right. So I didn't call Mr. Depp an idiot. I certainly called that planning an idiot. I didn't call oh. him an idiot. So the words, yeah. so I mean he's an idiot? Are mistranscribed? <laughs> no, I'm sure. Again, if I said it in that, con- if you just read <laughs> the one cool. line, one snippet, I'm sure it was in the context I just said. But again, you have it in front of you. I don't. Yeah. Uh, is uh, idiot a professional opinion? I wasn't running professional opinion. Yeah. No. Is it a psychiatric opinion? Is it a professional? Opinion? And that follows the the Goldwater rule. It is a really How old school oh, term. Oh, I just said that. I'm not IQ running a professional level. opinion. I just said idiot. That's not a. Uh, so idiot is not a professional opinion. Mm-hmm. Is it your practice to describe people as idiots? My practice to describe people in my practice? No, I don't describe people like clinical. Asshole. My clinical not really cases as idiots. You don't need any help. I wish he would go on to more probative idiots. questions. No, sir. Yeah, he, but you said for the football is not in the end zone. You didn't carry the football in the end zone as a cross examiner. So that's fine. You gave nine hours of deposition. And if I said the word idiot, it was an idiot in planning. It wasn't making him an idiot. I don't know Mr. Depp's IQ. I don't know his overall functioning. So therefore, if I said it, it was an idiot in planning, which is what I meant to come across as. Okay, move move on. So So you you did say you don't know his overall functioning. But you made some testimony today. This reminds me so much of like the intro to Cobra Kai. Evaluations you made relative to his functioning. You would agree with me that it's probably a good idea to think about the questions that are asked you in a court proceeding before answering. Am I allowed to answer that question? Yes. Okay. So 
What no I meant by function, I said by function, I believe that his agent reported how late he was showing up to every movie while the cast is waiting for him. I believe that would be an impairment. If I showed up late for that, I would not be here right now. I would not have a job. Okay. I believe the thing I, was I in terms of you're not uh, a rock star walking out of star, treatment enough, for substance doctor. rehab that his doctor is prescribing for him. So if you're asking me if that's an impairment of functioning, I would say I'm very much substantiated in that. I, I'm trying to understand how you got to this notion of cognitive decline. And I, I thought it was based at least in part on, on the manner in which he testified. On the, I'm sorry, go. what? On the manner in which yes. you testify. Yeah, on the yeah, yeah. manner. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not being difficult. I can't hear. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> you are being difficult. I I'm sorry. I was asking you about the cognitive decline. Yes. Testimony well, oh, that somebody's getting yes. ejected. And it was my yeah. understanding that at least a portion of that testimony that you rendered was that you derived some evidence of cognitive decline from the way Mr. Depp testified. Yes. Okay. And that's what I said. Yes. Right. And so all I'm asking you is you don't you think it's a good idea when you're in the middle of a court proceeding to answer questions carefully? Again, professionally, yeah. we diagnose patients with a neurocog disorder by gross evaluation all the time with cognitive on the thought that again, age normal controls. I'm just saying age normative controls does not put a 58 year old gentleman at that processing. That's all I'm saying. That's right. All I said. And you derived this without ever once talking to the man. There we go. Me, me, me directly talking to him. Cause I heard, yeah, cause we know yeah. how I derived it. So you're oh talking about me directly talking to him. Yeah. You never talked. No, to I him. never, no, I've never him? talked to him. <laughs> right. And th this, exam you gave well you did talk about Ms. Uh, dr blaustein right yes sir and you understand that the entirety of dr blaustein's uh medical records are 12 pages of handwritten notes the important part was what i said for me as an example of cognition which i'm trying to prove which is what you asked me the important part was what i said and that was irrefutable the important part is that he give he gave the mini mental status exam. Yes, sir. All right. That's Let's talk cognitive. about the mini mental status exam. <laughs> Scored on a thirty point scale, right? Yes. All right. And it's it's an exam that basically is most often used for what Alzheimer's, dementia, those kind of testing. Yeah. It, it's an exam that tests cognition in <clears throat> all psychiatric illnesses not just alzheimer's it was made for dementia for alzheimer's but it is the standard has been the standard Watching for Camille testing Vasquez cognition to laugh is in quite all the here. psychiatric yeah. illness, substance use disorders included she's been doing pretty well <laughs> pretty well now <laughs> there is an Most element part? of that exam that requires drawing correct yes so you don't know what drawing Mr. Depp did or whether the drawing should have been fully scored. I, I wasn't questioning his visual spatial perceptual skills, which is what that does. Right. Draw, draw. And you don't know what score Mr. Depp received on the exam. I was very specific. I know three words, not remembering at five minutes. That's all I said. Three words, not remembering five minutes. And he, he remembered one of them, right? From what I'm saying, you remember any of them. All right. Memory on the exam. Out of the 30 points, what's it worth? Three. Th three, right? Memory is three out of the 30. Yeah. Memory is three. Okay. But again, the memory section in and of itself tests memory. That's the only question that tests memory. The memory the section, section tests memory. Tests Thank you. It's good to know. So the memory it's section good. tests memory. It's the only section you're testified about. And for all you know, that were, with respect to the exam that you're relying on, Mr. Depp scored 27 out of 30. And that would be telling though, cognitive, if you scored 27 out of 30 and you missed three points on memory, that would be very telling. You don't right. know if Elaine, Mr. Was Depp probably worth the time had been the up bottom. all night the night before. Again, you wouldn't expect to not recall any words at three minutes unless there's a cognitive issue.
You don't know if Mr. Depp was high. And again, oh, now know. that's again now that could affect I would, memory, but I'm not. I'm not refuting. Not that I'm not refuting that yeah. at all. I, he could have been high. He could have been <laughs> drunk. He could have been he using cocaine, been and that court. would absolutely Counsel. affect his memory. That's what I said. Yes, you're right. So ultimately, you have no idea what state Mr. Depp was in. This is quite the, the battle. At the time he took the exam that you're relying on. Short of what you just said about drugs and alcohol, okay, there shouldn't be a reason why 58-year-old also with strokes and other neurocognitive conditions. But short of that, there shouldn't be a really good reason why someone at that age shouldn't come up with at least one. But... But an answer. But, but wait a minute. You, you you started that question with short of drugs and alcohol, and spent thirty five minutes talking about his use of drugs and alcohol. <laughs> Isn't that right? Oh, I'm agree. What I I thought I agreed with you. I think I agreed. I said that drugs and alcohol can absolutely affect cognition. I'm not sure. I, yeah, I agree. But I'm not sure if that's a problem. I agree with you on that. All right. Uh, so you don't know. You're supposed to be one way or the other. Right? <laughs> how he scored on the exam. You don't know whether he was at the time on drugs and alcohol. Like I'm not scoring it. You're going to rely on it exam right now. in your you. testimony to say that he's cognitively impaired. I would have stopped this cross 20 minutes ago. Which is what yep. we do in clinical medicine, sir. Except this guy is like making himself more unlikely. Yeah. Right. Like, like, we're not even seeming lucky that they've got 10 extra hours, but I would rather see it used on people like Kate Moss and Dr. Curry. you don't know the state of the person being tested but you're going to rely on it anyway. Again, if we had to know every test, when people get the mini mental state exam, we have no idea clinically and you if they the are high, wasted, stone, stroke. We have no idea. So if you're going to say that, that means everybody needs a drug test before they do a mini mental study, and that's not the standard of care. And I think you know that. So I think you know that. Well, just, just let's wrap it. talk a wrap little it. bit. Uh, about this word you kept using, correlation. All right. All you right. All right, word, right. right. Yes. This will be correlation. Correlation and causation, and causation right? aren't the same thing. There you right? go. There, there you go. go. I knew that was there going on. Correlation, we call that the Malcolm Gladwell problem. I don't problem. think different. Correlation is consistent with causation. Malcolm Gladwell. Can you say that? Can you just say correlation is consistent with causation? I'm sorry about that. Correlation is a risk or something happening, causation is a direct link. Right. Uh -huh. So okay. just because something's correlated doesn't mean it's going to happen. Right. 100%. Right. 100%. But lung cancer, for instance. started with this. Smoking is very highly correlated Absolutely. with lung cancer, right? You just started with this. Yeah, and certainly, and there's certainly a link right. to lung cancer and smoking. Right. But, but not all smokers get lung cancer. Not, no, not all smokers do. No one, like I said, no one fits the curve perfect. Right. And, you've and if you have 50 years of evidence, testimony for instance. And to, to <laughs> all of us, all of us do this. All of us do that. Yes. Your, your suggestion about all of us is you're just looking at the world as a sample and not at any particular individual, correct? Yep. What I'm looking at is yes. that... Oh I am not talking about an individual, how they can or cannot be resistant. What I'm saying is invariably, when you use substances, this is going to happen. Now, is there a 0.05% chance that someone who does? Absolutely. Did you just pull but is that a yeah, degree it? of certainty? Absolutely not. A 0.05% you know chance of what, sir? I'm, I, of developing, eventually developing symptoms. If you're using excessively, eventually you're going to develop symptoms. But risk factors tell us nothing about any one particular individual, do they, sir? No, the risk, no. Again, risk factors tell us nothing except that if they have it, they're at a higher likelihood yeah. of developing it. Yeah, what is on nothing? It, it, Dennis is saying nothing did, was too uh, open. A whole litany of risk risk factors relative to IPV. Yes, right. And none of those risk fa factors tell us anything specifically about an individual. Sure. Other right, other than they're at higher risk, right? Right. right. They tell you specific probabilities, um, but that's so it. yes. Someone could exactly. have every single risk factor for IPV and never commit IPV, right? It would be yeah. again if yeah. you're going to yeah. say yeah. medical degree Doctor. of probability. The answer is 
They will. But if you're saying uniformly, the answer is no. Right. Uh, it's one of his no. better contested IPV yes, no answers. IPV can occur without <laughs> substance yeah. abuse. Yeah. Oh, sure. Still on the fence, but. Totally. <laughs> Someone can abuse substances without ever perpetrating IPV. Yes. Again, absolutely. This is, but This is where it should have started. Again, you are saying different than what I said. I did not say abusing substance. I said substance use disorder. You are, those are two different things. Because there are surely people who use substances that do not engage in any violence, do not become psychotic, nothing at all. So and that's absolutely. equally true of people who have substance abuse disorder. There are certainly people who have substance abuse disorder who don't commit IPV, correct? They are saying people who have substance use Say disorders yes. The majority of them, over 50%. Do. So, over 50%. Over 50%, 50%, 50%. So, so my, the answer is coin flip. Yes. As you said, not what? everyone who smokes gets lung cancer. Actually, Ian, I would love so, it. You said so it's a coin flip. There are yeah, I would significant love that. numbers of people. You, you said it was over 50. So, like so okay, you'd say 40% of the people who have substance abuse disorder. You got to point out 50 50 is not. Don't good. commit IPV. Yeah. And those are the ones that do not have. IPV no, risk. That wasn't the right. question. So we're told by people. Wait, wait a minute. Don't... Isn't sub substance abuse disorder and IPV risk factors? Oh, yeah. These are other people that have don't have other risk factors, right? right. But again, we're talking about people in general. You don't know anything about any particular individual as to whether anybody's going to commit IPV. If statistics follow through, all we can say is more than 50%, 70% will if you combine more risk factors you have, the more likely you're going to develop the illness. If you smoke cigarettes once, that might not correlate to lung cancer. If you smoke it chronically, that might. That's chronic. Sorry, that's so we're talking about individuals here. You either have lung later. cancer or you don't, right? If you're smoking. Right. right. You control. either commit IPV or you didn't. Oh, I mean, yeah, you either did or you didn't, yes. Right. So you took some issue with me because I was asking about substance abuse generally, and you wanted me to talk about the, the disorder. I'm, I asked you earlier about narcissistic personality disorder, mm -hmm. and you, you haven't made that diagnosis. You've just talked about the traits, right? Yes. And anybody, if somebody can have these narcissistic personality traits, and substance abuse disorder and never commit IPV, right? So yeah. along that line, right. about, about mm -hmm. 80 to 90% of pay people who commit IPV have so, a personality disorder. So the answer is less than about 10%. No, that's not. the reverse. No, yeah, he's reversing the causality. Right, yeah. the room. Yep. There are more close links with IPV for borderline personality disorder Ooh. than narcissistic personality disorder. Correct, sir? There we go, because um, that's the cluster. I agree with that. No? I'm not saying there are more links. I would say to you, there are absolute. If you're asking me there are links, the answer is absolute. If you're saying to me more, I can show studies, say yes, show studies, say that. That has not been absolutely definitively correlated. No. No? Absolutely not. And Seth, that's part of the problem, um, is that he's going back and forth on different things, and he, he could zero in on things here that are MDMA. really nailing it and tying it back, and he just hasn't been yet. That's kind of the well, issue. But a couple of stories. talk about Absolutely. Molly. Uh, I need to know what drug's going to help me at this point. Yeah. And I need a mega pint. What's the normal dosage of ecstasy for people who use ecstasy? Again, I couldn't tell you the quote unquote normal dose because honestly speaking, no one no one knows what they're getting when they're using it, right? It's not regulated. So but the effects of ecstasy enhance sen sense of well-being? At low doses, the answer is yes. I'm going to gather when you're using it at higher doses and develop tolerance, you develop the sympathomimetic effects, which are not so enhanced well-being. Increased extroversion, that's, that's the thing. Again, 
at lower dose, you are 100% right. At low amounts, you are 100% right. It is an attackogen. We feel closer to people. That's what people use it, say. They feel close to people, warmth to people, uh, 100%. But with continual use and higher doses, it could be fatal, right? So that's not, that's not well-being. I don't know if I'd call that well-being. So continued use at higher doses, MDMA can be fatal, correct? Correct. What if you took eight to 10 tablets of MDM MDMA? If, what if you took eight to 10? Again, you don't know what it's, it's very hard to say that. You don't know what it's, uh, 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 what's the concentration uh, contaminated with. Okay. You, you can't just say, hey, let me just take eight to 10 pure ecstasy and see what happens. Yeah. That's, that's not going to happen. So what I would say to you, again, because substances of abuse are unpredictable, they are not regulated, no one knows what they're going to. No one apps has any idea whether it's going to cause this empathic and tactogen effect at very low doses, or is it going to cause the sympathetic mimetic, I'm sorry, increase, um, uh, uh, like a stimulant, like cocaine, something we talked about like that. No one knows what's going to happen. It's not regulated. And no one knows if you're using with other substances either, like other stimulants. Or if you mix it with alcohol. Or if you mix it with alcohol. No but, one knows if it's going to be potentially worse. Right. But if this is a potentially lethal combination. Eight to ten MDMA this, tablets okay. and this alcohol. Is a, this is a potentially toxic combination. Right. Can it kill you? Yeah, I mean, it is a potentially toxic combination. That's true. Ever heard of someone cutting off their own finger on MDMA? Have I ever heard of it? Yeah. Uh, no, I can only give you one I example. I hadn't seen that one before. I can only give you I, one I, example. Is that so, Johnny? Seriously. Yes, that was the Come on. I know. <laughs> Come on. Put you to sleep, right? Uh, if you want to phrase a barbiturate putting you to sleep, then the answer is yes. Oh, yeah, it totally is, Dr. Uh, Mr. Depp talking about sometimes being on the nod, right? And, and again, I think I, expl I, think I explained Seroquel very well this morning. Good. I'm going to ask That's him your opinion, more questions. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm going to ask you more questions about it All if right. you don't mind. You kept making references to street value. Why were you doing that? Because that's why people with substance use disorder use quetiapine and Seroquel. Say it again. That's why people who use quetiapine and or slash Seroquel can get has it sells on the street because it's so barbiturate like in effect. Right, but you said Mr. Depp had a prescription. Huh? There are many substance use disorder patients who have prescriptions for Adderall and quetiapine from their doctor, and that doesn't mean they're not getting high out of it. That doesn't take much. Doctors like to believe what patients have to say. They're not going to go in there being uh, expert witness testimony. All I'm telling you is that in people who have substance use disorder, it is not uncommon. And the thought was initially that because quetiapine was not addicting, that it's safe to give in people with substance use disorders, when in fact, we absolutely know it has street value. We absolutely know that for a fact. Right, but my point about this is you made a, a bunch of testimony about street value, but you knew at the time you made the testimony that Mr. Depp, in fact, had a prescription. He also had a prescription for oxycodone and roxycodone. Is that, does that count? Because that's also probably not a good thing. It's just because you have a prescription doesn't I, I mean think that- Mr. Depp would agree with you it wasn't a good thing. Just because you have a prescription doesn't mean you can't abuse it. No, I'm not suggesting you could, you're abusing it. I'm, I'm just wondering why your testimony was in any way tied to street value when every single drug you referenced, Mr. Depp had legally. Again, you can have prescription substance abuse, and we know that, correct? No, I shouldn't be asking that. We can have prescription substance use disorders, and that's not uncommon if you look at the opiate epidemic that we're living in right now. We can have that. That's not an uncommon thing. Unfortunate, but uncommon. Not uncommon. So, Seroquel, I think you described as a sleeping agent when used off label. When I saw what? Sleeping agent, Seroquel, when used off label. When used off label, it's used, it can be used sleeping agent, yes. Right. So, Mr. Depp's use of Seroquel could account for some of the photos we saw in this pic in, in this trial where he's asleep in a chair? Again, what I would say to you is that if you have a substance use disorder, 
you are using it to be knocked out. Yes, I agree. And I'm, but I'm not sure at the end of the day if you have vomit is over you either. I've never seen Cerebral do that. So when he was passed out in the chair, he also had vomit is over him. I've never seen Cerebral do that ever. What a, Neurontin is another one of the um, drugs you testified about. That one's also uh, prescribed, right? Yes, it is. And what's the prescription for that? What's it used for? And what's its indication or what's its yeah, use? What's its indication? I mean, its indication is for seizures. It may have one pain indication. Again, I'm not a neurologist, so I can't tell you exactly if it does. But, but it's chronically used off-label for pain. It's used off-label for anxiety. You're right. And what's its effect? That's another, that's another one that'll put you to sleep, right? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, sure, 100%. Right. And you made reference to a picture. That there's been testimony around, the, around that picture that Mr. Depp fell asleep with ice cream in his hand. That's not vomitous, right? I, I was told it was vomitous. Okay. By whom? Um, hmm. You talked about the fact that Mr. Depp. Well, that doesn't help his testimony. Uh, indicates though. that from time to time. It does because he it, uses even Hertz team didn't say it was vomit. Yeah, and and the jury was, has yeah, seen that I mean, photo I, many times. I read that. Yes. Okay. Um, did you read the testimony of Mr. Wyatt, who told you what was being pumped into that earpiece? Yeah. I mean, if I if I remember right, I mean, it was. I think it was lines, right? No, it was music. It was music, not his line. Yeah. Okay. Music. So if if Mr. Depp was listening to music rather than being fed his lines, does that change your opinion as to his cognitive function? If he was never fed his lines through the earpiece, which I know he was, but what ready, do you know he was. He, that he was may have been that example. Mr. White may have said that it was music. I guess the question is: Were you having the music? His. Oh, you know, during, the, during the opinion. actual talking of your lines, is that what yeah. you're saying? To me? Like he can't testify well, you know, if, to what if you can do two things at happened. once. That's a pretty high cognitive function, isn't it, sir? You know, it's a very good point. Actually, divided attention is something humans have a lot of trouble in. So, for instance, we have trouble driving and putting on the you know using our uh, cell phones and direct. So, divided attention yeah, humans actually are not a very billion good at. dollar film. I'll, for I'll put that out. There. Dividing your attention, but Mr. And, and general, not but, just Mr. Depp. In general. But but Mr. Depp is pretty good at acting. You, 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 you right? I mean, like, that's that early on. What are you doing? Absolutely, well, better than me. So I know that because right? you don't <laughs> act. In fact, you don't know about acting. <laughs> You're right. I have no okay. idea about acting. And you don't know how prevalent the use of earpieces are in acting. Again, I, do, I, I know nothing about acting. And yet you're basing your opinion on this. Yeah. That yes, is true. Yeah. Respect yeah. Respect you know some good acting. You've Ask the question. Mr. Depp's use of an earpiece is somehow a cognitive deficit. So if I was giving a lecture and I was fed my lines, I would think there's a cognitive deficit. So I'm, and maybe I'm wrong. Like I said, maybe I could be maybe wrong. I'm maybe wrong. Hollywood yes, stars get that is the lines fed to them through earpieces all the time. And I, I don't know. So you admit that maybe I, I, you're that wrong. Could be, it yes. sounded to me to be unusual Genius. if you're doing a movie and you don't know <laughs> the lines. But I said, I'm just judging you know, what I do with lectures, and uh, that would never happen. If you gave lectures, you wouldn't use an earpiece, but you're not going to tell anybody how to act. I, I don't even I'm understand sorry, that question, question Dennison. I, I said, if you yeah. gave lectures, you wouldn't use an earpiece, but you're not telling anybody how to act. Right. I would not use an earpiece during lectures. But, but I, again, I don't know what the standard for care of how standard is Hollywood is for that. I have no idea. Okay, it, cool. you made your point, Dennison. You made your point. Move on. Move on. Your use, Stop wasting uh, your time. Your testimony yeah, about the use last, of like, your piece as um, maybe you were wrong. You're comfortable with the fact that you may have made a mistake there? <sighs> no. No, you already got it. Too many. Read about it. Don't ask it that way. I, I don't believe that actors are routinely given wow, their entire be... script through your piece. I find that hard to believe. Yeah. But, and, and but not one whit of evidence that ever, this ever happened. Right I right up there I, on the just what I said. I just said, I find it hard to believe. I didn't say it. Ha I said, I find it hard Somebody to believe. Get the Oscars music That's all I said. Oh, yeah. But what you found hard to believe, sir, was that every, Do you think every line said, of the script was, hour. Go was nuts, pumped buddy. to an earpiece. Where did you ever get the idea that ever that occurred? 
that's what I have been. That's what I read, and the uh, court review, the court evidence. That's where I got it from. You know what? That might and, be um, right, right. You know where, whether Marlon Brando used an earpiece? Whether isn't he dead? <laughs> yeah. So the answer is no. He does not use past it now. tense. <laughs> I, I, I use the past tense. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, again, I know nothing. I will concede to you. I know nothing about acting. <laughs> I will concede to you 100. So percent If that is the standard comment. and people are done that acting, then I apologize, and that was wrong yep. on my what part. Are we doing here, okay. folks. that's the standard. That. And I'm wrong. I End don't know. With that. He's apologizing okay. and saying you got it wrong. Then withdraw your opinion, dummy. Let's go with that. No further questions. Right. Thank there, you. Finally. There we go. Oh. A, a bit. You may want to take. All right. Let's go ahead and break for lunch, then, ladies and gentlemen. You're leaving Again, it do with that outside lady? research. Do not discuss <laughs> your testimony. We survived. Okay? Oh my God! <laughs> okay, so a, a lot of people... that was entertaining. It well, I mean, yes, it was also painful. <laughs> it was a, lo a lot of people in, in a the dumpster chat... fire sort of way. Now, hold on. Look, I, I want. I really want to know what Mark thinks about this because Mark was losing it in many points during this cross examination. <laughs> the issue is just during his direct, there were so many easy, concise <laughs> ways to just. So let's come back at one fifty-five. Then, all right, is that fine? I think one fifty-five. Asking him basically yes or no questions, asking him for all of these things. And at points, Denison hit on those things. He got into those areas and those lanes, yes. but he didn't even reach all the lanes that he could have. In fact, you know, the, the chat was going crazy on like, isn't all of these narcissism, narcissistic traits that he's talking about also applicable to Amber? It's like, yeah. you know what? Yeah, it's applicable to a lot of celebrities. Not saying, you know, Amber, the, the thing but is like, it's really easy to just put that back in the juror's mind by like reading his responses back to him and going, oh, you're saying that someone with narcissistic personality would do this, you know, which is something Amber has done, would do this, and then just go. There was such surgical precisions they could do. And when he yeah. went yeah. into the weeds of arguing about the semantic definition of, of the, the Goldwater rule and then was quoting from it like improperly as a try and gotcha, but the gotchas didn't work. It was just like 20 minutes of blather at the beginning that could have been like just killer. So that well, was kind of what you, it was. I will tell you the gotchas felt like they worked to somebody unfamiliar with everything else. I, I it, it felt like they worked to me. Well, and some of them did, yeah. but like, like the big, the big one that made me really mad is yeah. when he said, so you're saying, uh, so you're saying the Goldwater rule applies to presidents, right? Mm -hmm. And the doctor's response was, it's my understanding or something like that's how it started. It started mm -hmm. the media talking about presidents. And then he said, well, do you know that the Goldwater rule says an individual, right? And then he kind of was like, unsure about that. But that's not what the rule says. I mean, technically, the rule says an individual who has held themselves out to the public to be a public figure and fits all this other thing. So to quote the rule as, well, it only applies, it applies to all individuals is not correct. It's it's and, but, but, and, but what he was aimed at was you did evaluation just based on like public appearances of this guy. So by the time it swings around for I evaluated his cognition based on like other videos, I'm like nailed. I at least understand yeah, yeah. why we spent 20 yeah. minutes on it. Hundred percent agree. The yeah. issue of the, the pilot baseline was beautiful. I I, I got yes. a good laugh out of that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The I issue of the minor the like, difference in the language there. Um, Elaine's not going to be able to rehabilitate on that. She's not going to be able to fix that. This is an unfixable dumpster fire right now. And <laughs> it is. I mean, there were places in that cross where I was like, this is not as proficient as I would like it to be. But at the, the end of the day, uh, there is nothing left. They have taken whatever this guy tried to build and pushed it over, sown salt into the ground, put a parking lot on it, and then filled that parking lot entirely with flaming dumpsters <laughs> full of diapers. There's yes. nothing left to rebuild on this guy. And I mean, it's partially because this guy is the witness that we all dream of cross-examining because there are no wrong questions. You could ask this guy what he had for lunch and he's going to say something alienating and off-putting and sure really obnoxious. So there was some value just to having him talk, but they yes. really flattened yes. like. At the end of the day, they could have flattened him more, but there's just like, what is left of this guy? Well, that's why I and... would have saved a half hour, Ian, because I would have saved a half hour because I thought he was he was done based on how I felt about him uh, a half hour ago. 
Um, so if you're not going to hit the substance like a like a surgeon, which we 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 honestly we know who Dennison is now. I didn't have a problem with his cross as much as some of you did, uh, but if he's not going to do it like a surgeon, you might as well save the half hour. Well, and that was yeah, and, and especially by the end, like for the most part, Ian, I I agree. I think in the end that cross did what it needed to do. Yes, it just did it. At, it didn't do it in the first twenty minutes, and it could have been thirty, you know, whatever thirty minutes shorter. But absolutely, they wanted to nail his credibility. And Rick, your point was well taken. The Depths team has the time. So it's very possible that they were like, this guy drones on. The more he talks, the less people like him. So just, Dennison, go up there and just like, Whatever you let like, him buddy. do his thing. Yeah, let it fly. <laughs> we'll take the hour. You know, and maybe that was a strategy. And in the I end, think they did want to make it to lunch. I, I do think as I'm watching them kill time, I'm like, I think they want to get to the break and leave this here before redirect. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's smart. Which let they me, accomplished. Uh, let me just pull this one which, up real quick. Uh, Westy, thank you very much for the generous super chat. Says, I can, I can finally go to bed. It was so bad I couldn't stop watching. Keep up the good work, guys. And also, I'm going to step away for a second so you guys can just yes, keep talking. I'll be back I have to jump on a quick call. I'll be back. Well, I'll, I'll offer an opinion. I mean, as to the yes. as to the lawyer, right as to the lawyer and his ability, I thought it was a trash cross-examination. I thought it was just, I thought it was horrifically bad in terms of his ability as a lawyer. And it, I guess it worked because of the nature of the person who was cross-examining, but it was bad. It, there were a lot of open questions, <laughs> just a lot of open questions. That's just a no-no on cross. The questions were not well specified. He allowed the witness to ramble. He wasn't keeping him on task. The questions had ambiguity issues. It was it was a trash Cross examination. Yeah. Camille Vasquez oh, is the goddess upon which we all rightly <laughs> worship. And this guy is, I don't know, he is a trash fire of a cross examiner. That being said, I however, it didn't matter in the fire. end because the witness was an even bigger trash yeah. fire of a witness. So yeah. unlikable, so pompous and arrogant, so erudite and just like <laughs> good. sniffing his own farts. I was like, I did. It's like I can't, I can't deal with this guy. How bad he is as a as a witness. So I, I guess he was the I guess he was the right person to cross at the end because uh, anyone else would have made it just even more horrible. So uh, there's my conduced thoughts on the whole thing. I also like how he got in like active mocking of yep. the the expert, you know. And I think he did that right because you don't want to mock the expert until the expert has become mockable. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Because I wasn't get sure early on. Jury is, but, yeah. yeah. But, but uh, like, yeah, he got the jury there, and then he's like, so um, what about Willy Wonka? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Oh, good. And yeah, why on why, why are, are you talking about like the stuff that happened behind the scenes with Johnny Depp in terms of being examined or not by a psychiatrist as part of this case? Well, if you're Denison, why are you asking those questions? Like, yeah. Let me ask no. you the questions. You know that the judge didn't. You know that they asked him. You know that they asked for an evaluation, right? And it wasn't ordered. Why? Why are you asking these questions? It, it, it's really. I think the least, this? the least effective areas of attack were the first two areas of attack he took on cross. And I yeah. think, and that's why, like, out of the gate, all of us were, or not all of us, but a lot of us were kind of like holding our heads. And he spent a long time on it. But I think, Ian, you're right. I think, like, he he got himself into it, and he got out what he needed to do in the end there. And did it have to do with because that witness himself was really not likable like probably you know but either but it was a i think it was a win in the end whether or not oh, we think win. that win doesn't have a lot of errors you know on the final scoreboard getting there you know and i mean at the end the more i think about it like asking him things like couldn't this apply to amber heard this is such a uh this is a scorched earth witness you just want to leave nothing yeah. left for this guy and i don't think you want to pretend that we value his opinion in any fashion you like, don't hey, ask questions that, like that on the cross. What do you have ever. to say about Amber Heard? Who cares? You are trash. And no, I mean, but I mean, it, it, but just let's be honest. It's a bad question to ask. You, it's a bad question to ask on cross. On cross, you don't try to like get them to agree with your conclusions. That's a mistake yeah. on cross. You don't yeah. want them to. You don't want to be in a position where like, well, here's the conclusion I've reached, and I want you to agree with it. You'll never get it out of them. You instead just ask them for the pure fact, and you make the conclusory point in your close. Yeah. So asking yeah. like, could this apply to Amber Heard is a trash question. Oh yeah. You, and, and let it be known, I was advocating for that, not that question, nor ever bringing up Amber Heard's name at all. Just yeah, no. reiterating his responses 
and letting the jury understand what you're inferring from it. Yeah. Never do not bring it. I think you yeah. can see how bad this guy was if you look at him compared to the ortho who testified about the incident. I don't yeah. think he was particularly compelling. He was slightly biased. But at the end, you you say, okay, fine. They offered an expert, and he gives an alternate version and throws some shade on Johnny's version. Fair enough. You, 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 you buy it, you don't, whatever, fine. This guy was horrible. He was hateable. <laughs> you, you, you're like, I don't care who called this person. I want them to lose. Now, here's the real question. <laughs> Who's worse, this asshole or Dr. Hughes? I kind of want them to There's be locked in an elevator together. You know, he just, this one just reminded me so much of the, I, I, maybe he's good in other contexts, but those expert witnesses who just spend too much time as professors providing lectures and they yeah. feel like they're brought in to lecture the jury and yeah. you can't do anything to disabuse them of the notion that that's not what they're there for. Like, you know, it's kind of the lawyer's job to teach, to teach them. Like you just answer what yeah. I'm asking you, you know? And but but he they, people like that can't do it, and it ends up just hurting hurting them and making the jury not enjoy them at all, not the time they spend with them. And I mean, this I think when you call an expert this bad, it's actually a real serious own goal because at the end of the day, they're going to be stuck saying, "Hey, look at our experts. Look at Doctor Hughes. Look at you know Doctor Tirefire." Um, <laughs> any name, but uh, that's just been obliterated. But uh, you know, those are the people who support him. So that's really a good, you know, is that going to be a strong place you want to be in close? Uh, yeah, 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 you're right. I, hmm. uh, Den Denison should not be allowed to cross people again in the future. He uh, needs to I, take I... the Camille Vasquez of cross. I, I, I would agree with that. I think that I've seen enough of, of Denison's cross-examinations to give him the benefit yeah. of the doubt, and there is no more doubt. And, and I, I really <laughs> think... All the, uh, the technical crosses, like the crosses of experts, and I don't think he's the guy for that. Um, you For that, you want somebody who is a nerd. You want somebody, you know, me or Hogue or Uncivil, you know, somebody who's just going to dig into... Boring I like stuff. I didn't get mentioned. <laughs> no, he's, he's worse than boring. <laughs> he's but worse he's than boring because he's so unlikably polarizing. He's exact. He's basically the polar opposite of Doctor Curry. But you, he doesn't run into the normal problem of being boring. He runs into the same problem of Doctor Hughes, but to even a larger degree in this respect, where he's just so unlikable and just so like arrogant, 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 and so well. The, feet. The I, other I just, thing, I'm running out of adjectives. <laughs> I've been seeing in the chat, and people I think are quite right. We're evaluating this as lawyers, and that is really, I think, the wrong way to do it because we're looking at this and going, "There's all sorts of stuff that he left on the table," and there absolutely yeah. is. But for the public that I'm seeing, like the public isn't seeing the problems. They're not seeing any of those places where it could have been better. What they're seeing is the result, which is that that yeah. doctor walked off the stand and uh, might be having a little cry in the bathroom right now. No, I agree. Uh, I agree with the public perception. I think I've made pains to make that clear. I agree with everyone that he that the fact that the overall fact at the end was the witness is an unlikable jerk and all the rest of it. Like, I'll just use my lawyer brain for half a second and be like, you know, on a tech on the technical aspects of being a lawyer. It didn't really go that well, but yeah, your perception as members of the public is completely correct. I don't disagree with it. It's like, yeah. yeah, in the end, no matter what the problems were, it was it was effective in just destroying this guy's ego. So I don't disagree with the sort of conclusions of the chat. Just be like, oh yeah, on a technical level, Denison yeah. not so great on the cross, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's that's the that definitely I think explains the disparate that we're saying of what we're seeing and yeah. or we're saying and what yeah. the chat is saying, and really that we all agree that it was a win. The cross oh, yeah. was a win. Oh, but yeah. however, it was, you know, from from my brain, it was just such a dirty win that it was like hard. My brain was just kind of like, you know, short circuiting about I don't I don't know if the win was due to his cross or by the witnesses just I you know, yeah. yeah I'm yeah. I'm I'm of the opinion that that this witness would have been taken down during pretty much any 
effective cross-examination like by anyone oh, yeah. and i think that the the problem here is that we could have gotten so much more through a more effective cross-examination that could have saved time to be used better on another witness because this guy was already a dumpster fire going into the cross-examination we all could see problems that we that we were pointing out with this uh with this guy's direct that you know they could have had a laser sharp focused cross-examination that just tore him to pieces made him look like an a-hole and then just got in got out boom 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 that's it like the, but the, the problem the here is that of... dennison got stuck in the weeds so many times that number yes. one he wasted a lot of time number two he may have also lost the focus of the jury that yes. like you know you get to a certain point where like yes we see that he's an a-hole yes we see that he's he's been illogical now okay move on from that like yeah. you don't need to hammer it down down people's throats for the jury to understand that and be like okay yes i get it time is of the essence here we are limited in time you know uh, let's let's see how many more witnesses that we can get to on the on the back end of this now yeah. on that note do you guys want to hear some tweets yes please i mean they have okay. such a huge time advantage that a one-to-one -one spend is they're still ahead Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, and that's agreed. What I agree with... Agreed, but I, 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 I am very, very interested in seeing some rebuttal witnesses never get cross-examined. That's I, I, what I want to see I, I here, think, much more than than all this doing... time spent on this guy. Yeah, I'm sorry to have talked over you. That was rude. Of that's me. okay. No, um, okay. no I, I mean, I, I should have waited, and I apologize. Um, I think uh, there's a half decent chance at this point that they're trying to run out of time to uh, try to create some sort of appellate issue on the issue. Whoa, I had not. I mean, it's not going to work, but you know, when you have like nothing else, why not give it a shot? You mean Elaine's team? Yeah, that I think would be a bold strategy because if you are going to play that game, you need to have objected to the time thing, yeah, right at the beginning and saying, Oh, well, now that I'm out of time, I you know, I don't feel it's a fair rule. It's like you agreed She's to that, so many... you agreed to the tactical considerations the whole way along. Oh yeah, it's it's a loser of an appeal issue. And she's given so many warnings too. Yeah, it's a total yeah. loser of an appeal issue. I'm just like I'm just mm -hmm. thinking in my head. Like since they have basically nothing, like create try to create an issue out of nothing just to have something to work with. It's a loser, but you know, when you got nothing else, and also you can run the narratives to the extent anyone cares, you know. Look at us, we were denied our chance to speak. Amber heard silenced on last day, not allowed to open her mouth, blah 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 blah. I could just write the hit pieces. Vox, contact me. <laughs> okay, let's get some tweets here. Um, DUI guy. I'm, I'm going to start with, with a couple hours ago from the, the previous witness. Um, he said, juror number seven is wearing a suit today, and it looks really good on him. That's nice. Uh, and then he said, when Dr. Moore first is called to the stand, all jurors appear to perk up and eager to hear what he has to say. Juror number seven especially is darting his gaze back and forth from Moore to Rottenborn at every question with enthusiasm. 12 minutes into Dr. Moore's testimony, juror number two is leaning his face into his palm and appears bored, possibly waiting for action and not seeing it. And then he says, by the way, the lady that first cut into number 75 this morning and then cut into number one shows up in the morning break and asks and says, I love you, Johnny. Our souls are connected, that whole thing. She is forcibly escorted out of the courtroom by the bailiff. Yeah, okay, so she's not coming back. I also heard somebody messaged me. Uh, they There was some discussion of whether or not she had been pouring uh, vodka into a baby bottle. Apparently oh, that got reported to the police and they did a search and they found there's no in, no evidence of that. So okay. people on Twitter who are making noise about that, uh, that was checked no more out. No noise. Kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Th yeah. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, then he says, juror number five was blinking a lot at Dr. Moore, avoids eye contact when he's talking about Depp's finger cutting to be inconsistent with the bottle injuring him. Um, then he says... Uh, juror number no. Oh. Hey, Spidey, how's it going? We're going through. We're going through uh, DUI guys' text. <sighs> Crazy, right? Spidey, we have thoughts. What's been get... going on? Oh, uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have got all kinds we'll, of violent we'll love, thoughts. We'd love to definitely hear your thoughts at some point. Yeah, no, Kurt. Kurt, Let I me... was so impressed. I, I actually wanted to jump in here to give a big hug and a high five to Kurt because, like, you know, Kurt who often has a hard time and, he, and he's very open about this with. You know the demeanor and body language he nailed that like that that was one of the most uncomfortable human beings <laughs> imaginable yeah. yeah and i just i listen i have a really busy day i just wanted to come in to drop one thing just one thing okay because I'm getting yeah, yeah. A million messages well two things the first thing is um 
Johnny Depp. I'm so sorry to cut off whatever was happening. I just really no, have no, to no. run. I need you no, to come no. say this. First, look at the way Johnny Depp was looking at this witness. He dislikes him, and he has no problem looking at him like with this skepticism on his face. We even get that face palm at the end. Like the, he, he acknowledged what we're acknowledging, and he has no problem just looking at this guy, and we see all that sort of emotion on his face of like, this. who is this guy? Why is this guy here? If you compare that to what he's doing when Amber's on the stand, which is a lot more crumbled, a lot more downwards, a lot more closed in energy, we see a difference. What he feels towards Amber is not dislike. It's something else. It's something more traumatic because this is dislike. This, this sort of looking at the guy like this, like, who is this clown? That's not my, that's what I'm saying. I feel like that's what Johnny Depp is thinking. That's what he does when he dislikes someone. So what we're getting when Amber's on the stand is different from dislike. That's not the main thing. The main thing I wanted to say was just this. I feel like Amber's team put out an ad on Craigslist for someone with a degree in psychology who's willing to back her up and hired the only person who responded. Could be. That would explain something. I feel like John team hired a bunch of the least likable people to go and approach Amber Heard's team and be like, I can be your witness. Like, these feel like the, the experts that you would pick to the other side. If you could, I really, like the, I really like the chat comparing him to Doofenshmirtz. I don't know if any of you, uh, any of the rest of you saw that. That's uh, the only difference is that Doofenshmirtz is likable. He, he missed um, his calling as a proctologist because I've never seen anyone with her head so far up his own ass. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, you can tell. Dennison got him a couple times with like kind of a little bit impugning yeah. his, like who he, his, he was. Like if you were just analyzing this as an armchair psychologist, which of course we wouldn't do because that would be a no. violation of the Goldwater rule. Uh, but if you were doing that, you would look at him and say, oh, you are super sensitive about like you you didn't really do your job right, did you? Or like he he, yeah. he had that one cold stare where he did like a whole five second wait to, before he answered. I'm like, damn, I might poke that a lot more. Just poke that. Yeah. Well, that was that he, one. He too. was unethical and he wasn't comfortable. It, it, it's clear. But his, I do want to say this. I, I don't think the words that he's saying or the points that he's making are necessarily invalid. They're just delivered right. in the worst way possible. Like for him right. to say, yeah. Johnny is an actor, one of the best, and we, what we're witnessing can be acting, that's a valid point. It's not invalid. It's true that Johnny would know how to sell something very effectively, how to get us emotional. I've said that from day one. I, I see things and I go, here's what I'm seeing, but I could be very wrong because Johnny is an incredible actor. The words aren't wrong. The delivery is just really, and like I, I at some point I rewinded because I just wanted to hear something and I landed on this thing where he's looking at the judge and he's literally doing this. Yeah, yeah he likes that, that one. He liked that one. Yeah. What is that? What is going on? What, what, what is uh, it was that? interesting because he mentioned tardive dyskinesia at one point. And yeah. if you know what that is, that's a, a symptom of antipsychotics that makes you move your mouth in odd, unusual fashion. But I'm like, is is that what he's got going on? It's not quite the right <laughs> mo mouth motion, but it's it's similar. Um, yeah, you know, it's I, I don't think that's what it is because it's not the right motion. But it was just it's a weird and off putting mannerism, and the guy has like the whole set of weird and off putting mannerisms. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was. Yeah, people are writing me saying like, "Are you going to do an analysis?" I don't think I need to. I think everything yeah, no that doubt. we intuitively see. Like, there's there's certain moments in this case where you don't need a guy like me. Just use your eyes, use your ears. Look at the guy. Something's off. And again, it's not the message. It's the messenger. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> yep. Something yep. is off, I think, is a great is a great diagnosis, Spidey. I know you didn't make a diagnosis there, of course. <laughs> we all agree. Something's off. Like, is this, like, yeah. you're bringing the expert witnesses. This is all you got? Like, this guy? Anyone else could have delivered the message better. That's it. That's all. Anyways. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, wanted to yeah. jump in here but, publicly. But I think, Love you guys. Today's stream is really good. I'm listening background while I'm getting ready. You're all nailing this so much. Love you all. Gotta go. All righty. Thanks, Spidey. See ya. Uh, thanks, Spidey. <gasps> um, okay, let's get some more some more tweets here. Um, so DOI guy says, uh, this is now okay. Do, 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 do. So now now 12 minutes ago, he says, um Jur Number nine is very intrigued at Moore and froze his eyebrows a lot at the jury not being consistent with the bottle. And then he says juror nine was striking his chin when he saw the x-ray photos and heard Moore's testimony on the non-bottle injury. Juror number five tilts her, her heart slightly to her ear at Moore's bottle testimony. 
Meanwhile, Juror 8 is writing a lot, barely brings eyes from notepad to screen. As soon as Camille started her cross with Johnny Depp's fingers were hanging off the bar and that he may have misstated that fact on the stand, the entire jury perks up and is watching Camille intently. Everybody is taking notes. Okay. The entire jury noticed that. That's interesting. Yeah. Yes. When Moore admits that he has no personal knowledge of the injury, the entire courtroom audibly shifts in their seats. Juror number one is listening very intently and appears extremely interested. When Camille says there is no question pending Dr. Moore, juror number eight looks adoringly at Camille with a peaked sense of interest. Okay. He's when getting Camille gets, in his tweet. I know. I love it. I, this is like this is like literature right here. Um, right. Larry, you're such a great tweeter. Um, when Camille gets Dr. Moore to admit that he did not do any reconstruction of the scene that injured Johnny's finger, juror number eight appears intrigued, and juror number nine sits like a statue with his eyes darting from the witness to Camille intently. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, this is turning into, into a dramatic reading. I can't help myself. After Dr. Moore admitted that he did not review Dr. Kipper's deposition on performing the emergency surgery on Johnny, the entire jury stops looking at him, fixated on notes or Camille. In my opinion, this is... Larry saying, in my opinion, both Moore and Spiegel have hurt their case today. Neither brought anything fruitful and both brought nothing but pain and detriment to the defense's case. It was so painful to watch even juror that even juror number nine shifted his chair away from Dr. Moore and was staring at the floor. Yeah. Um, and that's that's it. That's all we got from from him. That's interesting. That's I mean, it's interesting that he used even juror nine. number nine because juror number nine has been pretty. Um openly disliking a lot of Amber Heard, what yeah. Amber Heard's team has been bringing out. Uh, I thought that was yeah. juror nine. Quite openly so. Um, juror two, he mentioned earlier, I've been calling him sort of the boredom canary because he has absolutely no filter when he's bored. And so he will, like, he'll just openly tune out. And it's great because then you can tell, like, what does the jury think about whether this is interesting? Right, they're bored because he's bored. And, yeah hmm. yeah and and to, to clarify for folks asking in the chat this is larry that's dui guy um so i i can i can link to his uh, uh i can i can link to his profile here it's, it's um, funny Larry. i almost thought to ask oh larry said that have you checked in on what ian has said so yeah, I, 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 I really i almost asked that ian i did <laughs> that's really funny <laughs> um yeah so so yeah we can let me let me just update that real quick and then we'll get some some super chat questions here but i definitely uh yeah da, 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 on twitter but I, yeah I, I definitely think that this has been not a good morning for amber so far he's looking at the jury so i'm i'm gonna see, yield on that see, I, I didn't feel it was destructive i didn't feel more was destructive i felt he was a little bit useless i liked his yeah. demeanor to start the, the orthopedist had some yeah. Yeah. points there for amber heard it was totally bad well i thought camille <laughs> did a great job of establishing that essentially it's all based on something that you really can't say properly so when he says i might have misspoke there to me it's over um right. but i thought he did a good job before that um, Until so Camille's that... cross, I thought it, that they had moved the ball in uh, Amber's favor, but Camille just comes in. She's a powerhouse. Well, I think yeah. Alita said he, she's coming in too but hot. That I doctor agree. made a good witness. He's undeniably like qualified. He yes. wasn't particularly combative. Nope. He offered yeah. a, a, an explanation that was semi-helpful, and then it kind of blew up. But he he wasn't bad in any way for them. Yeah, no, and I mean that's a that's an expert I would hire. You know, I wouldn't hire the guy following. Uh, but Camille did a really good job disarming him. Yeah, I think well, so she, too. She's interesting. I, I would be interested. You know, if we wind up following her career at all if she appears on another uh, trial. If she can dial it back a notch, um, because I think coming in a little bit more softly to start would have been maybe a little bit more effective. Obviously, she does. She does. She killed it. Uh, yeah. In terms of logic, she's very smooth between questions. She's very smooth in reacting. She's an excellent, excellent, excellent cross-examiner. But I have to agree with, like, Alita's knee-jerk reaction is she's so almost angry-sounding to start her cross-examination against this fairly genteel yeah. hand surgeon um, that it came across as a little much to start. Yeah, but and she, and she ended it well. You know, mm -hmm. she kind of reined it back. Her, like, level of 
of whatever of surgical precision i don't want to call it meanness but you know targeted targeted meanness targeted anger worked by the end it w- i feel i felt like it was impacted across but i i agree with you and alita that at the beginning i was like oh coming in hot here all right you know this guy was yeah. treating it almost like a like, like a party or something like that but which of course yeah. is the last thing she did um yeah. but it's like no this this guy just he's a hand surgeon he he he, he maybe made some mistakes but yeah. uh he, he's just a guy yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who got five <laughs> grand for sitting here yeah, good job. Yeah. The, the chat's yeah. saying uh, we, we've got uh, Kate Moss on Wednesday. Do, do they know what they're talking yes. about? Yes, yes, she will be testifying th- through a uh, live video link um, on oh. Wednesday. So I'm not going to be able to be in court for Wednesday. That that makes me so sad. I'm going to be flying. <sighs> is, is, and that's presumably Johnny's witness. So they so they're they're, they're going to close. They're going to rest. That's rebuttal. Then? She's no, they're she's definitely rebuttal. resting before Wednesday. Yeah. All yeah, right. definitely. Sorry, I might just be behind it. I'm, I'm like reading. I'm reading our chat, going, "Oh, that's interesting." <laughs> so, and the reason the reason why the reason why this is so good for Johnny Depp is that she's so she's a former girlfriend of his. Uh, she has the only reason why she's able to testify in the first place um, is because of the fact that Amber has has opened up the door, talking about how she heard, basically she, implying about how she she heard a rumor about uh, Johnny tossing her down some stairs or abusing her around some stairs. Um, and so by talking about her and by implying that, um, that, that he's done this in the past, um, she's able to come in and testify to say, Nope, all of that is false. Also we're BFFs. He's always been wonderful. He's never abused me ever, ever, ever. And he was a perfect person. I mean, maybe not say perfect, but like, basically do that. And the thing about that too, is that if they are able to, to run down Amber Heard's clock before that point, they never get to cross examine her. Kate Moss without a cross. Kate yep. Moss without a cross. James from court. How's it going? You've been working. Hey. Yeah. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. Tell hey. us what was the jury thinking, looking like writing, doing, what are they doing <laughs> during those last two yeah. witnesses? Um, a lot. It's a lot to, I mean, as you all have been watching it, it's, I mean, the energy in the courtroom, one, the judge is just done. He's so done with it. And then, um, yeah, the jurors are also, I mean, they're seeing everything. They're seeing this back and forth. They're seeing how the witness treats, uh, the lawyer, um, the female juror, a, she is, uh, she's, um, she was smiling at, uh, Johnny Depp's lawyer frowning at the, at the witness. It's a very, uh, different, I feel, uh, feeling for me about the jurors today. Definitely. Okay. So yeah, it, it's, it's it sounds like it's pretty face. positively for, for Johnny overall. It sounds like. Was that, sorry. I, I meant that as a question. <laughs> he might've, yeah. we might've lost him. Oh, we may have. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Dang. It sounds like they're more animated today because, uh, they were pretty poker faced, but Towards the end, they were kind of waking up a little bit and showing more, more emotion. Yeah, I'm wondering if yeah. they're just kind of like this is almost done. We can let things loose a little bit. Hmm. Last week, right? It's the last tiring. week of senior. Uh, it's the last week of senior year. Uh, you know, they're <laughs> it's their break week. They're ready. Uh, yeah, yeah. That is that is how it's feeling, right? Like, like the the closer we get to this you know, to, to the end, I think the more we're probably going to be seeing from like animation from the jury where they're just like, all right, I'm done. Well, they I'm know done. it's the 27th. So, I mean, like they know it and they, you know, that's, that's a big deal. It's, this is, this is a hard process for us and we can look at other stuff and talk to other people. It's an insane process for them. This is yeah. week seven physically. Cause we had a week break. This is week seven. Yeah. Two months. Wow. Two months of your life talking oh. about these Hollywood celebrities. Paula's comment about the he, he uh about his own CV and not knowing what was on a CV. And he was like, Oh, not everything's on my CV. Oh my gosh. Paula, thank yeah. you for reminding me. Thank you for reminding me about that. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and the, the whole like the whole like uh, thanks for the shout out for my book. Oh, oh my blah. god. Blah. What a moment. Blah. Mm. What a like oh what a piece of work really I think he thought that played well I think he thought that was uh like a little did. clever repartee and it just comes off gross I think he thinks everything he's ever said came out well <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, could you imagine he walks uh, over there? Everybody brought like, me some there. KFC because of uh, the Colonel Sanders uh, <laughs> outfit Have, out in the courtroom. Richard Bites is theming his food oh uh, deliveries now. I got the same craving, so. Yes. Ooh. Yes. So uh, very, very, very thank Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Bites. <laughs> um, yes. So very, very excited about this uh, because, yeah, I just, I saw, I saw. Um, uh oh. Uh -oh. Well, that's it. Legal else. Bites too much has chicken left in the, room. the building. <sighs> oh no. Legal Bites you're is back. Yay. Well, you're, you're back. Okay. Now. Yeah, you're, you're catching back up. Okay. Okay, good. You had the power of the KFC. It destroying, was. Yeah, destroying <laughs> It's electromagnetic chicken. Uh, <laughs> All righty. Uh, so, um, okay, let's get some let's get some super chat questions up in here then. Shall we? Sure. All right. Absolutely. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Uh, Odonata says, will Judge A write an opinion after the verdict? I know the jury decides, but how is precedent set for future cases such as defamation cases? No, no precedent. Oh. This is not an appellate case. So there's not going to be, uh, it's not binding on any future cases. This is just at the lowest level um, uh, decision. So she's not going to be formulating any kind of a, an opinion based on it. As you said, this is just um, this is just uh, uh, the jury that's going to be making up their mind. Um, Tamara Weber says, "Is it true that Johnny takes the stand again today, Greens from Luxembourg? We don't know. This is what is rumored is that at some point he will. It's getting increasingly today. unlikely, but we'll see. I mean, imagine imagine they've got like thirty minutes left, and then they call him. <laughs> it's like, all right." So they get through half a question. What's your name? Slow talking, yeah. Johnny. <laughs> What's my Do your name? magic. Well, in the year nineteen, well, we have redirect on this on this guy. Maybe uh, they have redirect. Yeah, because Elaine. Uh, yes, it, it sounds like she wants to do a redirect. On oh him. man, and then, yeah, and then yeah, we don't right. know who else to call. Well, didn't she say she thought her redirect would be substantial, so we should take a break? Yes, <laughs> this is wow. what she said. You can't, you can't said. rest your case after this guy. You can't well, just like drop yeah. the mic and walk out and be like, yeah, I think, well, look, I think if you're bringing Johnny it. back up. I you, think we're good you here. Have to be like, did you order Adam Waldman on that wall? And like in five different ways and then, <laughs> and then leave because like you can't afford You want else. him on that wall. You need him on that wall. <laughs> <laughs> did you want Adam Waldman on that wall? You can't fix this guy. This is like somebody's There's been no brought fixing. in the ER and you open up the, the bag and it's just like yes. goo. And that's, that's the thing about a redirect is that it's when you have somebody that has just been absolutely destroyed there's no amount of cleanup that you can do to, to rehabilitate them. You and know, like maybe pick a couple points here and there. That's about it. Redirects are never supposed to be substantial, Elaine. And never. you can make it so much worse because every, if you can't fix anything, anything you ask on redirect is basically you're parking a flag in it saying, yes. we thought this was bad. And if you don't fix it, then you just have told the jury that, you know, this is something you should base your decision on. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, yeah, you're absolutely right. It, was I was I the only one who thought his voice reminded me a little bit of Fauci's? Was I the only one who had that connection? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I didn't. I didn't make that personally. No. I didn't think Fauci. I didn't make the connection, but now that you part. say it, oh yeah. <laughs> this, I um, the time to just walk away from the explosion and not look back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Magic Man says legal tube isn't about politics, but about pursuing truth. With that mm -hmm. said, how do you cope with the political implications of this trial while commenting? Well, I think that this That's one is fun. actually a little bit of an easier one to to go along because the there the the supporters of Johnny Depp are it crosses political the political spectrum on both sides. We've talked about this quite a bit. I mean, it's it's you can look at the facts of this case and and be conservative or more liberal and look at this and say, you know what. <laughs> This is how things are looking, um, yeah, right. and it seems you know if you if you look at if you look at the chat, folks in the chat will say they they range from from you know uh, anarchist, communist, progressive, super right, alt right, <laughs> all the way across the board, you know, like and and folks in the middle. So it's this is one of those cases that is politically, I think, easiest <laughs> to cover. Yeah. The United America, who would have thought it? Yep. Yep. Trying to have an Amber Heard. Yeah. Yeah. We couldn't stay together, but the United America. Yep. Yeah. Here's a little tagline for you. 
a little strange. He says, question for a non-American. Can you explain rebuttal? Also, took half a day off so I can watch this in peace instead of at work. Much love for the panel from Switzerland. That is amazing. That's good. That's in fact, the folks are, are, are taking off of work for it. Um, well, I hope that it's been, um, I hope that it's, it's been, you know, wor worth, worth vacation time uh, for you to, to, to watch and hopefully not too stressful for you. Um, so, a, the, so the rebuttal, so, okay. So Johnny Depp's case in chief goes first because he's the plaintiff and he has the burden in this case. So because of that, he doesn't have the ability to respond to anything that, that Amber Heard's witnesses have been able to put on right because there's nothing to respond to amber heard on the other hand has a little bit of a disadvantage by going uh going second because she doesn't have the ability to like create the field but she has the ability to respond to every single witness like they can they can triangulate their their witnesses and ask questions and and cross-examination questions and, and stuff you know for 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 the purposes of responding to johnny depp's side so a rebuttal basically is is a portion of the trial that is very limited in scope um, where uh, Johnny Depp's team is able to put some witnesses on specifically to respond to Amber Heard's people. And also we've got James from Court is back. Okay, yes, officially, and I'm in the hot spot now, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's okay, that's okay. With the picture. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, I can't do a uh, visual right now, but did you all hear anything I said before or not really? Really. A little bit. We did first answer. Yeah, there was, okay. there was like one statement, I think. True. Okay, so basically what I was trying to say is that, one, um, you know, as you can see on TV, it's it's getting crazy with the witnesses. The judge is visibly upset. Like, um, you can feel her energy, and the jury feels it too, for sure. Um, I have, you know, juror, juror nine, in my opinion, you know, uh, is standard with the facial expressions, but we now have juror eight who was um, the female that sits next to him. And she now, like, she smiles at JD's, um, the lawyer, I forgot the lawyer's name today, but, uh, and then she would actually frown yeah. at the, uh, no, sorry, the the last man who was. Um, yes, yes. She was like smiling at him, which is interesting because in my opinion, that's her least favorite of the lawyers. She usually smiles at Chu and Camille, but with him, like, especially when he was cross-examining the witness a couple of days ago, um, who was like very mild mannered and he had the, the aquapana water with him. Um, she actually like didn't really like his cross examination, but she did like the cross examination today for sure. Um, it was, I, it's the most expressive I've ever seen her. So, yeah. <clears throat> All right. Um, so then uh, there were, there were just so many, so many exchanges here. With this last witness, Dr. Spiegel, what can you glean from the jury? Were they annoyed with him? Were they annoyed with Dennison? Were they annoyed with, with anyone? Or were they buying what anybody was saying? Yeah. From what no, you can tell. I th yeah, I think in the beginning, you know, they, they probably, like, it wasn't skeptical except for the two, um, two or three jurors who, you know, find a lot of Amber Heard's um, witnesses kind of skeptical. But it was kind of just like they were taking notes, looking normal. And then when the cross, well, there was a few instances where he kind of like tripped up and said some things. They were all like, eh. But when the cross started, um, you could tell like they were actually following the cross examination closely um, to the point where I think it totally discredited the witness. I mean, there were so many things he said, especially with the acting. I mean, when he started to get, to get into the acting, it's like, well, I don't know acting, but yet I know that no one uses an earpiece. But I actually don't know what Johnny was listening to on his earpiece. Actually, I can't really make any comments about this at all because I have no idea about any of it. I mean, like, if all like so many of their eyebrows like raised up, they're going to fall off their head. Um, so you know, some of the jurors who are just like, "Are you really doing this right now? Is this what's happening?" <clears throat> mm, mm. Okay, uh, well, that's that's good that they were that they were focused on that. Um, and by the way, T in Tennessee, thank you very much for this very generous and, super chat. Um, thank you okay. for saying so, T in Tennessee. We could talk about it a little later. I don't want to cut off James, but I yeah, like yeah, this yeah. comment a lot. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, we can, yeah, it's, it's, it's saved. So we can, we can, Th we can thank talk you. about it a little bit more in a little bit. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, so, so 
Okay, so then the fact that they were that they were focused on that part with the did anybody react to the 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 Pirates of the Caribbean part about like like you were basing this off of him acting in Pirates of the Caribbean? <laughs> yeah, um they, they laughed. So Jur 2 laughed at that. Jur 8 laughed at that. Um what not a lot not a lot of others like made like either smiles or laughs, but I mean the audience laughed. Um for sure. There was a lot of laughter in the audience. We were uh, laughing. Yeah, exactly. I think everyone was laughing at that. It was hilarious. And then when he went to Willy Wonka, he was like, well, "What about Willy oh. Wonka?" <laughs> um, yeah. Oh god, that was that was that was pretty choice. That was pretty it choice. Was. Hey, it was. James, did you yeah. see someone get ejected? Was was that an ejection? Oh, you want to know the story? The baby lady. Yeah, yeah. baby lady. Oh. We were reading your that. tweets earlier about the baby lady. Yes. There was somebody, okay, I will listen there to the was... baby lady. But there was somebody that was ejected after we knew that story. Oh yeah, we caught it on cam. Maybe it was the same person though. Tell us your story. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. She wasn't. I think you're talking about from the front row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, know. okay. Brownish dress. That is. Wait, in a what dress? I said brownish, but I. Don't oh, know. she wasn't wearing pants and a blouse, or possibly. You know what? I'm okay, not... yeah, I just want to make sure I'm not saying the wrong person. So, <laughs> I, I think who you're talking about is Yvonne. And she um, is one of the regulars here. She's a super Johnny Depp fan. She was getting a little tired, and they just asked her if you want to go take a walk and, and you know, get some energy back and come back. She wasn't okay. ejected. She's allowed oh, back okay. in. <clears throat> yeah. I think that they, right, they probably you. just don't want anybody in the room just falling, falling asleep, asleep on the camera. Not. Yeah, because, you know, that'll be a few times. She's been just at this 24-7. And, Basically, uh, yes. She, yeah. she sleeps for, like, two hours, and then she comes back. Oh, my God. <laughs> But the baby lady, I, that was yes, I mean, insane. So so she was causing trouble. I don't know if you saw on Larry's stream and stuff like that. She was causing trouble the whole night. She tried to get in, um, you know, use her baby as like, like I, you know, my baby, you know, things like that. But then she started ramming people with the baby stroller. And then she held up the baby and had it throw up on the guy next on in front of her. So that just started, yes, yes. And then she got upset, so she left the line, and I guess she was saying, you know, my baby's sick or tired, so they let her, like, you know, stand outside the line. And then they let her go into the courtroom with the newborn. So at the end of, I guess, before the first break, uh, the judge leaves. Johnny gets up to walk out. She screams, I love you, Johnny. And then she goes, um, our souls are connected. What would you do if this baby was yours? And she holds up her baby at him and screams it from the back. And everyone is like, what? We're all staring. It was Silas. It was insane. And then, yeah, they kicked her out. And I think they might be pressing charges on her. But it was wild. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, that's harassing uh, behavior. Yeah. That, that is exactly the kind of thing that they were talking about that they didn't want to have. <laughs> Don't go up yeah. to him. Don't address him in any way. Don't address either of them. No autographs. No nothing. Um, and yes, to answer your question, Crown V, yes, I am eating KFC because she, she, her, her outfit reminds me of Colonel Sanders. And it made me want it made me <laughs> want chicken. And so Mr. Bites I'm brought me a chicken because he's wonderful. This baby was yours? That's what uh -huh. she said? Wait, sorry, what? What if, the, what if oh, this was, baby what was yours? What would you do if this baby was yours? That, yeah. Wow. I think she was implying that the baby is his. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, but I, wow. yeah. So. Hey, Dr. Tracy. Oh, she's muted, but maybe maybe she'll be here in a minute. Oh, hello. hello. Hi. 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 What uh, what what would you like to uh, to enlighten us on with uh, the I guess the last the last witness in particular, Dr. Spiegel? <laughs> Did you catch all of all of his testimony? I didn't catch all of it. I caught maybe the I think maybe the second half, and I was kind of just losing my shit. <laughs> sitting in my bed. Sorry for my language, but yeah, it was, no, not at all. it was unbelievable the things that he was trying to say and accuse Johnny of. I mean, I don't know. Try the difference between narcissistic personality disorder and narcissistic traits. And yeah, it was just he really blew up his career, in my opinion. Wow. When he straight up admitted that his behavior was would be considered unethical, I was like. Right. Why don't you just hand your credentials over to Mr. Dennison on the way out? <laughs> yeah, exactly. He can put them up on his wall and as a trophy. It was bad. Yeah, very good point. Um, what were the parts that were most problematic to you, if you can remember? 
I mean, I think it was all just all the assumptions. It was, you know, saying that he has a right to say these things because of his profession with no actual assessment or analysis. And then using the Goldwater effect and coming in to say that if he's not allowed to say what he's saying, then managed care shouldn't be possible. Then that means managed care is unethical. But it is, managed care is unethical. Any provider that works with insurance companies knows that there are many times decisions being made and assessments being made inappropriately for the benefit of the insurance company. And it's kind of scary I'm coming on saying this publicly right now, but it's true. It is true and any provider knows it's true. So I feel like that was really an invalid point on his part because what he's saying wasn't wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so many so many of the things, I mean, what we were talking about while, while he was testif testifying, especially early on, was that it was... It was not necessarily the things that he was saying, but the way that he was saying them by, by, you know, as professionals, we're used to people talking with like a statistical probability or saying this often happens, this sometimes happens, this, you know, like rather than just this happens, it sounded a lot like, and, and I'm so glad that in the cross-examination, Dennison finally got there with uh, the, the correlation is not the same thing as causation thing. I wish you would have started with that because I feel mm -hmm. like that would have been a powerful way to start. Um, because that was one of the, one of the things that, that I felt like was most critical coming out of, um, that direct examination was that it sounded like he was saying like, Johnny does drugs and, and booze all the time. Therefore his memory is crap. <laughs> you know, like, like it was just his, his, his very hard line and saying like, like when you have someone that does drugs and, and has booze, you know, over a long period of time, their memory ends up sucking. Like when you have someone who goes through an abusive relationship, they have trauma, which oftentimes is the case. Probably the vast majority of times it even is the case. But it sounded like he was he was talking in like 100% certainty in all cases from the way that he was talking. I don't know if you if you caught any of that part of his his testimony or not. Yeah, I mean, I think it was just biased, but I mean, that's something that happens in the legal courtroom, right? Who brings you on? Doctors, we can see, have a tendency to do that, to yeah. prove the point of the side that they're on. So it gets difficult, but yeah, you could see that he wasn't unbiased. I mean, you could see it in his behavior, in his tone, in his argumentativeness, in his combative nature in response to the lawyer. And so it's just clear that he already had opinions in his head that were created without an assessment of the person that he was placing the opinions onto. And the percentages that he were that he was using made no sense. 90% in some cases, then he would say at least 50, then he'd go back to saying 40. And it wasn't actually based on, I would believe, studies that he's an expert in. I mean, it just seemed really all over the place to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if you if you also caught the beginning when they were trying to see what uh, kind of expertise he could reasonably have. Um, there was a, a, a an exchange at the beginning between him and and Dennison on um, on uh, basically whether or not he should be properly qualified as an expert um, on IPV. Um, and welcome, Joe. Hopefully, hopefully we can. I don't know if he's got connection or not. Um, but basically, like. Uh, there was there was a there's a decent question based on on the how how much of his practice actually focuses on IPV and I'm wondering he he had some statistics in there he said that basically half of his practice is trauma and then within that there's a smaller percentage of that is IPV how much would you as a practitioner say that someone could be considered an expert in IPV like how much of their practice should that have I I guess just as another another professional for you to consider them to be an expert. Yeah, well, I think oh. experts can be in, in different ways. I mean, you can be an expert by working with some people one on one face to face in a clinical practice, you can be an expert in the research on the back end of IPV. And so it really varies. But I would say you'd have to be, you know, maybe close to 100% in either one of those categories, either it's the majority of your practice, or it's the majority of your research. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, but it did, it didn't sound like there was a majority of anything. Right. I don't know if, I don't know if anybody else can, uh, has, has other thoughts on that. Um, no, I know Joe is trying to join us. Um, but I think he's got some connection issues. I'm going to, I'm going to 
kick him out. I might have to, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to interrupt. I might have to hop out because we have like 10 minutes left if that's okay. Yeah. Oh We're, my gosh. Do we really only have 10 minutes left? Okay. I think, yeah, 155 yeah, is what right. you guys said. You're right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this has gone by so fast. <laughs> this lunch hour. After and, and answer any questions after court's over. Oh, here's, here's a question for you, James. Sure. Uh, what's the jury's reaction oh, to yeah. him calling Johnny an idiot? Oh, yeah. Well, there was um, a gasp in the audience for sure. But you could tell, like, Juror 8 did not like that. She she doesn't like any rude behavior, I don't think. Um, she's mm -hmm. a She wears a cross, and she was holding her cross during a lot of this testimony. She was twirling in her hand. And I think she found that to be incredibly rude. Um, juror 9, he loves to use his eyebrows, and he was just the whole time he was kind of like uh, wearing those out. But, yeah, I think that was... <laughs> Definitely not lost on the jury who were like, wait, Dr. Curry never called Amber an idiot. So why is this guy calling Johnny an idiot? So, yeah, yeah, there was definitely some uh, <clears throat> reaction to that. Interesting. Oh, flight to, attendant uh, is in mm -hmm. Make it back out there. Oh, they're, yeah. they're bringing the flight attendant in rebel. That'd be hilarious. The, well, that uh, from the Russian flight? flight? Supposedly was kicked and thrashed. Not only not testifying for Amber, but testifying for Johnny Depp. Holy Ooh. shit. Ooh. Oh, I, I, I want to say that. that. All right, I sorry, I gotta run, but I'll talk to you okay. guys after. Thank yes, you. yes, thanks so much. Yeah, have a good um, day. Um, yeah, yeah. So, anyhow, let's let's get a few more questions in here while we while we have a chance um, before before we've got to get some uh, get some more more trial in here. Uh, okay. So I explained the rebuttal process um, to K37 says, do you think Dr. Curry will come back to explain in detail where you could see AH's BPD and HPD being at play in court? Yeah, I think so. At least in part. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that that could be proper. That could be proper because she's been there. She's been watching her, the testimony and she's allowed to, um, and she's allowed to use testimony as part of her, her, her understanding. Um, that would be, that would be pretty powerful. So yeah, I, th I think so. Uh, Meryl Vanden Herc says both AH's experts had insane credentials, status, but disappointing content. Uh, that's on AH covering up weak case by impressing the jury with credentials. It could be experts who have good credentials aren't very good in court. Too. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's also fair. <laughs> because remember, when it comes to an expert witness, you have you know multiple boxes that you kind of need to check in order for mm -hmm. them to be an effective. Uh, uh, um, sorry, expert witness, um, you know, you need them to be well credentialed. You need them to understand what it is that they are talking about. And you need them to be able to explain that to a jury. And this guy's, you know, lecturing, lecturing, lecturing. And this last one in particular, Dr. Spiegel, um, is not really an effective way of, of teaching the jury. That's essentially what they need to be is, is a teacher to the jury so that they can understand the technicalities of, of what it is that, that they are trying to get across. Um, and if it, if he's not an effective teacher, that's, that's you not going to work out. You know, I know someone who used to take dance lessons from Gene Kelly. Okay. Uh, okay. Gene Kelly, probably the greatest American dancer, at least male of all time. Right. You know, yep. pretty inarguable. Yep. And I asked her like what it was like. And she said, literally he would just get frustrated and yell at us to quote dance better. Oh, you know what I mean? And like, and like, yeah. yeah, that's sometimes how it is. You can be one of the greatest things in the world. That doesn't mean you can communicate that to others. That doesn't mean you come across well. That doesn't mean anything. So like, yeah, maybe these credentials are legit, but like they, maybe they shouldn't yeah. be here doing this. That's know? a very, that's a very good point. Um, and I think you're talking about Fred Astaire. Um, or was no, it Gene I'm, Kelly? I'm talking about Gene Kelly. You um, are thinking, okay, okay, okay. I think Gene Kelly is a better dancer than Fred Astaire, but we can, okay. you know, that, that can be okay. reasonable minds well, can differ. <laughs> oh, you're muted. Oh, I'm, I'm just part of the debate in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, I said, yeah, yeah. I said, that's an episode folks. Gene Kelly, it. let's hear it, people. <laughs> yeah. So, so, well, and that's, and that's such a good point too, is that, you know, and this is, this is something, something that I always found very interesting in law school is that sometimes you would find the professors that were there mostly to, to write textbooks and get published and all that kind of stuff right. and then teach secondarily. Um, but the ones that I found generally speaking, not always, but generally speaking, that tended, tended to be better were the ones that, that were the adjunct professors. They were the ones yeah. that had a practice because they're used to explaining things to a client. They're used to having to, to translate to a lay person, the, the, the law and the process and, and, you know, how, how things are. So I, um, 
so you can you can run into that kind of an issue with any kind of an expert that you know when they get to a certain level of expertise that sometimes it's hard to go back and remember what it was like to be that person that was just learning from the beginning. So that's that's one of those issues with an, with an expert witness that you can totally run into. Um, Dam says, what are the plans after all this JD versus AI, AH hype is over? That is the real question. Well, there's there's more uh, <laughs> there's there's more law. There's always more law there's, going there's on. There's always right? another whole pro- high profile case. Always. I, for one, am, am totally going to be digging into the boogeyman himself. <laughs> Marilyn Manson's Marilyn Manson. defamation case. Yeah. That is one that, that gets, it's if, like if that gets screamed, I'm definitely doing that one, man. I'll I already, I already, you know, had had a ton of of interest in that case anyway. You know, I I already went through the complaint anyway. But the fact that um the fact that that uh it keeps coming up here has only like like made me even more interested in digging into his case. So I don't know what what the deal is with that, but. It's, it's, it's been crazy. Kristen says, can a side call a surprise witness? How late can they wait to tell the court who they're calling on a particular day? No, you can't really call a surprise witness. You've got to give notice because they they need to be able to prepare for a cross-examination. Also, generally speaking, if it's not a rebuttal witness, they have to be on on the witness list before trial begins anyway. So only rebuttal witnesses, there's only some level of surprise that you can have for a rebuttal witness, but that's it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Next one is Miriam question and this one very generous again thank you uh when the jurors decide how will we be informed also will they stream it oh okay yes no sorry we did answer this one okay Can thank we, you um yeah is the t for tennessee one still there oh yes wanna, yeah, yes wanna, that's a that's a mind. very good one thank black you black smoke let me, let me... means they have no verdict white smoke means they've reached a decision <laughs> <laughs> no this is not choosing a pope <laughs> um yeah, I didn't See mean here. that. Sorry, I mean it. No, 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 no. But that that was a good. Thank you so much for reminding me. Oh, here it is. Okay, I've got it. T in Tennessee. Yes, thank you. She says, I will say this though. While it is all sad, your coverage has let my granddaughter learn a ton. The biggest difference in yours and other coverages is no one is being inappropriate around Amber or anyone as a person. Um. Yeah, and if and I just want to talk a little about this because yeah, I, sure. you know. This is something that for me, um, I have always been extremely sensitive to the media izing of trials at all, you know, and that we could call it the OJification of trial or whatever. And this is something that we as lawyers have to deal with ethically and morally. And I think I want to just bring this out to say, I think Alita, you've been doing a fantastic job of this. And there are other oh, places on, on the web that I you know, I wouldn't want to appear on that stream. And I think the way that they treat it is a little more, um, the, the sensationalism for the sensationalist sake, rather than being instructive. And I think one of the things that media attention like this can do is it gives you an incredible opportunity to, to show how the law actually works, how justice actually works. What is going on here? This like shrouded, mysterious thing of the law. We have this opportunity, this incredible opportunity to to let people in and i think that it's a very difficult thing to balance and i think alita you've been doing an incredible job of it so thank you True. thank you yeah. so much you're really here. really kind of you um and thank you t in tennessee i really appreciate it and, and i hope that your your granddaughter has been enjoying learning about the process too all right I'm getting something. joe joe I'm getting tell something. us we're trying no, to get a, get a connection from you out. you know what turn off your camera that'll help with the, with the connection that's what we've noticed also, we just don't want to. See, no, I'm just kidding. We do want to see your face. <laughs> but <laughs> you, just got yeah. can you guys hear me? Yeah, turn off your video, you. Joe. Turn oh, off your yeah. video. Yeah, if you turn off your video, you'll have a turn better audio video. connection. Uh, he heard us. Okay. He's just figuring out now how to turn off. A little video. bit of a delay. <laughs> so this is just say. Is that better? Yes. A I think so. We'll see. Better? We'll see. That's not any better. I, I no, can hear it. No, a big fat zero. That's not any better at all. <laughs> oh, it's a lot better right locks. now. Oh, no, no. Just turn off the video. Turn off the video. Right Everything's way, down. way better as soon as it's off the video. Thanks, Rick. Great help, Rick. <laughs> you were great. This you know, we can hear better. everything you're saying now, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> 
So meanwhile, Ian's calling from oh the my God. Factory. All right, well, I don't know if you guys can. I'm going to provide you a little update anyway. And if you, and if you just hear static, whatever. Oh, no. Also, the Good court is coming you, back. Joe, Joe you got to get back in the courtroom. Crazy with Dennis's Joe. work there in the beginning of his examination. That was... He just like kept basically reaffirming every negative thing that, that the guy was saying. I, I don't know. I had a lengthy talk with um, Charnay. What's her name? Charnay. The, uh, the law uh, crime. Char- painter, yeah. Not law crime. Oh. Uh, Chanley. The other one. Chan- Chanley. Whatever. Chanley. Yeah. And she actually took from it that. Oh, Joe, we got we got courtroom is, is coming back. The good doctor Work here looks suspicious in, Joe. In the whole process. Joe, get get your butt back in there. I'm gonna kick you out. <laughs> go get in, go get in the court. All right, go. I gotta get back up there. Beautiful, super good. This was great. Let's do this again real soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, we love you. We, we Worth love the price you. of admission. Please folks. come back after <laughs> after court and tell us. Uh, <laughs> redirect. Thank you. Honor. I'm gonna kick you out now. Doctor love Spiegel. you, Joe. Uh, you were asked about whether you were able to examine Mr. Depp. Do you recall those questions back and forth? Yes. And so if I understand your testimony, you asked twice for Mr. Depp to be interviewed by you, correct? Yes. Objection leading. And, and uh, overall. And, uh, and then in addition to that, Ms. Hurd requested twice of the court for Mr. Depp to be submitting to an examination of you, correct? Yes. And those were denied, correct? Yes. And now Mr. Depp is contending that it's unethical for you to provide an eth- uh, uh, an opinion in this case because you didn't get an opportunity to interview him. Do you think that makes sense? Who'd want to interview objection, you? Your Honor. Uh, Argumentative. I'll sustain the objection. All right. Mm-hmm. Is that your understanding? That is my understanding of it. Okay. Yes. Um, now, when counsel for Mr. Depp was reading to you the Goldwater rule, there were two words that he kind of went over pretty quickly, and I'm going to go over them again with you a little bit slower. Yeah, here it and is. that was that the Goldwater rule was that you cannot make an armchair diagnosis, right? Objection. Based on it's a paraphrase. Quote, okay. publicly available records. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. Now, the records that you reviewed in this case were private, were they not? Yes. And in fact, Dr. Blaustein's records were marked confidential, correct? Yes. And his deposition was marked confidential? Yes. Okay. And uh, Dr. Kipper's records were all marked confidential? Yes. Objection leading. Right. And, and uh, I'll sustain. Okay. What, what, if any, labeling was there on Dr. Kipper's deposition? Every, all the documents I reviewed were confidential, and I also signed the confidentiality agreement, so everything I looked at was confidential. Okay. So that, in fact, does not even comport. That doesn't meet the uh, restrictions. Objection leading. I mean, so would it be fair to say that you have not, have you rendered any opinions in this case as an expert witness based on publicly available records? I have not rendered any opinion based on any publicly available records. Yes, you said you did on those video apologies. Now, you were asked... A number of questions about narcissistic traits and your di- your diagnosis or findings that Mr. Depp exhibited narcissistic traits or had that disorder. Do you recall that testimony? Yes. All right. And uh, the question was asked of you of the uh, whether if you have five of nine narcissistic traits. Do you remember that testimony? Yes. Okay. Now, one of the ones you testified before was in, for narcissism, it requires admiration, correct? Penguin, yes. he's linked in the description What if any below. record evidence was there that Mr. Depp requires admiration? The, the very people that surround him need to admire him or they're no longer in his employment or his uh, working circle. Okay. The second one that you discussed was sense of People around for like 30 years. Testimony? Yes. The right. What record likely. evidence is there that Mr. Depp exhibited, exhibits behavior of needing a sense of entitlement? So, again, thinking that uh, Ms. Hurd was marrying him solely for his money and his influence, and that that was the case, was, in my opinion, very entitled. All right. And the third what? one you discussed was exploitative. Do you recall that? 
Yes. Okay. And what is the record evidence that Mr. Depp exhibits behaviors of ex that are exploitative? Again, I think the whole concept of abuse is exploitative. Okay. Um, the fourth one was Wait. lacks empathy. Do you recall that? Yes. Wow. And what is the record evidence that Mr. Depp exhibits lacking empathy? So in order to get to, to that level, you have to assume to the abuse that you're trying to prove. Uh, commit intimate yeah. partner violence. Okay. And All right. The control you have over someone. I'm sorry. Can I be heard? Okay. Did, how do you show exploit, uh, exploitativeness? Yeah, it, it, none of this is based on his profession. It's it's just professional slander. Uh, that's, yeah. it, that's all it is. Yeah. This guy's yeah. Yeah. He's, 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 he's uh, making all he, kinds of non-professional assumptions here. I'm just going to yeah. ask you to give the record it's evidence of Mr. Depp's uh, kind of lacking empathy that you know of. Yes. That you know of. Elaborate. You, yes, just okay. just a little different than what you said before. Okay. Um, so, if if one does, uh, so I'll make it more direct. So, if you're not agreeing with what Mr. Depp has to say, you are no longer useful. Okay. Therefore, you don't really care about others for others. You care about others for your benefit. So off and on dismissing Dr. Kipper uh, for Dr. Kipper setting some boundaries on substance use protocol, substance detox is an example of lacking empathy and not really caring what other people have to say. Empathy for your <laughs> medical right. physician? Another one of the characteristics that you cited was envious. Do you recall that testimony? Yes. What is the record evidence that Mr. Depp exhibits envy? I think jealousy is a good start for that. I, I think that Ms. none of these are suitable for that. Have a career. Start with that. I think at least they've at least presented has, evidence uh, on envy. And the, the Whether or not you believe it or not, they have. Mr. Frank. Yeah, Owen. but um, this is so wildly uh, improper. This week for... was burst in comment. Sorry, last week was burst in comment about things about jealousy. So I think it's pretty apparent. Okay. And this is the awesome. next one you next listed one. was fragile self-esteem. Do you recall that? Yeah. And what is the record evidence of Mr. Depp so, exhibiting that? So fragile self-esteem would be more along the line of a cluster B trait. I should put that in. It's not necessarily the criteria for narcissism. So it's a, a trait. Um, and basically what that means will be that the combination of poor self-control and rapid this is like mistakes first year psych student is state. fragile yeah. self-esteem, fragile um, personality. So traits. I'll so rant about that in the other fair moment. Rather but, uh, than just say narcissistic. It's a thing. All right. Now we've seen Mr. Depp during this trial doodling and eating candy. Uh, what, if any, uh, evidence would that suggest that he has narcissism? What? You, can you have got serious. to be kidding me. Sustain the objection. Yes, yeah, sustain the objection. Thank you. Well, Jesus Christ. You Are you kidding me? About Didn't you testify to bringing the lawsuit itself was narcissistic? And Counsel for Mr. He Depp started came to, yeah. back and Credential said, back in a cracker jack uh, are you aware Ms. Hurd has been <sighs> diagnosed with borderline personality disorder Sorry, I'm Canadian. or histrionic I should have gone with personality Nurang. disorder? Now, you reviewed, you, I think you testified at the beginning, you reviewed the therapy and counseling and medical records for Ms. Hurd, correct? Correct. What, if any, uh, evidence was there that Bonnie Jacobs diagnosed and were heard with either borderline personality or a histrionic personality disorder. Objection, Your Honor. I, I, that's fair, Cross. He he asked the question. That's fair. Re redirect. It's beyond the scope. It's not overruled. Thank you. So, I mean, if I could start, Ms. Jacobs uh, demonstrated no type of personality disorder, borderline or otherwise. And on a review of uh, Dr. Uh, yeah, uh, Dr. Curry's records. Objections beyond the scope of the question. Uh, it is, I'll, I'll, I'll ask each of them separately. And you you also reviewed the medical the therapy records for Ms. Hurd for Connell Cowan, correct? Yes. What, what if any evidence was there at any time that he diagnosed Amber Hurd with borderline personality disorder or histrionic personality disorder? Not only did he not, he referred to Mr. Depp as a narcissist. Okay. Now, you also re reviewed all of Don Hughes' Team records Tennessee, and her testing, you. correct? Again. Yes. And what, if any, evidence did you find in any of that extensive testing and note-taking uh, that she had found that Amber Heard had borderline personality disorder or histrionic personality disorder? Objection leading. What, if any? Overruled. Oh. None. 
Okay. And you also reviewed Dr. Curry's notes and her testing, correct? Yes. All right. And what, if any, evidence did you find in any of Dr. Curry's testing that Amber Heard had either borderline personality disorder or histrionic personality disorder? She had traits. She did not meet the full, on her own evaluation, she did not have the full endorse enough criteria to meet the criteria for borderline personality disorder and or histrionic personality disorder. She definitely had traits. She did not have the disorder by going by the strict number of uh, criteria. All right. Uh, now, you mentioned in meet? response to Mr. Depp's counsel's questions, you started to talk about battered wife syndrome. Uh, what is your experience with battered wife syndrome sometimes being mistaken with borderline personality disorder or histrionic personality disorder? Objection so, compound and leading. Mm. Mm. Overruled. Um, so battered wife mm. syndrome, which is more sub-syndromal or not quite PTSD, has 70 symptoms of PTSD. And if you hear some of them, you'll see why someone might think that. Um, they do have reliving experiences as if feeling as if the abuse is happening, even if it's not by, upon reminders of the uh, yeah, upon reminders of abuse, such as getting ready to use something, getting ready to use a substance or something along that line. They do have hyperarousal. They do have hypervigilance, which is very easily mistaken for the emotional reactivity of borderline personality mm -hmm. disorder. They do have avoiding symptoms, so they avoid but emotions, uh, activities, people, and if that can't be happening, they start becoming much more anxious, much more hyper aroused. Um, they have inter disturbances in uh, relationships, which clearly can be an issue. Intimacy uh, problems, again, which could also resemble borderline personality disorder. So those description and traits that were there, uh, A, did not meet the full criteria for borderline, and B, could readily easily be explained by a bad wise syndrome a form of PTSD. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, you also indicated earlier that you reviewed the deposition of Amy Banks, correct? Yes. A and what, if any, uh, uh, determinations did you make based on her deposition from her meetings with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? So, uh, Dr. Banks is a professor who uh, at Harvard, the leading institution in America for medical schools, who is an expert on intimate partner violence. She had a chance to meet them in a relationship uh, counseling. Uh, and Question, you're on a non-responsive. It's not non-responsive. I said, what if anything did she find? Sustained. All right. Tell the jury about Amy Banks, the significance of Amy Banks. So what, Ms. what uh, Dr. Banks found was that she fully believed uh, uh, Ms. Hurd's version of what was going on. Objection hearsay. That's true. Yes. I, I, re I reversed those. Let me let me do it again. Please tell the jury. Sustain the objection. Please let me, please tell the jury what uh, about the qualifications of Dr. Amy Banks. This is the one who saw both Ms. Oh. Hurd and Mr. Depp. Dr. Banks is a, uh, a professor at, uh, I don't know whether it's assistant associate professor at Harvard uh, University Medical School, one, if not one of the two top medical schools in the world. Uh, who specialize in intimate partner violence. She is above all people who understand if someone is victim, perpetrator, because she does this, researches this for a living every day. Uh, and that's that's her qualifications. Can I say what she reported? Uh, then I'm going to ask you, what, if anything, did, did Dr. Banks indicate relating to histrionic personality disorder or borderline personality disorder for Ms. Hearn? Dr. Banks didn't mention anything about personality disorder at all. What she did mention was whom she felt gave a more accurate version of objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Hearsay. That's a credibility testimony. I, I, I think he can testify to that. I'll yeah. sustain objection. Next question. Okay. What, if anything, did Dr. Banks report, not saying what the ultimate conclusion was, what, if anything, did Dr. Banks say about? what was reported to her by Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp and how they responded. So Ms. Hurd discussed the, um, in trying to, again, as a victim, trying to save the relationship, uh, discussed with Dr. Banks, these accusations, these, these, these uh, facts of intimate partner violence. Um, Mr. Depp. Objection not, hearsay. Is all hearsay? I think he's, Absolutely. He's, he's entitled to rely on hearsay, and he's not giving what ultimately. He didn't say how he used it to form to his he opinion. He's just testifying to what she said. Yes, yeah. that's different. He can rely on it. Yep. All right. 
What, if anything, did Mr. Depp do in response? Mr. Depp said nothing. When Mr. How do you know that? Were you there? Accused him of intimate partner violence. Mr. Depp said nothing. And what is the significance objection of that? Objection hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. All right. And what is the significance of that? Uh, the significance of that is with... Objection, no foundation. Sustain. Yeah, no doubt. Okay. All right, we'll, we'll move on. Um, you were yeah, asked no about MDMA and what the impact could potentially uh, be of taking eight to 10 of these pills. Do you recall? Yes. Okay. And now I'm going to take you to Australia 2015. You've reviewed testimony over that, right? From Mr. Dab, Ms. Hurd, yes. and the number. Okay. Um, were you, do you recall that Ms. Hurd also said that she found dime bags of cocaine in drawers at the end of that three days? Yes. Okay. I'm going to ask you, Michelle, can you bring up 1828? It's already in evidence. And if we could publish that, to, okay, we can. Thank you. Um, I'm going to, this is one of the pictures that was taken in Australia, and the testimony's been that these two canvases of Ms. Hurd's were painted completely over. Is that something that could be the impact of having eight to ten tablets of MDMA and combining that with cocaine and alcohol? Objection, no foundation. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. The foundation's already been laid, Your Honor. That's no. Same the objection. Next question. Okay. What if anything, if you look at the painted canvases on this one, what if any uh, uh, evidence is that that reflecting behaviors uh, indicative of taking a lot of MDMA? No. No. What? There is no way he knows that. No. God wow. damn. You testified earlier about... Uh, property destruction of property do you recall that yes okay could you tell the jury what uh what how that relates to the correlating factors of risk factors for ipv again destruction of property is a form of psychological uh abuse psychological uh mistreatment and so destruction of property is used as intimidation and as means of control okay michelle can you bring up 1829 And this has already been admitted. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, and what, if any, evidence uh, does this uh, reflect as correlating behavior to risk factors of IPV? I would say that one that demonstrates uh, a good deal of violence and psychological uh, 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 abuse. Uh, I, I think it's pretty clear that they're trying to be intimidating. I, I don't think. Objection, Your Objection. Honor. Speculation. Thank you. Please continue. It would be it would, people who would misuse ecstasy with without coke, without cocaine, are prone to agitation, suspicion, jealousy, violence. Uh, what we're seeing there would be very consistent with that presentation. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Can you now bring up eighteen I want to thirty? Bring up. 30, I'm prone to agitation, therefore and that's I must already been admitted MDMA. into evidence as well, right. Your Honor. I'd ask that it be published. I mean, some and of what this if is any good evidence, if I believed him at uh, all. Does this uh, uh, correlate with behavior indicative of IPV perpetration? Again, this is intimidation, no. psychological. How do you know that? Yeah. To emotionally yeah, no. Objection, Your Honor. Can we be heard? You can't know it's intimidation. Right. That yeah. no, you don't know that. How in the heck is half of this stuff redirect? It's not. Please tell us, please tell us everything that the other psychiatrist said. Also, please tell us about her credentials, which incidentally they're all hearsay to you. How do you know she's a professor? How do you know that she has these credentials? I mean, you don't how do you know that? Right, right. Call her if you want the if you want yeah. her opinion, yeah. call her as a witness. Mm-hmm. Please mm -hmm. tell us how great she is. Please tell us all the things she said. I don't know, man. I, you know, 
he he must beat his wife because he eats candy in court is quite yes the, he eats candy in yeah court. please tell us how that's he's the, therefore a narcissist, narcissist. You, uh, i've been eating chicken this whole time question, does that make me a narcissist what, it, it it can be evidence, you don't want us to answer that <laughs> correlating to the risk factors for ipv <laughs> again i i think the the violence comes through objection your honor just the evidence Locus of right. risk factors. If right. you can evidence or, I'm sorry, the evidence of risk factor would be uh, uh, accepting a more than average a degree of violence as well as psychological abuse. Okay. Uh, are you aware of any uh, record evidence of Ms. Heard writing on walls, mirrors, countertops, or painting canvases? No. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. You can take that down now. Now, you were also asked about Seroquel um, and uh, some of the other prescription medications. Um, did you, during the course of your review of evidence, see the lists of medications that Mr. Depp was on at one point? Yes, I read that list. Michelle, I'm going to ask you to bring up Defendant's Exhibit 301. And Dr. Spiegel, I'm, it's not in to evidence yet. I'm going to ask you to take a look at this. Is this one of the documents that you had that reflected uh, the amount of medication that Mr. Depp was on as of October 26, 2014? Yes. Okay. Um, and this was an email from Debbie Lloyd to Dr. Blaustein, his treating psychiatrist, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, can you tell the jury that we've got Seroquel, 50 mg? Can you Objection, just tell, hearsay. Can you just Is tell it, the jury? Uh, I, I haven't finished asking the question yet. Oh, so Lord. let's approach. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Kim Steinberg says, hello from Sweden. Wouldn't it be easier for AH to claim mild abuse compared to the extreme stories in her testimony? Feels like she always tries to take everything one step further than JD. Yeah, my impression is that she's been telling the story for so long that every time she's exaggerated a little bit and that she can't go back on it after so many years of 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 exaggerating more and more. So that's that's how she end, has ended up here, is my impression. Um, Alita, when can we expect the barrister on here? Um, next week, for sure. Um, we're, we're planning on having him on so we can talk about the UK case. Uh, Black Belt Barrister is the one particularly. Myra M., any thoughts on reviewing historical trials like the Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle from the 1920s? He was an actor who was wrongly accused of murder. Um, yes, I'm definitely thinking about that for sure. Um, not specifically that case, but other cases reviewing some direct and cross-examination, some portions of trials that have been, um, that have been uh, filmed in the courtroom as well. Is that Whitney? Michelle, can you scroll up just so I can see all of them at the same That's time? That's what I heard was that she was sitting Thank with the legal you. team, which I don't so understand. She's right behind the lane. She's right behind yeah. the lane. Yeah. Siegel, if someone was taking 50 mega, meg, are those, is that meg, milligrams? Milligrams, milligrams yeah. of Seroquel. Megapines. Megapines. going to say megapines. milligrams of Seroquel. Millibytes. And 50 <laughs> mil, milligrams of Seroquel and 50 Where's all in one when day. How would that impact Thank you again? So obviously this is not for sleep because um, I'm presuming you're not wanting to sleep in the morning, noon, and from four to six, although you are sleeping at night. Uh, what I would say is he's using it for one purpose, as I say, with substance use disorder, they're using it to calm down. They're using it just to sit down and relax. And given that you're taking 45 milligrams of Adderall a day, uh, to stay awake, and um, that's more than the uh, prescribed for adults and children, for that matter. Um, I, the combination makes very little sense at all to me. Uh, right. And if a person was taking 300 milligrams of Neurotin, I, I'm going to pronounce that wrong again, uh, four times a day and 600 later in the day, how would that impact? Again, person. you're looking at medications that are there solely for a substance use disorder patient to get them up and to calm them down. That's all this is. This regimen is about. Uh, Deb Penton doesn't have a psychiatric indication other than actually doesn't have a psychiatric indication, although it does calm you down. And it, uh, as I may have intimated before, similar to Adderall, uh, Gab uh, Penton is also abusable. Similar to Quetiapine Seroquel is also abusable. So you're getting these kind of unusually calming effects 
from these medicines while at the same time getting what's called a super therapeutic dose or an excessive amount of Adderall. And for the record book, adults are only indicated with Adderall for the extended release, not the immediate release preparation. And why that's relevant is the immediate release preparation is more abusable, you get more high quicker. The extended release goes out throughout the day, the immediate release gets you up right away and then down. Now in ADHD, this medicine is very effective. But from what this is being used for, clearly based on the combination, uh, no. All right. Do addicts lie? Yes. What kind of a question is Don't that? Don't even. Now, you were asked and he just said yes? Mr. Depp passing out. Do, Do people you lie? recall reading Do testimony women lie? of Mr. Depp yes. Often. passing out in the bathroom <laughs> in his vomit? Yes. Okay. Can confirm. That, does that help refresh your recollection of yes. what you recall? I, also, right. I mean, for the record book, I don't think that falling asleep with ice cream on you is a objection beyond the scope of the question. Oh, uh, keep going. I don't think Sarah, taking Saraguel at night and falling asleep with ice cream on you is not what Saraguel is indicated for. It's not meant to put you out in a state where you don't even be able to stay awake to put ice cream away. All right. Michelle, if you can pull up Defendants 1090. It's a weird. I feel weird. like falling asleep Sorry, with ice evidence. cream dripping on me is something I could do without <laughs> any medication. Yes. Yes. Start with the real facts. Feel, feel like it's within the range of just normal. Dr. Spiegel, uh, does this look like, uh, I, I mean, did, would this be evidence correlating with uh, behaviors consistent with IPV perpetrator risk factors? This would be Carly, a person who is completely knocked out and it's usually only one way someone gets knocked out what? that badly and that's with pharmacological assistance whether it be legal or illegal they make it to the bed they don't sleep with their head on a game box in a this is furniture a that that doesn't happen to people who sleep oh, what? no matter how tired you are no matter how tired. i've been a resident in the past and i, I was up for 40 45 hours objection beyond the scope I love how he made it about himself. I have narcissistic right. questions, uh, doctor. Michelle, can you pull yeah. up 109.5? I'll make it to my bed. I never thought the floor looked attractive to me. <laughs> he didn't even get to answer the question, which is, is that picture indicative of IPV? My uncle well, sleeps on the floor. I was waiting for him to tie all those together. together. This. I'm going to ask you the same question, Dr. Spiegel. Uh, what, if anything, does this indicate oh, relating I'm to I'm just going to note that I slept on the floor outside the courthouse. Again. You know, colloquially, so I guess uh, my wife should be worried according to, to this guy. <laughs> Did you eat candy at the same time, Ian? I may have eaten some candy. And then let's pull up 1094, please, Michelle. I guess I'm history's greatest monster. Defense, and that's also been admitted. I'm going to write an intervention letter starting now. <laughs> and now we have the ice cream picture. And what, if any indication, does this have? Probably no, so. Objection, speculation, Objection, stupid. Oh what if any <laughs> uh, correlation, uh, what if any evidence does this indicate correlative with the risk factors for IPV? Again, you thought it was vomit. If you you're looking at this photo, you think it's a risk factor, 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 factor for IPV. I, uh, it's a I don't know what to tell Objection, you. Objection, move to strike. All right, sustained. I'll strike it from the record. Next question. Oh, I didn't mean from the record. I mean, I actually just want to hit it. Uh, we'll, we'll just move on. Okay. Um, you were asked about earpieces. Did you do you recall reviewing Tracy Jacobs and Joel Mandel's depositions? Yes. All right. And do you recall them Mr. both Hamill, testifying thank you. that Mr. Depp had someone on salary to feed him his lines? Yes. Okay. Now. You've testified that you reviewed a substantial amount of evidence in this case. Did you find any evidence that Amber Heard exhibited conduct or behaviors indicative or consistent with any of the risk factors for perpetrators of IPV? Objection beyond the scope. Well, it was suggested with the board. I don't know, Dennison. Personnel. Let him answer that that's a no. That'll help his credibility. But you did Cormier, find that for Mr. Depp, the correct? Chat. Super chat. Yes. Okay. And did you find record evidence that Mr. Depp had a substance abuse disorder. Severe substance use disorder. All right. Did, did any of the questions that? asked by Mr. Depp's counsel change any of your opinions in this case? Did I, nothing, there, no, not my opinion has not been swayed in iota. 
Okay. Do you hold them all still oh, within yeah. a reasonable degree opinion? of yes, medical so. and psychiatric probability or certainty? Absolutely, Brewster. Yes. Thank, Thank you very much, much Dr. Spiegel. All right. Yeah, yeah, we don't have so to hear from him anymore. Oh, God. Are your next witness? Call can absolutely make you My awesome. next witness is Catherine no. Arnold. Catherine Arnold. Okay. How can it get Catherine any worse? Arnold. Let's introduce Catherine Arnold instead. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, we were really wrong. They they had more witnesses that they wanted to put up. I do respect that they're all in the courtroom. I have to give them Do you have enough super chats to uh, buy the rights to send in the clowns? I feel like that's... <laughs> send in the clowns. I think you just need some merch that says, I survived Dr. Thank Siegel's you. testimony. Will you please state your name for the record? Catherine Arnold. And what is your profession? I am a entertainment industry consultant, and I also serve as an expert witness. Okay. And can oh, you please boy, tell the jury your educational background? Okay. Yes. So I was in the I've been in the entertainment industry for over twenty plus years. I started uh, as an assistant at ICM, which is one of the largest talent agencies in Los Angeles that represents actors, writers, and directors. And I worked with the talent agent there. And then I also worked at William Morris, uh, for William Morris, as a script reader. So I was working on scripts that they were delivered uh, and submitted to for their actors, writers, and directors. Uh, after that, I went into development of film and television projects for a company based in New York called the Maltese Company, which actually produced animated television shows and feature films based on Wall Street, you know, animated product, you know, like toys. And then I went to Did work you say they were cartoons uh, based on with Wall a company Street? called the Goober Peters Company. And Goober Peters was, toys. at the time, one of the largest production companies in Los Angeles. They did films like Batman and Rain Man and Tango and Cash. They did TV shows like Witches of Eastwick. And there I was involved in the development of scripts we worked with the studio directly in terms of what cast would be attached to the scripts and, so and brought directors ago. and talent to those projects. Uh, I then went on to uh, work in, um, there's a lot. Uh, I went on to work uh, in the independent film world as a film producer. So I found the material, I would get the financing, I would get the cast and the director attached to the project, we call that packaging. And then we would go and, and obtain financing for that either through equity sources or international sales and financing and bank financing. And then I also uh, went on after that, I produced um, five or six films with actors that you may know, including Salma Hayek, Vincent D'Onofrio, Kirstie Alley, Thomas Jane, Ethan Hawke. And then I worked with a international sales and production company where I was the head of production and I worked again on the development of scripts and the uh, procurement of financing. So I worked in both the independent world and the studio world, meaning independently financed or financed by the big studios like Warner Brothers and Disney and Paramount and such as that. Uh, that's it. That's the bulk of my work in the entertainment industry. Did any of your films win awards? A couple of them did. So a couple of the independent films that I uh, produced, one of them won, uh, called The Coriolis Effect, won the Venice Film Festival in its category. Uh, and then I also produced another film that won the Heartland Film uh, Festival. It's called Crystal Award. Right. And what other video production projects have you been involved in? So throughout that time, in between those jobs, I also worked in the corporate world. So large studios like Warner Brothers and Disney and CBS would need corporate videos for their live events. So I would interview executives and interview their talent and then edit the piece together to create video and media for their live sales conferences that they had at that time. Uh, and then I also produced some commercials. All right. And what, if any, experience did you have in corporate relations and licensing? So early on in my career, I worked at the uh, Los Angeles 
Olympic Organizing Committee, and I worked in the licensing department um, where we handled the licensing of the Olympic logo, and we also worked with sponsors and suppliers who were funding those Olympic Games. So it was a lot of contractual negotiations with the use of the license of the logo, as well as raising money for the Games and working with those uh, corporate sponsors throughout the two years pre prior to the Games and then during the Games themselves. And what, if an experience, do you have working on film festivals? Uh, well, I've had films in festivals. I've actually been very lucky to travel the world and gone to a lot of festivals with my films, uh, both here in the United States and elsewhere. And at one point, I was also hired to raise sponsorship funds for the Sundance Film, uh, Sundance film Festival. They had a new program that they were uh, starting to do online festivals. And so I raised about a half million dollars for them in about a month. All right, and do you have a, a degree, a college degree? Yes, I graduated from UCLA with a, deg a bachelor's degree in economics. What does your current consulting practice entail? So as an entertainment consultant, having been in the business in both the independent and the studio worlds as both a producer and an executive, I work with uh, investment companies and production companies who are looking to navigate the various inroads of Hollywood. It's a pretty... Uh, it's a business is very different and unlike anything else and very relationship based. So I use my 20 years of experience to help them get cast, get financing, understand the distribution process, the marketing process, and get them set up uh, to be able to produce their films. Have you ever testified as an expert witness in the field of entertainment industry? Yes. Okay. Approximately how many times have you served as an expert? Uh, I've been involved in somewhere between 85 and 100 cases as an expert from beginning stages to testifying in court. And have you ever testified as an expert on damages and defamation cases? Yes, I have. Okay, and approximately how many times have you qualified as an expert on that? On defamation? Yes. I believe three or four times. Okay. And have you ever uh, been admitted to testify as an expert on damages? Yes. Okay. And how many times have you qualified as an expert on damages? T in Tennessee. Thank you. Almost all my cases Very have generous. some form of damage, uh, relation, you know, economic damage related to the case. So I would say in all of the cases that I've testified in, okay. I've been qualified in damages. Okay. Have you ever served as an expert for both? Have you served as an expert for both plaintiffs and defendants? Yes, I have. Okay. How much of your current practice involves consulting as opposed to expert serving as an expert witness? So over the last 10 or 12 years, it's been about 50-50. So I spent half my time working as a consultant and the other half working with lawyers on their cases. Your Honor, I'm going to move to qualify Catherine Arnold as an expert in the entertainment industry standards and practices and related economic damages. All right. Any objection? All right, so moved. Thank you. Now, you have a dual role here as an expert, correct? Yes. Now you're, you're going to be testifying with respect to Mr. Depp's challenges to or, or claims of uh, damages, and you're also going to be testifying to Amber Heard's damages, correct? Yes. All right. Well, I'm going to start you with Mr. Depp's claims for damages. Okay. Um, with respect to Mr. Depp's claim damages, on what subject have you been asked to offer your opinion? So I was asked to assess the any alleged damages that the op-ed piece in the Washington Post that Ms. Heard wrote whether that have impacted his career in any way, particularly did he lose any income or any op economic opportunities because of the op-ed piece specifically. All right. And have you been asked to limit that to the period of December 18, 2018, with the date of the op-ed, through November 2, 2020? Yes. Okay. Now, what materials did you review in making your analysis? There were a lot of documents. Uh, I reviewed the pleadings of the case, the complaints, the discovery items, the responses to what they call interrogatories, which are the questions that the lawyers ask uh, both sides. I reviewed uh, Mr. Depp's test, uh, deposition testimony, which there were volumes of that, as well as Ms. Hurd's. Uh, I also reviewed the deposition testimony of, of the experts that uh, were proffered that had to do with the entertainment industry, you know, the agents and the management teams of both both sides. Uh, Ron Schnell, the data expert. I also reviewed 
emails and texts between the parties, between their families, between their management teams, the audio uh, recordings, the visual recordings that have been presented in this case and the previous cases that have been involved in the last couple of years. Uh, I also did my own independent research from general publicity and press and investigative articles, as well as those that are specific to the entertainment industry and utilize some entertainment industry specific sources to get some information that was helpful to my case, to our, to the case. Thank you, Ms. Arnold. Please describe for the jury your uh, uh, observations with respect to Mr. Depp's career trajectory. Well, Mr. Mr. Depp has had an extraordinary career over many years, so it's it's a, it's a long one to look at. Um, obviously, he was a rising star in the late '80s and in the '90s, starting with Twenty One Jump Street, and you've heard you know all the films that I'm sure he's been in. Um, he he really started to break through when he worked with Tim Burton, the director, and and of course his character Jack Sparrow in Pirates of the Caribbean was, you know, world renowned, um, and probably um, his biggest role. And he was, a, you know, a well liked um, both critically and uh, within the industry and within the public as a movie star. Um, and at the same time. his behavior and uh, both on and off the set in his personal life and in his professional life start to interfere with uh, what we would say what everybody saw was his great talent. And it started, you know, there's some stories of, of, of issues that started back in the 80s and the 90s, but I would say really in the mid 2000s, between 2006 and 10, is when the behavior started affecting uh, his work to a certain extent in terms of lateness on set. Uh, and then as Ms. Jacobs, his talent agent, discussed with you uh, in her deposition, uh, it really started to affect her ability to get roles and, and the industry's willingness to work with him given the issues that he was having with both behavior, tardiness, drinks, drinking, and the drug abuse. Uh, and you know, other issues in his personal life. So it got more complicated for her to find him work. And I think it got harder for production companies and studios to hire him due to the challenges that that would put on a production. And when did Mr. Depp's career downturn begin based on your review of all the record evidence? Well, again, according to Ms. Jacobs, his agent, she mentioned that it started getting more challenging for her around 2010. The lateness uh, on set was being made, well, she was being made aware of that more and more often from production executives and the producers that she was working with on the Pirates movie. And not only Pirates, it, it continued on um, on the other films, including Mordecai and uh, Murder on the Orient Express. Uh, and in around 2014, when he had the appearance, uh, it was presumed that he was under the effects of alcohol at the Hollywood Film Awards in 2014. Objection, Your Honor, non-responsive. She's answering the career downturn. Yeah. Overruled. Please continue. Thank you. Um, in 2014, uh, when Mr. Depp appeared in the Hollywood Film Awards, Ms. Jacobs received many phone calls from both producers, casting directors, and production executives asking her what is going on with your client? Why, you know, what's going on with his behavior? Can we get him under control? And then I think it really started to shift around the Pirates 5 movie in Australia with, again, the lateness and the uh, issues uh, with the finger that stopped production and, and things of that nature. And then it just, it got harder and harder. Now, based on your analysis, what has caused Mr. Depp's career downturn? Objection. No foundation. Oh, overruled. Can you please repeat the question? Based on your analysis, what has caused Mr. Depp's career downturn? Are you going to say his lateness? I realize you've said a number of those, so just, is there anything else? <laughs> sure. Uh, well, we've talked about the erratic behavior, the tardiness, the drugs and alcohol abuse, and the lawsuits have had a really big impact, not just this lawsuit, but previous lawsuits that Mr. Depp has 
been involved with because there's a lot of publicity around anything that he does. And uh, every time he has filed a lawsuit, it is brought to light various issues with respect to whatever that's that going to play the about, way that they wanted to. Whether it was about, you know, erratic behavior or domestic abuse or drugs and alcohol and even spending habits. So every time a lawsuit has been filed, the press and the publicity has just been charged up and brought everything back to light. And it's, it, it's been an unfortunate problem for, for on, on that level for the industry to continue to work with him, even though all this is out in the, in the public. Doesn't that for sound the like films that him? were shortly before yeah. Pirates 5. Because the lawsuits are a result of- How successful were they? I'm talking Mordecai, uh, uh, Alice Through the Looking Glass, uh, you, you I mean, also just those, on the, like an the empathy Ranger, level Tonto. by the jury, if, right. if they Ejection think that he's compound. been wronged, they're going to be like, what? So he doesn't, he's, he's uh, not allowed to. Of course, Mr. Depp has had some extremely, obviously extremely successful films, but also in the, you know, the yeah, this line only four or five years prior really and, you know, through Pirates, there were films that didn't do well at all at and were jury. considered what the industry yeah. calls a bomb, which could have been uh, Alice with the Looking Glass, The Transcendence, um, the the Lone Ranger uh, and Mordecai were films that just didn't perform, although they were valued in their financing based on Mr. Depp's star quality and acting ability. Unfortunately, they just didn't perform. So as many hits as he's had, he's also had a lot of recent what they call failures in the business. And what, if anything, did Mr. Depp do with respect to showing up for a press conference in Japan for Mordecai? Uh, Ms. Jacobs mentioned in her deposition testimony that Mr. Depp didn't show up for the press conference in Mordecai, which he was not only an actor for, he was also a producer, and he didn't show up. Apparently, he was sleeping, so he wasn't able to make it. Okay. Now, what, if any, uh, impact did the Brooks litigation have on Mr. Depp's career? Is the jury familiar with this already, or...? Uh, well, I, I think you can, I mean, okay. So the Brooks litigation was, uh, it was, um, there was a, a litigation around uh, Mr. Depp had punched someone on one of the, I think it was a location had? manager on the set. Allegedly, of the maybe? Of Lies. Um, I, I don't know exactly what happened to that uh, litigation. However, of course, again, it was written a lot about in the press and unfortunately came to the forefront that he had, you know, violent behavior yet again. So well, you're not an expert on any of that. <laughs> and I'm going to say before the op-ed on December 18, 2018, right. were there, was there any negative articles, negative press about Mr. Depp? For quite a while, when you're a celebrity such as Mr. Depp, you're in the limelight and everybody wants to look at everything that happened. So after every movie or after every incident, there was usually press. But the, the, the ones that were more significant were the ones in the Hollywood, a couple of them in, in the Hollywood Reporter and uh, one in the Rolling Stones. So in 2017, there was an article in the Hollywood Reporter where the journalist discussed, I think the article was called Pirates of the Caribbean, the Diminishing Returns of Johnny Depp. And that Pirates, the one was, the last one was five, right? And that one didn't perform nearly as well as the other previous uh, Pirates of the Caribbean films. And there was some discussion that the character... Objection, had... hearsay, Your Honor. I, I think you could explain generally. Oops. Sustained. Okay. Um, let, me, let me ask you this. When was that Hollywood Reporter article on diminishing returns of Johnny Depp? That was in the spring of 2017. Kurt. Okay. And you said, Don't talk uh, like that. And I just want to make sure we understand, how well did Pirates 5 do compared to 1 through 4? It performed less well by over $200 million. Okay. It, it, um, I, uh, what if any other negative press was there in this time frame? We'll take 2017, 2018, before the op-ed. So in 2018, there was the Rolling Stones article that, was an in-depth expose on Mr. Depp's life. Um, again, his erratic behavior, the money he was spending on on wine. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. I, I think she can give generally, Your Honor, the negative. Sustain. Thank you. Um, Can't just bootstrap that in. What, if any, in. knowledge do you have of how, whether Disney saw the Rolling Stone article? 
there were emails uh, between uh, the publicity department and the co-chairs and some of the senior executive Disney that they would forward the articles as they came out, both the Hollywood Reporter article and the uh, Rolling Stones article, and they would make commentary. And Alan Horn, who is the uh, one of the co-chairs of Disney, used the word sad, and I think one of the other executives used depressing, that their film star was now being shown in this light to the public in a Rolling Stones section hearsay. Yeah. I, I just all right. Um, was there any more articles about Pirates of the Caribbean prior to the op-ed in December of 2018? There was an article in October 28th, uh, the Hollywood Reporter, October 28th, 2018, where the journalist had spoken to two writers of the film, and they were talking Objection about the hearsay. franchise. You know, she, she, she's entitled to rely on hearsay, and she's just giving the general she's not approached. She's allowed to have the existence of the article, which we've done the headlines on, and then yeah. you're having her describe the article. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, she she can say like what other people are talking about, but the way that she's saying it is that like this is a fact. This is something that happened. You know, there's the the lawsuit that people wrote about, and it just shows that he was violent yet again. Like that's so improper. Well, look, I don't know if this is the exact perfect hearsay line, but we do know that this is the judge's hearsay line because we've been down newspaper row before. We have indeed, indeed, indeed. So it's, it shouldn't come as a surprise. I, this is exactly what happened before, and it happened on both sides. Like, the judge has been consistent on headlines are okay, can't go much further. Yep. <sighs> And to answer some questions, guys, I know earlier there were some super chats about um, Vordir. I don't believe Vordir counts as – oh, maybe Vordir does does count against somebody's time. Should count uh, against Johnny's time. Yeah, that would, that, would, that would count against Johnny's time because if they were trying to put put an expert on, that that Vordir process would also count against them. So, yeah, no, uh, I, I take that back for a second. We're guessing but a little he, bit because it's, you know, it's up to the court, but it should be Johnny's time. Yeah, that's generally what I would expect anyway. So without saying what the article said, say what it's about. Yeah, it's been the rule the whole trial. Okay. So in October 28th, the article was, changed, it was called, uh, the article was about whether the Pirates of the Caribbean Objection franchise here, would say. be rebooted yeah, without, oh, oh, oh. please continue. The, well, in the article in October 2018 was about whether or not the Pirates franchise was going to be what they call reboot, re, you know, redefined without Johnny Depp. And that was in a, regarding two writers that were on the, the project. Okay. Uh, and there was if, one other one. I'd like okay, to go ahead, on. please. So <laughs> there was another article. Uh, there was an expose on uh, the president of production. It was also in The Hollywood Reporter. And this is the one that Mr. Marks, Mr. Depp's expert, pointed to um, regarding the op-ed's impact on, on Mr. Depp's career. And the online article was, as Mr. Marks pointed out, published on December 20th of 2018, but the same article was in print on the morning of December 18th, 2018, which is the same morning of the op-ed. So that Hollywood Reporter article that Mr. Marx used to say- Objection, that, no foundation. Oh, overruled. Please continue. The, uh, Mr. Marx had used that article to show that Disney wanted to let go of Mr. Depp because of the op-ed, but it was actually printed- for that? Actually, in the reporter, the same morning that the Washington Post article was printed. So there's no way that the Washington Post article had any impact on what the Hollywood Reporter journalist wrote. Okay. So they were on the same morning. They were released simultaneously, interestingly enough. And, and the one that was two days later was the same article just online? Same article, it was just online, yeah. Okay, thank you. Why now, what, if anything, be? was there about press in 2018 relating to the Sun and Dan Wooten and any litigation that right. Mr. Depp so, was bringing. So a lot of press was about the UK trial in the lawsuit that Mr. Depp brought against the uh, the son in the UK about the wife beater um, title that they used. So there was a ton of press around that, both at the time that it was filed and throughout as documents were being shared with the public. And then, of course, during the trial itself. Okay. And... and what is your understanding of when the the article, the wife beater article, first appeared? 
I believe it was in July of 2018, about six months before the op-ed piece. And what is your understanding of when Mr. Depp filed suit against the son and Mr. Wooten? Again, in 2018, I believe. Okay. June, would it be? Would, that, would, would it refresh your would it refresh your? It was in the spring or summer. Of, she didn't say she could remember after the article, so it was long before the op-ed piece was out. Okay, um, and what if any impact did Mr. Depp's litigation in the Sun case have on his career? That was a really tough one. Thank on, you, T. In Mr. Depp's career, because everything, every allegation of abuse, and every text, every email, all the audio, all the visual stuff was brought to light and made public. And so, not only did the public get get to see it, but the industry was watching closely. And it's hard for studios, especially a studio like Disney, who's family oriented, be connected to a star that has texts about burnt corpses and violent behavior in in, in video so it was a, it was a, a big conflict for a lot of the people in the industry to how to navigate that if they're going to work with star and, and what if any impacted mr depp's other litigation against mandel and bloom have during that time period as i was trying to say earlier every time mr depp brings a lawsuit because he's such a well-known public figure the spotlight goes on him. So every time a lawsuit was filed, whether it was to his business, against his business manager, against his former lawyer, even when he fired his talent agent, it becomes news. And then everybody talks about what could have preceded that. Why would that lawsuit have happened? And then they look at the details. So again, the erratic behavior and the financial issues and the uh, drinking and drug abuse was all part and parcel of every one of those. And it was brought to light yet again each time. What is your understanding of Mr. Depp's claims regarding Pirates of the Caribbean 6 and how that impacted? Well, Mr. Depp is claiming that he's lost money on Pirate 6, but Pirate 6 hasn't even been made yet, nor is there even a script that has been what we call greenlit, moved towards production. And so why he lost I don't money. Know how you lose something that hasn't happened. So what? I think that's what you're well, Okay, that doesn't make and any fact, sense. Since Mr. Depp's damages are limited November 2, 2020, and nothing since, and that hasn't happened, uh, is there any way he could claim damages for Pirate 6? Well, you, again, Objection it, leading. Overall. Again, you can't claim damages for something that hasn't even happened, whether he was in it or not in it. If or it was didn't going to be happen it, because it of this, it, whether it was 2018 or now. Uh, calls for a legal conclusion is that is no dumb as six. hell. Um, not only did he not have a contract, even back in the day, 2000. 18 or after that. No, I'm not saying that her testimony isn't pretty good on some six. points here, but this it is crazy. Exist, as we, yeah. Objection, yeah. legal conclusion. Thank you. Finally. I, I sustain. Yeah, it's a flat out legal conclusion. How do you know he doesn't have a legal contract? Well, so Ms. Jacobs said he didn't have a legal contract, and also his agents at CAA said he had not, he had not yet negotiated a contract for Pirate 6. Uh, and again, there is no script so they haven't greenlit it as we say they don't have it have it cast or with the director yet okay um based on your analysis what if any impact did miss herd's op-ed have on whether mr depp uh could claim a loss for pirate six zero uh, okay and why do you say that again well many things the movie doesn't exist yet so that's one but m even as important is that that's disney dumb in their file for this trial did not have the op-ed piece as part of all of the information they had read and looked about and discussed. The uh, conversations of Mr. Depp not being in whatever new version of Pirates, the, the franchise that goes forward, those were in discussions long before the op-ed piece even came out. And uh, there are other factors that Disney was considering, the lateness on set, the cost overruns at that cost, which can go from hundreds of thousands of dollars to millions of dollars when you have crews sitting around for two to four hours, eight hours, or even several weeks to a month when the finger incident happened. So on top of that, Mr. Depp is an expensive actor. Um, he can earn between 20 and $25 million per movie plus back end. So it's very expensive. So when I you wonder put that why all that together, is. The Maybe rising because he's a very skilled Depp actor. Talent the challenges that they had to keep it on budget because of his lateness and his tardiness.
challenges that they had to keep it on budget because of his lateness and his tardiness and all the other allegations that would affect a brand such as Disney, right? Someone talks about a burnt corpse does not necessarily coincide with the brand of Disney. So there were many problems. And interestingly enough, there was a lot of conversation in, uh, at, uh, in, internally in the industry. For Objection that hearsay. She's entitled to rely on hearsay, Your Honor. Sustain the request. You can't say it's hearsay. All right. Um, please, please continue without saying what the discussion in the industry was. <laughs> the Jack Sparrow character had it's quite nice. uh, been exhausted in terms of where it could go creatively. And I think the studio is looking for Elaine a way put for that it all to on her witness renew right there. the franchise, Figured but out, not please. necessarily base yeah. it entirely on the Jack Sparrow character, which is where it had ended up the last couple of years. Which says Elaine might not go, and, and, not and know evidence by the, the, the lesser uh, box office of Pirates 5 compared to the earlier ones. Okay. And, and was there any article that came out I mean, on what is cross? November is the 100 million dollars a successful movie? Three days after Mark damages XR, are cut off for leading to your health. Pirates of the Caribbean and Mr. Depp's What if any is not a good Jack drinking Sparrow. game? <laughs> I think they reiterated the fact that he was probably not going to be in the movie. Okay. Now, what impact has the op-ed had on Mr. Depp's career? Very little. Hardly anybody even knew the op-ed existed before he filed suit, okay. if anybody that I know, but certainly not Disney. Okay. How and, do you know um, that? What impact has How the op-ed had on Mr. Depp's Q scores? According to what I read of, of Mr. Alan Jacobs, an expert in uh, statistical analysis, and from my own research uh, on websites that are available to us, Mr. Depp's Q score, or if you're familiar with IMDb, God. which is uh, internet give database, an IMDb which rating. is available to public and to the professional side, uh, his Q score did not change uh, uh, dramatically. It was kind of in the middle of exactly the high and low of his Q scores overall. Oh God, it was Q in the middle, it was at like 113, which is where it was a couple weeks before and a couple weeks after. So the op-ed didn't have any effect. Uh, on his Q score, and that was reiterated by Mr. Jacobs in his deposition testimony. And then you testified in response to an earlier question I had that that people or, or that nobody seemed to notice the op-ed until Mr. Depp filed suit. Now that was on March 1, 2019. Do you recall? Yes, that's when okay. the lawsuit was filed. And, and why do you why do you say that they didn't notice until then? Why do you? Because the op-ed piece for most people in the industry kind of came and went without much fanfare or much, much conversation. It was much more about the, I don't think very many people even know it was written uh, until the allegations were made by Mr. Depp in the lawsuit. Uh, it kind of came in and out of the radar very quickly if anybody even saw it at all. All right. Between December 18, 2018 and November 2020, November 2, 2020, window here. Has Mr. Depp continued to star in films? So Mr. Depp, so the article came, the, the op-ed piece came out December 20, 18 and 20 of 2018. In December, uh, I'm sorry, in January and February of 2019, he shot a film called Minamata, which was an independent film that he, it was what, what we call a passion project. He loved the, the script and wanted to do it. So he was able to film that after the op-ed piece. You know? And then the Dior the campaign, the Sauvage, uh, I don't know the exact dates of filming, but I know that it did air throughout 2019. And uh, it's my understanding that he, he still may have that contract with Dior. So he continued that product endorsement. And then in uh, April, or sorry, in the spring and the fall, I believe it was, uh, Mr. Depp was able seasons. to do press uh, for the film Waiting for the Barbarians. He went to the Deauville Film Festival. He went to the Venice Film Festival. He was well received at the press conferences. You know, life was at the same level for him in terms of his popularity over in Europe. They were still, uh, he was still working on press for the films. And then of course he was scheduled to right. film uh, fantastic this is a bad direction for this question because uh, anybody intuitively looks at it and says he was and clearly affected. That's no longer the case, yeah. is that correct? Objection, Your Honor. What's the objection? Can we approach? Okay. I need the I mean, time to walk up. 
give me a second and I'll give you an objection. <laughs> I, I literally, that's what he does. Objection. Can we approach? It's like, I, I got something, but we, we'll get there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, you know, I mean, first of all, I would be very interested in that Hollywood reporter tidbit. If we got it entered into evidence at all, uh, if it was on the same morning, that would be interesting. And that's no longer the case. Correct. On fantastic beast. I don't want you to say anything more than that. That's no longer. It's the no case. longer the case. Correct. He's no longer in that film. Correct? Can I just scream orb, into the mic for several minutes? No. Is that okay? If no. you mute yourself first. What or... if any effect yeah, did the op-ed have on Mr. Depp's fan following? I don't know if it, I don't think it had any effect on his fan following. Again, his key scores didn't shift and he clearly has a strong fan base. In your opinion, what or who has caused the damage, if there is any, to Mr. Depp uh, on his career and reputation between December 18, 2018 and November 2, 2020? Objection, speculation. Over, overruled. She can speculate Mr. on Depp. that. And why do you say that? Well, again, filing the lawsuits, bringing to light the issues, is Mr. Depp doing that uh, on his own accord? Uh, and any statements to light that were the issues made is an interesting description. Uh, by his team, Mr. Waldman or anyone else is associated with Mr. Depp and those statements that came out, the defamatory statements, which we'll talk about in a minute, uh, were also Action. put out by Mr. Depp's team. So did, did he wasn't there an objection? In actuality, he's that. causing his own demise by bringing these lawsuits forward and that's continuing to kind of blaming the victim. ignite the fire of it's a, it's such negative a publicity bad around thing to run on. both of them. Okay. Are all of your opinions to within a reasonable degree of probability or certainty with respect to Mr. Depp's damages? Yes. Okay, thank you. I was not expecting expert. Now I'm going to move you day. to Amber Heard's damages. Um, with respect to Amber Heard's cross. claims for damages, on what subject have you been asked to offer your opinion? Man, they're going to try to run her in both directions on this. So I was asked Good to luck. look at the reputational harm and economic news. loss Thank you very much that for the generous super chat. Heard incurred due to the defamatory statements that Mr. Waldman, on behalf of Mr. Depp, made in April of 2020 and again in June of 2020. And what materials did you review in forming your opinions? Again, many of the same materials that I reviewed uh, for Mr. Depp's case, which was the deposition testimony, the pleadings, the discovery, all of that was included, as well as uh, expert testimony that was based on statistical analysis of negative social media campaigns that were created, as well as what happened. I talked to Ms. Hurd's agents. I read their depositions. I talked to her publicist. I read her deposition. I talked to Ms. Hurd herself to get a first-person accounting of what happened from her perspective after those defamatory statements were made. And then I looked at the, you know, again, uh, emails back and forth and texts back and forth uh, with uh, the studio Warner Brothers and other producers that the management team was working with to get Ms. Hurd more work. Now, before I go into the questions that I'm going to ask, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of define this so that the, we're all on the same page going through it. We've The jury has seen the three defamatory statements, their defendants, 1245, 1246A, and 1247. Um, and I'm just going to refer to them as the Depp slash Waldman statements in asking you all these questions. Will you understand what I'm talking about? Yes. Are you, okay, you going to say Depp slash Waldman um, every time? Please describe Amber Heard's career prior to the publication of the Depp Waldman statements. So Amber's had uh, a long career for someone who is not, you know, is, is fairly young still. She was in over 50 productions, uh, in, I believe including Aquaman and Justice League, but let's just say close to 50 productions. Uh, well, certainly 50 productions before the uh, defamatory statements were made. She had, you know, a consistent working actor's career. Her agents were strategic as she started getting more work, that they wanted her to work with better and better directors, to have, you know, the Danish, pod, the Danish Girl is a, a film that had a, a strong director and a strong uh, critical acclaim. 
And then she went from that to getting Justice League, which is on the bigger budget, is a bigger scale movie. And then of course, Aquaman and Aquaman 2. So her career was following a very nice steady rise and she was on the precipice of a meteoric rise with the, you know, with Aquaman and Aquaman 2 prior to the statements. Was Aquaman a successful film in terms of box office sales? Uh, Aquaman was an extremely successful film. It made over a billion dollars and I believe it is the highest grossing DC comic film ever. Now, and yet, it's just a little bit more than Pirates 5. What, if any, accolades did Amber Weird. receive for her role in Aquaman? And I'm going to call it, sometimes I'll call it Aquaman oh, 1, just to make sure we salty. don't get confused. Right. So, in Aquaman 1, there were many emails from the director and the producer. I find this the expert the to be um, and the producer, wildly and Objection said, hearsay. She's just characterizing well, her. She's not quoting them. Yeah. Well, I don't know where it's going. I'll, I'll, I don't know that I would have ever asked an expert to try to do both sides uh, of this. She got... Yeah emails from the director and the producer stating that they loved her performance. Objection. Loved her you, you, you can't say what the emails say, but you can summarize them or characterize them. Can you do that? Summarize them? Emails, well, emails of accolade from, no. uh, from the director and the producer. Objection. The hearsay. Overrule this. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, what type of press opportunities did Amber have prior to the Depp Waldman statements? So the, the press really loved working with Amber. She was on the cover of many magazines after The Danish Girl, after Justice League, after Aquaman. She was the cover girl, I think it was, of um, Marie Claire or Elle in, in the UK. She had a cover story of a big magazine in Mexico and Australia. They were, you know, some mag one magazine called her Woman of the Year, another one called her Role Model of the Year. So she got a lot of press. You know, she did a lot of press, both in magazines, but also on the press tours and the press junkets that she did for the films. Role model of the and, year. And were some of those California style, Marie Claire, Elle, uh, Shape? Objection. Yeah, there was a Objection lot of them. Objection leading. Overruled. There was what? a lot of them. So I, I mean, I, you know, don't remember all of them, but it was, you know, GQ, Elle, Marie Claire, you know, the big magazines, both here, the UK, um, East Euro Eastern Europe, in Latin America and in Australia. And what about after the release of Aquaman, which was December 2018? How was her press then? Well, the press tour was doing well, and they wanted to give her a lot more press. And I think up until the defamatory statements came out, she was on deck to do a lot of press. Uh, and then it, it Objection, kind of, no foundation. Overruled. Please continue. So the press and the request for press went silent after the defamatory statements were made, and which then the negative social media campaign ensued after that. Now, what factors relating to social media does the enter entertainment industry rely on when considering an actor for a role? Social media becomes a big part of how studios decide to use an actor and actress in a film because they want to know how the general public feels about them. They want to know what the consumer feels about that actor. So when there's positive social media, that's a good thing for the actor. When there's negative social media, it can be very bad because not only can social media be directed at the actor or the actress themselves, but it can also be directed towards the movie, towards the movie company, towards the product that the actor or actor is working with. So it becomes very complicated and it can get very messy to continue working with an actor or an actress if there's a lot of negative social media around them. And after the Depp Waldman statements, what happened on social media? After the Depp Waldman statements, social media blew up with negative tweets and Instagram posts and, you know, Facebook posts and Snapchat and trolling as we call it. It was just negative. Uh, According to Mr. Schnell, there was over 1.2 million negative tweets about Amber using hashtags that used the words in the statement of the Depp Wald statements, uh, Depp Waldman statements, excuse me, um, that 1.2 million negative statements between April of 2020 and November or January of 21. It's a lot of negative publicity. And, it, and there was just a lot of what we call noise around um, Ms. Heard and her work of any kind. Can you please describe to the jury what negative, what a negative social campaign is? So 
A negative social campaign would be when a, a fan base, or in this case, according to both the forensic statistical analyst, as well as Ms. Hurd's agents and pro, uh, the product that she was working with, L'Oreal, and her publicist, it was a campaign that included both live uh, accounts, live Twitter, you know, people that actually have our individuals, as well as what we call Objection. Clients. May I be heard? All right, here come. Can you bring in the ancillary stuff to what the Depp Waldman statements are to try to maximize damages that don't relate directly to the statements? Sorry, what was your question? Well, they're trying to hit on a cascading point here, right? They make the statements and then social media either takes it or they are running some kind of smear campaign at the same time. But that isn't up, that isn't up in their charging documents, right? Um, it's the effect of the statements directly. I mean, what they're saying is that, that she has PTSD as a result of them. I'm, I'm wondering if the PTSD would, would have been caused by the social media backlash right. or something. Other than the bots, please describe the rest of the social media, the negative Other social the media bots. campaign. What's the fan base was very energized by Mr. Is it the Depwald State? Dep yeah, let me let me just Dep Waldman. I'm 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 yeah, sorry. I, I call my brain I, right now. It doesn't matter. Why don't I do this? Let me formulate a different question. How has the negative social media campaign been used against Amber Heard since the Depp Waldman statements? Great. So the negative campaign has been used both to, you know, let's fire Amber off of Aquaman to the product that she was had an endorsement contract with with L'Oreal, the makeup. And every time that L'Oreal mentioned Amber Heard and the product together, they would get harassed. Her publicist company was harassed. Uh, any kind of movie that she was related to or television project that she was related to got negative attention from the social media world. Even the, uh, the charities that she was involved with were getting hammered, if you will, or bombarded by negative social media, which made it difficult to work with Amber on any level because negativity was brought to their product, service, or uh, film. Okay. And is that negative social media campaign ongoing to this day? Yes. Okay. And you were talking a little bit before, I think, about uh, uh, remove Amber Heard from Aquaman 2. What were your observations with respect to that in connection to the Waldman Depp, the Depp Waldman statements. Again, the, the, the statements, uh, I'm sorry, the social media campaign, whether called, you know, remove Amber from Aquaman or, you know, neg negativity for her relationship in that film, it always tended to use words that were inside the defamatory statements. They became hashtags, right? So, you know, if it was said in this, in the, in the defamatory statement, they were often reiterated in the tweets and the posts. Okay. I How see. difficult okay. is it for an actor to repair this? They type come from of the statements because people media. are otherwise mindless automatons. Is the legal theory? Well, mm -hmm. first of all, okay. it has to stop. Okay, so once it stops, then an actor and their team can work slowly and patiently in both. Maybe it's press interviews. Maybe it's relationship with charity. Maybe it's a small role in a movie and they do well and they they kind of rebuild their career. But it can take two, three, four, five years or more to rehabilitate your career. But first and foremost, it needs to stop. You know, it, it just needs to stop so that they can, the, the consumer can get beyond it and then they can reactivate their career by doing their work again. Describe Amber Heard's reputation after the Depp Waldman statements. Well, the reputation, I guess, depends on who, who you're talking to, but in the public. Literally your job to say negative. the answer to this question. Um, in the industry, okay. they like her work, but it's very, they can't work with her right now, again, because every time her name is mentioned, the negativity flares And that's up why again. she's not from So too. it doesn't make sense for them to try to make a movie, which costs millions of dollars, we'll and then have a lot of negativity it. towards the film well, or the TV yeah. show or the product. But at this product. point, she still is. So as her as world has been silent in terms of opportunities and even things that, that she wanted to work on are no longer available to her. 
Has well, how can you say that if they don't King exist? They can't be damaged. After yes? the Deb Waldman statements, right? For a long time, no. Uh, very recently, she was able to do a small independent film um, from some people out of um, who get their financing out of Europe. Uh, but up until that, no, she has not worked. How is that different from Johnny's no. small independent film? Based I'm on so the confused. fact that Amber came out of Aquaman, what should her opportunity, what would you have expected following the release of Aquaman December 2018 uh, up to, to what's going on now? I like to call Aquaman really, you know, Amber Heard's star, star is born moment. It was that moment where not only was she a good actor, but she was now world renowned because she was in the most successful film almost of all time if not all time and certainly for dc comics she was on the poster with the very handsome jason and they it. were this couple and <laughs> she was strong and beautiful and it was just this extraordinary moment for her to, for her to career to take off right you know her agents were excited the producers were excited uh everybody just wanted to hit the ground running and let's do more let's do more work what if anything happened to Amber's participation in Aquaman 2? So for a moment in time in February 2021, uh, there were conversations that Amber's, I'm going to be technical with you, okay. her option for employment was not going to be exercised. So they may not have hired her again, even though she had a contract for it. There was some question as to whether she was going to be hired again on Aquaman 2. All right. And did ultimately then she still get hired for Aquaman 2? Yes, she did. Her management team fought very hard and they ultimately uh, so what are you saying? hiring her, but also not only because of what her management team did, but Jason Momoa, the star, and James Wan, the director, committed to her in an email saying, if we are involved in so this what movie, are you saying? Objection, no foundation, hearsay. Objection, Don't say hearsay. what the email said, just summarize it or describe it. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to understand this world. Um, so I thought you said you were a you, you were expert witness. Team worked hard, but that's what that's the, that's Jason the other Momoa thing that you do. And the director were adamant. I think it might be the objection here. So worked hard. I think that's, in the, uh, your Honor, she has to be able to say that. But, well, sustain as to hearsay. Right. She does not have so, to be able to say it, Elaine. Stop. What, if any, uh, assurances did Mr. Momoa and Mr. Juan give Amber, that she would be in Aquaman too. Objection, Objection hearsay. Objection hearsay. Yep. She sustained it three times in a row, Elaine. What, if any, doesn't get you out of it, Elaine? Uh, <laughs> what, if any, pisses me off. <laughs> are you aware of any chemistry issues? I am. Somehow. I'm so Between sick of what, Amber if any. And Jason it is physically Aquaman. painful. According to the fact that they did a chemistry test with Miss heard Ms. Heard and Jason Momoa in order for her to be hired, that is a good indication that they thought the two of them had good chemistry. Uh, obviously, when you look at the movie, they have good chemistry and the poster, they have good chemistry. So I did you see the poster? General awareness that they had great chemistry. So Scott Pan, you very anything, generous super uh, chat. Thank you. Would Scott also Blaise. suggest uh, with respect to Aquaman 2 uh, that Jason Momoa believed they had good chemistry. He wanted her in the movie. Um, okay. That, she, I think, yeah. She she has to be able to rely on sustain. Yeah. Are you yeah. How does she know? How does she know what he thought? How does she know whether he wanted uh, her? In your there? review of she all hasn't of the record evidence, to anything that, what if anything that, that did you say that. see in writing? I want Denison to just have seven reviews to talk about their chemistry or lack thereof. With Amber Heard and Jason Momoa from Aquaman One. There were no communications whatsoever that there was no chemistry between the two. And and what, if anything, did you, in all the record evidence, did you see that the producer or Jason Momoa did not want Amber Heard in Aquaman 2? I did not see any and They opened the door to this. If Jason Momoa has fact, ever talked about correct. Amber Heard or their chemistry. I, overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, what, if any, leverage did Amber Heard have to renegotiate her salary under the circumstances of the discussions you were talking about, really not bites. exercising her option? She had zero leverage. She was fighting for her life to stay in the film. Okay. Now, is it typical for an actor to be able to negotiate an increase in their salary after a successful franchise? 
so you may know this already, and so I apologize if you've heard it before. I don't know what's been brought to your attention, but in a franchise such as a potential franchise as Justice League and Aquaman, the customs and practice is that the uh, studio will make a an agreement with the actor that incorporates potential future films. So if Justice League does well, they want to know what they're going to pay the actor for the next one and the next one and the next one. And in those uh, successive terms in the contract, the fee for that actor customarily goes up. It can go up by 10%, 20%, 100%, you could double, what have you. And in the case, as um, uh, Ms. Kovacevic stated in her testimony, that in a successful franchise, that a movie that's made a billion dollars, the actors, uh, agents will go back and try to renegotiate that upcoming price tag. So if it was going to be X, they might want it to be 2X or 3X. Hollywood's weird. And that's very Because the only reason you pre-agree to a price on an exercisable option is so that you lock in your films price. films in one single contract. Yeah, that's kind of the price point. Price. It's, it's, Hi, it's, it's thank very you weird. Again, for this very generous super chat. One thank you. to renegotiate their contracts. Uh, Jason Momoa renegotiated his contract very significantly from Aquaman 1 to Aquaman 2. Sure. Do you know roughly how Maybe much? Do you guys more? not understand uh, future looking it contracts? It went up from the, you know, let's uh, somewhere between 3 and 4 million to 15 million. I mean, Did I, Amber well, have a contract I, for Aquaman Everybody said Aquaman this, so this 1? is how Hollywood works. It's just yes. amusing to me. How much was she paid for Aquaman 1? Aquaman 1, she was paid $2 million. No, she wasn't. And she was paid $1 if, million. And did that same contract uh, said $1 million. provide for if she was in Aquaman 2? I'm sorry. I apologize. Aquaman 1, I believe she got $1 million. Aquaman 2, she All right, I got your back. $2 million. I apologize. <laughs> when when, when Hulk is a better, better witness. So Aquaman 1, it was $1 million. Just call Aquaman up, 2, we'll give you the it was whole $2 million. That's fine. Now, based on be, your experience uh, and knowledge in the industry, <laughs> how much we're all witnesses to this train wreck able to negotiate uh, her contract, but for the Depp Waldman statements for Aquaman 2, I'm asking. Right. Well, as you can see from Mr. Momo's contract, that went up exponentially up to $15 million. <coughs> uh, Ms. Heard, I don't know if she would have gotten $15 million, million dollars for the movie, but she Why certainly could have you? increased it by $1 to $2 million dollars or even doubled it. So if it was two, it could have been four. Yeah or even okay. five or six, depending on the enthusiasm, if had it just rolled from Aquaman 1 okay. to Aquaman 2 without any of this I think that's negativity good that was created by it's the a little shy of 100 million, but I think it's good testimony. Jay what Phillips, 4,400, thank you for the very Aquaman generous super chat. After the Depp Waldman statements. It was diminished. How do you know? Because it never was realized, now, so it couldn't have been. Why there. would Amber yeah, well, have been that's featured why, that's also the same reason she wasn't harmed by Pirates more six, prominently in Aquaman 2? Objection, no foundation. I can't believe foundation. they had this lady go out there with both of these um, arguments. What usually determines... Uh, what if any uh, time is left on Amber Heard's side? Are you to speak to Six, whether five, Amber four. should have I been or would have three been hours prominently today. featured in Aquaman 2? Well, a couple of things. Just, wait, wait, I'm trying to get your foundation. Are you able to speak to that? Yes. Okay. And... Please tell the basis of that, and then you're okay. well, uh, before they object. So there's two things: when two actors do well a lane, in a romantic her, relationship, and, I know, I know, you know, just they get married or they're gonna have a baby. You know, you want to follow that through because part of what <laughs> did well in Aquaman was not only the action sequences, but to have a strong female character having a relationship with a strong male character. It's very empowering. Right. So that was working for them in the first place. The poster of Aquaman that went around the world was the, one of the main posters it was of the two of them the together standing proud and strong, right? Being I don't know that if she couple. has watched the movie. And so naturally, as time. you go and develop scripts in the industry, you want to follow on the things that are working. I want to be an expert. And according to Ms. Heard, when she read the first script for Aquaman 2, she movie. had a strong romantic arc <laughs> for the entire film. And then she also got to do some great action sequences at the end of that storyline in that okay, script. Like so she was featured predominantly throughout the script of Aquaman 2 when she first read it. Insane numbers. Right. And then what happened? Well, she didn't hear anything, so she wasn't getting the scripts. When every when her colleagues were getting the scripts, she heard that through her agents. And then when she got the script, um, it was pared down from the first script dramatically. They had her in the hospital very shortly in the uh, in the first part of the movie called Act One. They had her in the hospital. Well, please spoil Aquaman too. Had her in the hospital, and then she was going to do this action action sequence in the Are end. Are you going to watch it? She trained five hours a day. I like for Aquaman. Five, several months with a trainer to do this big action sequence, and then when she got to set, 
two things happened. One, the costume designer said, I don't know what happened to your role. It got diminished. Objection and two, hearsay. Yep. Yeah. All right. Go I'm ahead sorry. with the second okay. one. That's and right. more importantly, yep. though, this big action sequence that she was going to do in, in, at the end of the movie in the third act was cut out and they took it away from her. So it was radically was it her by herself or did they, did they scrimp the budget and what a little she even trained for uh, <laughs> while she was preparing for the movie. And what if any changes were made to the storyline? <laughs> Good luck. I haven't seen the movie yet okay. specifically. So I can't. Oh, really OK. Right, Good luck. No. She was in the hospital. What do you mean by that? Was she injured in the first scene? I believe that in the in the first act, how does someone get to the hospital? Or has uh, to the I don't know exactly. I'm just going too, with apparently. what Mr. told me about yeah. is that yeah. she ends up in in the hospital early. The Aquaman in one, Aquaman I guess. Is I mean, I guess. The end, I guess they're assuming we're not going to watch it anyway. All of the interactions. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty you know, original character and the certainly the action. I will still back up Aquaman. How has Amber typically been involved in promotions for her films? As we talked about earlier, actively involved in the press and the promotion, whether that was on the press yeah, junkets, what we call writing it, tour the world, and they and the actors tour together of promotion. And, and answer questions from the press at various screenings and film festivals, and then also she was, you know, on the cover of magazines, usually after her her movie, especially after Justice League. And how was the promotion of Aquaman two affected by the Depp Walden statements? Amber has not been involved in any of the promotion that's been done to date, or very little particularly in a, in a teasers that I've seen, we call, you know, short little films about the making of and so forth. She's not featured in I'm them. I'm legitimately curious. And Is there any mass specifically, market Aquaman there was a big promotional stuff event right that now? Warner Brothers um, put out during the I fandom. I think it's a DC fandom event, which is a big kind of like Comic Con style event. Be an interesting and line they of invited all across. of the actors, or the majority of the actors that had strong roles in film, to participate both in the posters and the artwork, and also I guess they did just have at, the Comics at, Dome at thing. Fandom. And Miss Heard was not invited to either be in the poster or be at the event. And in fact, they told her she cannot come. Oh. Now, can can this hurt Amber's career one. not being allowed to be in any of the promotional materials? Absolutely. I, it means that <clears throat> nobody knows about her. She doesn't have the same part in the film. It's not going to take her on to her next that's movie. Case, generally speaking, she's anyway. not being associated with the tremendous amount of promotion that's going to be made for this, you know, movie that everybody's looking forward to see. So she's not a part of it because of this negative campaign. Because you just can't How sit with us. How have the Baldwin statements affected any other films or TV project promotions for Amber? So, uh, if the Prior lawsuit the caused Johnny all this damage, didn't the lawsuit cause more the, you know, the damage? After or around the time that the Walden one statements I came out, she yeah. was in the, the TV show I called The Stand. Some cross it was based on, on this, King except King I'm too excited because so, it's Denison. Big book. So, you know, keep your expectations so low for Cross. And again, get expert expert expectations are pretty low. Promotion for that for the same reason. Didn't I get uh, some blowback when I said that it's Cross was not that great on the cover of L.A. Style? Relating to stand before, I so feel like I'm kind of vindicated, guys. Right. So Miss Heard was no. In, I don't. And, uh, I don't they think done an article really said about before that he was her a good participation in this TV show, The Stand, the Stephen King novel uh, related uh, TV show, and they were going to give her the cover picture and cover story, and they took that away. I don't know if they've even if the article existed, but they certainly took away the cover picture and the cover story. Okay. How have the Depp Waldman statements affected press requests for Amber? There aren't any. So, so yes, they affected it because they used to get press requests, and now there are, aren't any. Has Amber heard like she could get any rules and the seconds if statement? she wanted to? Again, uh, uh, for many years, no. For a good period of time, or is it because she's just not talking to the press because small of the lawsuit? Because uh, she doesn't want to, and, she, and her attorneys don't want her to. Has Amber obtained any studio movie? I roles mean, if she wanted, she could be on my channel tonight. No. How, if oh, wait, at all, a have Amber's philanthropic yeah, opportunities been affected by Depp Waldman statements? Again, she had some passion projects. She was invited to do likes. some charity work, and she also had her own passion projects that she you know, loved and wanted to be involved with and even travel for. Uh, but they decided it wasn't going to be a good idea because every time she appears anywhere, the social media negativity cam you know, campaign starts up again. So she hasn't been able to do any of her charity work. What is an endorsement? So an endorsement is when a, an actor associates themselves with a product, either for 
print promotion or commercials, you know, like Jennifer Aniston doing the water, you know, or uh, Matt McConaughey doing the car commercial. That's a product endorsement. He's paid to say that the product is good and be associated with the product. How, how important are those endorsements to the actors in the entertainment industry? Well, very, very important on two levels. One, they bring a good amount of income to them when they're not shooting a movie, so it's a good way to make money in between film roles. And then also, it shows the studios and the production executives and the financiers that the actor is relevant in the community because they're being associated with the product. So if it's a well-known product, that's really great. If it's a medium product, that's great, and so forth and so on. So you want to be, if you can, and if that's something that you like to do, not everybody does, but if they like to do that, then they can get a lot of um, value out of those product endorsements because then the studio sees that there's a connection with the consumer, not just on the film, but also the product. Did Amber have any endorsement activities prior to the publication of the Depp Waldman statements? Yes. Please explain. So Amber was hired by uh, L'Oreal to be a product and uh, endorse their product, the makeup line. And she had a $1.5 million contract for two years. Um, and they were able to uh, work. They had 20 days of her work. You know, they had the right to, to work with her for 20 days. And uh, she started the work. And then when the defamatory statements came out, they essentially put a pause on working with her. So they no longer brought her to photo shoots. They no longer had do, her do public events for the product. And it basically said, we love you, but we can't work with you right now because it's just too objection much. Objection to hearsay. All right. I, I'll sustain the objection. No okay. question. Um, have, Mr. have the Deb Waldman statements affected that deal in any way with L'Oreal? Well, A, they put it on pause and haven't done any of the work, so she's not out there in the public eye related to the product. And they uh, have decided to continue working with her at some point once, as I said, this all quiets down, this trial is over, and, and hopefully the negative campaigns will stop. Uh, so they extended her contract, but they did not pay her for that extension. And has Amber been hired for any other endorsement deals since the Deb Waldman statements? No. Now, did you assess Amber's losses as a result of the Depp Waldman statements? Yes. What did you do to assess those? Well, first of all, I looked at Amber's career directly. So I wanted to see, you know, as I said earlier, she worked consistently and then she was on this kind of very large upswing with the big movies, Justice League and Aquaman and, and all of that and the stand with the Stephen King project. Um, and then it stopped, right? So her work stopped. And then I looked at other actors that kind of grew up at the same time frame, grew up meaning they started their career and had the same time frame to start going from the smaller projects to the well-known director projects to the big movie projects. And I looked at those actors and I then saw after they had their stars for a moment, if you will, I wanted Chris, to see where their careers went. Closing so arguments I are separate timing. Several actors to see, including Jason Momoa, his, her, her co-star, to see what happened in their careers after such a successful film as Aquaman uh, came out. And why did you use that method of analysis? It's a very common methodology in the entertainment industry to work with what we call comps. I think Ms. Kovacevic even used that word comp. Um, for So you, you know, with films, you try to find comparable films. With actors, you look to see comparable actors. So you can kind of, it's not a distinct actual, this is going to happen, but this is the probability with a reasonable certainty that with the right management team that she had and her acting ability and her looks and the press that she was getting and should have continued to get, that her career would have been similar to these other actors. Have you used that method in other cases in which you've been an expert on damages? Yes, I have. Who did you select as comparable actors for your comparison? Well, I wanted to look at actors that were in superhero films that had done really well at the box office. So oh, I, no. I looked at Jason Momoa, her co-star. I looked at Gal Gadot, really? who was no way. Uh, is, is in Wonder Woman. No way. They all had their own uh, feature films. At, no. Um, uh -huh. Anna de Armas, who was in um, uh, bah, 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 Blade Runner. What do you want? Thank you, Blade Runner. Um, okay. I looked at Zendaya, who was in Spider-Man. And I looked at Chris Pine, who was in Star Trek and also Wonder Woman. About the you know similar age range, 
Oh, oh no. You compared her to Zendaya? Oh, no way. So Chris I was, Pine? It's not, they're not that Come many actors on. to look at who do superhero characters. So it was a small Here's movie to work from, but I took no. a Katie wide Holmes range from Batman Begins. Those actors, both yes. men and uh, women, to see what, was, what could potentially happen to Miss Hood's career. Do you consider all of them to be identical for purposes of measurement? Well, absolutely not. I mean, no two actors are identical. You can only look with that within a range of characteristics and uh, work history, management team, and so forth. And, and we've heard uh, from Mr. Lilly. Banya. Uh, did you review Mr. Banya's Q score analysis regarding the comparables you used? Yes, I did. And what, if any, opinions have you formed in reviewing Mr. Banya's analysis regarding the comparables you selected? So Mr. Banya looked at calendar years to assess so what happened in december of you know 2017 or 18 or 19 what happened in june what happened in a very specific time frame which works on some statistical analysis but when you're talking about actors and their relationships to q scores q scores are related to the actors viability in the consumers mind, if you will, how well known or how much they're coming up in conversation. And so Mr. Banny did not look at time periods of the actors that I compared them with to the film when it came out. So like right after the success of their big film, what was their Q score? But moreover, he just looked at them in a year range. So it doesn't coincide from actor to actor just because you look at it over time. You have to look at it specifically after each of those individuals box office success with a particular film you look at the q score high or low during that and then you look at how low it drops say a couple months afterwards and then if it comes back up if they have another film or another event that brings them into the the, the, the limelight again so it's not about time it's a, a related to a specific activity or event and he did not do that okay I what did your comparison show in terms of films that are Gal Gadot? Kurt, Kurt's leaving. Roles? Kurt's gone. Nope. All right. He's gone to the kitchen. I'm just getting into the comparables. <laughs> in terms of their, I'm, I'm not quite sure I understand. Uh, well, Gal Gadot? What, Chris Pine? What happened with these other actors after they Daniel had Cole, their... Do we think that this direct ever ends? Oh, oh unrelated to moment. Q scores. Were, right, right, right. Oh, okay, sorry. So all those actors' careers, the ones I mentioned, they all either were a steady rise or even a meteoric rise in, in terms of where She's their career Wonder went Woman. after their Star is Born moment. Then they got yeah. some other good films. And maybe she they has got another multiple film feature that performed films performed extremely well. On her so own. it was a range, but they all were on an upward trajectory without a doubt. Who knew Mira what does this mean for Amber? With a reason, I mean, the way that the, the, the kind of industry works is usually, unless there is an, a force majeure or some really negative event, force her career should have followed that same upward swing in, in about the same time frame, it, give or take six months to a year. But you, it would be very reasonable to, to believe that her career would have been on an upward trajectory within the range. Of those other actors. Oh, what if any comparisons on. did you make respecting endorsement deals of these actors with them? I mean, I think it. I think it could have been in the. You know, again, all those actors state. that we've talked about all did multiple endorsement deals after their big movies or after their big series of movies. You know, Jason Momoa is on you know Rocket Mortgage and Harley Davidson, as well as you know five or six other companies. Zendaya is Lancome and fashion and water and jewelry and Gal Gadot. Zendaya is like the most Chris successful and, young and, woman in and, Hollywood. And, and, and at Damas, they've all done either a couple or many. And all I of them have associated like my career with a large brand. Against Jason Momoa. Uh, unlike Amber, Momoa who hasn't done, even been able to work I'm on I'm constantly comparing you in my head to Jason Momoa. She didn't get any others. So what did your analysis that, show with respect favorable. to Amber Heard's losses, but for the Depp Waldman statements? They were significant. If, if we follow the trajectory of her, you know, colleagues. Well, let's start with at Aquaman also, too. Also, interesting how they've started to call what it the Jeff Waldman statement. There? Rather oh, it's than deliberate. Just well, as I stated earlier, yeah. so yeah, she uh, said that at the start to to combine Aquaman them in your head so they can two, cheat if they have went to. Went from a million dollars to two million dollars, right? So that was a pre-written contract that doubled. So the agents technically it's a defined term. were very excited after the success of Aquaman to go and negotiate a much higher. Uh, fee like they did for Jason Momoa. They weren't able to do that. So in that instance alone, it was more than likely a $2 million loss just from that movie alone. So two to four, but it didn't, you had said before. It could have been four, could have been Objection leading. Sustain. Okay. But that contract um, never existed. What about other films? Yeah. So once as as Can't have losses Amber's for a film that was never made. 
How can you switch okay. like this? Okay. 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 Doing okay. Uh, Ms. Gavashva said that once you get that quote of the $2 million from Aquaman 2, that kind of was like the baseline for any other movie she would have done. So any other studio movie would have started from there and depending on okay, so she the success of Aquaman and how much press right. she did, maybe she worked on another great director, independent film, whatever, that $2 million for a studio film and had it jumped to $4 million uh, with the renegotiation, that then would have been the basis. So any future studio film uh, that she would have done, any big budget film would have been the basis at $4 million and then most likely have gone up from there if she was able to get others, which she should have, just like the other actors. Let's talk about TV for a minute. What would those losses have included? Well, on the stand, which was, you know, about the same time as Aquaman, but got the press and the promotion got cut off because of the defamatory statements and the negative campaign. She got paid $200,000 an episode on the stand. So on a TV series of nine episodes, it's $1.8 million. I so if she had, episodes, again, ma'am. done other TV shows, it's very likely right that back. whether she worked with a streamer or with one of the networks, that that fee would have gone up from there. Her agents would have been able to use the leverage of the success of Aquaman 2 to put her, if she had done another television show, given rise to even a higher episodic fee. Some actors go up to $1 million an episode. Jason Momoa is uh, in the in his TV show got one million dollars. So there's a, a you know an exponential range of where she could have gone. Right. What about endorsements? No, I take it back. Nine episodes. Same thing. You know, all the other actors were doing over the course of a couple years period. You know, anywhere from five, six, seven other endorsement deals. And Miss Heard realistically because they were the stars endorsement deals and other categories I literally they were i know i've made this joke so a bunch of times but i cannot square this part of the testimony with the earlier clothing, part of the testimony about pirate six i can't do it wellness or it I mean, could have been I, anything else and so she too should have yeah you you can't look at anything degree that certainly hasn't gotten happened other contract lot, deals based on the success of the films that she's been associated with and the tv shows she's been associated with and what would that have translated into in terms of dollars so in terms of dollars okay so it was 1.5 million dollars for l'oreal for a two-year contract who's gonna and buy stuff based on amber heard for other 1.5 or 2 million dollar deals which all those I guess other now maybe like one of those uh, bed gotten, protector covers then you you're looking at that. an additional eight million dollars of income over time i'm not saying this is in one period we're looking at as far back as the defamatory statements of 2020 to now which is almost two years and again, as I said earlier, even when this is wasn't quiet, Zendaya on the Disney Channel too? To like, wasn't she a Disney kid for her to rehabilitate before? her career if she can? Well, she was a model. So I know you have that. to look at it as a period of a minimum of five years. So when I say eight million dollars, that was a good time to look up Zendaya. Over time. Yeah, because I, I thought I remembered her starting uh, off as like what a if Disney any Channel relating to production actress. Film activities. Well, I'm over this witness, so I'm going to look up Zendaya. Well, she's saying yes in the chat, These so I think I'm right. We looked at. Yeah, she's uh, on a show a called Good of Luck, them. Charlie. Some of them did bigger films, and some of them did gigantic films. But it is very reasonable to assume that once you are in an, an Aquaman-style film, you'll either continue to do those, right? Some of these franchises, as we know, go for five, six films. Or she would probably have been in another studio film that had nothing to do with Aquaman. But again, so over the course of five years, it's very reasonable to consider that she would have been in at least one film a year at a minimum of four million dollars. Something because called that's Shake It Up. What her precedent would have been had she renegotiated. And it's important yeah. to note that in her office, in you cannot compare her. Had there, you cannot compare if her if there to is Amber a Aquaman. I'm sorry. Three. It's just different her price careers, is set at different back dollars. So it's very reasonable no way. to assume and to believe that if she did a film a year for five years at a minimum of $4 million a year without any negotiation, which probably would have happened, but let's just say that baseline, that would be another $20 million over that time frame. What, if any, opinions do you have about Amber Heard's earning power over time? That it, it would continue to rise. It's it's customary in the industry, as I've talked about earlier, that the negotiations, uh, especially with her agents at William Morris, her fees would have gone higher. So I'm just using the baseline without any ability to foresee in the future that I already know she got negotiated for $4 million from Aquaman 3. So if we use that as a baseline minimum, 
but it very well would have gone up had her agents done the work that they wanted to do. So combining all of these opinions and calculations that you've had, what if any range are the losses you are estimating for Amber Heard, but for the Deb Waldman statements? Right, so again, it's really important that, that I look at it and hopefully you understand this, that it's over time, right? So let's just say a minimum of five million. years that, that we're going to talk about to? these losses and it could be more, but at minimum, if you look at the film, the television, and the endorsement contracts, it's very likely that Ms. Heard should have earned between 45 and $50 million over that time period. No. After, all <laughs> after a $1 million dollar payment from Aquaman, are you receiving. kidding me? Yes. No. Right. Thank you very much. All right, let's go she ahead had and the take audacity. her acting recess, ladies and gentlemen. She's not that doing any outside audacious. research and do not discuss this case with anybody. She had the audacity to say Johnny she, Depp lost yeah, zero. Yeah, you can sit down. That's fine. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's all right. Where I appreciate are they finding it. these people? Craigslist. Seriously. Is minor court still world. in session, please? I, I, I don't understand how she can say, how can she, how can she say that with a straight face? You know, I, I, I do have improv theater experience. And so at this point, I feel like right. you could just put so me on the stand and be like, okay, Kurt, right. this is your Thank role. You. Go. <laughs> and I could do a half decent job of this yeah. at this point. Well, what would you say Mr. Depp lost on Pirate Sex? Well, nothing. Nothing. It wasn't of course, greenlit yet. It you can't be damaged also, by things that don't exist. She lost $25 million to all these TV deals that also don't exist. The job of a witness is supposed to be an imp like you're not supposed to be a hired gun. You're supposed to be an impartial providing, you know, information to the Aquaman but beat the Dark Knight. This is not what's happening. This is really um we're seeing some real hatchet jobs. Oh, yeah, uh, hired guy. I, 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 I said when they switched. Not here in Canada, but but we hire, we, we get hired well, guns but, here. But they they still they still <laughs> are supposed to have some to concern for their professional like reputation though through their testimony, yeah, right? Like like they they, well, they should the have some reputation. concern. We'll show for dollar hardcore. I if they had asked me, we're going to ask you to reverse this and do both. I would have said no. I, I, I you can't have me stay up there. And give you could go one way or the other. You can have me tell yeah. you that Johnny Depp didn't make any money and didn't lose any money, or you can have me say Amber Heard's worth fifty. I'm sorry, fifty million dollars <laughs> in the next few years. I can't do both. Do you realize how that sounds? Yeah, apparently you can. You just have to not recognize any cognitive dissonance and you know have no shame. I hope Absolutely the check no clears shame. because you look terrible. I, I have to admit, like, they have to make this argument. There's no two ways about it. But every time she, she sits there and cries about the, 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 the defamation, you think, yes, and this, this applies to Johnny times 10. Yep. You can't the help but star. think that. Am I, yeah. am I mispronouncing the fact that she's like The fact that she's what like, is, oh, she was an, un, an up-and-coming, you know, star, whatever, whatever. Yeah, well, he was an A-lister that was taken down during the Me Too movement. Like, I want some cross-examination yep. questions asking about the Me Too movement. Like, that's really what what I want to see here, uh, because, I, like, it, honestly, <sighs> honestly, I would go up there and say, you say you can't call damages because these don't exist. Yeah. Did these things exist? We're done. <laughs> like, I would just be well, like, well, this is just a damage mitigation. Like the other actors. Because I'm out of it. But the one I do know is Jason Momoa. First of all, he's lead in the very movie we're talking about. It's Second called, of all, he was in Game so of Thrones. So is Gal Gadot. It was a cultural phenomenon. So, so, so is Gal Gadot. And as Wonder Woman. Like, no, no. Who you could doesn't know her. about Wonder Woman? Like, even if you are not a comic book geek, you at least know about Wonder Woman because there have been Wonder Woman movies in the past. You know? Like, like this is... Uh, you cannot compare... Mira as as a, a background character in Mira the you know, she was not a background character. Whatever. <laughs> I, I want to be clear here because this is important because you're making a good point, Alita. But we got to be clear. This is not one of those characters that was in for like one scene of the movie. Uh, she 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 is the co-star with Aquaman. She's in basically every scene, um, and so that is important. But yes, I think her comparables are properly Katie Holmes. Uh, in in Batman Begins and Evangeline Lilly in Ant Man uh, and like if you're just talking about superhero girlfriends, we can go down the line and say <laughs> they're not worth fifty million dollars in four yeah. years or five years or whatever she said. 
Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, good luck on yeah. your career. I mean, even, even Evangeline Lilly though, because she had, she had bigger roles before that point that she was already known for, but I'd put like, her she was in the, lost. Look, she was, like, you know use, what I mean? Like, but if I'm being honest, like if I'm being a good expert, I will grant you Evangeline Lilly before I grant you Gal Gadot. And I'm like, yes. that's the high end of the bar. Yeah. She's in yes. lost. She does Lord of the Rings or I'm sorry. She does the Hobbit. She, you know, she's been in more stuff, but you know, she's not running Ant-Man. Uh, and she didn't like burst onto the scene for fifty million dollar paydays coming off of Ant Man and the Wasp. Fair point. Yeah, but Chris Pine, I'm sorry, no, he's been in multiple like franchises. Well, what are some notable differences between Chris Pine and uh, her? I don't know, lead character in three movies, maybe. That's I don't know, he's Captain reboots. Freaking Kirk. Could be a notable <laughs> aspect, yeah. possibly. Could be a factor. I don't know. Yeah. But she's totally worth forty-five to fifty million dollars. I honestly think okay. she arrived at Chris Pine because she was looking for for love interests in superhero movies, and she was already on Wonder Woman. Like, I mean, I think that's the research that went into this. She's like, "Oh, who's Wonder Woman interested in? Yep. Chris Pine. Okay. Yep. That's, that's Kurt, you keep you keep super chatting. Yep. <laughs> Why do you keep super chatting? You don't need to. You're right here. You I keep super hurt. chatting because I don't want to just interject in the middle of testimony with just my complete <laughs> lack of all hope. And so I super chat my lack of all hope. It's my way of contributing without being, you know, disrupting, overly disrupting. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But you, although you I could go back to. to that as like just screaming into the void. <laughs> um, and also, we're we're trying to see if 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 Joe will apparition apparition himself in. <laughs> you avoided Joe, apparate can you hear us? there. Is he going to try to uh, log on from a closet again? That's what it seems like. <laughs> Joe, can you hear He's us? Here. Joe, can you hear us from the beyond? Joe, stop using the courthouse Wi-Fi. It is terrible. <laughs> Ian will know. Joe. It is. I I tried connecting using that, and I had to abandon it. So I compared her to Gal Gadot, uh, Ben Affleck, uh, Robert Downey Jr., uh, and Tom Cruise. And also Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I just said picture deals worth $20 million. I don't know what to tell you. At first, at first I actually thought that, that she was going to say Scarlett Johansson, and I was going to be like, be are good. you kidding me? <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, so somebody, why? Somebody it was, it was mispronouncing Zendaya. Is it supposed to be Zendaya? I apologize. I don't know. I, I, I've always thought it Zendaya, was Zendaya. Zendaya, Zendaya, potato, potato, whatever. I've always said Zendaya too, but I want to get it right if somebody knows the right yeah. pronunciation. Yeah, no, I, I, I agreed. Agreed. If, if if I am saying it wrong, then that's something that I need to like like how like for years I was calling I was I was pronouncing it Rihanna when it's Rihanna. Yeah. Okay. Rihanna, All Rihanna. Right. Uh so. it is pronounced Zendaya. Zendaya. Okay. Thank you. I will take that correction. Okay. Thank you, chat. I'm getting I corrected by best. the chat. I don't watch it in my head. Bourbon is helping day, marginally. So. so. Marginally, yes. Yeah. All righty. Well, I think maybe we should get some. some oh, is there more of this today? Questions in here. Oh, shit. There it's only is. 4 yeah, we're, on we're, we're only, yeah, we're only at a we're only at a recess. I I tell you, the clock stopped. <laughs> I swear to God, I checked it three times, and it went between like. 321 and 322 uh, mm -hmm. during that testimony. What sin did I commit? It's what like repentance do I have to make? Don't ask the chat, Kurt. <laughs> it was like the Simpsons thing where he's waiting for the uh, time to run out and you see the clock tick backwards a minute. Yeah. Yes. It felt like that. It did. Yeah. It really I slowed down. I have a little bit of bourbon left. <laughs> well, look, I understand. Amber Heard's team needs to present. We're going to mitigate the images. We're going to establish damages. That's fine. You might want to use two separate people for that role. Yeah. Uh, but how? Okay. So just backing up a step, one second. So we were saying, wow, they're really low on time. I wonder what they're going to do today. They might rest before they put on a case. How freaked out do you think Heard's team was when they heard eight hours and they knew they had three, not just witnesses, three experts they wanted to put up that need to be qualified and that you need to go through this effort on Monday? Because you they're going to be just, under four hours right now. You can't just say experts without doing the scare quotes on this one, man. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Agreed. Agreed. Um, like this is what okay. they want to use their time on. This is what um, gives okay. lawyers a bad name. <laughs> like, yes, like watching it, these, this is how you get upset about the legal system in all honesty. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, let's get, I, let's get I some, can't deal some with questions this level here. Stupid. Yeah. It's all so stupid. I can't deal with this level of stupid. 
I like appellate arguments because usually they're not this stupid. Usually, especially at the Supreme Court, they're usually not this stupid, although occasionally even then. But I like the, you know, I like the, 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 the clash of really great advocates and really strong ideas and these principles that are really important and the clashing of these principles and the resolution and the thought exercise and all that stuff. And it's like, I, I can't deal with the stupid. It's so stupid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. This is, uh, by the way, guys. Just, I'm smarter be, than this. Before, be forewarned. So this is the kind of recipe that is exactly the kind of thing that leads to a Kurt explosion. So we might yeah, actually on the timer. <laughs> on the timer. <laughs> we might actually see some some fireworks today. <laughs> oh, um, you, you don't say Bexie's playground. I, uh, I I think that was BS from start to finish. So there's no time to call JD. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I can't imagine that they will be based on the time that well, is left. What else are they going to use up their time on, though? Assuming they're they're near the end of their witnesses here, I guess to cross it during rebuttal. At this point, it's we're going to call Bobo the circus clown, and yeah. it's going to get better <laughs> evidence than we've seen so far. The person that offered Elizabeth Olsen is actually a pretty good one because Elizabeth Olsen is the wife in Godzilla, gets promoted into Avengers two. And takes off from there. So it, it's a reasonable glide path if you want to do something that sounds to the jury reasonable rather mm -hmm. than, you know, freaking Zendaya. So I, Elizabeth Olsen's good. Whoever said that in the comments nailed it. Yeah. yeah. The, the, yeah, pro yeah, yeah. the problem yeah. is those numbers don't add up to where they want them to be. But I mean, she just starred in a movie. Like I, to me, it's like at least a reasonable stay within the bounds of reality and I will listen to you more. Yeah. Agreed. Reality? Soul Music says, question, I believe JD is the victim, but he seems overexcited with the popularity. Could that hurt him? I don't know if he, I don't know what you mean by he seems overexcited with the popularity. I'll, I'll, I'll say, not okay. in court, not what the jury sees. I, I will say I grow increasingly uncomfortable at his welcomes into the courthouse and how he treats them and how there's video of him leaving and yelling things to his adoring fans. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. I, but that's not in front of the jury. No, no, no. No, it so doesn't they don't it hurt that. him in the public opinion. Maybe is it hurting him in front of the jury? They don't know any of that. Yeah, but I, I don't know that it's even hurting him in the in the court of public opinion because I think that I think he's I don't know I, I think I think he, based on what he's been through I I'm not going to criticize him for for treating people warmly you know when he's getting received warmly. Um, I, I I I think I, I think I understand your your concern. But I, I think sit here knowing that he's not a saint and seeing some of the messages that come through about the innocent dove of Johnny Depp and say he plays into that a little bit. Um, and so I do say none of this is great. All of this is ugly. Yes, I think Johnny Depp has a better case than Amber Heard right now, but I don't I don't love all of that. And yes, chat can yell at me. That's totally fine. Uh, but I, I don't love all that. You know, I, I, know, I know we're judging. I think people have to bear in mind that we're when I say complimentary things, I'm judging by the relative standards of everything else going on. So when I say a thing, like I stand by my original opinion of, you know, the first witness for the day was pretty, wasn't too bad. You know, there are actually some positive points there and kind of believable and not, not did not did too bad a job. You know, hey, that witness, you know, there were some good points were there for Amber Heard. And then it just all went to crater fire. But that's what I'm used to comparing to is crater fire. So like yeah, my standards for good is it's kind of low at this point, but yeah, yeah. okay, that was that was good. Um, also, that hi, th thank you for the very generous super chat. It says AH's team statement to Court TV: calling Deb back to the stand would be as relevant to us as a bicycle to a fish. Everything Deb has testified up to this point has been irrelevant to the heart of this case, and there's no reason to believe it would be any different now. Didn't I'm sorry, did they make a public <laughs> statement to Court TV with a with an active judge? Don't talk to Court TV. Am I yelling? Yes. No, 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 no. Oh. You're not <laughs> yelling. Well, it was it apparently wasn't as right, right, relevant as a bicycle to a fish like yesterday. I, I also, yeah. I also like. Weren't they the ones that put out a statement saying that they planned to call him? Yes. I, well, they did. They put so, out a statement. But now, now they're saying like, oh, this is so irrelevant. Why would we? Also, ever how do you know a again? fish wouldn't like a bicycle? How do you know their lives? <laughs> okay. Kirk Alrighty. did a place, folks. Kurt He's is definitely in a place. A place. Kurt but was like, the hard-hitting commentary on... Uh... <laughs> definitely. But seriously, though, they, they're currently under a judge's order to not talk to the press. Like if, they're, if they're issuing a direct statement, because I thought they leaked Johnny Depp, but I don't think they said it, did they? Okay. Yeah, no, that, that's, probably, that's probably probably fair. But, like, but the thing is, like, I... 
I feel like what they are saying is like they probably wanted to, but now they realize the time constraints that they're under. So they're like, well, we, we don't even want to talk to them anyway. <laughs> You know, well, like he want to talk to anybody. agency that's that, great for uh, real not power. calling him is waiving their their counterclaim effectively. It might be, it might be if they stop here and they have and that and they rest and they go to the motion to strike right now. Judge is pissed. She might kick it. Yeah, they, oh, they don't have a prima facie case without it. I don't think they have vicarious liability at all. I don't. I don't. I don't think so either. And and this whole business of calling it the Depp Waldman statements. Yeah. is I think impermissible. I think that she should not be allowed to do that because Depp did not make those statements factually. Factually. As a yeah. matter of fact, he did not make I those would, statements. I would it be was objecting Walden. to that characterization and that is a, that is every a legal... time they tried it. Me too. I don't know why they're not. I would I would personally object to that because I think that is a legal characterization that, that she is making, that she's trying to slide under the table, and I think yeah. it's uh -huh. totally improper. Oh, it's a rhetorical device. There's no question. But they didn't object. I mean, I, the court can't yeah. just... Well, I don't understand why they're not. Stop it on its own. No, they they absolutely should be objecting to that. Um, next question. After this one has enough time on the screen. <laughs> okay, next you question know, is Mira from DS. What can a bicycle and Aquaman? <laughs> That's funny. What can AH team do if they run out of time? Nothing. They can they Nothing. can well they can object they can object during during direct examinations of any further witnesses but other than that nothing. Um, they can Eric Horvath. <laughs> exactly. They can they can see themselves out the door. Um, well, even it, if JD cut his own finger off, doesn't AH need to prove right. JD abused her? Am I right? Why waste okay, the time? Sure. I don't get it. Um, While we do that, can we have the witness? Uh, uh, it's not quite how the burden of proof works. So yeah. Johnny Depp has to prove that he didn't abuse her. I know that sounds like technical, but it's kind of it's a little different than that sentence. It is. And those technicalities. Well, but but, but they're they're burden. asking about Amber Heard's burden of proof. Yeah, but her burden of proof only relates to the hoax. Her burden of proof only relates to May. Yeah, but but in order to prove that it's not a hoax, it has to show that it's true. No, I, it has to prove, it has to show that they didn't intentionally stage it or hoax it. Yeah. You could still have a difference in perspective on the events of May twenty first. Yeah. Fair. Okay. Yeah. Well, Jilin Chen says, "Why are they Sorry. wasting time to prove <laughs> age?" I, I guess so. Maybe, I it sounds I bad when I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm thankful for anything that's intelligent at this point on any level, just because I need to deal with the stupid. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Jiling Chen says, why are they wasting time to prove H didn't cause injury? The fact that she didn't abuse him doesn't prove he abused her. This changes nothing. They were spending a lot of time on it. It's true. Kaylee Sane says, can you explain how the jury and verdict works in a civil case? I feel like it's different than criminal where all 12 have to vote the same. No, it's unanimous. It's unanimous here, too. It's seven. In Virginia. Seven people. Seven unanimous in Virginia. Seven unanimous. Uh, Joe says, <laughs> it's a Finding Nemo reference. Um, I, are all these board certified witnesses? I like thought you were having a Amber's stroke. No. Okay, I actually saw that. Um, uh, okay, okay. You understood that reference, uh, which is another reference to Marvel, to Avengers. Anyway, uh, are all these board certified witnesses, quote unquote, linked to Amber's law firm and their go to contact? Is AH really relying on them rather than actual witnesses? Well, sounds like it. She's out of real witnesses. Yeah. yeah, are all, are all, these, are all these board certified? Oh, this is, another, this is the same thing. Okay, twice. What Here you go, Denison. Title again. What's Good her after formal this role? Because I, I, I honestly oh, forgot. Yeah. What she what she actually so do for a living? You repeatedly mm -hmm. testified. She used about to be a producer. What uh, you were asked as the Depp Waldman statements. Well, don't don't don't. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have don't, any don't knowledge mind. Mr. Mr. Depp in the room. knew <sighs> of the statements that Mr. Waldman made. Do you? Only with association with Mr. Weldon, correct? You don't know when the first time Mr. Depp learned about those. I do not statements. like Denison. I don't know. Neither no. I, but I'll give him a point of credit anyway because I'm feeling. And generous. the association you're talking about is that Mr. Waldman worked from time to time as Mr. Depp's attorney, correct? Action, Your Honor. May we approach? Okay. Why? Well, uh, these are legit. You brought it up. With these your, are legitimate questions term. here. I can't believe he used that term. She might I be trying to argue that he's. Uh, yeah, he should not have that the Depp Waldman statement. No, I don't. I, I didn't actually mind it because mouth. she mentioned it so many times. I don't mind it if he's using it as a way to try to diffuse it, as yeah, a lead into a diffusion. Hard. So, he's like, if he has a plan, it. it could work. I, I also don't know why I let the de the the a witness keep saying the defamatory statements, which is the conclusion of law. Yeah, uh, yep. they, they did that throughout the testimony. I'm like, what are you doing? 
Yeah. Yep. You're right. Oh, Elaine's animated. Right, row. I'm now looking at new bourbon to order through my app so I don't run out. And the judge is uh, a little bit amused. Ooh, Heaven's Door. I can get Heaven's Door. That's a good one. And she's looking more at Denison, which usually means Denison loses. We'll see. That's her tell. It's been actually fairly predictive. All right. And I understand that you're uh, testifying as a damages expert and Red yep. like had to move on. And talking both mm. about Mr. Depp's damages. Outside the scope of her expertise, I guess. Uh, Ms. Hurd's purported damages. Um, let's talk about Mrs. Her Ms. Hurd's damages first. You understand that you have to testify as to damages that resulted from the Waldman statements, correct? That was my analysis. Most of your testimony, however, was just simply testimony about things that occurred after the Waldman statements. Better, better. That's what I was tasked with, yes. Right. The, the mere fact that the mere fact that there were activities after the Waldman statements doesn't establish that the Waldman statements caused any damages, does it? When you look at the time frame of when the Waldman statements came out and you look at what was going on with Ms. Hurd's career prior to the statements Post -hoc. and what happened after the statements, Post -hoc. it's very clear to make that correlation. Uh, am I supposed to yell out here and go prop your hawk now? The campaign that followed <sighs> afterwards yeah, in terms of the negative media. All right, that's an interesting thing because the witness this morning uh, actually described the the uh, the notion of what's correlation and what's causation, and correlation does not imply causation, does it, ma'am? I'm not an expert in semantics. Okay. What? But you're an semantics? expert who is purporting that's to say that that's a bullshit response. Lost I'm sorry. Forty-five and uh -huh. fifty million dollars. I mean, that's what she is an expert in. Where you. <laughs> put the link between the Waldman statements and all the other activity that occurred since then. As I stated and very clearly wanted to make sure that, that everybody understood was that it was a time frame under, you know, between which the Waldman statements were made and the negative decline in her career started happening. Post and and thanks asylum of mutiny. In discussions with her agents and her publicist, there was a very tight timeline and a very close link to when those statements came out and when everything started pulling away from Ms. Hurd. Right. The, what you're talking about is, a, is just a link in time. You, you do not put any causal connection between what Mr. Waldman purportedly said and the damages that, that Ms. Hurd purportedly suffered. You have no idea whether Mr. Waldman's statements uh, caused any damage to Ms. Hurd, do you? Well, actually, both the words in the statements were used as hashtags in the campaign, as well as when the statistical and the investigative analysis was done on the social media campaign, it turned out that one in four of the statements were had Waldman or Waldminion in them. So that was another connection that was I was able to minion, make between Amber the defamatory Hart's statements that she and came up the with. negative yeah. negativity it's the, it's the at Mignon, the right? studios and the product endorsements and the television and the press connected as well. All right, let's start with first principles. If they're true, they're not defamatory, correct? Again, that's outside of the scope of my uh, okay. expertise. All right. yeah, fair point. Let's then you were happy to call to them defamatory statements throughout your testimony, I weren't you? you yeah, said that is statements also true. Appeared in hashtags. I said words from the Waldman statements appeared in hashtags. Right. And the hashtags that were analyzed, however, don't have the Waldman statements in Glad the He's hashtags. transitioned to calling them the Waldman statements. I've also seen them yeah, online he, myself. He was always going to do that. He's, well, but the, he's not that the analysis that Mr. Not at the beginning, he wasn't. Uh, Shell did. I didn't mind it at four, the beginning, right? it was fine. Uh, that was Shell's by. analysis, and I do believe I remember reading that, yes. All right. And the 25% that you just raised, that's Mr. Schnell's analysis. You didn't do that. He did. Correct. All right. So you know what Mr. Schnell did, and he didn't look at hashtags that contained the Waldman statement words. He looked at justice for Johnny Depp, right? That's one of them, yes. One of them 
of the 1.2 million hits that we that you talked oh, about using stat guy that here was 900,000 984,000 also in my conversations with Mr. Chanel we talked about all the words that were in the statement that also appeared so what he wrote in his report and what I had in my conversation may not have been the same right, thing ma'am I don't want to hear about conversation with Mr. Chanel I'm, it's I'm part of what I relied on and I'm okay. allowed to talk I didn't about ask that you about so it. your conversation dude uh, Mr. Chanel let's move beyond that let's talk about what the other hashtags were. Amber Heard is an abuser. That's not in the Waldman statement, is it? The fact that she was called a hoax can be related to Amber Heard's an abuser, answer. but no, I love how you decided to correct. call out the hashtags again today. We Ask don't, Amber we Turd just don't like there. Amber. That's not in the Waldman statement. Ask about the turd. And Amber Turd is not there in the Waldman statement. <laughs> you say Amber Turd a couple of times, please. Right. None of them. Many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in terms of the use of the words, did you determine why people were using the term Amber Turd? That, that appeared with the turd she left on the bed. Only six and a half percent. Look at the rapid the, blink. She's uh, billions. Say it again. Of, of uh, tweets that Mr. Schnell analyzed, right? Say it again. I don't have the definition or his report in front of me, but we can look at it together if you'd like to. Correct. Mm. And uh, Make her say it. and you said Waldman appears in 25%. Waldman or Waldman. According to Mr. Schnell, yes. No, all right. But you st if, if that's your only evidence, however, <laughs> that any of this activity has any link to Mr. Waldman. Is that correct? Well, no, we also look at the timeline because those those campaigns were not active prior to the Waldman statements and then they started appearing. So there is some connectivity there as well. Mr. Depp bears no responsibility for for the social media campaigns. He doesn't. Yep. If the social media campaigns caused Ms. Heard to lose her ability to generate income. That's not the Waldman statement. Gonna, That's a social media campaign. I'm going to object, Your Honor. May we approach? Okay. That's argumentative. You need to work on your cross, buddy. He does. Yep. I, I feel like about, uh, she knows what to do. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. He he's 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 great at directing expert witnesses. He is not so Raven when it comes to he's making one of the crossing cardinal them. rules of cross. He's trying to get them to buy into his conclusion. That's I a cardinal him, sin in cross examination. Don't do it. I want to see him dealing with a non expert. Yeah. 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 You, you just state your conclusion as a question and move on. That, mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. You just. They don't have to Is agree. It true? He's not responsible for the social media there. campaigns. All right, they yeah. you say yes or no. Well, you made or, your point. Or, or nah. say or say you have you have you have you have seen no evidence that he's responsible that that can tie him definitively to any of this social media activity, right? right. Yes. So I'm I'm just looking for all evidence of the causal connection that you claim exists. Between that is the most open ended question the $45 I've ever heard million in dollars in damages. Come that you on. Heard. I want all the evidence. Please tell me all the things and that the true statements made by, made by Mr. Walton. It's not a deposition, man. That is fucking bullshit. Well, you this also is, wanted, this guy I also sucks. looked at Ms. Hurd's career <laughs> after the divorce proceedings and other we're ready to blow. that she was either involved with or was discussed. <laughs> and her career might have had a pause, but she was able to overcome that. It's starting to hear the teapot screaming and she encouraged the stand her brain. The very prominent productions. And there was My no pheasant. dramatic in downturn case. in her career after any publicity. Yeah, I don't need to interrupt you, but do you have notes with you? No, I, there's dust. Oh, okay. It's <laughs> just dust. And I'm sorry. You know, I, it's I, just, I, I, nerves, I, I, nerves. It's really just that. I just, uh, yeah, there's no, just that's okay. dust. Sorry. So, so you looked at her career, but uh, okay. you looked at the way her career was moving. Right. So as I was saying, her career was moving forward and even she had been able to overcome 
the negative publicity uh, surrounding the divorce or the initial filing of the UK lawsuit and the other lawsuits, anything that she was associated, she overcame that. Uh, she did Justice League and she did Aquaman and she did The Stand and she got the L'Oreal contract Why all after talking? that. The only time her career slowed Why down and talking? stopped was at the same time that those death and defamatory statements You're came horrible. out. So, but there was a lot of other activity Why? that happened following the defamatory statements. You said every time Mr. Depp files a lawsuit, it ignites the fire around the both of them. Right? No, I actually said it, it ignites the fire mostly around Mr. Depp. That was no, in context. That was, excuse me, that? please. I'm sorry. Whoa. That was in context Whoa. of when I was asked about Mr. Depp's career. That was not in context of when I was you asked about Mr. Depp's career. You just let the witness shush you? You are the worst cross-examining lawyer ever. It is and isn't. Who's the, the protagonist in the case in the UK was Mr. Depp. Ms. Heard was a witness to that case. She was not a part of the case. So but most of were, the negative press went. Why don't you there just go down the street to one of the many law schools in the D.C. area, get one of their mock Heard trial teams, as a result they'll do better cross-examination than this bullshit. There was negativity, yes, about it. Remember, both of them in the case, yes. Right. But, it, it, not you know, really. Substantial amounts of negativity, right? Right. And so you can't tell me that that negativity isn't the thing that keeps your or, or misheard from working. Well, again, it was a close time frame. The negative statements were a much closer time frame to the press and publicity around Aquaman and the stand than the UK case, which was months later. So again, I will look at the, the defamatory statements as kind of the igniting force, and it was promoted and, and kind of more oxygen was uh, put on the fire when the UK case came out. So it kind of ah, yes. became oxygen a snowball effect of, of, you know, the match was lit and it kept getting stronger and stronger. Right. But, you, but Ms. Heard isn't claiming a causal connection between the UK case and her damages, right? No. All right. And you can't distinguish between the UK bad publicity and the bad publicity that derived after the Waldman state. What time frame are you talking about with the bad publicity from the UK case so we can at least be specific on time frames? Well, you talked about a five-year time window. A five-year time window from 2020 to the two years that we're at now, plus the three years moving forward, is what I talked about in terms of the time frame that it would take someone who's been under this much duress to kind of rehabilitate their career. That's when we talked about the five years. Right, that's when you talked about the five years. So you look over this five-year window, and during the period that precedes this window, there's lots and lots of negative press about Ms. Heard, irrespective of the Waldman statements, correct? Before the Waldman statements, as I said, she was able to overcome that and she got great jobs and was getting endorsement contracts. Right, but after the Waldman statements, there is more activity in the press, there's more social media activity, and you cannot put a causal connection between that activity and what Mr. Waldman said. It can be the instigating event, if you want me to call it that, we'll call the Waldman statements the instigating event of a torrential rain of social media tactics that went on, has gone rain. on for years, yeah. The instigating event, and, and therefore, you your damage analysis with a degree some degree i guess of reasonable certainty is that once there's an instigate instigating event um everything that happens thereafter is fair game for damages well it's like a fire if one tree burns and then <clears throat> more air or wind is added to it then the next tree burns and the whole forest burns but if that first fire hadn't started oh with the God. one tree there would have been no loss of acreage so you can look at it with that oh, same analogy my holy lord <laughs> it's it's a time, don't they, man? <laughs> you know, I'm not a firefighter. I'm not going to go there with you. Oh, are you not? Yes, we know you, that a single really? match can cause thousands okay. of acres to burn. Right. So I, we can leave it at that. I, I think I went there with you. Okay, oh, enough right. of let's this. Do let's this. let's just get back to uh, a, a real cross examination. Come on. That there were a number of. <gasps> persons that you described as comparable 
in order to determine what your what Ms. Heard uh, was likely to make over time. Okay, right. Th this should be fun. Yes. yes. All right. Are we going to finally oh, get to something those decent comparable here? actors and actresses? Yes. Uh -huh. Is there a single one who has had any press suggesting that they defecated in the marital bed? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have okay. no idea. You would agree with me that, that that's a good is question. A negative influence. Yes. With respect to Holly. Thank you. If one believed it, yes. Yeah. yeah. If one believed it, you know, it was reported. Finally. Yeah. yeah. Good question. It, it, it certainly has been discussed. We don't have any proof or video of, of yeah, anybody Yeah, but you don't have any proof or video of other BS I, that you've I testified to. I certainly do not have proof or, I mean, a video of anybody defecating in a bed. I'll, I'll give you that. That's a good thing. Yeah. Um, so, but what you, what you know is that Mr. Wallman didn't say anything about defecating in a bed. Correct. Right. So all of the bad publicity around that activity has nothing to do with Waldman, right? Uh, Waldman, as you said, didn't talk about defecation. Okay. And you haven't considered how that story has adversely impacted Ms. Hurd's career. Ooh. That story, you're going to ask me for a causational link between that poop story wow. and her demise of her wow. career. I can't. No, I'm not going to do that, nor can I. What? You yeah, do you're, it. you're very happy to do it the I'm other way. Can I make it? No. Aren't yeah. you? Okay. Oh, and you can't that do it with Waldman statements either, can you? There you go. Well, again, Thanks, I did, and I have, well and I stand by them. So you, you did. You no way. No credibility here. The time frame are relatively close. The time frame and the instigation and, and if you will, the rallying of the forces, again, it's like a lit tree. It's going to ignite everything. It's like a lit tree like back to the fire afterwards. thing. So it was Even though she's not a firefighter. Event, if you will. Call she's that tree or a tree? what I looked at, yes. Uh, all right. So from your perspective, anything that happened after Waldman that was negative to your client is attributable mm -hmm. to Waldman and therefore attributable to, to the damage analysis that you made. I was tasked with looking at that specifically, and that's what I was asked to limit it to. I was not look, asked I was to look at anything else. Tasty here. Bourbon. All right. um, Jason Momoa. That's one of your comparables, right? Yes. <laughs> He's been prominent since 1999. He was in Baywatch in 99. I, I literally only knew it was called Drago. Do you know that? You can look it up if you did. I, I'll, I'll go with that. Right. But you remember him on Baywatch. Actually, I didn't watch Baywatch, but right. he certainly had the physique for it. So, Stargate Atlantis. He was on that. Many episodes. She remembers his physique, Many. at least. Did you know that? I like Dennis and being like, you know, I like Stargate Atlantis. He played Conan the Barbarian. Sometimes I stroke myself to it. So, okay. <laughs> Will Dennis I don't, I don't have Mr. Drago. Momoa's um, resume memorized. Then how can you so. compare them? No, I'm, I'm just trying to understand how you came to the conclusion they're they're comparable. Thank you. Because I, I'm, I'm just <laughs> how can you possibly time, compare them if you don't know his, about, his, uh, Mr. his Momoa's background? Mr. career. Uh, Game of Thrones was one of the most popular things on TV for a period of three years, correct? Yep. Yes, he was. Until he the last was, season. Yes, he was. It was yep. great. Well, second, and both both last season. He's concert. Aquaman, right? Yes, he is. Right, he's the title character in Aquaman. Yes. Yeah, and he was actually Aquaman in a movie before the Aquaman movie started. You, you mean that? Justice League and other things like that? Yeah. Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice. What wasn't he in that as Aquaman? I didn't see that one. Didn't see it. No. But you <laughs> should Heard be aware of it. Not that I know of now. No. She looks and he so was in both dumb Justice right League now. movies. I'm sorry, but she looks like a Correct. fool. Yeah. Yeah. She's supposed to be uh, an expert. You're supposed to know these things. You're going to use him to compare. Yes. They used him in the second Lego movie. 
right? Yes. Um, he's she looks one like of a the hag gossiping at a grocery store. Characters in the recent yeah. Dune blockbuster, which happened post Aquaman, right? It doesn't fact, matter. Likely, he's he's not the lead though. No. In Dune, no, he's not the lead. Did you ever read Dune? Pardon? Did you, Did you ever read Dune? <laughs> I know, but I've seen the movie. Yeah. Do you understand what whether his character ever will come read? back from the dead ever. in the third movie? Oh, man. It's again, I, mean, I haven't book, seen so. it yet. He might. I don't know. Just talk, we're just talking about that one Why movie. Why are we talking so about spoilers? spoilers. Oh, uh, sorry, Elite. I could have warned you there. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> That's okay. I wasn't, I wasn't that concerned. <laughs> I mean, I still want to see He's it. He's one of the best movies in the new Fast and Furious franchise movie, Fast X, right? I, I don't know that for sure, no. Okay. She knows nothing uh, about his his. his but that's ID not then. the career path that that, that Ms. Hurd has had. She's never been the title this character This is a really good a line movie. across. She hasn't spent uh, years on television. She did, what, eight TV shows? Eight single episodes of TV? Again, I don't have the, her resume. If you okay. want to show it to me, we can count them together. Sure. Um, Mr. Momo remains well liked, even though he's engaged in a recent divorce from another actor. That's correct, right? I don't know. I don't follow his fan base. You don't follow Jason Momoa, but you use him as a comparable to, to yes. come up with a forty-five. Yes. Good I question. I don't follow that his was a fan good segue. base. I, I understand him as a prominent actor in the business, but I don't follow his fan base. Isn't, the fa isn't fan base one of the things that you analyze? Yeah, of course. You can look at numbers, but I don't keep a watch on his social media feeds. All right. You're an idiot. You're not an expert. All right. Like, whatever you, you are, you're not an expert in this. That, uh, you're not Gal Gadot is in Wonder Woman. She is Wonder Woman. Yes, she's a star. She's, in fact, hair. Wonder Woman. Yeah, no, she's good, too. Yeah. All right. She's the title character. And there's been now multiple Wonder Woman movies, right? Yep. Yes. Yeah. And even before that, she was in franchise films. Yep. Which one are you referring to? Fast and Furious. Yep. Oh, excuse me. I honestly don't don't remember her being that as oh, one Lord. of the main characters. I know it's The Rock. And you, you, you didn't even know she was the Rock. In the Fast I'm sure you did. Fashion. I've seen it on a resume, but I didn't. I again, I'm not a fan of the Fast and Furious. All right. You'll. Agree with me I that Wonder a Woman one is a more prominent role than Mira? If you're going to talk about apples, apples in that exact movie, yes. Girl, I went to see the new Jason Momoa movie. What it about, fantastic. does Mira have any <laughs> you know, self-titled franchise films? Not yet. No. And Ms. Goodell played a much bigger role in the movie they were in together, the Justice League movie. I did have In what movie they were in together? Oh, in Justice League? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I haven't counted the screen time, so I can't really say. Okay. You indicated that another person that you uh, compared Ms. Hurd with is uh, Zendaya. Right? Zendaya, yeah. The person so famous, she goes by one name. <laughs> I guess when you have a name that's a Z, it works, I guess. That's a dumb answer. She's, she's been on the Disney Channel since she's 13 years old. Right. Tell her right? only has one Thank name. Thank you. She won an Emmy. Yes, she did. Right. She was singing and dancing and swinging from trapezes in The Greatest Show, right? Was she in yes. trapezes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, she's Maybe. now been in multiple Spider-Man movies. She has? Yes. She's 10 years younger than your client. Right. Yeah. But this is a person that you deem to comfort. Well, as I, I was explaining to you how I chose them, when you look at superhero characters, there's not that many to pull from. So I just tried to, I worked on pulling uh -huh. characters that were in superhero movies that were about the same age range within 10 years, as you've noted to me. Thank you. Uh, and also just where her career would have gone. I said that they were comparable. They're not identical. So you can just they're not look comparable. At what their I'm sorry. Done, either before that superhero movie, before. and others, or the one they were in, and then you look at where her career should have gone. 
even though she may not have been at the stature of a Zendaya at that time, you can still look at it as a comparable trajectory of what happens when you're in a blockbuster movie. It's just a reference point. It's not meant to be identical. They're not meant to be the same people or not even have the exact same career. It's meant to be a reference point. Simple as that. Uh, it so far, no, everybody it make any sense. That had been in more blockbuster movies than, than Miss Hurt. But Miss Hurt was also in the biggest blockbuster movie, and the light that shines on Jason Momoa will also shine on her. So you have to look at uh, it in context of the biggest, biggest movie that DC, DC Comics is, and also one of the biggest gro- box biggest. office films ever, probably within the top 10, because I've looked at it. Right? It's 25th. So that light is going to shine brighter on her <laughs> um, than someone who wasn't. Thanks, Rick. I'm glad you've got these stats pulled up. Her in her career I, I don't know what to tell you about this lady. At, at least do your um, homework if you're going to cash the check. Absolutely. Yes. They're lying. That's what, to accept the damage analysis, they would have to agree with wouldn't. you that Ms. Hurd was on the precipice just lazy of experts a meteoric at this point. rise. That's the word you use, right? Actually, no, I didn't. I, I did use Meteoric with someone like, let's say, Gal Gadot or Zendaya, but I, I actually gave you a range and gave the jury a range that they weren't all going to have a Meteoric rise. Some of them would be smaller, right? And so I, what the numbers that I gave you do not Looking represent for validation a for the jury, rise. right? The Meteoric rise is when Jason Momoa goes from, I don't know, four million, five million to a fifty million dollar payday. That's a that's a meteoric shift in our business. But when someone has contracts that actually go from one million to the first one, two million, and then four million, that is standard for a franchise that is perceived to do well. And so I based those calculations on very specific numbers. I'd, I'd like to issue a correction. It's twenty four. Reality. Oh. I look at the numbers that were already oh. 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 and just move out forward. Now. On a film a year, closer. maybe a TV show here or there, and some endorsement contracts, which is very typical for an actor oh in our gosh. business to make that kind of money. It just is what happens. So the example you just used is somebody went from $1 million to $2 million to $4 million. Your client has never had a contract that exceeds $2 million, correct? Incorrect. Okay. Oh, in has. the Aquaman Justice, it's actually the Justice League contract because they're associated. So Justice League, uh, Aquaman, she was paid $1 million. Uh, Then in Aquaman 2, it was written that she was going to earn $2 million. And if there's another one, it was written in the terms that she would get $4 million. So it actually was a contract that Ms. Heard signed with the studio. Right. But Kill the movie hasn't been made. It's a barbecue chicken yeah, salad. Aquaman 2 hasn't even come out yet. So the right. third one is still on deck, exist, as they say. Like Pirate yeah. 6. Screw yourself. Um, Okay, let's put it differently. Your client's never been paid $2 million for a movie she, she, she appeared in. She was paid $2 million for Aquaman. Right. Two, Aquaman 2. And she's never been paid $4 million. She was contracted to be paid, and when the movie goes, that's, that's like what pledging. she would be paid. So that's what I said. She was yeah, on the pre- the pledged. It's not been right, but if, if Aquaman but 2 does it nearly it. as well as Aquaman 1, she should be thrilled. She received that $4 million. Like a third one. So, so she should have an amethyst because she received it because it was pledged. In, I thought it was an option writing. anyway, so they don't have to. They don't have to the exercise movie makes it, right? Seven hundred ninety-five million dollars. You think there's likely to be a next one? <sighs> That's um, pirate uh, pie, by the way. If it was the first or the second one, but if it's the oh, fifth in the series, I it. assume that you're referring to Pirates Five. It, performed well at the box office, yes, but certainly not in comparison to some of the other ones. And that's what a studio like Disney will look at to say, has that franchise had its run? Or do we need to change it? Studio like it? Disney need 600 million. Wants to walk that. away from an $800 million payday? <laughs> that's what Disney's known for. Well, an $800 million payday has to be put into context to the budget that it costs to get right. that movie only and then the marketing we'll thereafter. And with I, the I increasing cost, cost not only Mr. Depp's fee or any of the, and plus the other actor's fees, plus general production costs that are getting more expensive. You know, she's looking at me. you put in the marketing costs, which are sometimes <laughs> one, two, or three times the budget of the no film. Right. Also, a film like that, a studio I can spend you. six, eight hundred million just making and marketing the film. So it, Seven hundred ninety-five dollars million sorry, dollars is a you, lot of money. You, you think that, and it seems like a really good box office. But you have to put into and marketing pirates of what's spent on production, marketing, and the overhead costs that the studio takes. I can't so even you have again, it's all in context coming? of what the budget of the film and the marketing of the film is. All right, let's put some more things in context. Ana de Armas, 
understand that every blockbuster that's, that's ever used. been made yes. is, a lo- uh, is, is made at a loss see, at under 800 um, million, according to that testimony. Most well, recently, actually, I guess, in every movie water with that has ever been made has been made at a loss. But, but, I, I, I don't. Again, I, I know some of the movies. Right. That in terms of actual profit, about deep water. I don't sure. Is that? I don't even know. In terms of Hollywood accounting, right? Um, she was in the last James Bond movie. Yes, she was. They were talking she about was great in it. Nice she was the best part of that movie. Bond, right? right after her big star of moment, yeah. stars born moment. Yeah, she's gotten a lot more. Le Hava, um, or, or Yeha. Thank something. you so much for the generous super chat. Yeah. Um, and she said that her breakout role was Blade Runner. It was it was like the first big, you know, studio movie that got a lot of attention. I believe that was the one that we can look at as a as a marker for her, sure. Did, did you watch Blade Runner 2049? Uh, Blade Runner lost more money than God. Do you know what she did in the movie? <laughs> it was years ago. I don't remember exactly what she was in, what, what what role she played, but she was in that movie. And from that, her agents used that as leverage to get her more movies. You have no knowledge that her principal role in that movie was as a gigantic naked billboard. That is not her principal role. Are you saying that's God the only thing she was? She was a gigantic naked billboard. She <laughs> wasn't in the movie. That's the principal either. role in that movie. I, I, don't, I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Dennis. Hologram, okay. but oh, I mean. Uh, oh. And <laughs> she's been doing well was, to this point we, we, in I this line, of, line of Netflix, questioning. Right? <laughs> right. Damn it. You don't come after 2049, uh, buddy. He's an interesting <laughs> example because it, it, he's been in a role that's been recast multiple times. This is just you know a couple role? of people in a, that in a bar. Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of right. like right. shooting the so breeze about movies. The title character in that DC <laughs> like the, series. Where's the expert methodology? Has seen how many actors? Several. Right. Michael yeah. Keaton. He was Batman. Val Kilmer. You're a movie buff. Yeah. Oh, sh- oh come on. Oh. Come on. That is That's just Bale is Batman. I think he was, you're right. George Clooney was Batman. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I guess Robert Pattinson uh, is now Batman. Don't know. Okay. So you'd say uh, you're not a movie buff. But is what I just said the absolutely now the iconic <laughs> role that the DC universe has recast four, five, six times, correct? Uh, Dennison has correct. finally so done a good just job. Just because you have the role in the first because movie, her credibility or the is second gone. movie, he has worn doesn't it down. mean it, you get it in the third movie or the fourth movie. Unless it's contractual. I think there's right. seven cinematic Batman. Unless it's contractual. So, now, let's look. Oh, Ana de Armas, she's like the new Marilyn Monroe on Netflix, too, right? I believe so. She was also in Knives Out, which is probably even a bigger breakout role for her. But right. again, I chose Blade Runner because it's a similar thing. You have to start somewhere. But Knives Out probably was her big moment in time. Great movie. Yeah. I still haven't seen right. it. I've been meaning to. You should see the it. The other person good. picked was Chris Pine. We'll have to Pine. discuss that one sometime, Ian. Uh, Chris Pine <laughs> is in a superhero Sarah, movie. Sarah, 40 milligrams of immediate movie. release. He Rick, is wait until I watch it, then well, I can join you guys. Star Trek being a blockbuster, but not necessarily a superhero, right? Yeah, um, he was in both Wonder Woman movies, right? Uh, yes, he plays the love interest to Gal Gadot. Yeah, yeah. Um, on Star Trek, in, in the Star Trek franchise, he plays Captain Kirk, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the exact role, role that he played. You've got come on. Come on. No way that he's Captain Kirk. You know come who on. Captain Kirk is? Sorry. I'm, I'm, yes, I do. I need to meet myself. Well, I, but you didn't know characters. that Chris Pine is, is Captain Kirk in Star Trek? I hate to say I'm not a Star Trek fan. Okay. But okay, I hate it. you used Mr. Pine as an example. Yeah, Dennis is right on all this stuff. You didn't, stuff. You didn't even do, know he starred any homework. in this franchise film? She did. I didn't know that he starred. That's why I hate it. Again. In fact, we, he was we, the most we can, we can go over. I, we can go over this a couple more times, and I'm happy to do so. All I wanted to do was look at oh, from a small like pool that. of people that have been in huge franchise movies or or superhero movies, and and give you a sense of what the range is or what someone's trajectory can be. Again, they 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 are not apples and apples. They're not both green apples or both red apples. I just was looking at a range. It's what we do. It's what we do in the industry. It's it's what you do to kind of. 
get a sense of how much you're going to pay an actor, what they're worth in the foreign markets and the domestic Ma'am, I markets. I think my question you was, would not did pay you know whether he was in Star Trek? Did not. Yes, and you okay. were asking me why I chose him, is which is what this conversation is about. And again, I chose him because he was part of Star Trek and Wonder Woman, but mostly because he was in Wonder Woman. Yep, and I knew it. I don't Junk know the test. exact yeah. time frame of which came first, but the fact that <laughs> oh. in both is, of them is this consistent is junk with what I'm actors sorry. of this film. Ma'am, he was Kirk in 2009. Like Motion to yeah. strike the entire Wait, witness. You, you, you yes. talked about breakout Seriously. rules, but you don't know which which was his 2009. This is, like I said, this has been an actor. He's this been a well-liked actor. He was in Star party. Trek and in like, Hotel Wonder Woman. Has she actually even seen a movie? And Did a Star movie Trek, with Denzel Star... Washington? Pardon? Did a movie with Denzel Washington? He's had a good career. Yeah, great career. Yeah. Jesus yeah. Much longer career than than Ms. Hurt, right? Yep. She was on the precipice of a great career. Yeah. You, she that's not, that's not the same thing. That for it, that it, yet or be in those yeah. movies yet. So we don't know. I'm sorry. We're getting that's back to precipice. Didn't you just deny precipice a few minutes ago? I said, I thought your testimony was she was on the precipice of meteoric rise. You said, I guess. I, I didn't say meteoric. I said consistent. I don't know. She could have a meteoric rise, but I was talking about consistent with Ms. Hurd. All right. Um, All right. Right, so the, right. of the actors you selected... Isn't it true that you'd say anything if you were paid? Two of them <laughs> are the title characters in Well, for a lawyer to ask that question. Movies. One of them... Fifty grand right, right now, Rob, what will you say for that? Character? Gal Gadot. Wonder Woman, right. right. She's Wonder Woman. Yeah. and Oh, and you mean Jason Momoa, sure. Yeah. 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 So you two title yeah. characters. You got James Kirk... <laughs> James T. Those are the people that you thought were most representative of Ms. Hurd. Dennis didn't kill this Again, part, man. Yep, there agreed. are not that yep. many agreed. in the pool to pick from. I'm not going to destroy the comparable actors that haven't been Finally, in either a large, cross what we call Dennison. tentpole Don't movies ruin it. or franchise <laughs> movies or superhero movies. So I, I wanted to work within those parameters, and that's what I did. So those are the actors I chose, yes. And to show what type of work happens when you're in a big movie and what happens afterwards. When you I say need to ask comparable, more comparable um, every one of the actors you chose had a much longer TV career than, than Ms. Hurt. No, no, you got this one. Again, they were all in superhero or, or franchise movies that did very, very well at the box office. And there are tons of actors and actresses who are in superhero movies that don't have meteor meteoric rises thereafter. Sure. Correct. Not when they're the lead character with Jason Momoa, but to your point, there are many actors that have no career prior to a breakout role and then have a meteoric career and have had no career prior. That wasn't what so he asked. You don't always just look at the past. It's helpful. And with Miss Hurd, she had good reviews. So that's what I looked at. But if you look at other actors and they have their first role and I all of a sudden they become a superstar private, Jad, from one role. Chemistry was a problem. So that happens in our business. Yep. It just does. I saw those. <laughs> Saw those, Rick. Let's do um, headlines and hangouts. To your <laughs> we'll do it on we'll do it on Aquaman actors. reviews. <laughs> you have no personal knowledge as to how much any of them were compensated over I, the period you review. Incorrect. You have personal knowledge as to who? Jason Momoa. It doesn't and seem you like derive it. that personal knowledge from talking to somebody. Yes. He didn't tell you. His agent did. Okay. So what you will rely on what Mr. Momoa's agent told you, but you have no knowledge. You didn't see the contract. No. No, his agent is at William Morris as well. So they told me that. Right. Uh, you know, and you've never seen anybody else's contracts as to what they were making. No, but in 25 years of being in this business, I understand the basis of which actors are paid when they're in blockbuster films and then they're in large budgeted studio films. So but I don't it's, know who it's not is. a leap to kind of understand <laughs> yeah, where, right. where the actor's making. And again, I really didn't want to try to be speculative in my analysis. No, I you just were speculative in your analysis. That Amber had contracted for already and just take it from there and said if she had done one movie a year and one series, and done product endorsement, that's how I got to the number. So I wasn't looking to take her on a meteoric rise. I wasn't looking to give her the same career as Jace Momoa. I took her numbers that her agents had actually negotiated and worked from there. When you say you weren't trying to give her the same career as Jason Momoa, the, 
Brit. The TV <laughs> program that she most recently did, The Stand, she made 200000 an episode. That's what you testified to. Correct. And in your damage analysis, you give her a million dollars an episode had the Waldman statements not occurred. And you do it only because you believe Mr. Momoa has gotten that in, in, in something that he's in. <laughs> Right. So you are person. giving her the same career as Jason Momoa. Well, again, yeah. with someone like uh, Elaine's Ms. Heard, who was uh, in a expression. blockbuster film with the team at William Morris, in my discussions with William Morris, that's what they were looking to negotiate for her on other projects. So I got some of that information from her management team directly. So her agents were looking to get her as much money as possible? I think that's the job of an agent. They usually right. try to they get were, the most money as possible. Your, tes your testimony is they were looking to get the money for her, but you, you need somebody willing to pay on the other side of that deal, don't you? Right, right. but agents opinion. are working thank with you. people in the industry and have a very, pulse on what, very, uh, very have a finger on a pulse of what's really, going on, you. so they know who's marketable and what the price is that all the streamers are paying these days. You haven't seen a single one of the endorsement contracts that you reference, other than Ms. Hurd's? No, other than again, what I was talk I was talking to William Morris in terms of the pricing that they are aware of, not only for their own clients, but what's out in the marketplace and it's pretty consistent. And I've also worked with other actors and other cases that have gotten similar contracts. So I'm familiar with the rates of endorsement contracts. You, you, Team Tennessee, you thank you again. You haven't made any also reference to the actual earnings of thank any of these wow. actors. Yeah. Again, as you do an analysis, you put together the numbers that you know from both your experience and the marketplace and the agents that are working in the marketplace. So together, that's how I created those numbers and mostly using Ms. Hurd's numbers specifically Reforms? and giving her a steady I'm career, which is what case. she had had prior to uh, Aquaman. Yeah. Uh, and you don't have the prior earnings of any of the actors you looked at other than Ms. <clears throat> no, I don't have all the contracts now. You don't have any of that information. I'm sorry? You don't have any of that information? No. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. In fact, that information, I guess aside from Mr. Momoa's, is confidential, right? Usually it is, yes. Yeah. And the only reason you know anything about Mr. Momoa is that you, um, Ms. Hurd shares an agent? Right, but I, look, I've, I've also been in the industry for many years, and I know what actors get paid. I talk about budgets constantly. I don't so know what movies are in, but I know what they get paid. Secret within yeah. the industry, the amount that actors <laughs> in those types of movies are paid very, very well. You're not currently working as an agent for anyone, are you? No. Right. So. The salaries of these comparable actors. What sort of bottle is that next to her? Did they form some basis Vodka. for your opinion? <laughs> I was just no. Okay. So your opinion, as I understand it, is that Ms. Hurd should have been able to renegotiate an existing contract which is standard in the industry as well as with her agent specifically. Do you know if it's standard with Warner Brothers? I'm sorry? Do you know if it's standard with Warner Brothers? Well, what do you guys got? I don't know if it's standard at, at any of the studios, but it is standard for agents to renegotiate and oftentimes are successful when the film is done so well. Right. But what you're talking about is there's an existing contract where Ms. Hurd has made a promise that she will do the next movie for, in this instance, $2 million, right? Right. And what you, the agent is trying to do is to get Warner Brothers to say, hey, you should pay her more than your contract says because you like her? What? Well, as Ms. Kovacevic said, also, it's standard in the industry. As Again, I've been in the industry. I've worked with agents, and I've worked with lots of lawyers. And, you know, we have conversations about what is an actor getting or what can they do or what are they going to do the next time. Hollywood so, again, it's a standard contract. practice in the industry, especially when a film is as successful as Aquaman, that the agents will go back and renegotiate. <laughs> Uh, in fact, that was conversation. Isn't the standard practice is that they would try to renegotiate, but it's up to the studio. 
Sure, but oftentimes happen. in a movie of such as the nature of Aquaman, it's, they're very successful, usually. But, but the entirety of your analysis assumes a renegotiation with a studio for terms that are double what the studio had already got a promise from Miss Heard she would work for. Correct. Have you talked to Walter Hamada? Have I spoken to him? Mm -hmm. No. Do you know who he is? Yes. Who is he? He's a senior executive at Warner Brothers. Or Yeah, I, I think he still is there, but certainly <clears throat> at the time of the renegotiation, he was a senior executive. And do you know whether he's the president of DC-based film productions? I think that's exactly his title. <clears throat> Who's in a better position to determine whether Warren, Warner Brothers would renegotiate, you or Mr. Hamada? As again, I based this on the, on the agents that were talking to Warner Brothers about Mr. Momoa, and they were wanting to talk to them about Mr. Hurt as well. Okay, I'm not so sure. they, I based my information on them. So you, the, the, the connection should be Mr. Hamada or the agents, not Mr. Hamada and me. All right. Who's in a better position? Uh, position to to know whether Warner Brothers would renegotiate. Objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation. Just yeah, if only Rosamund Pike had been in a, a superhero movie, that would have been a funny call out to Gone Girl. <laughs> She's a James Bond villain. She is. That's kind of that's close. That's true. Ana de Armas has, has not been in a superhero I movie. I did. That's right. Did you understand that Mr. Hamada says that they don't? that they want to hold the, the lawyers, I mean, hold the actors to their deals? That was a philosophy that he said Warner Brothers had, yes. Yeah. That's why we use contracts. I'll do a video on that. Did you understand that Mr. Hamada said that nothing Mr. Depp did impacted her compensation? Hiya, thanks so much for the I don't remember that part of the testimony. You have it available for me to read? Oh. Oh. You don't know whether Mr. Hamada testified. Did anything Mr. Depp, Mr. Depp said about Amber Heard affect Mr. your conversation? <laughs> Again, I don't. I you don't, don't remember. I don't, recall, I don't recall that testimony. Sorry. No. <clears throat> Do you know whether Mr. Hamada indicated whether he even knew who Adam Waldman was? Again, I, I don't remember the conversation about Hamada and Walter. Huh. Or Depp. Huh. And you don't remember whether Mr. Hamada uh, made Alita, any is, uh, is this dude on their witness list? Anything Mr. Waldman yes, said. Yes, Mr. Hamada Mr. is. Okay. It sure sounds it be... like it. In my experience, yeah. studios don't talk about what, it's been how or why that they he's make decisions called as a based on witness. publicity or conversations. They're not going to Although... try. They're, they're going to be very protective of all the relationships. So is Johnny Depp That's and Paul Bettany. Natural. So who knows? Yeah. yeah. Unless you can get him to testify under oath at a deposition, right? Well, even so, they're not going to say anything negative. They but may they could bring him up as a rebuttal positive, witness, even if he wasn't on the list. Do anything that could potentially damage a relationship that may change or be worthwhile. I decided I'd be so amazing at movie trivia based does. cross. So, yes. I'll, I'll just be Mr. Hamad is in the best position to determine whether there were chemistry issues with Ms. Hurt. Objection, Your Honor, calls for speculation. He's the president of the company. No, uh, overruled. I don't know how involved Mr. Hamada was on a daily basis in, the, in terms of chemistry, but I do know that Warner Brothers did a chemistry test with uh, Ms. Hurd and Mr. Momoa. And she turned out to be very basic. She went in and Bring up all the articles, Jennison. Bring them all so up. So that was to actually see whether there was good chemistry between them. And there only there hearsay. was good chemistry because she was then hired to be the romantic interest. So whatever Mr. Hamada said during his deposition, I look at what actually happened in real life, which is she got the chemistry test and then she got the job. Yeah, let's look what happened in real life. She went in before and took the test. Then she made a movie. Then there was an existing movie under which Warner Brothers they could then decide whether there was chemistry, right? The movie worked. It made over a billion dollars and they're <clears throat> all over the poster. If they didn't think that there was chemistry, they wouldn't have put Ms. Hurd on the poster next to Mr. This counts Momoa. against Johnny so, Depp's time. 
you know there were multiple posters for the Aquaman movie. Yes, and there three, always are. That's 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 standard. And that three out of the four posters, the standard posters for Aquaman, didn't even feature Miss Her. Right. So when you exactly. when you make a poster at the studio, it's normal to have three or four variations because you want to appeal to different people's perspectives. So you want the romantic poster, you want the action poster, you want the superhero poster. So it's normal for them to have many posters, but the romantic poster was of Ms. Heard and Mr. Momoa. Right. And everyone and all the others are just of Mr. Momoa. Like we talked about, it's Aquaman, but she was prominent in the ones that she that Warner Brothers wanted to appeal to women and to the romantic interest of the consumer. What movies would Ms. Heard have gotten absent Mr. Waldman's statement? No. Oh. oh, so well, bad. The ones we know about to. specifically that she was in conversations with was a movie with um, Gail Garcelle Bernal, I believe that's how you say his name, at uh, Amazon, which is what Ms. Kovacevic said. And she was also in consideration for a movie called Ambulance with Michael Bay. Um, but <laughs> again, she, uh, after been? the Waldman statements, nobody would talk to the agents. And so they weren't able to garner more. Oh, she also had a, a movie that she was interested in producing that a good friend of hers uh, or a friend of hers or colleague was, was doing. So um, there was at least those three. Um, but that I read about. Those were three movies that she was being considered mm -hmm. for. But you don't know what movie she, would, she was going to be in. Well, again, they stopped the conversation after the statement, so we don't know where they would have gone, of course. But they, she was in consideration for all of them, but, and, and but given her fame from Aquaman, movie. she would have that would have helped all those movies. So it would have made made a lot of sense. You're projecting movies way out into the future that you have no knowledge would ever have gotten made. Well, that's what we do when you talk about comparables and and economic damages. You talk about the future. That's standard in our like industry as, as a forensic expert <laughs> and ministry. <laughs> That's how movies are financed, as a matter of fact, is by forecasting what happens in the future. Dennis and literally say like Pirate what 6. What connection do you draw <laughs> yeah. between Mr. Waldman's statements and the reported reduction in Ms. Hurd's Aquaman 2 role? Again, it's just the, it's a, it, this, it's the timing of it all. There's a timing of it all. And also they were going to take her out of the movie after the statements and they put her back in. And then there, I, I, can I talk about the emails that I read? I'm, I'm not sure at this point, but. So. No. When you say they were going to take her out of the movie, when you have an option, you literally have the option whether to include the actress, right? You got to make sure that you, that's, that's what the mean. studio that has the option. You got to be Correct. clear on that. Right. So. They can choose to exercise the option or not exercise the option. Entirely up to them. The studio can. Correct. And they have that particular studio, to your knowledge, has re repeatedly recast even major figures in their DC movies. We talked about Batman. What about Superman? You know, I'm not. As, I, I think I'm more familiar with the Batman actors. I think mm. that happened a couple of years. Really, you don't know. Yeah. Depending on how the movie, performs. you're not an expert. If the movie doesn't perform, they'll look for other actors. Or if they want to go a different direction or reboot a franchise, <laughs> they will look at different actors. Honestly, so, you could find a YouTuber that's a much better expert than actors, this lady. Especially not. <laughs> I was about to make the they're joke that I'm retiring and I'm going to become an expert on actor movies. Or actress, I, I, I'm not kidding though. Like, like you could, you could too much money to play the role. Again, you could, right? my cousin Vinny, a YouTuber that has uh, a channel that yes, focuses not, on not figures on Hollywood $10 movies, dollars, but yes, and if and have, have them be a better expert. expert. A Minecraft you might not get your role be better. <laughs> and your analysis assumes that Ms. Heard could double her money. Well, her contracts doubled her money from each one to the next, so it wasn't that large a leap to do that, especially when the agents had told me that that was what it then they were considering and what they've been discussing. All right. Have you seen the script of Aquaman 2? Personally? Yeah. Uh, I did see a draft. I don't know what the date was or when it was or where in the succession of the rewrites it was. I did see one draft, yes. You don't know what? 
Warner Brothers has in mind for that movie in terms of the kind of movie it's going to be? It's a superhero movie. Great. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, Duh. Thank you. Like a bloody comedy, right? Great expertise right here. I, I, I don't know. I don't know I about a buddy it comedy. Water. It's an action movie, superhero movie. I don't know. Who's Patrick Wilson? Patrick Wilson. In Aquaman. I, I, I've heard that name Ooh, in terms this of. Is oh, my God. Oh, oh, no, but I don't know. Not an expert. Uh, oh, this is hurting. In Aquaman. Again, I don't, I don't know him by name. If you want to show me a picture, I can. The one movie no. you have to know. Right. No, you're. Do you know if Mr. Wilson appears more frequently in Aquaman than your, than your client does? I, I don't. I didn't count the screen time when I watched the movie. It was a long, you know. Even when I watched it again, I, I didn't count the screen time uh, of anybody else. Uh. Uh-uh. It's close. He's the antagonist. You did you read the testimony of? Uh, Mr. Hamada? We discussed that, yes. You disregarded all of it in your analysis as to her ability to renegotiate, correct? Well, I, I remember the part where Mr. Hamada said that from time to time they will break their philosophy and renegotiate just what they did with Jason Momoa and with Gal Gadot. So, you know, it's it, it, that just goes, it coincides with what we know in the industry, which is it can be done. It's what they did with the two title characters in the DC universe. Again, I've worked in the business for a long time, and I've seen a lot of actors uh, renegotiate their careers. It's I'm sorry, not their careers, renegotiate their uh, their fees. It's it's common practice, and it's certainly what the agent will think about first when a movie makes a billion plus dollars. Right. Again, 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 focused on the agent, but it's the studio that pays the bills yes mm-hmm. all right your honor i have a fair amount more to do is you do continue i'm sorry continue it's okay. 5 30 5 30 we're going to 5 30 today or not every day is 5 30 day okay <laughs> no, it's we, just we made that it's over too need to get there. every day is 5 30 all right perfect what the heck? all right Rotten you talked like about that. <laughs> Ms. Herb's endorsement deal with L'Oreal. Yes. He didn't know what the end of the day was? I don't oh, know. Yeah, I don't L'Oreal like that. has concerns about using her because every time they try to use her, people re- respond negatively to her. Britt, thank you for this very generous super uh, chat. People don't. The the Depp fan base has responded, uh, has been, has tro- uh, have posted negative things about Ms. Herb on their campaigns. So did you say the depth fan base? Well, people that were using the hashtags that were consistent with the rest of the, the depth fan base. Yeah, but there are people posting negative things that, other than things that came from Mr. Waldman, correct? I haven't seen all the, I haven't seen all that. Was, I was just going over this already? L'Oreal, what L'Oreal discussed <clears throat> and what L'Oreal You really should have ended in, um, their communication. like 10 minutes ago. Sure. But I feel didn't like he didn't it? want to pass her for redirect made, yet. Didn't, didn't you hear you he has L'Oreal a lot more to do? Word cloud of the words that were most uh, commonly associated with with Miss Heard. That's and the point. Uh, he wanted the chance to. I knew they did that. I didn't come see back it and still have the witness. Do you know what words there were? Yeah, yeah, I mean, does he have a half hour more stuff? Because this is going to kill me. Yeah. Folks in chat, exciting Monday has been delayed to exciting Tuesday. You didn't talk much about this, but in order to get to the damage analysis that you got, um, the $45 million, I I think at least in initially you suggested that Ms. Heard would have a role producing and starring in a movie and that she would make $12 million. I, I've talked about that, but in the in the latest calculation, I, that was really less what I considered and more about what films and TV and endorsement deals that we, she would do. The producing was something that she had wanted to do. And again, Mr. Momoa got that. So that's where the agents were discussing those figures with me. The last movie that she has a production credit for is in 2013, right? Again, I don't, I haven't memorized her resume. There's a movie called Serum. 
you ever hear of it? <laughs> no. Aside from having probably seen it on her IMDb. And Soon the Darkness, that's her other production credit, right? I'll, I'll, if you say so. If, if you're reading it off of her resume, I've I will never even watched a movie in the last 2010? Day. That's what it seems okay. like. 12 years ago. But you, at least at some portion of the, at some point in this uh, analysis, were of, of the mind that she, she would recover $12 million with a producing uh, role and a starring role in a movie? Because that's what Mr. Momoa got. Again, the agents were just saying that those are the kinds of numbers they were looking at to help her as she moved forward in her producing career. Those are the kind of the numbers the agents would like her to get. Right, but again, I didn't use that in the final analysis of my 45 million. So it was just a, a discussion point because that's what the agents wanted me to consider. All right. All right. You have testified that the breakout role for Ms. Heard was Aquaman, right? I didn't say the breakout role, but I used it as this, you know, a movie that it was a superhero kind of you called super it a star is born box office moment. success. Why are we quibbling? Uh, I think that, you know, some of her other critically acclaimed movies probably helped her break into that role, which would have been <laughs> that was Thursday, The Danish huh? Girl, and then her work in Justice League, which was a natural progression to getting to star in Aquaman. Thank you, Asylum of Mutiny. Uh, all right. Very generous but of you, very kind of you. I use breakout, perhaps you didn't, but... This is the movie that springboards her to the kind of money that you are suggesting she should earn. It should have, yes. Yeah. And either, I mean, other than Aquaman, which was released in 2018, how many. Not pity points. Movies I think he's trying has to she booked? Kill time. Well, she booked Aquaman 2. Right. And she did The Stand, which was a significant television show. Right. Not to Paramount, Paramount uh, Plus. But outside of the Aquaman franchise, she obtained only one role, movie role, since 2018, right? Right. The industry also knows that she's planned to be in the next move and they understand her production schedule. So she's not going to go after films that would conflict with a mega box office movie. So there's scheduling and conflict issues as well that her, she and her team would consider. So from, I, what, when was Aquaman <laughs> released in 2018? December. 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 That's what I, this is about. It's either December, 2018. And, and then it depends on where it was in the world. It was started in December, 2018. And then it, it moved out, you know, into 2019. She's doing no movies, but we don't want to conflict with How the many no movies. How many months she's between doing. December 2018 and the Waldman statements went by? Oh, uh, 12, I think 15 or 16, if my math is correct. She got one role during that, that 15 or 16 month period during the entirety of the post. Aquaman boost, right? She got stand. Right. And then she was in discussions for the films as they were getting ready to go. But she didn't get another role for 16 months between the release of Aquaman and what you say are the Waldman statements. Well, she got the stand. Right. She got one TV role. A pretty significant TV role, yes, for a Stephen King novel. Right. She please, was in a movie. Please tell me the plot of the stand, witness. Sorry? She was in a movie. She's just that trying to prove that she knows something since she doesn't know any of the movies of any of the other actors that she's what compared movie her are you to. Referring to? This is a great point from uh, Walter. Well, I don't know when that was shot. Months so between you have the statements. Was shot. Movies get released yeah. at different time frames. Like they can be shot in 2016 and not get released until 2018. So you'd have to tell me, we'd have to look at you know the actual filming dates of, of the gully to, to, for me to talk to you about that. She wasn't initially cast in gully, was she? I, I'm not familiar with the casting process of Gully. Do right. um, you know who Alice Eve is? M who? Alice Eve. Alice Eve. Yes, yeah, she's in Alice Star Trek. Knows, but I'm not, I'm not You're killing me. She, she is. She's an actress, been in any number of movies. She's the love interest in Star Trek Into Darkness. Yeah, That's why I know her name, but I, I don't know if her If only name. you knew this stuff. She's in Star Trek. <laughs> I'm going to die. Right. right. 
Pogue okay. would be a much better option. She was in one of those breakout roles, Star Trek. And he's going to say she's not making that much money. You don't even know who she is. I, I talked Ooh, to you about Star Trek it. before. I'm not a big Star Trekian. But you're a man. But I am an, an expert. expert. You're not yeah. here as a fan. You're Ms. here Hurd as an expert. replaced Alice Eve in the movie. Ron's Gun. about to commit seppuku. <laughs> I don't know the casting process. I don't know. He's dying. Do you know Letter what? opener, she Harry Kiri. <laughs> Who? Ms. Uh, Ms. I got to hook you up with my knife guy. Gully? Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell me when that was in? No, no, I don't. But what, what was the filming date of, and what was the start date of Gully? Uh, do you, you didn't look at the Gully contract when you were making an analysis of, of Ms. Hurt's damages? I don't recall whether I looked at it or not. <clears throat> I feel you're rich. Did you understand really that she was making... I knew exactly what he was doing with Alice. Even if you were an expert, you would have been able to deflect that. Can you tell me when it was shot? When does that contract get negotiated? It's about How do you not right. know anything? The contract is negotiated she knows prior nothing. to the release of Aquaman. Okay. So she signs this contract for twenty-one ninety. Is there a... Do you know what? The Screen Actors Guild low budget agreement minimum scale is? It changes from year to year. It depends on what year and what the size of the budget. There's actually three or four different scale num uh, you know, benchmarks. So when there's a low budget, it can be a micro budget. It can be a minimum budget. At low budget, it, there's, there's like four or five different scales that they use when it gets to anything other than a studio film. And oftentimes actors do passion projects and that has nothing to do with or something that they really love to do or they think that would be good for the career. It doesn't have anything to do with the, the fee made on the on the film. All right. What's a loan out? A loan out? A loan out is the corporation that a an actor will use so that their money comes in through a corporation, and then that corporation technically loans out the actor services uh, to the production. So they the loan out is the corporation that the actor uses, and then they loan out the services to the you know production company. It's just a really for tax purposes. Do you know of any movie? She's right. That. <laughs> Miss Heard book. She finally knows something. That shouldn't be surprising, but it is. I'm saying she's Aquaman right on that. Other than Gully. Well, I know she did Justice League. Right. Um, I, I I don't remember the dates and times of the filming of the other ones. You, you always have to look at the filming dates. Right. <clears throat> you don't remember the Justice League was before Aquaman. You talked about Mr. Schnell. Gully was in his chart, right? I don't. I don't remember where Gully was. Right. Did you look closely at his chart? Pardon? Did you look closely at his chart? At Mr. Schnell's chart? Yeah. You know, when you're researching um, for your expert testimony. I looked at the numbers with respect to the social media campaigns. Is what I was looking at Mr. Schnell for. Mr. Schnell. Okay. I half want him to ask if she can read. Um, it's killing me. <laughs> you know whether any of the dates of the Waldman statements even appear in Mr. Schnell. Rick, I love that you have a German Hogue fan club. I, I don't remember. We have a lot of German chatters. I don't know if she can read. I love it. I love it. I really like Patrick Wilson. He's a journeyman actor. a little bit about Q scores and Mr. Bonnie. Do you remember that? Yes. For Miss Heard, Mr. Banya used Q scores from immediately after Aquaman, right? Again, if you want to show me something, I can I can answer. I don't remember every word. It was in the stuff you said you looked through. I'm talking about the dates with you. If your witness, you, you don't know as you sit here today whether the Q scores that Mr. Properly. Banya used. You can show me were, something. I have to look that up. After Aquaman, you either know or you don't for know. For the Waldman statement. He used a couple different scores based on on dates. He didn't. I don't remember if they were uh, correlated. Patrick Wilson to is a great singer. He's in the Phantom of the Opera. Years more than anything else. Again, I looked at thousands and thousands of pages of documents, so I don't remember exactly what he's. Even before the oh, yeah. absolutely Waldman statements, Ms. Heard 
had very high negative Q scores. Isn't that correct? Very negative high Q scores? No, very no, high very negative. High I should negative. Have very high negative Q scores. Um, that's not what you said, ma'am. We, I remember discussions of a lot of key scores. We literally were I, just I, here. I don't remember exactly what, what or when, which score, or whether it was net. So in your analysis, you didn't consider Ms. Hurd's negative Q scores as a restraint on what she might earn on a going forward basis? No, Q scores change all the time. Ms. Hurd's, Q, Ms. Hurd's, Ms. Hurd's IMDb score has been one, and it's been 300. Mr. Depp's Q score has been one and it's been 253. You know, Q scores change all the time. Scores change all the time. They're based on current events and, and movie releases. You talked a little bit about Mr. Depp's damages. Um, did you talk, who's Jerry Bruckheimer? Who's Jerry Bruckheimer, the producer of uh, the Pirates franchise? Well, he's a huge producer Among of other a lot things. of movies, but he happens yes. to be the producer <laughs> of the Pirates franchise. You didn't talk to him prior to your testimony? She will never Where's work in this town that? again. I don't and think she works in this town now, Ron. You didn't yeah, have I know. Other <laughs> than sure like after this, did you? I, I, uh, me personally, no. I did not talk to Mr. Bruckheimer. I'd say she'll never and even go to another never movie again, but it doesn't appear that she has been doing that either. She'll never eat lunch in this town again. There has been no six pirate movie. There is not a pirates movie titled Pirate Six yet. Right. Yet. They're never Forever. titled by number. But you haven't talked to Mr. Bruckheimer <laughs> as to whether Mr. Depp was going to appear in the movie? Mr. From things that I've read in, in uh, newspaper publications and emails, I've read that Mr. Bruckheimer was uncertain whether Mr. Depp would star in. Right. But you haven't talked. Moving forward. And no, you've never spoken so. with Sean Bailey about this, right? Jury no. tends not to like or any witnesses. I actually spoke. I actually put a call into somebody at Disney, and they didn't want to talk to me. <laughs> I wonder why. I call somebody <laughs> I wonder call. Why. Oh my! No, again, as I said, studios don't want to talk about their stars, whether they want to preserve a relationship that may or may not be used in the future. So it's it's their tendency not to talk about people they are in business with. So you have no personal knowledge why Mr. Depp hasn't made a six pirate movie. Well, as I said, there is no six pirate movie. Right. You, but you don't know why. You have no personal knowledge why. I don't work at Disney now. Did you listen to Mr. Wigg Wiggum's testimony in this trial? I read Mr. Wiggum's testimony. And Mr. Wiggum said he had, Mr. Depp had a deal for the movie, right? I, I've, uh, I think Mr. Wiggum did. The other agent, uh, Mr. Carino, said he did not. And as there is no, uh, as there is no Pirates movie, there have been no deals negotiated, and that's what Ms. Jacobs also testified to. But Mr. Wiggum testified to something else. It's, it doesn't. It doesn't uh, correlate, as we say, to the other two agents' testimony. You indicated that a portion of the reason. Evidently not, Sophie. That uh, Mr. Depp has, get a, has received a negative. Well, they are doing long cross examination, Sophie J. So. Has received a variety <laughs> we'll see. of negative uh, comments in Hollywood is that he engages in lawsuits. That's one of the, that's one of the uh, for a while, since the UK elements days. that has contributed to a Reducting. lot of negative press and attention is due to the lawsuits and the activity and the behaviors that we talked about earlier have been brought into the limelight. Mr. Depp's lawsuit here has generated negative publicity for Ms. Hurd, correct? Yes. That lawsuit, until she's filed a counterclaim, didn't relate to the Waldman statements, did it? Mr. Depp's lawsuit? Yeah. No, it, it, we talked about that. It, it was pertaining to the uh, her op-ed piece. Right. Uh, it, it related to what Pardon? Ms. Hurd said. I'm sorry? 
this Mr. Depp's lawsuit relates to what Ms. Heard said and, and not to what Mr. Waldman said. That would, well, it related to the op-ed piece that Ms. Heard wrote. Right. So Mr. Waldman's statements have no connection to the negative publicity that Ms. Heard has uh, received relative to this trial, correct? Objection calls for speculation, foundation, hearsay, and outside the scope. Wow. Anyway, Nazi. Oh. <laughs> Looking for a causal connection here. Wow. Sustain the objection. Next question. Yes, not a great response. Ben Chu has a fancy tie on today. When was the last time you that met a pretty cool Ms. Tie. Heard? Yeah, I kind of like it. I only met Ms. Heard at lunch. It cost as much as my car. Yeah, that's the first time you talked to her. He's first just tre he's treading water, though. He's treading water um, by himself. Ten more minutes. What's your conversation? Yeah, he's just treading to five thirty, I think. Right? Yeah, I think I think uh, so. For, I, I don't think he wants to redirect today. Six hundred fifty dollars for whatever reason. What has been your compensation to date for providing? Well, he thought he only had to get to five. That you have in this case. That's right. I've been working on the case for about three years. He wants to sit and with the dailies and and come up with better cross examination. Over the three years, I believe it's around sixty thousand dollars. You said sixty. Yeah, over three years. Right. I have no further questions. All right, redirect. Thank you, Your Honor. Or not? I'm make it definitely fit within that five thirty. Okay. Um, Ms. Arnold, you were asked a number of questions about the different social media, the negative, uh, and how do you know that it relates to the Waldman Depp statements? Do you recall all those questions? Yes. Okay. The, the social media that was connected, and, and some of that was your testimony, some Jessica Kovacevic, and some of that was Vacevich. Mr. Schnell, actually <laughs> tracked the language from the That's three how I statements sound with from Waldman, chats. correct? Objection leading. <laughs> Yeah, but okay. that's super jet names. Any, She's supposed to be, uh, know these names. This is the uh, witness were made on her to list. Track the negative social media that caused the damages that you've attributed. Objection leading. Overruled. So L'Oreal did a lot of research. Um, William Morris did a lot of research. Mr. Schnell did a lot of research. And in those conversations, those were also connective tissues to the they did research, so I did social media campaign and the Walden statements. <laughs> I and just relied on them. To those three statements. Yes. Yeah. Objection yeah. leading. And what, if any, connection did they have to those three statements? <laughs> Again, they we, just we, we talked about this earlier. Sustain. We talked about some of the hashtags <laughs> being similar. We talked about the Wald, Waldman or the Wald Minion. So there were a lot of connective tissues between the uh, negative social media, social media campaigns and the Waldman statements. And I'm going to jump because I think this is part of this. So you were asked some questions about Mr. Hamada. Do you recall that? Yes. And asked whether he testified that um, uh, th whether anything Mr. Depp said or anything Mr. Waldman said had anything to do with their initial decision not to exercise the option to Aquaman to. Do you recall that testimony? For that I recall question. those questions. The question, yes. Okay. Now, the testimony from Mr. Schnell tracked the 1.2 million um, tracers to January 2021, correct? Objection leading. Do, do you remember what mm -hmm. month that was until? Right, so when Mr. Schnell did his analysis, it was from April of 2020 to January 2021. And when did Warner Brothers tell Amber Heard and her agents they were not exercising her Aquaman 2 contract? It was in February of 2021. All right. And what, if anything, did Mr. Hamada say about whether the reason they did that was because of the 1.2 million uh, negative social media tweets and Instagrams and, and other communications? Objection, no foundation. Had any impact? Sustained. Not in the record. Next question. Do you, do you, are you aware of whether he said anything about that? I recall in the Warner Brothers. Objection, fire. hearsay. Sustained. Do you know? Whether that had any impact. The Muffin Man? She sounded <laughs> objection hearsay. I'm asking now. She's allowed to rely on hearsay. 
sustain the objection next question. no she's not for for like All these right. questions you asked a whole lot of questions about the different comparables um and so i'm just going to go to this again of all the different movies, of all of those comparables, which movie was the highest grossing of all of them? Again, I believe uh, it's Aquaman. I mean, everybody talks about Aquaman being. No, you use Zendaya, so that would be No Way Home. Film. <laughs> yeah, that would be No Way Home for sure. Sorry. Good world. try. But again, <laughs> I don't want to say it was the highest, but I think it was very close to it. Do, do you know whether Walter Hamada admits it was the highest grossing uh, DC film? Yes, what he said it? that, yes. It is the okay. highest grossing DC well, so film. That's not what you asked. When you're looking at all the comparables, what, if any, relevance is there to the degree of success of that DC superhero movie? Objection, foundation. Objection? I have no idea what that question was. She can speak to that, Your Honor. That's the foundation. A, do you know? The Muffin Man. The answer to that question. Do you know? <laughs> I'm sorry, can you repeat? Sorry. I forgot it. No, I have to admit. <laughs> okay, so let, let's go backwards. Um, so what if, do you know whether it makes a difference, whether how successful that DC noises superhero here somewhere. movie is in uh, what types of films they'll be able to get in the future? Objection foundation. I'm asking the foundation. If you uh, ask the foundation, go ahead. That, I'm Maybe. sorry, that's what I thought I was asking. Do, do you know whether that plays any role, the degree of success? Customarily, when a film. Objection, foundation. Ask her how she knows. How do you know? <laughs> in 20, 25 years of being in the film industry, it's customary. The judge, when judge actually had to help her. The judge sounds like she wants to die office. today. It shines a very bright light on hey, the Hey, Nate, I'm here. I want to adjust your volume. And it's customary that they will get. Uh, uh, it is. Uh, there we go. Thanks. Cool. I don't want to use the word standard, but it, 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 it is very frequent that a star in a movie that has performed so well at the box office and with a role model character that Mira was, that she would have gotten uh, other roles and worked quite a bit afterwards, and that movie would have helped her career. I mean, that's, that's no question. And with all these comparables, uh, when you uh, gave the range to this jury of 45 to 50 million in estimating this over this period of time, did you put Amber Heard's estimated damages ranges above all those other comparables? No, again, I was very specific in using the actual negotiated rates that Ms. Heard's agents were able to get for her in that contract and use that as a precedent. So again, I always wanted to be grounded in what Ms. Heard actually was in contract for and what her agents negotiated. And I used that as the baseline for the financial numbers of her loss. I used the comparable actors to show how consistently they all worked and how their careers moved forward after being in a box office. Um, uh, you were asked about Disney and uh, the Pirates 6 again. Uh, what, if any, knowledge do you have of whether Disney is willing to pay Mr. Depp $300 million and a million alpacas? Objection, no start? foundation. Allison Becca, thank you for the super chat. Very I'm generous. asking her, what, if anything, does she know about whether Disney is... If you can lay a foundation. Okay. Do, did you did you listen to or did you read the Disney testimony in this case? I did, yes. All right. <laughs> what do you recall... Disney saying about whether they were willing to pay Mr. Depp $300 million and, a, and give him a million alpacas. They would not be willing to pay $300 million and give him alpacas. Thank you. Oh, gee. It's such a stupid question because we all know that he, like, defecation. We all know what he meant. Uh, what, if any, recollection or knowledge do you have about whether that social media negative campaign that you've testified had the words defecation in it or poop? Objection, no foundation. I know that the word poop and the hashtag poop hey, is used. Whoa. Okay. Was that Mo in any move of the to one strike? Sustain the objection, okay. move to strike. Next Thank you. Question. Okay. Um, in your review of the social media campaigns and the negative social media campaigns that you testified to with this jury, that include the L'Oreal, that include the WME, that include Mr. Schnell, and include what you've done. What, if any, recollection do you have of how many of those that are influencing your connections to the defamation statements include the words poop or defecation? Objection compound. Overruled. 
I don't believe poop was one of the hashtags that was connected to the statement. Okay, thank you. Oh, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to get out of this redirect. You were asked about the time period between the might just be that I'm a little brain fried by at the end of the release day. Release of Aquaman two uh, in December two thousand eighteen. Aquaman one. Aqu Aquaman one. Thank you. And the defamatory right. start statements that were in April twenty twenty and June twenty twenty. Do you recall that testimony? I remember that questioning. Yes. Okay. Um, during we, that we time. Were you aware of whether Aquaman 2 was in discussions with Amber Heard about scheduling the filming of Aquaman 2? In the period between the, the statements and... Before. I'm going before. Okay, I'm sorry. talking about the period of time when they released Aquaman 1. Okay. And the April 8th, first of the defamatory statements. Right. Do you know whether Aquaman, whether Warner Brothers was in discussions already with Amber Heard about scheduling her for Aquaman 2? Objection hearsay. Do you know? I'm asking her whether you know. If you, I'll sustain as a hearsay. Okay. Do you have knowledge of whether Aquaman was in discussions with Amber during that period? Objection hearsay. I, I don't know how to... I, I'm asking ask foundation. foundation. Right, right. It was um, literally the same question. Just... I, um, how would you know? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Ian. She said, do you have knowledge uh, instead of do well, you Amber know? Well, Amber received totally an early different. draft of the script. <laughs> Amber's agents were in discussion. Objection, hearsay. I, I think she can say that. Sustained. Okay. Um, Elaine, what is, um, in your experience, what you based think on is not getting relevant. scripts, what does that mean? Exactly. That's my biggest I'm pet peeve with students. her when she, when she argues on objections. In my experience, the movie is high profile. It's something like Aquaman. They keep the scripts very tight. You know, they don't let anybody read them. They're numbered. They have your name on it. So if you're getting a script for a movie such as Aquaman that's kept tightly, tightly close to the vest, if you will, by the studio, you are going to, they're, they're, they want you to be in the movie. Otherwise, they would never give you the script. And so if a script was given to Amber Heard before the 1st April 8, 2020 uh, defamatory statement, what would that suggest based on, your, based on your knowledge that you've just testified to? Objection, speculation. It's not speculation. It's overruled. <laughs> Again, if she got the script, they were going to use her in the movie. That was their plan. Okay. Are you done, Elaine? questions. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We Is did this a subject to recall? We did it. Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right. So you're of still course she is. So you, you can have a seat in okay. the courtroom. I'm, I'm sorry. still looking. Okay. You're sorry. Thank you. How much time do they have left? They got to have like three hours left. All right. Like, ladies and gentlemen, it's the end of our day. All right. So please do not do any outside research tonight and uh, don't talk with anybody about the they case. They okay. rest right in the there. Morning, bright and early at nine o'clock, right? Okay. Thank you. They took this right case in on Tuesday. Wow. <sighs> They're not going to have any time for rebuttal. Oh, I was hoping not. Be it's a, a time, a new time frame. Like, she might be waiting okay, for everybody's got before she do it. All right, Judge A, what, what's the time split? Can you tell us? Yeah, let's let's do it. Judge. Uh, Usually, she only tells us after the the end of the week, but I I, right. I want to know on a daily Just basis a few now. Planning notes, okay. Um, um, we have our testimony left. tomorrow, uh -huh. and we excuse the jury. We'll go ahead and have the proffers that you requested, Mr. Rottenborn. We'll do those tomorrow after. Is that okay? Does that sound good? All right, we'll do those uh, right after, like right now, tomorrow. Okay, that should give you with all with the proffers that you need to do for the record. Okay, all right, and then whenever all the testimony is done, she's saying possibly proffers. at this point it'd be Thursday okay. afternoon after the jury is excused. Uh, we'll go over the remaining jury instructions. I have three under advisement. We'll take up those, and we'll also, if there's any other from the evidence this week that we need to talk about, we can discuss those as well after the jury's gone on Thursday evening or if earlier, if the evidence is done before then, okay? And just as times up to this minute, uh, the plaintiff has used 45 hours and 24 minutes. The defendant has used 57 hours and six Holy minutes. Holy crap. The plaintiff has left 15 hours and five and 51 minutes. And the defendant Wait. has four hours and nine minutes left, okay? Four hours. Four, four hours and nine and versus 15 and what? For this evening? I didn't, 15 and change. The last witness I, it appears that is on the plaintiff's wit witness list is Mr. Depp, and I was just hoping we would get an answer as to what. Defendant's witnesses. Oh, yeah, defendant's yeah. witness list. I don't know. Are you still changing answer. witness? I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. Making decision in the morning. Okay. All right. Everybody have a good evening. All right. Thank you.
uh, uh, the so now they're now they're up to an uh, eleven hour delta. Four hours for three Ooh. days. Four, four hours, hours for three days. days. That's impossible. They're gonna, they gonna they're gonna get that? through that tomorrow. That's yeah, that's, that's fifteen tomorrow. hours fifty one minutes for plaintiff. Thank you. Uh from the chat. They have sixteen hours against four. Wow. That is such a brutal four times their time left. Holy cannolis. Wow. This is insane. Absolutely insane time management issues coming from Amber Heard's team. Uh, they wasted them on all these BS witnesses today. All yes. these witnesses did nothing, did nothing to move any needle thread at all. Even oh, the I mean, they damage just everyone off. Like garbage. Yeah. But it, 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 it leaves us all to wonder if there are any witnesses that they ever could have had that could have moved the needle for her. Because does well, she just have a crap case? Can I defend yeah, Wayne Dennison yeah. here? Go ahead. Because, I love it. Yeah, maybe. yeah. He's he's redeemed himself today because he's in his last cross examination. He stumbles around, and if we're being generous, he's Columbo. He he sounds like he's off doing whatever he's doing, and he doesn't understand where he is or how he got there or why he's talking. <laughs> and by the time <laughs> by the time he's done with the witnesses, for the most part, you're like that witness was an idiot. But like that didn't happen by itself. That's and I don't true. I don't necessarily like the process, yeah. uh, and I don't like any given question. But at 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 the end of each of these witnesses, every single time I'm like, that person is a you know moron. What? And Wayne Dennis I have a metaphor. Do that. I have, I have, but he's been effective. I have, yeah, I have a good. metaphor. I ha I have a metaphor. Sure. Okay, so Camille's cross examination versus Dennison's cross examination is like Camille's cross examination is like Mr. Bites playing literally any video game ever because he's very skilled. <laughs> Um, Dennison's cross examination is me playing Super Smash Brothers, where I mash a bunch of buttons and I have a tendency to win even against Mr. Bites. <laughs> it's super messy. I'm not entirely sure I know what I'm doing, but I end up winning. But you win at the end, <laughs> right? But by the way, I so that's basically my metaphor. <laughs> by the way, I want to change good player metaphor. IDs with Mr. Bites because we got to get some gaming going. Uh, yes. But but that's a perfect metaphor because like, <laughs> yes. good, like I said, yeah. it's just like, I don't know how we got here, but I now believe this witness is an idiot. Uh, and so good on you. <laughs> I don't think he's button mashing. Come I think on. he's actually pretty good at it. He's just, you know, it he's not showing. Like he's button mashing though. He, he breaks, he, but he breaks all the fundamental rules, like leading questions. He just forgets. He's like, Explain to me this, like, like he, he, he like lets them explain anything. It's like, this, Which, this guy, no, you know, it's just so frustrating watching him. But I mean, I those rules. I mean, which, which is effective. technically He's not still... required. It's technically not required yeah. to do, a, you know, cross examination with with leading questions, right? It's just mm -hmm. that is the most effective tool. If you are a very skilled cross examiner, you can get away with not asking a bunch of leading questions. There are other methods and 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 tactics that you can take for it, but it's. <sighs> He tends to get in trouble when he doesn't, right? So it's like he, he I, tends to like run into issues. But but you're right, Rick. At the end of the day, he gets the job done, however messy it is. I don't know if he was just benefited by his enemies today, but I think he looked at them and said, the more they talk, the better off I am. And that's how it went down today. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Well, I, I do think the mis any mistakes they made was probably on direct. Because a lot of those long-winded statements, I wouldn't have objected to. They've already got a time issue. Like, like the first guy, the the guy who was um, uh, what's the, the the second guy? Not the first. You guy. got hand surgeon. You got psychiatrist. The psychiatrist guy. Psychiatrist guy. He wanted to give a speech every every, every question. I'd have been sitting there letting him say. He was like, "Well, back in 1945, let him say all that, right? Let him say all that. They're just killing their time, and he's not moving the needle at all." But he I was know, the worst. Oh my god, he was the so worst bad. witness. He, he he actually I hated was. him so much. I don't have a visceral reaction, even if like a witness is bad. I that guy, I oh I do not like that gentleman. Oh yeah, no, he I know uh, I don't want to part of my French. Vibe. I do not care for him. I would have loved Camille to cross him because he would have just gone eight crazy total crate eight, eight crazy if Camille would have got to him. Because Camille yeah. was even controlling the witness. He doesn't control witnesses, he lets them speak and he tries to get you with the whole, you know, logical inconsistency piece which i think is effective because like you're saying Hope, at the end of the day we're like oh these witnesses told us nothing but it's just really it's less because of what he did and more because at the end of the day it's like i don't understand any of it so i'm just but, but that's you know the idea I mean? of colombo right like if, if dennison is working the one thing he does is he presents and this i'm not saying this is true he presents as dumb and out of his element and and unaware so against that second witness he was perfect because that guy yeah, thinks yes, he's better than yes. anybody that's walked on planet earth 
And so you just go, I don't understand. And he, he got into his own head with like, oh, I'm going to prove you wrong, you moron. And like over and over and over and over again until you cannot stand the sound of that guy's voice. He's like, all right, he, Dennison. I think he would have been more respectful to uh, to Camille's approach, which would have made him less hateable. Maybe. Well, because Maybe. you know Camille would have come in like a like a rocket ship. Yeah. Um, and he would have looked defensive. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I still think Camille would have would have them. I, I think she did this. I don't think job because yeah. he was he was he was wanting to fight, and she's kind of made for the fight. Like he was wanting to fight this guy, and this guy was kind of like, "I'll let you speak." But I think her, she would have controlled them a little bit. He'd have got testy, and that's when you just saw the battle. The battle, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This just struck me as a sloppy mess coming in at the end here. I, I, you know, I, I was. You nailed it. <laughs> and, but this is like when I first came, got involved, and, and a leader will remember this. When I first got involved in this case. It was during the cross examination. It was it was after I had seen the videos of the cross examination of Johnny Depp's psychology expert, mm -hmm. and Nate and I kept. We're, we're, a number of us were saying, "You don't go that long on crossing the other guy's expert. Pick your and half an hour. Race. Pick your half an hour worth of worthwhile touches." And move on. Now, if, I, I actually think this was, I mean, I'll say this much. I, I, I saw one of the Super Chat comments. Uh, someone said, maybe I'm a nerd. I, I found the whole thing fascinating. You, it might have, it might, you might have found it fascinating. Maybe you like film a lot. Maybe you're a film nerd. But that was fun. Do you remember what the, the do, do you remember what the point of the cross was? Do you remember what, do you remember two or three things the lawyer who was doing the cross examine exam, examination convinced you of. If you don't, then you might have found it entertaining as a human drama, but you need to walk away from cross examination saying, "Oh man, wow! How she, how did she explain that?" Oh, he had me. He had me on. You picked Wonder Woman, Aquaman, yes. and Captain yeah. Kirk. Done. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 That, yes. that was it. That was it. <laughs> like on that list, maybe the closest one to Amber Heard's position, maybe, and I know people will fight me on it, is on Adarmus. Like, I, I well, like that was an interesting choice like because Blade Runner is so well known as losing Warner Brothers so much money. Yeah. yeah. It is a bomb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and then she had a minor role in, in James Bond. You know where she was in like in like three scenes, the best three scenes of the movie, are in my opinion. But like, but I mean, she really was like like the like one of the best points, like one of the high points in that movie. Um, but like, but it's still still mi minor minor roles there. So like you know, Anna de Armas was like yeah, like probably the closest one that they could really compare to on that list. But like, but when she started with like Jason Momoa and and Gal Gadot, and then. And then they, he goes and he, he he goes into their filmography, and then she's like, "Well, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a Trek fan. I don't know. I, I I didn't pay attention to Jason Momoa's back career back way before Zendaya. Was she on the Disney Channel? I don't know. How can you possibly stand there and compare these people, their their income in Hollywood, to?" to Amber Heard if you don't know their background in order to compare yeah. them adequately to her. It's just, it's so stupid. Like you have completely destroyed all credibility by yourself with those responses. So I agree that he did, he did a great job of dismantling her just by going piece by piece. And you could tell her getting very frustrated too. And she's like with the Batman question, she's like, Oh, you're a big Batman fan or something like that. Like whatever that, it was. That was cringe. Yeah. Yeah. That was cringe. Oh, are you going to try to connect? <laughs> you're going to try to connect with the person cross examining you I in the case that all of, all of America's watching. It's so funny though. You get, you get one movie nerd with a subscription to some of the trades and you can sound better than that. Like yes. literally. Uh, they, they actually could have found a YouTuber that has a, a channel that focuses on 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 movies and on the film industry. They they and, and I'm not kidding about this. Like they actually could my cousin Vinny, someone from YouTube, as an expert in here to testify on that. Yeah, you could if, with Alice Eve when he brings up Alice Eve, you know that she had trouble after Star Trek because she talked about being objectified in Star Trek Into Darkness, and there was a reaction in Hollywood to that. I could have testified to that right now. <laughs> 
And it's yeah. like, that's why she didn't have a meteoric rise, Wayne. I mean, like, I could have, I, I, I'm available, Herd's team, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> that was, her, Herd's, I, what, what was, all right, so the point of the day, obviously, was to try to prove up her cross claim, right? We heard yes. about damages and all that stuff. So she's trying to prove up her cross claim, number one, on the abuse with Johnny, and then all this other, and all this stuff. I think that's a losing battle. I think you. I think that was this is a this was a total waste of time because I think the win or I think getting out of this without paying is mutual abuse. We were both horrible to each other. We both survived this. That wins, right? Even this counterclaim has no legs anyway. Fantastic you, point. The, yes. This is dead weight for her. Yes, this is Doesn't dead weight sense. for her. It, the only reason the the counterclaim was asserted was for a, a tactical well yeah, so, yeah i know you are but what am i tell them that, made, that made sense I'll, I'll tell you even better i once tried a case in morris county new jersey in front of a jury and my case really came about as the result of a counterclaim i was the, the originally the defendant but really oh no my case i'm sorry i got it backwards my case I, I, I took over the case my client had been the original plaintiff the plaintiff stuff was a bunch of equitable relief which was old news it didn't matter anymore not part of the case anymore against us was a very inexperienced uh, let's say lawyer it's a comp that's a comp that's a story for another day but right before trial i dropped our counterclaim I mean, I, would, I dropped our affirmative claim and made the counterclaim the plaintiff's claim. Why? Because I knew he couldn't put in a proper case, that he didn't have the skills to properly introduce evidence. And do, so I wanted him to have the opportunity to not meet his burden of proof because I no longer cared about the counterclaim. It, it is, it's hard to let go of that. It's just like people feel like they have to make every objection and, you know. Yeah, yeah. But that you hit it on the nail. She's not... If one thing that's that, that's not happening here is she's is her walking away with a verdict in, in her favor with with a check from Johnny Depp. That's I, not happening. I think that's Amber Heard is running the show, and I think Amber Heard thinks she's winning. That's that's my read on things, and I think she is saying you have to push the counterclaim because I need those dollars, and I'm going to get all this money out of it. And I think she's just so far up her own head that she just doesn't real like that she can't read the room well, the jury I, didn't like her when i was in that room and i don't think you know i don't think she's walking away with money i think you know so some of those witnesses like when they called uh waldman i was just like why are you doing this it, it the only explanation is that somebody in that room thinks there's still money on the table that they can get out of that and that person's deluded and i don't think it's elaine's team i think it's got to be the client this is a client management problem with an impossible to manage client and they can't even get off the horse like they there's no way that they can be like hey look you know we're firing our clients you know at no. like week six of trial that's not going to happen. So at this point, uh, Elaine has managed to, or sorry, Amber's managed to get in the pilot seat. Uh, the rest of her team is sitting in the back, you know, in the back, and she's going to fly this thing right into a mountain. And but you got that's what, but I, but I, but also I think sometimes you got to have the client look at reality. There's been many times where I've had the uh, defendant, and I had to let them know, like, listen, we're getting a pretty good deal here. You know, I believe you, but the deal is so amazing that, you know, and a lot of times, even when, when you're talking about civil stuff, some, there's been times you got to talk a client into a deal like, hey, listen, this is the best we're going to get. Yep. And I think when it comes to strategy at this point in time, this should have been the conversation day right after court on Friday. We only have eight hours left. Right now, if you look at where the trial is going, it's not going in our favor. This is what we can do to get out here without paying any money. That should be priority one. Priority two is trying to win your counterclaim, but priority one is winning, making sure you don't got to pay him no money. That's our. That's what we want to get out of here. Your claim should be secondary. But today they show that they went in today saying no, the counterclaim is 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 the priority, and Johnny's case is secondary, and that's why I think they're in trouble right now. 
Well, and, I think you're exactly right. That's how you get to 15 4. You're not at 15 versus four if you're not trying to do both. Um, and I think they sunk their ship. I think it's too late. Four hours and three days. Get ready for the Johnny Depp show. Yeah, really. Yeah, they're going to just. Yeah, yeah. Four hours. They burned half their time today. We know yeah. what's going to happen. They, and I, I've, yeah. I've said I said this before, but this is what I am expecting. If they if they if they use up all of their time tomorrow, yeah. which I, I, yeah. I anticipate that they will because they yeah. don't know how to manage their time effectively. Yeah. What will happen is they will use up the, the last hours in their case in chief. Then they will have arguments about um, about eliminating the counterclaims. Johnny yep. Depp might win, might win he after might they've win. burned all of that time on those counterclaims. They might even lose on those counterclaims bef before it can even have any air in front of the jury. Right. Then on the rebuttal, Johnny Depp has 10 16 hours, hours right no now, cross. 16 yeah. hours right <laughs> now, tomorrow, at, at, by, 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 by the end of tomorrow, he, he will have 10 hours. And his team Plus, must be smart enough to know will, not to use yeah. them. And he yeah, no, will be able to, hours. but, but listen, I mean, it's not just, it's not just the rebuttal being a, a, a rebuttal by itself. He will not have to do a redirect. So no, that means doing this because, because, yeah. because th there will be a direct, no cross examination. So no redirect. So you can do just right. direct after direct, after direct, direct after forever. direct. You can have a parade of, of witnesses yeah. until the very end. Until and the cows come home. Yep. Holy and crap. <laughs> so they they bring home. back Isaac Baruch purpose. at the end of everything. They're doing it on purpose. They can't not be doing it on purpose. They've decided <laughs> this is their best course of action. It's they've so decided that they, they have no planet. case, which is not, yeah. a, not an unreasonable conclusion. They have no case. So why not try to fault it on some sort of technical, even if this is a forced error? So that's what they're trying to do. They're going to run out of time and bitch that they didn't have enough time in the 61 hours to present their case. And as a court of appeals, I'm going, fuck you. But they're trying. That's all they're trying to do. I actually think Denison might be playing a bit of 3D chess. And the reason, or the reason why... Chess, chess comes in 3D. The reason why is because we've got... Uh, Elaine is really bad at the leaving stuff on the table. Anything that they raise in, you know, in their cross, Elaine wants to, to go back and to fix. And so that's part of how they've ended up so late in time. So Dennison can meander his way through a cross and hit all sorts of random points. And some of those points may not land, but Elaine's going to come back to them. She was coming back to even the points that Dennison sucked at. And that I didn't think needed any massaging. I would have left those alone. Yep. Uh, he might actually, I mean, I don't know if I'm giving him too much credit here or not, but he might actually just be baiting Elaine into running out those last moments and just pushing her and pushing her and pushing her. Even if Elaine her. is that stupid, their team is not that stupid. They have been playing that stupid. They but have there, been there's running no, out. There's no way on this green earth that that many lawyers can be that stupid. There's no yeah. way that someone isn't looking at the clock and being like, guys, really? There's no way that they can't see that. The problem wow. is that once wow. she gets up and starts doing her redirect, I don't think she can help herself. She's just like, well, and I also am going to touch on this and I'm going to touch on that. And she's burning time like she's got lots of it. Well, it's like it's not like they don't have bad lawyers on both sides because Dennison is doing his part. On being a suck ass lawyer for Johnny Depp. Except that he, just that he has Dennis it's again. just that he has a really good fucking case. That's well, the issue. Even though Denison sucks as a lawyer, which he totally does, you guys need to accept this. He sucks ass. No, Dennison okay? no, I mean, doesn't suck. Johnny Depp's case is so I wouldn't go so far as to say that Dennison sucks. Matter. Yeah, I would say Dennison yeah. sucks. Because I think he's Dennis, really Dennis good at directing expert witnesses, which is cross. also he very, very, very cross, difficult to do. His cross is the worst. But yes. he's all the witnesses. He's as bad as Neil is good. They need to merge or some bullshit. I don't know. I will say this. The he best has been running, running like her time. The psychologist, just imagine if you could cross that psychologist. Oh, oh man. my god, that that yeah. would have been so and look at look at Hulk. Hulk is like, oh my god, you and you've had all this time to, to listen to hear. Um, it would have been glorious across the deck because he, as soon as he starts getting testy, we're touching every little guy's thing. the worst. Oh, guy's it would have been so great. He's the dream cross because first you can wind him up like nobody's business. He got super annoyed anytime somebody was suggesting something. Second, everything he was saying was crap. And so 
there were all sorts of places where you could just rip into him. He's violating so many fundamental rules of cross examination. I can't even begin to know. But asking was- open ended question, fucking no. That's a bullshit. <laughs> asking questions you don't know the answer to, fucking no. It's like, I mean, how many rules of cross examination are we violating here? It's, it's like, true. I can't even fucking believe it. He broke every commandment. He did break every commandment. It wasn't right, just right. one or two. He we broke them that, all. We did that recently on uh, your channel, right? We did that recently. Yeah, we, we did the that guy where he did the 10 rules of cross-examination. I agreed to 9 out of 10. I'm, I'm going to get I a said 9 out of 10. He's violating most of those 9. Contrarian here. Like, be short, tactical, don't ask questions <laughs> you don't know, ask only leading <laughs> questions. Yeah, right? I mean, well, but, but like I, but like I said, but like I said, though, it's it it's not a requirement to ask leading questions on cross examination. That is just the most effective. Not apparently, way to if get your it witness done. is so horrible, he makes you look good. That's what Chat doesn't wow. understand. The witness was so fucking bad, they made the cross examination look good. It's not so, the cross examination was good. You don't dilute yourselves. The cross examination sucked. It's that the witness was so unapproachable so unlikable so unworkable that it worked somehow because the witness was so much worse but, but it, it could also be it, it could, it could also be that he was strategically using i'm, uh-huh, I'm playing double sure, that's here. what it is it, it could that's also what be it really that he was strategically uh-huh. using sure. some uh-huh. uh, kurt 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 give me give me a second give me a second let me let me say it <laughs> i appreciate you and your fire but let me let me say something that's so much fire so, it could also be the the idea that the, he he might also be strategically making some decisions here to say you know what this guy sucks and I, and normally I would I would want to ask some leading questions but I'm going to let him hang himself because I'm I'm just going to give him enough rope to hang himself so that uh-huh. he so that nobody thinks that I'm badgering him into this and and he is just gonna gonna go off the deep end like a like a lemming following another lemming following another sure. lemming. You know what I mean? Like it could Nobody be. This is me Dennis playing devil's advocate. advocate. It was definitely hey, the look, it was definitely here. the 720 degree underwater hungry hungry hippo strategy. Sometimes, that was definitely, but definitely what was have doing. To yeah. stuff tactically, yeah. like I will. I got a story. I had a uh, I had a witness on the stand, and literally my question was just, "Can you tell us the story again?" And I did. This was my cross, and I just started the back at the beginning, and this is like. Breaking every rule of cross, just give the you know the opposing witness the the floor, but it worked. Eventually, the prosecutor said, you know, objection. This he's asked this before, and the judge's response was, well, the question has gotten repetitive, but I think he's allowed to continue until the answer does. And you know, at that point, the prosecutor was like, okay, I'm done here because clear the the witness couldn't tell for the life of them the same story twice. Yep. And I knew that. That's why I was asking what is otherwise a, a bad question. Yep. This guy is so unappealing yep. that you want to give him some room to be unappealing. Because if you yeah. actually boxed him in with really focused questions, he might actually seem less like a bag of dirt. Because he's defending uh, himself, right? Yeah, it's so I don't want to. I mean, Denison has shown signs. There are points when I'm just like, this is brilliant. And there's mm-hmm. points where I'm like, I don't know what he's doing. But the more I think about it, a lot of the stuff where I'm like, I don't know what he's doing has worked out well. He's run out Elaine's clock by forcing Elaine to deal with every possible issue. And the <laughs> that's so issue, true. That's true. The, the clock issue is going to be huge because once that buzzer rings on Elaine's Probably time. True. Four hours. Four hours. Four hours. They're to gonna burn it tomorrow. They're absolutely gonna burn it tomorrow. They have no Once, they, true. once I, they burn that time, that I mean that's do huge. they not understand that well, includes I, I rebuttal do, time? I, I want to make one point. When they were qualifying these experts today, it took them 15 minutes to qualify these experts, right? One then took like another 15 to qualify the next one, the next one, right? Going through everything. I could have done that in maybe five quick minutes. Why? Because we got a time issue, and they're oh. experts, right? Yes, <laughs> they don't need to know every you single smart? thing, right? You know psychology. No, I'm just you, 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 you admit you, you can do this in five <laughs> minutes. You can go through their resume. You sh- they should have already had that prepared. Where'd you go to school? You know, you could have laid that foundation nice and easy. Not go through this whole. Oh my God, he went to school. He did this. He did this. He did this. You can lay that foundation a lot quicker than that. But that's yeah. forty-five minutes they got laid up. And with and and them, oh, this person is an expert. 
that was a five minute thing. You just stretched you out. Talk the about, five minutes. You're talking about good I'm news. Yeah. Jenison's voir dire was awesome. I hated yeah. that guy by the time his voir dire was done before he yeah. said it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was, that was beautiful. Uh, I liked the voir dire. It was really well done. It was, it was good. The voir was dire good. was good. It, it was, really was good. it was good because I probably wouldn't have done it, but they showed me why I should have. Yeah. Because they were able to put in the mind of the jury this person is incompetent in a very specific area. Yeah. See, I, I'm much more rule based, so I would have probably not made that four year because I know that he's going to be validated at the end. He's coming but in anyway. They showed a strategic reason for doing it. So they showed yeah. me up on that one for all the people in chat who are criticizing me. Hey, the Giant Ups team showed me up on one. How about that? <laughs> well, just, Kurt, 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 what, what did I you think about Camille's cross rain. of the first of the first doctor? I, I mean, I, I love Camille, everything she does. It's fantastic. Oh, right. she's, it's great. I, I still think it's award winning. It's not quite, you know, walking on the uh, rose petals uh, of angels with the, with the tears from heaven that we saw on day one. But, you know, I'd be happy for that cross every day of the week and twice yeah, on I'm, Sunday. I can't I can't perform at that level on my best on my absolute best maybe but she can just crush it completely i'm like i i'm in awe but see i think that's what you're comparing it to i think you're comparing his cross to her cross and, and since her that is your yeah. your baseline anything that no his cross sucks because, ass but regardless. his is so far no. away from that no it's his that cross is garbage, garbage. I mean, it's, a, it's a totally different, different, different it's garbage yeah. no he violates so many <laughs> fundamental rules of cross it's examination it's not funny. and yet he's taken no. several witnesses no, he's bad. <laughs> you can say he violates several rules. Well, hold on, hold on, Ian. You got to be witnesses. Ian, that... I got to be fair. After his, after he crossed the first doctor, you weren't too happy with that cross, dude. You are, you are saying very. Oh, I agree. But the, thing is... the first doctor was the psychologist. He did great against the psychologist. The, that... yeah, he did. He <laughs> asked fucking open-ended <laughs> questions. Just tell me a I will story. Tell he destroyed the psychologist. Whatever you say, <laughs> sir. Mm, tell me a story. That sounds good. The statistician, he went in and he got over his head. He didn't know how to deal with the statistician. I will say that absolutely. Yeah. He didn't have the technical background to deal with it. However, he did have the skill to realize that he was getting, you know, that he was getting trounced at that point. He was not accomplishing what he needed to do and was able to lure that guy into a sucker play, bomb him. So that the jerk, so that everyone thinks he's a clown, and get out. Getting yeah. out of a bad cross, yeah, and looking good at the end of it is itself a son. Like that's why I said this is the Twitter comment I made is this is a bad cross from a really good lawyer, because what I saw there is he was trying to get into the technical stuff. He didn't have that ability, but he did have the ability to finish that cross out with a really high note. And walk away from it looking like a winner. If you cut out that last minute, it is a bad cross. It mm. absolutely is. Yeah. But he still had the skill to do it. I don't I mean, think this guy is, you know, I don't think this guy is playing with Tinker Toys here. He's got, yeah. he's got skill. I would, I would agree. Fair. Matt L. Also, thank you very much for this very generous super chat. Um, thank you. <laughs> he's, he's, he is Denny Crane. Crane. Yeah, no, and he's also, I mean, <laughs> yeah, we, we, you know, we underestimate it. He's also identifying the right the right holes. I mean, he's identifying the weaknesses and whether or not you like how yeah. he comes around on them. I'm, I, you know what? I, after Some today, of, I thought Wayne Dennison did great. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, one I was great. That's I, that's it. Yeah. And, and for, I wouldn't for, go for great. me, I, I would, uh, there's, there's still some things that I would change. Doing, like, like the ordering of of some of this stuff, you know, like some of some of his cross examination. Like I I wish that he would have started on Spiegel with the the correlation versus causation thing. Like it would have been just right off the bat, getting to the heart of it, and then fighting with him on everything else. Like I I yeah no. I, I yeah but 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 i but i i will say that you know it, of course this like it's like i'm i feel like I'm, I'm coming around to defending him right after like right before this witness i was like i'm done with dennison like mm -hmm. he officially sucks across the cross <laughs> i'm over it i've given him uh, enough benefit of the doubt and then after this one i'm like actually he's pretty good <laughs> it didn't help that he was going after camille tore up that first doctor that was yeah like, that's pretty good uh, yeah that was like, let oh me ask Ronkel because i'm i'm open for this suggestion about it but even with your premise I, I still think it might have gone on too long. So I'm interested on how thought how you felt, given your premise, how you felt about the length of it. At this point, if I am the dep team and I can spend uh if I can spend 15 minutes to make them spend 15 minutes, 
I will take that exchange right up to the wire. That's I fair. Will, That's fair. Um, because I mean, if the depth team had the opportunity to just say we sacrifice four hours so that they don't have it, um, it would absolutely be the right call to just walk in and and drop that. Yeah, and so, they also know, right? They also have some inkling as to what they think their time is that they need. Um, in terms of when rebuttal is handed over to them, what does it look like that we have to to put out there? So 15 hours, they could be looking at and saying more than enough. We think we've got 11. Well, essentially, they have one free day, right? Because even if they, they, yeah. they're essentially going, other cities are going to burn their time tomorrow, and then they're going to have one free day. Why do you keep saying you think they're going to burn tomorrow? Like, aren't they going to no, rest? Gonna, first I thing? mean, they have four hours left. Where's the time coming from? They're going to rest first thing tomorrow? Yeah, they're uh, going to rest first thing tomorrow. So, so they, all right, they're, they're coming in and saying, we rest. <laughs> I don't know. I think they're going to rest first thing today. I think they want to put another I think they want to put another day in the fear of God about Johnny Depp. I think the only reason these locks, uh, these leaks are out there, the only reason there's confusion about Johnny Depp is they just wanted two extra days and make yeah. him sweat. That's uh, that's what I think. That's yeah. a hell of a thing, yeah. 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 I think it's pointless, way, but they do a lot of pointless I, stuff. I, I do, I do want to say, fo folks in the chat, please be respectful of, of all panelists, regardless of, of whether you agree or disagree with what they're saying. Um, I, you know, yes, Kurt dropped a few F bombs, but from time to time, I have also dropped F bombs on this channel before. He Others has. have as well. You know, it's it's not like it's been like a like an all the time, every day, you know, every minute kind of thing. I can From draw time it back time, and use alternative language, but folks, yeah. fo folks are you know, it, it's it's the end of the day, and and please, so so please be be respectful of of everyone, including Kurt. <laughs> Look, I don't know if people are upset for me about what I'm saying, or they're upset about me because of the conclusion they project on me. Like, well, are they upset because I'm criticizing this cross examination? Are I'm they upset sure. on me because I'm saying good things about the first doctor? Or are they upset because they're leaping in their head to, oh, he must think this is a really good day for I don't, him or her? I don't, oh, I don't this know. Must think I'm, that just, I'm, just responding, I'm just responding to what I'm seeing yeah. in the chat. And, and folks, I want you to understand yeah. Kurt is, is a good friend of mine. Yeah, and so it, it if works. he's, if he, I, I'm, I'm, I'm able to tell him when I want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> and I will, I'll be, I'll be <laughs> and he's, friend, and he's respectful when I ask for that. So, so it's, it's just like, just like everybody else. Um, so, so it's, it's please guys, we're, we're all good. We're all friends on here. Um, Absolutely. even when we disagree in a, in a very spirited kind of way, there's nothing but, but love here. Um, so anyhow, can differ. exactly, exactly, exactly. So I just want to remind everybody in the chat. <laughs> I see you Ian. I see. You know, I, I'll, I'll say, even if we do agree with with the tactics, we all agree the depths team is up big, and yes. right oh, now sure. they they just got to close the door, right? So it's their they game need to, to land lose. the plane. It's their, oh, it's their think, game to lose. If they I, win that motion to strike, you're going to see an utter collapse of morale and everything else. I mean, like it's that that well, you 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 have a real inflection point there. But to today, did they move the needle on agency? No, no, that's the thing. That, that's the key. agency. And, and no, but but what I want to the point I'm making is that they came into today knowing they only had eight hours left. And the key thing they need for their for their cross complaint is the agency, right? They got to put some evidence in of this agency for their counterclaim. Yeah. They didn't do that in eight Zero. hours. So, Zero. So so it's you so it's so they so I, so they can't rest first thing out the gate tomorrow. They cannot. Unless they're giving up that counterclaim. <sighs> and they cannot I mean, rest. They, they, they got to put somebody on. Enough. Okay. They got to put a, somebody on to get that agency because there's, a, no, there's I, no evidence there for it, for it to go forward. Uh, the time to give up that counterclaim was before they put Waldman up. It was yeah. before they went to trial, in well, my opinion. <laughs> I mean, but it was before they, they even thought to file the counterclaim. Before they, they went to surgery for twenty minutes. <laughs> this has been this has been nothing but 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 ridiculousness. Um, and and so I, I okay, but my my thought is okay. Here's here's a, here's a, a question that I'm going to lob out to everybody here. Um, for to 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 chew on for a minute. What if the statement that was released by Amber Heard's PR team about Johnny Depp saying, well, we don't need him because he's a fish in a bicycle kind of thing, whatever <laughs> that BS was, um, you know, what if they released that? <laughs> That's a fake uh, maybe they're maybe they're capable of 4D chess with the full intention of actually calling him tomorrow morning. That's two separate leaks to put him in two separate states of mind in order to ultimately call him. When he leaves his <laughs> I mean, <sighs> What because they the kind of, of he's at be this prepared. point, 
they kind of need to. Well, they, I thought they, they needed to before. I thought the only chance they had was trip up Johnny Depp. Hey, yeah. Just ask him real fast. You you told you told Adam Waterman to do this to us, didn't you? Yeah. Well, yes. Oh no. I mean, like that's all you had. Yeah. I I think that they. I I don't understand their strategy necessarily because a lot of their decisions have been real bad. But if they're still trying to play the counterclaim, they have. I don't know how else they do it other than calling Depp and hoping that Ben Chu doesn't, you know, yell objection fast enough. And quite yeah, frankly, I think they're going to be uh, doing that, abs you know, right away. You, yeah, you, I, I don't think you can rest coming out the gate tomorrow. Because uh, to rest tomorrow loses your counterclaim. If you rest mm -hmm. coming out the gate tomorrow, you lose your counterclaim. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, then they might just burn all their time. <laughs> I, 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 rebuttal, I, no I, at all. I don't see. I, I don't see how they how they how they end tomorrow right off the bat and survive on their counterclaim. I mean, I don't see how they survive on their counterclaim anyway. But that's yeah. just me. I I think the judge is my read from the the judge on that is that uh, she may strike it, and I my read on the no choice. My read on the jurors is that unless they, unless the Amber Heard team gets something that is big, uh, at least some of those jurors, I don't see them moving. Uh, well, I, unless I, they hear something real big, like Amber, like Johnny Depp on the stand going, I admit it, I made it up. You know, <laughs> unless something huge. And I would have gotten I'm, away with it too if it weren't for you kids. Yes, I have. I'm, yeah. I'm also going to say this too. How do you think it's going to play in a jury if a counterclaim gets struck? <sighs> What uh, the jury, see? right? What the, 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 jury, the jury, the jury, the jury, but the jury knows that there, there's two cases, and all of a sudden her case is gone. It's only yeah. about depths. When do they pretty, get told uh, that? Is it when they get jury instructions and they don't see another case? When do yeah. they get told that this happened? Before they have to deliberate, because they're only going to be deliberating when the jury on... instructions are given. Yeah, but it'll on just be by case. absence, right? It'll yeah, just be like we, you didn't get instructions yeah. for this, and you know that you were yeah. briefed on it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's it may be prejudicial, but and I could see Amber Heard's team arguing, listen, you can't strike it because of the prejudicial effect. But ultimately, that's on her. Like, you didn't have to bring this counterclaim and you could have brought some evidence to substantiate it. If you didn't think you, you know, I think that the other thing is that they could say, listen, um, the the evidence that you were trying to, you know, hint on this is prejudice has been prejudicial and ventures close to uh, impugning solicitor client privilege. And, you know, that's the inference that they want the jury to make. So because you played that game, we're not going to let you do it because essentially you're playing fast and loose with privilege on this one. And the only way the jury could get to there is by making inferences that they absolutely shouldn't make. Um, I think the judge could very well say, listen, any privilege or any prejudice on that is absolutely on you and your bad tactical decisions. So you get to eat that sandwich, Amber Heard team. And I I think that's a real possibility. I so now yeah. so so just so 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 we're clear. So we're going in tomorrow into tomorrow. The plan is is that we none of does any is there anybody here on this panel think they're gonna rest tomorrow morning? They should for all that's good for them, but they won't. They should, but I can't see it. And so so then if that's true, who do you put on to prove agency? I don't know what who the witness There's no one to prove agency. Everything yeah. is shit. So put this on the I rest for two Unless, hours. Only this person is why that can I do rest. Is I, this is why I rest, and I hope I can go up to the judge and say there's a scintilla of evidence because there's, Adam Walden there's gave probably a very little, technically a scintilla, a little bit, and but somebody else gave a little but, bit. And... But even with the I scintilla, don't I don't Waldman know because the overwhelming way the evidence goes the other way. Yeah. I'm just saying her official standard from the first motion to strike is a scintilla goes to the jury. So yeah. I go up there, I rest because I need the four hours, and I say. Your Honor, this is a question for the jury to take it out of their hands is a grave injustice. And we talked to Adam Waldman and we got this little bit here and we've talked about the Waldman depth statements and we got something here we make up and you cannot take it out of the hands or it is an affront to everything that's court holds. And, 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 and I've been to and I say there is no scintilla. Yeah. yeah. Show me the, show I got me the scintilla. The, the, the evidence is that he works for him. That's it. That's all yeah. they got. Yeah. That's it. That, that, and that would go element <laughs> by element for vicarious liability and to yeah. say. He works for you've got, you've got the, This one isn't met. This one isn't met. This one yeah. isn't met. And say, 
Where's the evidence that fits that box? You know I'm on your side. You know I. I, I believe know, you. Right? I, I, I think it's I'm going to give you the rebuttal. <laughs> you, you've given us the impassioned speech. We're just giving you the rebuttal. <laughs> well, sure, I could give the rebuttal, which is that in this particular instance, the closeness of the relationship between Adam Waldman and Johnny Depp was more suggestive of an employment relationship and not an independent contractor relationship. And it was known that he spoke for Johnny Depp. That's why it's described that way in the article. And in that position as spokesperson lawyer, it should be known that he is acting on behalf of his client. And you cannot take that question away from the jury. I like it. I like it. Spokesperson lawyer. That's his new title. I, look, I, I think it's bullshit, like it. right? But that's what we get paid to do. That's what we get paid to do. <laughs> bullshit. So, so, you know, so it sounds like if we're all on the same way of thinking and if everybody believes that she's too crazy not to give up this counterclaim, mm -hmm. I believe that they have no choice with just, just the way we're thinking. Then to put, they're going to, they're going to put Johnny Depp on because if she's saying, I want to prove this counterclaim, the only way they can do that is by calling Johnny. They Depp. can't get it from him. I know, but that's yeah. the only that's the only possibility they got for him to go on the stand and blurt it out. Okay. I told him with the, with the four hours we have left. You want to call Johnny Depp? Bullshit. What if you said? What if well, you what, said? What hey, other way? What other way can you get it? You what what other way? You, what you other way you can you get it? What other that, way you just can somehow you, get it? you can con the judge into believing it exists? That's all you have left. Yeah, because that's what I'm saying. Unless you could tell me some other way of getting that. No, Would your you honor. No, your honor. We've put, as Richard Hoke said, we put on a scintilla of evidence. You said they con. could believe Amber Heard's story about stuff and things. You and play yeah, up it's enough. <laughs> you play up a judge's natural desire to send it to the jury. You keep yeah, hitting yeah. it and hitting it and hitting it and yeah, hitting yeah, it and yeah. hitting it. And you know, honestly, as a judge, I don't know what I do. Sorry, here Ron, you muted. <laughs> you know, my my impulse is probably to He's give right. it to the jury. If they fuck it up, I'll deal with it on the back end. But if they make the right decision, then I haven't circumvented the process. So. Why not give it to the jury? Go get that jury away. blessing, Your Honor. That's what you want. That'll, that's what'll make you feel. <laughs> and then I'll deal with it on the back end about the, how their evidence, how about their verdict isn't supported by law. So yeah, I appreciate all the people saying I'm their spirit animal. I'm it makes emotion. You know, I'm never some, dependent on that. I, I've 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 kind of decided, you know, the philosophy of you can't please please everyone all the time. Sure. You, you cannot. Know, you know, I'm going to be who I am. Some people will like it. Some people won't. And hopefully, it'll work out for me. Well, and that's the thing is, at the end of the day, you can have profound disagreements about things like trial strategy. And, you know, I've been in groups of lawyers where there have been those profound disagreements. Yeah. And it's not always the case that somebody is wrong, right? That is the other thing is that law is a lot of fuzzy judgment calls. So, yeah. And there's and a lot of right, personalities. You're right if you end up winning, right? It's, yeah, it's the right well, strategy. I mean, that's that's the case. Some degree, that, that's true. That ridiculous yeah. coaching decision worked. Congrats, yeah. genius. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, right? Sometimes. Yeah. 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 I don't know yeah. the results necessarily dictate whether you did it was right or wrong, but you know, there's a lot of different. I think it goes to the the reality. There's a lot of different personalities in law. There's a lot of different expertise in law. A lot of different ways of approaching things. And I don't think that my way is the end all be all. I really don't. Yeah. Um, I, I think I have a style that works for me and a style that would work for clients that are like me, which is more than enough. And, you know, maybe I'm not your cup of tea, but I'm someone's cup of tea. And, you know, that's good enough. What can I do other than be me? Fair point. You know? That's Fair what point. makes the panel good. And yeah. at the end of the day, uh, just discussing things with people who agree with you is boring and not yeah. a great way to learn things. And I'm not out to disagree for the sake of disagreement. I often no. agree with the panel. It's not yeah. like I disagree all the time. I often agree with all these people on the panel. So like, and and that's know? when and that's when people accuse us of being an echo chamber. Yeah, they accuse us of being an echo chamber. <laughs> I saw. Yeah, I and saw and sometimes like I disagree. Today. Sometimes like Nate disagree, but, but, and sometimes Richard disagree. It was earlier today. You know, okay. I, I, I'll even say. I'll even say. Look at how this trial. At yeah. the beginning of this trial, I straight up said, and Alita was like, "Nate, you got to hear the evidence." I was like, "Alita, listen." This is a public figure, Johnny Depp. Yeah, reading no statements, it ain't happening. Yeah. I don't know what you're doing, girl. I can yeah. tell you, I'm a preacher right now. This is a yeah. public figure defamation suit. What are you talking about? He's got a shot. And then yeah. I went to Kurt, and Kurt said, "Listen, Alita, we got to tell you, we don't think this Johnny Depp thing is really going to happen." I remember. I, I, I will say, was like, Viva yeah, Brian, I mean, literally, when we were, which we was were a perfectly all, reasonable opinion channel. at the front end. I mean, it was a perfectly girl. reasonable opinion. That's but remember, I Viva had it. Fry, when we were all, all on Eric Kelly's panel, yeah. Viva Fry was like, he was like, I, 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 you know, I don't understand. <laughs> like, do you really think that this is a case that's that's wise for him to bring? And I was like, 
Yeah, I mean, what? he lost in the UK. <laughs> we all know it's easier to, it's harder to win for Johnny Depp. So we have the UK Thank behind you. him. We're like, Everything here, he lost there. It's like, fuck this noise. Ringing He's not going to win the US. And now here we are. <laughs> Yeah, now, I will. Now, now, I, I will. Nobody... I will take. I will take all of your all of your accolades. No, you were, I, 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 I was saw. here, and I remember the <laughs> chat. Chat. I got to say, I apologize to the team chat. I told the chat people you were crazy. I have no problem. I told the chat people. I said the chat is insane. Yeah, they were like, I, Nate, we hate you." I was like, "Chat is insane. You guys don't know yeah. what you're talking about." Johnny right. Depp can't win this. That's right. And, well, he, that was, I that was, everyone that he was wrong. The leader was right. <laughs> yeah, he, we he hasn't okay. won it. Uh, he hasn't won it. No, no, no. Sure. It, right. no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying. I'm not saying. I'm, it, it was. It was my perception on whether he can win it or not. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. All of our. All of our attitudes from the, about the case has changed dramatically from when we first saw the case and read the documents. At, when I read the documents, I said, "This is a loser." I don't know how it survived the motion. We both did. Now. I say yeah. no. He actually yeah. ha absolutely has a case, and I think he can no. win on one claim, and the other two claims I'm still iffy on. But no, I okay. definitely think he can win. Yeah, I ultimately yeah. think uh, what the jury's probably going to do is probably going to say, "Listen, we're not going to give it to him on the simple abuse. Uh, we are going to find. I suspect the jury will find republication. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then I suspect yep. they're going to write him a giant number on that republication yep. because they really dislike Amber Heard and dislike some of this. That is my feeling yeah. on it. Although mm -hmm. when I say giant number, it's also entirely possible that they come back with a much smaller number. Uh, I would not be surprised to see seven million come back. Seven's the number. Yeah. Seven's the number. Seven. Lock it, load it. Seven. Because seven is such an fu number, and. Um, I could really see the jury just intentionally saying, you walk away from this marriage with nothing. We're taking yeah. every dime you got out of it. And uh, yeah, and that's it. Yeah. There is some um, justice in that somewhere. She'll still, she'll still claim bankruptcy. I mean, for, yeah. for me, I would have gone higher. I would personally, if I was in that jury room, go higher than seven. Um, I think he's proved $50 million. He's proved $40 million yeah. from analytical numbers. And $10 yeah. million dollars in reputational harm is... Pretty easy to calculate. I, yeah. I think he proved his case. Yeah, I, 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 I can see fifty. I can reasonably see fifty. But you know, I got the, real I, problems with those rumors of pirates not having him in October. I have to tell you, I have to be honest on this. I think yeah. that piece of evidence where they've got they've got actual executives executives at Disney saying he's not coming back to pirates in October is is pretty good for lack of causation on that. December okay, so oh. so so down to thirty five. Yeah, thirty five minimum. Fair okay. enough. I mean, I I don't know what number I'd necessarily get to, but I would certainly be thinking something where she's probably not going to be drinking a thousand bucks of wine a day for <laughs> yeah. a long time. Yeah. yeah, and 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 honestly, like I really still do believe in my heart of hearts that that this case is not even about the money. It's not even about getting getting back to work. It's about just clearing his name and yeah. and making a point. I I, I, I really think he needs think a piece that. of paper. I think he really does. Because the yes. society is I, I think the he needs I think he wants the win, not necessarily yeah. the dollar yeah. sign. I, I concur. If he walks away with a one dollar judgment, he yeah, is I a can... huge winner on all. Oh, yeah, that's it. Care. That's it. He's he's oh yes, yes. Yeah. And that could happen though. They yeah, they can they, they can they can say he wins all these claims and he gets a dollar. But that would that I think that would be that would be more than a fifty mil. That would be more than seven a million mil. plus a dollar, seven million and one dollar. So that'd be good. But just <laughs> But yeah. I, and and I think to be honest with you, after well now, the total the story has changed on Johnny Depp because I remember at the beginning we kept saying this is more about getting the story out and clearing his name. I think he's done that in spades. I think if 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 that was something that maybe happened maybe a couple of weeks ago, but right now, the whole narrative on the, on this relationship is one hundred and fifty degrees the opposite opposite way. It, it's it's because now I'm even seeing people who are defending Meg. Um, um, what's her name? Megan um, Kelly. I'm about to say Megan <laughs> Kelly. Heard. Who was defending Amber Heard. Now she's even flipping. I was like, after I heard her testify, oh, really? it's not looking Megyn too Kelly good. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody. It'll be interesting to see if any of these articles flip too that we've covered recently on Hoag's channel. Oh, I suspect mm -hmm. what you're going to see instead is a whole bunch of articles. They're going to double down. I, I, that's my yeah. prediction. Saying that this is a massive injustice. No. Yeah, and, and, yeah, I agree. Um, the other thing is really, I've made this point elsewhere, but I'll sort of reiterate it. We're seeing a real big difference in terms of how the PR games are being played. Uh, Johnny Depp's team has been leaking raw information like audio and, uh, you know, and that sort of thing to 
general, um, what they were calling independent journalists, so people on YouTube. Uh, whereas Amber Heard's team seems to be doing a lot more in terms of addressing and directing themselves towards the mainstream media. And it's it's going to be a real potential sea change here because what we've ultimately seen is that Johnny Depp's team has been much more successful at that. And to be fair, it seems that they have the, the truth on their side on that, uh, which is a tremendous advantage. But... Um, we may start seeing that the, you know, having control of the mainstream media is not such a big, uh, you know, not such a deciding factor. So I think that's really huge and we'll have to see how it shakes out. But I think that this could be a, a real interesting moment for how uh, how the media sh sort of looks going forward. Yeah. No, I, I definitely agree. I mean, it's, it's, it is very interesting because, you know, social media is, is for a lot of people, the new place to gain trust over time is you start to get a feel for independent people that are sharing their opinions and people are starting to throw their trust behind those areas rather than a corporate media empire that has other strings that are being pulled all right this, um, is, now you, very this is my now you guys are stepping on my toes you know i mean this is what i <laughs> yeah this is my this is my professional business here talking about that well, i'll tell you this <laughs> uh, they are paying attention I, i've now been contacted by a few authors of the pieces we've covered in headlines and hangouts yeah. which is both interesting and terrifying yeah. uh but they are they are paying attention so that's we're, we're out there. They're noticing. Yeah. Anka Jane, thank you so much for your generous super chat. It says, don't you think the agent herself claimed Amber lost 45 to 50 million? So Johnny's 50 million should be a piece of cake for the well, jury. What would imagine? Yeah. You yeah. would think so. Yeah. You would think so that, that if, if, if they think that there's any way that Amber could possibly justify, I mean, imagine, imagine that they were at all convinced yeah. by that. Yeah. And then that claim gets taken away from them anyway. And they're like, well, I would have been okay to give her 50 million. So why don't, like, why wouldn't, okay. why, why wouldn't it make, not make sense to give so, Johnny 50 million? Because he's the actual it, celebrity here. Yeah, if yeah, yeah. crazy yeah. bought for land, we somehow get her to 45, 50 million. How are we going to do her 100 million again? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't see how she even gets to, to 45 to 50 million either. Court. Times two because it's I'm a woman. Um, I'm only paid 70 cents on the dollar. I'm a woman. I need more. <laughs> four hours. You got to take four hours to tell us. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know, man. I, I don't know. Four hours. Uh, we, have a, we have a lot of, yes. I just, I, I can't, I can't fathom because even with all they need to do, I mean, if I'm, if I'm Johnny Depp's team and I'm looking at those four hours, let's say they do, let's say Amber Heard's team does decide to rest first thing tomorrow. So they're saving the four hours for rebuttal. The first Ooh. rebuttal is somebody that I would toss out there as a red herring to say a bunch of stuff and to have them do a very, very, very long cross-examination. First two witnesses, maybe. Just some obvious stuff like, to cross. Cross me. Cross yes. me. <laughs> yes, exactly. And then throw in with the, with the anchors, the ones that they they just don't want to have cross examined at all. You know, I, I that's that's what I would do. That, that is really what I would do. So you I can just have your parade of witnesses afterwards. They're going to have the Johnny Depp show. It's going to feel that way with four hours in three days. God. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, all righty. So let's see what we can do here. Um, there's probably some tweets that we can go over. Let's see. I'm, I'm going to check up Larry's page is, here. Is good logic, uh, able to find some cell signal? I don't know. I hope so. He tried earlier. Used his cell phone. Did you guys see him in there? Uh, he yeah. tried to call us twice. Mm -hmm. It didn't go well either time, unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately. Let me see here. No. Okay. So, so DUI guy, I think he's, I think he might be, he might be someplace else. He hasn't really tweeted much in the last, uh, last few hours. So, okay. Probably rushing so let's, get, uh, streaming let's go, again. Yeah. Then let's go through some, some super chats here so that we can, um, we can kind of work down this list of, of questions. I'm going to go, I'm going to go through some document production. See ya. Right. See ya, Ron. Well, see ya, Ron. <laughs> Ron doesn't want to go through super chats. That's fine. If anybody else has other stuff, production over do super chats is pretty insulting. 
I mean, yeah, that's, bad. that's bad. What? No, oh God, no, I have to go draft some disclosure schedules. No, I'm not. I'm good. Uh, <laughs> no, but, but but realistically, if anybody else has anything else that, that you need to do or that you would rather do, um, I'm not going to hold that against you at all. Um, so uh, also this poll, I think that I will probably end it now. I said, who do you think will win, Johnny or Amber? It looks like 95% for Johnny. I, I mean, I got to say, I still think <laughs> wow. the odds are 70-30 in terms of Depp comes away with money versus Depp comes away with no money. I think, um, yeah, 90 10. I think that the odds that Amber comes away with money is a zero. Um, yeah. I just, I don't put in, I mean, or a fraction of a percentage above zero. Yeah. But there is still a, here's like, here's the real possibility that I see is that uh, Amber Heard's team did a really good sort of opening talking about the aspects of this is freedom of speech. No, mm -hmm. disagree with her. And if they manage to pull that off and to thread that needle at the end there and convince them that, listen, uh, this is a wash, you know, and everybody made statements and everybody, you know, has a right to. And, you know, they could have been they could still land this that the jury just walks in there and says, we're not giving anyone any dollars. That's still a win for Depp. Uh, that is, I think, still Depp comes out ahead. But I mean, I and this is you know, starting from the place of at the start of this trial, I think we pretty much all said that his chances walking in the door were zero and 100, like 0% chance of him walking out with any money at the start of it. So that is huge. Uh, on a defamation trial with a figure like Depp, uh, having a 70% chance of walking out with money is, that's big. So, but I mean, yes, it is. I yeah. also, you know, yeah. people need to be aware that this is a tough, uh, that it's a tough standard. And, it is. you know, if they, I'm worried that if the jury goes, you know what, we think it's a tough standard. We're convinced that we're going to apply the law and not just apply our dislike of Amber Heard, uh, which is a major factor on this, uh, that people will be upset and it's, it won't be. Like it won't be a verdict that I see as outside of the possible, you know, realm of possibilities here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I think losing is always in the realm of possibilities, but yeah. even I think based on the technical aspects of the law, right? This is first you're talking about the elements by the preponderance of the evidence. And right now, essentially, but you know, has that proved that you know that he didn't sexually assault her by a preponderance of the evidence? It's a he said, she said. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's really a lot of people who believe what she said, right? So it really kind of leaves us with he said on that standard. I think I, I think that claim is, I think you got that claim. I think that claim is something that's that's pretty strong on his on his end because yep. again, it's a he said, she said, and I believe not only did she didn't say it, I think she's exaggerating about everything else. I think she's she's even up to the point where I think she's making stuff up. So that's why I think on that claim. He's got something. Now, the yep. two abuse claims, I can easily see them going back there and saying, well, he's admitted to pushing her, right? He's admitted to, to this thing. Is it mutual abuse? Is it reactive abuse? Who really knows? Who knows, right? Abuse is abuse. Some, the guy said it doesn't have to be physical. It could be economic abuse. What the hell is that, right? Okay, we'll, we'll give that a wash. Abuse here, abuse here. It's so nebulous, okay. Mutual abuse. You guys are abusing each other. But based on that standard and then clear and convincing evidence of malice, of actual malice, which essentially is if she made it up, yeah, <laughs> then we got actual malice. I think you so, are right. I, I think actual malice comes in automatically basically either way because they're in the room and they're either lying or they're not. Yeah. yeah. And the right now, I think, I think everything, the every, Sorry, every, every room where it happened later. Yeah. Yes. Yes. They are. <laughs> yes. But, every, but but all the evidence <laughs> to that one claim, I think overwhelmingly supports Depp. And I think it supports him based on just based on all the evidence that's been put forward. Now, maybe she can put something forward in the next four hours that will convince me otherwise. But right now, I think when it comes to that essay claim, I think she's got a problem. That's a great point. I honestly I keep I'm keeping my open mind till the the as Ian says, the hockey buzzer goes off. Uh, but it's hard to imagine. It's hard to imagine what they can do with that four hours that would change where we are right now. Um, and yeah, I think if I were judge, I would, I would grant that motion to strike, uh, which has just got to be 
a total collapse in morale on that team because oh, essentially uh. they blew themselves up for that counterclaim. They blew themselves up because they, they had no problem defending with 61 hours if they weren't trying to do the same thing uh, on going the other direction. I yeah. I just want to see the uh, the reactions on on Council's face and uh, on Herd's face when that happens, because I suspect you're going to see a lot of oh crap. Um, if if they were smart, they would drop the counterclaim tomorrow and just go straight on defense. I wish Rob were here. It looks like uh, uh, Andrea is convinced that Virginia's going to let him cross examine either even with the time expired. But I, it really depends on whether you treat the right to cross-examine as a, you know a, a moment by moment right, or they had sixty-one hours to plan how no, to use their time. I, I don't think so. Based on what we've seen from Judge Oscarati, I, I don't see like she's she's pretty tough on the rules, and especially where she has given a like warnings on it, she's given a ton of warnings, and she's been very serious about it. So yeah. I don't see that. I, I I don't see her making making um and like bending on that at, at all. Yeah, I, I think really if don't. they try to my read on sort of her because she's been very uh by the book, very everything, you know. My read on that is that if they go up now and say, Well, we need extra time because of this, she's gonna say, The time for you to complain about that was you know, six weeks ago. When we agree, you know, when we set this out, that was when you, you know, when you could have argued for a different, but you can't burn up your time and then ask for a change in the rules when the other side has been playing by the rules. Yeah, I just don't know. I mean, it's certainly going to look weird, right? And it, and it will be an opportunity for appeal. Um, you know, one, I would think they would lose, but I wouldn't commit to it. Um, so I, I agree with you, but remember, I, you know, at the top, I was saying, surely those times are mostly aspirational to keep people on the, the tracks. Kurt says, absolutely not. She's going to enforce them hardcore. Rob says she's going to enforce them hardcore. I know this judge. And she comes out and says, I'm enforcing them hardcore. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, I, Hey, I'm, I, I yield. That's fine. Um, but certainly I wasn't anticipating one side potentially burning their time with the other side having a dozen hours left. It's such a tactical I, yeah. blunder. It, it's it seems impossible. Such a tactical blunder. At the same time, how do you end on this witness? How do you end your case in chief with this witness? Because the next one's going to be even worse from the I pattern. Suppose, yeah. I, think if, I think you can, if you can hold it, if it's rotten born, and you say you have one half hour, put Johnny on the, st uh, on the stand and see if you can break him, and then walk away. <laughs> I mean, it's a good strategy. Well, it's because the breaking strategy. of Johnny Depp, remember, he's not going to get broken, but he's going to do what they do, which is what offends Ian so much, and I think rightly so, offends some other panelists so much, which is essentially what this is going to look like for a half hour is Ben Chu jumping up and saying, no, he can't answer that, yeah. right? And at, at yeah. bare minimum, you impugn privilege. You you suggest a Fifth Amendment invocation. Um, and and then you, you rest on Johnny Depp as a surreptitious snake in the grass. We rest your honor, right? And and that at least <laughs> looks better, even if like Ian yeah. and every decent officer of the court cringes maximally at that. If I was the yeah. judge and that was what they were doing, and they say, Okay, we rest on Depp, I would just be like, I don't even need to hear from you on the motion to strike. <laughs> like, sorry. Um <laughs> what I mean, but, you're asking us, what do we do when we're Amber Heard's team? Is like, what are the options? <laughs> what, what, yeah, but, but that, that that's what I'm saying. It's it's easy. The Depths team is easy to, to theorize, right? The Depths team, we know what they should do: burn out the other team's time and, and then go go unchallenged for whatever time they got left. Right? They can do that easy. Um, but I, I'm two things: is that if they if if the, if they're taking the counterclaim seriously, which I think they are. That's the that's the problem. Today was all about the counterclaim. Today was absolutely nothing about defense. It was about the counterclaim. The hand, the hand and, doctor was the yes. hand doctor was primary case. That, that's true. Yeah. The hand doctor was yeah. primary case, but I think everything else was 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 counterclaim. It was easy to forget. And and, and and I'll even and and I even thought the hand doctor was counterclaim because trying to say that he that that she didn't do that to his finger and all. But again, I, the, today what I thought was counterclaim. But without the agency. I was like, well, hold on. They didn't. They didn't prove the counterclaim, right? Because oh, everything has to work up to the agency. So tomorrow, since they haven't put on anything for agency, as we spoke, as we, because we talked about this earlier, Ian is like Ian said. Ian, what you just said. You said tomorrow, 
don't even the, the judge should say don't even talk about the motion to strike right it's just automatically going to be granted so that that means at this point right now you don't believe they've proven the count the counterclaim you believe the motion to strike is a as a matter of law should go forward right now right absolutely i don't think that they've got the scintilla of evidence uh on the whole point of was the statement attributable to depp and i think that their attempt to get to a scintilla of evidence on that is something that the court uh must look at as kind of sketchy because really the only way you view that as a scintilla of evidence is if you take the invocation of solicitor client privilege as being evidence and I don't think that's something that should be put to the jury. So I now don't you only think... got, but now even with, with everything you just said, you only got four hours left, and don't forget you got rebuttal. What do you do to do both? Of, because you kind of got accomplish those two goals: still play defense and prove this counterclaim. So you need, so you got to do it probably in one witness, right? You got to prove the counterclaim in one witness. Who do you get to prove the counterclaim in one in one witness? So you have enough time to play defense going forward. I don't think such a person exists. I think that personally, like if I, if it was up to me, what I would have been doing is uh, before, instead of calling Waldman, I would have just said, listen, we lose the counterclaim. Um, don't have Waldman up there to say perjury, 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 Amber Heard, Amber Heard perjury uh, for a good long time. And then also I am a lawyer who's totally a great person who thinks Amber Heard committed perjury. Just, you know, that was such a failure tactically. They're never going to make out at this stage unless they've got a miracle witness, like somebody who just, you know, who Johnny Depp was like, hey, um, you know, random person at the bar. I totally told my lawyer to put this, you know, message. In. Unless they've got this miracle surprise witness, um, I don't see how they can make it out. So they've traded so much like so much bad evidence to get that out there and or to try to get there at this point you just stop throwing good money after bad it's like the boat is leaking but yeah. maybe we could stop poking holes in it <laughs> yeah yeah um let's let's uh, i want i want to go from the top but i also want to answer this super chat here uh, from Sarah Christine, for those of us who missed it, can you please explain the motion to strike? Who wants to take a stab at that one? I can do it. I don't know if the, I just didn't know if somebody else wants to jump into do it, it first. Yeah. Uh, so basically, a motion to strike is 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 an argument that the team will make at the end of the case in chief. So at the end of Johnny's case in chief, when they rested before they passed on to Amber's case in chief, when she got to put on all of her witnesses. What happened was there was an there was an opportunity for a motion to strike, basically where Amber's side says, "All right, Your Honor, we have heard all of the evidence in Johnny's case in chief. They have a burden to prove this claim, this claim, this claim. They have certain elements within each claim. They have to they have to show enough evidence." for all of these that, that ticks all of these boxes. Now, the judge is not supposed to determine whether or not the evidence was good enough, just a question of whether or not there is evidence to go into each of those boxes that a, a reasonable jury could come away um, in favor of, of Johnny's side. So the argument by Amber's team was, that there's there's no scintilla of evidence, meaning there's there's nothing, not even a teeny tiny scratch that the jury could look at to say, eh, you know, reasonable that we can we can we can find in favor of Johnny. Now, at the end of Amber's case in chief, she also has her counterclaims that she has a burden to prove. So she has she has to put on evidence for the hoax claim statements. She has to put on evidence showing that not just that the statements were made, not just that they were defamatory, but also she has the, these extra elements of vicarious liability that link Waldman's statements back to Johnny Depp. And so the motion to strike basically is going to say it's going to be Johnny Depp's team this time that'll be saying, Your Honor, this element, this element, this element. There's no evidence on the record the, the the jury, there's no point in putting this claim to the jury because they cannot possibly find um, in favor of Amber Heard's side. No reasonable jury would do it because there's no scintilla of evidence here. Now, I think there's a there's a very strong there's a very strong argument for Johnny's side on this because you need something, something to link Adam Waldman's statements to Johnny Depp. And it's not enough just that he's Johnny Depp's lawyer because he could be Johnny Depp's lawyer that went rogue. 
He could have just gone off the rails and said things that Johnny didn't want him to say. All kinds of things like that. And the problem for them is we don't have the, anything, any information on the communications between the two to show that you need to show communications. The problem in, for Amber Heard's team there is that this isn't just a just a, a basic employer-employee relationship. This is an attorney-client relationship where those communications are specifically privileged. So that is why when Adam Waldman's deposition was played, every single response, except for asking about why he was kicked off of Twitter, that was the only thing that I saw that he was able to actually testify to. Every single other question was, I am I am following the advice of my counsel because this falls under the attorney client privilege. Meaning there was no evidence that they were able to get in on those points. Now, if they are able to squeeze that out of Johnny Depp that they can maybe get some kind of communications out of him saying, "Yeah, you know, I told him XYZ. Yeah, you know, he told me XYZ." But most likely what would happen is he would wait for his attorney to object the and objection. then he would and then he would say I'm not going to respond because it's attorney-client privilege. I'm not going to waive the privilege. He just stood up the whole time. He just wouldn't even sit down. He'd just stay standing, objecting to every question. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. So, oh. so, so there's a there's a decent argument for that. Now, whether you know, typically judges don't like taking decisions away from the jury, but in this case, there's a there's a, a quite a strong argument, I think, in my opinion, for the judge to actually take this one away from the jury. Um, yeah. so, uh, yeah, so that's, that's basically that that's, that's the motion to strike, um, in a nutshell. Can I make things more confusing? Yes. It's possible. They might've been asking about when one of the lawyers says motion to strike, just sitting there when there's been an objection that's been sustained. <laughs> it's the same Wait, language what? in Virginia. So like we saw that, uh, we saw that, um, uh, Dennison got one of his objections sustained just now and then said motion to strike. Yeah. <laughs> that, that means it doesn't go in the transcript. I, I'm yeah. just adding things to make things, you know, no, 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 no. Uh, that's, a fantastic that's, good. Job. that's a good point. I did. I did think about a scintilla though. Right. Cause you said the only thing Adam Waldman said was about his Twitter ban. He did say one other small thing. Um, and that is that uh, when they were coordinating the comments to the Rolling Stone, Johnny Depp called first to preface Adam Waldman's call afterwards. And if you could say, that's enough to establish that Adam Waldman effectively acted in his role as lawyer, as spokesman for Johnny Depp. Scintilla? I don't know. Question speaking mark? Of, speaking of scintillas uh. and question marks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Joe, how's it going? going I like the segue. How are you? Good. Guys how are you? We're good. We're good. good. So, so, do you guys like, are you guys, are you guys fans of Denison? We're yeah. on the fence. We're on the fence. I I, I like it. I like his style of cross examination to the way that I play Super Smash it's Brothers so and smash all the buttons. He doesn't really hear me. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> all right. So let me give you some juror background. Okay. All right. You want you want some juror background? Yes. Okay. Yes. Keep going, yes. Joe. That's a yes. <laughs> Every time I get home, I just, I just, so. Hi. Oh I'm still here. Yes. Keep going. <laughs> Go. Speak. So I'm going to assume you can hear me, and I'm just going to yes. keep talking. Yes. That's, what, that's how we're going to play this, okay? So basically, um, yeah, we thought about throwing a funeral for, for juror number two because he certainly looked like he died at some point today. Oh, he does he that. Was, I, call him the, I call him the boredom juror canary. Juror number one literally was kicking him, literally kicking him awake at one point. That's <laughs> oh, oh, no. Okay. Oh. No. Oh, it, though. <laughs> oh no! Juror it number two joke. died. No, it was juror number two. <laughs> You're talking about me. Oh no! Joe, Joe immediately Jerry, rolls in. Jerry, what do you, what do you think I do bomb. here? That I, guy. I, I teach law through this channel. That's what the, uh, that's what it's all about. <laughs> I've been saying juror B rather than number two, just because uh, the some of them they have numbers, right? But it's hard to actually tell, and their numbers don't correspond. But. Uh, hmm. I've been calling him the boredom canary because he does not deal with boring stuff. Well, he will like, there have been several points where he's actually just rested his head on the monitor. He, he just can't handle it when things are boring. And he, he communicates that real, obviously um, he's also using an assisted listening device. And sometimes he will take it out entirely when he's done with somebody. Uh, somebody's testimony. He did that today. Oh, he yeah. did that today? Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. oh my God. 
they were, they, the only time they woke up was when they were talking when when um doc dr hare was talking about um was talking about how aquaman was the best movie of all time and they both and like number one and number two were both like uh-uh. <laughs> like that, hey, that, that, that's not gonna fly here. And Thur number nine, Thur number nine gives the best side eye. He's always like, really, yeah. because he he sits yeah. he sits close to the witness, and he never looks at the witness other than like you're like all oh, like, what you? It's like a what you talking about, Willis kind of thing. It's <laughs> <laughs> that's basically. That's basically the look that he gives the entire time. So I'll tell you this. The, the one person who was paying the most attention is during number seven. Yep. And even he started, I mean he was even he started dying when they even when they brought up damages. They were like they, they, all of them, when they brought up damages, were like, we don't want to know about this. We're wasting our time here. It really sent a message to me that they have no they're giving no credit. To the counterclaims at all because they they had no interest in that before she started coming up with these cockamamie numbers they were like they had no interest in it and then when they started she started coming up with this one million becomes two million becomes four million that's a baseline for everybody <laughs> I want it. and then she's gonna have a movie of four million every year and then she's gonna have her makeup deals and, and that's gonna be eight million forty million forty sure, five was like huh? That was like, <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. I could not stop laughing when that number came out. If you heard laughter, that was me because I was the loudest <laughs> laugh in the room. I was seriously like, ha! <laughs> like, yeah. I could not hold back. I, I wasn't trying. It was just like, oh my God, we're at 55 million already. Hey Joe, let me ask wow. you about the first witness of the day, the uh, the per the first person me, testified. Let me the, let uh, me insert let me insert okay. really quick. Rehoner, thank you very much for the, for the very generous super chat. Okay, go ahead, Kurt. Hey, I want to ask you about the orthopedic surgeon who's the first testimony of the day. I thought yeah. it was the best bright spot of Amber Heard, which I know isn't saying very much, but I wanted to see if they there was any positive reaction from the jury at any point what the overall development of the jury's attitude for that first remind, witness was. Remind me of the topic. It was, it was, the, it was, it was the hand was, guy. It was the hand guy who testified. Yeah, when the doctor the with the credentials. Yeah. Um, the minute that she had the doctor show his hand and then with the curve, they all started diligently writing, all of mm -hmm. them. Um, <laughs> they, could, they could see that something was off. And I think that's kind of where she hook, line, and target eliminated. Yeah, I, she was she was great. She was great she cross. Had, she's, much better, she's much better at cross than Denison is. Yes, I close. I Denison so is a trash cars. fire. I when Denison is sitting there, not objecting as as they're characterizing those statements as defamatory, as defamation. I'm screaming uh, in my in my mind. Object, object! You cannot let them repeatedly refer to these statements as the as defamation. It's, a, it's making a legal conclusion. It's assuming yeah. facts, not in evidence. And you're planting a seed in the minds of the jury that these statements have already been determined that they are defamatory, in, incorporating that they're, that, that they're not true. And, and if you're going to let that in, on the converse side, when you get to cross-examination and you ask the question about aren't, is in truth an absolute defense, and she says, oh, I'm not an expert. It's like, oh, I thought you were testifying about what things are defamation. You must know the legal yeah. standard, so let's mm -hmm. go through it, counselor. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, but, yeah, yeah. He, yeah but, but, but he doesn't do snark. In fact, not only does he not do snark, even when he had that, that, that he was doing his first cross, he's like, don't worry, I'll let you answer in full. I'm like sitting here thinking, is this a Virginia thing? That it's like we're nice. <laughs> <laughs> he's from New York. He's from yeah. New York, Joe. Uh, Joe, he's, he's violating like, the rules, Joe. Yeah. He's violating the he, rules of cross examination. This would not have happened. I, I was, I'm telling you, and I was like, how are you giving this guy so much leash? You're letting him talk back to you and have this whole snarky conversation with you. And I was like, and I'll tell you something. What, what's her face was there? What, um, from, from what's it, Court TV? Yeah, um, Painter. Yeah, it's so a Chanley. So I was talking to Charlie about it, and she thought that it played. She felt that it played as if uh, that he looked bad in the way he was giving uh, the, the, the doc looked bad in the way he was giving snark back. I didn't oh get that God. take personally. Hmm. What what was your doctor take was the, the worst the, the, the doctor trial. an arrogant sis, sisyphanic, erudite narcissist. Uh, head up okay. his ass. He should have you know been what, a should have been a podiatrist and shit fucking piece of shit. <laughs> Always wake me up. Okay. Always <laughs> me up. 
that, maybe that's a New York difference between that and Virginia because. I cut off at the at the, oh, at, no. at the mother, Joe was so a, insulted. Joe was so insulted by my salty language. Hold on, hold on, hold on. New York. Joe, He's say it again. That language. Oh, oh, wait, before you cut off, say it. Joe, say it quickly. I said that could be that could be a, that could be a regional thing because I didn't I didn't look at him as being a jerk at all. Really? Wow. So, oh. <laughs> So look, yes, let me break down my assessment on the jurors here, okay? Number one pays more attention than number two by a little bit. Um, and that's not saying much. By, that's yeah, surprising I, it was a big gap when I was there. I guess juror one is tapped out. In my notes on number two, I was constantly like, all right, so the whole jury is is zoning out, and number two, has his soul has ascended to heaven. <laughs> he just looked, he literally looked dead. Like number one was kicking his feet at one point to like wake him up. That's how, that's how out of it he was. Number three will sort of phase in and out. You never know, and he gives no expression at all. I have yeah, no idea. He's wearing a mask. I have no idea what that dude is thinking. It was hard for me. I had a bad angle on seeing number four. That is like the middle-aged black woman, um, who who seemed she, even she was dying by the damages when they were talking to damages. Her head was lolling to the side. Yeah, those numbers made no sense. Okay, we're well, looking. If you're, there's five in the back row, and four in the front row, and the way Rob has been doing it, and Runkle was doing it, and everyone was doing it, well, they were doing it either calling it number one or calling it A. But basically, so the back row they labeled one through five or A B C D E, and then the front row they labeled six through nine or F G H I. So that's why when I'm referring to these numbers, I'm saying number. If you're going from from left to right in the back row. So number one is this young Asian kid who looked like he was playing Elden Ring half the time. Number two was another young Asian kid who, who, was, who was sleeping and taking out his headphones, which I, are hearing aids that he has. Number three is a third Asian kid who's wearing a mask, and he's paying much more attention than the other two put together. And then number four, and this is again in the back row here, is a middle-aged black woman who she seemed like she was very attuned to the tone of everything. When I could walk, when I could see her, she actually seemed to be really getting when getting the same tapes from moments that were pro pro amber or con amber and get and absorbing them as I would expect a juror to, to but react. She has the mask yeah, still masked. Yeah. But I, I she seemed to really the way she was looking around like that, and similarly for number five, which is a like a young Asian woman, she seemed to be like she, she seemed, takes a lot of notes. She, yeah, she takes a lot of notes. Then in in the front row, so there's like this this I don't know a guy who looks like he's my age. I would imagine a white guy with a beard who looks like he's my age, who's always he's very he's constantly watching the witness. He's older than and, you, I'm sure. Yeah, he's his eyes are, are locked on the witness. Not as much as like like I would say sometimes he'll drift over to the to the to the um attorney who's asking Only questions drama. yeah but he he's he doesn't he he's hard to put to sleep but the hardest one to put to sleep is this young kid um wearing a wearing a mask is number seven that kid i mean he is locked in and i'm talking about when they're doing the cv for these people which is the most boring testimony in the world he's sitting there and he's absorbing it and he's just like yeah. locked in on the testimony in ways that if i was if I was Johnny's counsel, it would concern me. Um, number eight looks like she doesn't realize she's at a trial. Like she wandered into the courtroom. She looks like an older an older woman. She looks like she wandered into the courtroom. And sometimes she's looking off in directions. I have no idea what she's looking at. She's a big fan of Denison. When he steps up, she's like, "Oh yeah, here comes my boy." Um, and I, I I don't know what was your feel on her. Well, By the, well, I got a completely I got a completely different feel. I that she was paying attention at first i thought she was very anti denison when dr really? spiegel was going back and forth with him and really? she, was, she was smiling at what dr spiegel like the when he was getting lippy really? but then mm -hmm. all of a sudden when denison started firing back with him then she smiled at denison the one thing i ah. will say is in the afternoon when you had the um uh catherine arnold um what? you had all of the movie talk 
juror one, two, seven, and nine are huge movie fans because the minute that Catherine said yeah. Aquaman was the best movie ever made, the three of them, one, two, and seven, were like, huh? And then juror, juror nine was like, what? Like they all <laughs> made a face. Uh, okay. Yeah. And by the way, because we're getting we're getting questions in the chat, Joe, you didn't you didn't introduce Miss Farron Balance behind you. I apologize. <laughs> this is my co-host for when I stream Farron Balance. She got it's my stream. co-host. You get your yeah. own co-host. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So she, she actually lives in the D.C. area. She's an independent journalist. And but um, before that, I was a news anchor. I covered tons of court cases and trials and stuff like that. So yes. I see a completely different side of how the media sees it all and how we see a jury. Yeah. So yeah, so, yeah. Well, well, totally welcome, different. welcome to the channel. Welcome to the channel. I'm, I'm very happy to have you here. Let me ask Farron yeah. a can, question. Can, 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 can. Oh, go ahead. Let me ask Farron a question as our non-attorney uh, resident. Um, did uh, Dennison's cross-examination make you want to die inside? <laughs> the second one did. The first one, I thought it was pretty good. The second okay. one, so what happened was, and, and I will say this, at the very end, it hits 5 o'clock, right? And Dennison's like, so we're good? And then you saw the judge like, mm, no, we're going till 5.30. And I was like, ooh, she ain't happy. And she already wasn't in a good mood. Because she had to, like, it was Elaine learning the law, day 27, you know, like, where it was, like, <laughs> trying to teach her what to do. So That's she true. already was super annoyed. And then when he pulled that out, I was like, dude, read the room. Like, no, <laughs> she's already yeah. kind of annoyed. Yeah. So, yeah, the second one, though. And he's milking you know, that last half hour. That was, like, the last half hour. To she... end the two was the oh. jury looking at the door for the last half hour. They didn't hear any redirect. They yeah. didn't hear any of the questions about... It was like the last 10 minutes of school before summer break. It was ex it was exactly <laughs> like that. We were all yeah. looking at the door and like waiting to be excused by, by, by you know, Mrs. Oscarotti, you know, for, for, the, for the summer break. So <laughs> anything you heard in the last half hour, you heard it and no one in our room heard it. One thing I will tell you that's interesting is that room is so much bigger in person than it looks on TV. Yeah. On TV, you ask yourself how they can fit 100 people in there. That is a massive courtroom. It's very wide. It goes much deeper than you realize. I, I would estimate it's like it's like 35 feet across. It's a really wide room, and it's much longer than it is wide. It's a really big room. So you wouldn't know. This is one of the tidbits that... Yeah, only by going there could you appreciate the size the, the size of that room. Like I thought I'm in the second row, whatever third row, I'm gonna be like five feet behind Amber. She's like forty feet from me. They were yeah. all really they're all really far away. Judge Oscar body is in another time zone how far away she is from us. <laughs> but Whitney was actually two rows ahead of me. Right. And legal bites exclusive here. I watched a lot of Whitney during the testimony and watched now, whenever you see Amber look back, she's not looking at the gallery. She's looking at Whitney. And Interesting. Oh, no. She's we're we're, oh, we're going to win. And you can see Whitney is, like, supportive. But Alita, you probably would understand this woman's intuition that I see is she's not happy to be there, but it's, like, the supportive sister. And you can just see she's very uncomfortable. The whole time she's kind of shrugged up. Um, she just appears very, very uncomfortable. And my heart kind of broke for her today. I'm not going to lie. Ooh. Just very awkward. And every time Amber looks back, and it's just very weird. You feel bad for her. And that's just uh, gallery take that I got. Um, and by the way, yeah. on, the tiny, on, the tiny, on the tiny thing where they have four hours and nine minutes left, you should realize that there's one or two more people who were sitting in the front row. All the people yeah. testified today were the front row. It seemed like it was March of the experts, and they feel like the only way they can save this case is if they get enough expert testimony to convince the jury that they should win. But um, but there's at least one or two more that they're planning to bring up here. I have no idea how their how their clap management four thinks they're going to do rebuttal. With four, they have hours. four hours left. There's a blonde woman that was left, and then there was another gentleman that kind of had, like, salt and pepper hair. Yes. Yeah, so they th do theme days. They had, like, video deposition theme day. Today was expert witness theme day. Yeah. You know? And, Speaking and of the which. Jury's just, 
You know, they're just not buying it. You have questions? If yeah. You have questions, we have, we have a couple yes. Things. Go for it. So, some idiot with a hat. Thank you very much for your very generous super chat. And your name is very funny. It says, hello to all of Ooh. you and thank you for covering this trial. Any thoughts on how not only one, but two of the defense's witnesses stated in court that Aquaman is the highest grossing blockbuster of all time? Well, that wasn't exactly what they said. I mean, they, they did say it was the DC. highest grossing DC comic uh, movie of but all the time. first time she said yeah. it, though, the first time she said it. Oh, can we just the pause four of them for a were second? Like, what? Can we just pause for and a then, second? And then there's what? Uh, hey, but, uh, yeah. wait, Joe, before before you do, there's a, there's actually a question for you. It says, "And to Joe, were you happy all the witnesses today were live?" No, I was disappointed that I thought we were getting Johnny. We didn't, to be honest with you. I mean, yeah, I'm happy that they were live, but I was I was really thinking, "Oh my God, I'm gonna get to watch Johnny dealing dealing with them, you know, crossing him and." and and that whole thing. And I was very disappointed that I wasn't able to get, to here's, get Johnny one, on the here's one thing that you, you, you can sense it in the gallery for, for all you empaths out there. Um, when you're in the gallery and when Dr. Spiegel was up there and he was like, Oh, he has narcissistic personality disorder. And he has all this. And Johnny looked up at him and smiled. It was like, Holy cow. Like this guy could be scary if he wants to not like it, like the, not that scary, but just like that weird Jack Sparrow smile. Like, really, dude? Really? <laughs> and you yeah. can like see it in the courtroom and you can feel it. And you're just like, he is not happy. But it's just, yeah. you, you see in the gallery and you, you can feel his frustration too. That he can't be like, reach through the, you know, the bench and be like, no, I'm not. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. yeah and to then, answer but, the question, Fuzz, fuzz Folk, yeah. um, I'll tell you right now. I couldn't stop laughing. I mean, she's literally feeding her the question. It's like, I don't have patience for you anymore. This is the question. Here's your question. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait for you to try to figure this out anymore. Yeah. Ask her how she found it, Elaine. <laughs> it was like, come yes. on. <laughs> yeah, even though it's like, it's not my job, but you know. Um, legal bites. Is it common for a judge to assist a lawyer with properly questioning a witness? Seems nope. a little biased to the opposing team and somewhat unethical. It's not common, but it's not exactly it's unethical. A it's either. a desperation move by the judge. Was, it's it like, was so tired of your not desperation. It was it, that was a desperation move. Try to help you out a little bit because you're so fucking failing. That yeah, we got to give it, you some tips. Of like, it okay, doesn't, I got to help you out a little bit here. <laughs> it's it's not it's not like it's not like it's it's. I wouldn't be worried about it from Johnny yeah. Depp's perspective. Because no, of the no, fact no, that no. that if, what, the the messaging that it gives to the jury is this attorney is too incompetent to yeah, help. No, yeah, no, yeah, for for so sure. So I, I would for not sure. be worried about it. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. If I'm on the team, I'm not worried. About, I'm not upset that that's happening. Oh, to, to to Lois Burns, I want to say to you that it's easier said than done. Yes, it is much harder when you're up there doing it, but it's not nearly as hard as Elaine makes it look. She did find the microphone today, though. That's all I'll say. Because she doesn't understand. She doesn't understand what objections are. She hears objection to hearsay. She thinks she starts trying to lay foundation. She hears objection to foundation. She says, "I said what if anything." She, it, she it's like she, she basically has this. It's like it's like she hears objection and she pulls out a magic eight ball of like what her response is going to be. I, I love know, the response <laughs> when she says, "I disagree." I disagree. Yeah, I, disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, answer. Your Honor. I, oh, I don't think so. One. This this is another one that she loves with expert witnesses. No, expert witnesses they can testify hearsay. Mm, no, no, that's not so, really how that works. <laughs> <laughs> how that works. To 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 answer this this question about thoughts on Andrew Burkhardt's tweets that Virginia law gives right to cross exam on material issues regardless of imposed time limits. Okay, yes, but I'm I'm looking at her tweets and she also says. That there's there's this idea of of the jurisprudential theory of legal realism. This theory holds simply: the law is what the judge says the law is. But you don't she's even able to go to real to, politics. You don't even need to go. Well, right, but she she's allowed to set the rules in her courtroom. The two parties have stipulated to this; they have agreed to it, and yeah. and so they're allowed. There there are certain there are certain laws that that the two parties can decide are waived. For example, the law that that says that the two parties have to be have to consent to a secret yeah. recording. They have Indeed. stipulated to that. You can stipulate to other things, including including the uh, you know a time limit issue here. So they have stipulated to this, and the judge has been has been very clear and very open about the fact that she is tracking time. She's been very 
she's she's been reminding them how many times that she doesn't even no. really need to remind them, but she maybe has they been. Stipulate, maybe they stipulate that if Link can't figure out the question, the judges can step in and help. I don't know. All I'm, <laughs> all I'm saying is you don't go, you don't, you don't need to go all the way down real politic. The law is what the judge decides it is. Right. Road. You can instead say, well, the due process requirement is you get an opportunity to cross-examine. That's built into the aggregate of the entire trial. Uh, right. And that's what the time limit is about. Uh, but you say you say you can waive things like illegal recordings. You got to be damn careful about waiving things like constitutionally protected rights to due process. Yeah. So I, I mean, no. the people that are saying, "Well, so, isn't there an issue if they can't cross-examine?" are right intuitively because that's part of the nature of our judicial system. What what if they if they are stopped from cross-examining? It's that they had a right to cross-examine. They wasted it futzing around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, to, so I, I got I to gotta bust out of here like in a sure. second. I didn't mean to cut you off. But I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I no, think no. we're pulling up the station and I got to do this thing. But I just want to let your chat know that tonight, I stream every night. I do like I do a, a nightly um, stream. And tonight it's going to be late. I, know, I normally go from 10 to midnight Eastern. Tonight I'm probably not going to get home to like after 11 and I'll set up my stream and, and get and start going. But I plan on going through all my notes as far as what the jury was doing during different sections of the thing and just go through that. So if you're curious about how the jury was reacting to various questions or answers, I plan on covering my perspective on that to the best of my abilities um, and doing that tonight. So you should check out for my live stream and I'll be doing that later. So are you going to be back in there tomorrow? No, I'm not. I'm, no, I, I was very frustrated that I couldn't stream in the middle of the day, I have, I have I have weak eyes, which makes it makes me squint all day long to see anything, and and then I can't stream in the middle of the day. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I just want to go back and do my regular, you know, live stream. Can I just tell you a funny oh. story? No, so we, so we no, go. you can't. Oh, why? We're losing reception. Yeah, <laughs> we're losing, so, losing reception. So we I can't. Through, so we get through security. What? And Joe goes what are you, to grab what are you, what are you saying? I can't. I can't. Okay, tell. Joe. Let her. Let her. Let her say it. <laughs> so we go through security, right? And Joe goes to grab his glasses out of his bag, and he puts on his glasses, and he's like, "What?" And I hear him go, "What?" And then he taps me on the shoulder because I was sitting in front of him, and I turn around, and one of the lenses was missing, and he goes, "Look!" And he's poking his finger through the lens, and he goes, "I can't see anything." And I was like, "How did you lose one lens?" Well, then during the break, he goes back down to security, randomly finds his lens. We have no idea how, but even with the two lenses, you couldn't see. It's, very, it's, it's really, it's so far away. It's so you far need away. new glasses. They, but, I and, say they are very far away. They are. Oh, yeah. man. Uh, and Jennifer Kaminsky, gallery? thanks so much for your very generous super chat Wait, question. Joe, in the gallery. Yeah. What was the overall take of the day? A Johnny win or AH the win after expert testimony? Um, people in the gallery are very confident that Johnny's going to win. They're very, very what confident. A, They're treated like the heroes. They're treated. I can't speak for the jury. The, 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 the defense team is treated like heroes. It sounds like they won the Super Bowl. When they come out, yeah. there are horns blaring and people cheering, and, and they're treated like rock stars. And what's funny is that, I got to tell you, the love Law 2 gets here, so many random people walking up to me saying, hey, Joe, can I take a picture with you? And I'm like, <laughs> um, okay. And then like three minutes later, the rock stars come out, and I actually jokingly said, I was like, wow, who would have thought that like lawyers would be treated like celebrities? You can see the video. <laughs> 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 the sad thing is that like Elaine and her team are walking out and like they just leave and nobody, I, no, I figured that's going to be super lonely. Yeah. I and, have the video and by the way, what about today on my Twitter where you can see all of them with the alpacas and everything? The no. DUI guy made a stop to get pictures with the alpacas. He's, like, he's, it's like a little, he's like a little kid. He's like, alpacas, we got to stop. He stops in the middle. I would. Of in the middle I, of I 100% would because I'm basic like They're that. So but Damian, Damian Mitrovsky wants to know what about the Brando dead comment in the courtroom? So How did funny. that land? That 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 I, I I wasn't looking at the jury that particular second, but that was that was I, I the whole the whole place laughed. We the whole place erupted when when I came out. I don't know if you could hear us, but the whole the yeah. whole room broke we into laughed. Laughter. Yeah, uh, Brando was yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, that. Any more questions for us before I gotta get out of here? Uh, has anyone else has anyone noticed in if anyone in the jury visibly cringes every time they hear "What if any"? I can't stop myself," says Hannah Mall. <laughs> I I am I'm physically pained at this point every time she says "What if any." 
I, I, I will say just even from the start, the jury's sitting there and they're just like, oh, this is going to be a long one. And you can just tell they're trying to mentally prepare. <laughs> and then they just end up falling asleep, especially juror number two. He's just out like a light. And um, but like I said, he's getting the best the rest of his life. <laughs> it sounds like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so they're just they're they're there, but they do perk up when cross happens because they know that they'll at least maybe get if if anything fireworks, if not maybe a sparkler, you know. So they perk up for that. Yeah. Oh my uh, gosh, Joe, am I going to see it all on Thursday or Friday, or is this it I'm, for you? I'm going back to New York. I'm oh. I, I, I'm going back to New York. I, I okay, want to so get just, feel, I want to get a feel day. for the jury. I want to get a feel for the trial. I want to get so this way. I feel like when I'm when I'm when I'm talking about the trial, I'm covering things like I I have a much better feeling for what everyone is seeing in that room, having been there. You know what I'm saying? So Joe, I, that's what I wanted from this. Joe, prediction time then. That you got your feel. What's your feelings on the on the how, how this case is going? Who do you think is going to pull it out based on? What I don't. I don't see. There's such a loud swell pro Johnny. The, ju the, the jury cannot be ignoring it, and they seem to be buying into it. There's at least four people who are in the tank for him. There's at least four, so which means that even if two of them don't make the jury, two of them end up as alternates, there's at least two people who look like they will never give anything to, that they're not going to back down. Now, whether they can convince the others, I don't know. They're the younger crowd. They're, they're not really the older ones. But I, I haven't seen any signs that people... The, the jury didn't show anything, any kind of love at all to, to um, Amber. So no, I'm going to yeah. stay. I will say no. this. I think they might have effectively knocked his damages a little bit. The mm -hmm. one thing that I thought that Dr. Dr. Hare did very effectively was pointing out mm -hmm. that, hey, when that op-ed came out, there was another article that came out the same day. It was also very damaging to Johnny. And there's no way to establish a causal link here. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that. And and that maybe it was the other thing which caused which cost him his reputation, and I think that that could actually hurt the total on his damages. I don't think they'll use it to to knock off his defamation altogether, but I do think it can take a major bite out of the total judgment amount. But I've I've started off saying eight figures. I'm going to stand behind my eight figures with hmm. like a, a solid eighty eight percent. Okay, uh, Stephanie Ibabu says question: Jury reaction to the expert calling? Oh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear what you said. I said the two that worry me, the two jurors, I, all the men are completely, I think, on Johnny Depp's side. And juror number one really likes Zendaya because he really perked up for that. <laughs> um, but the ones that worry me because they're very stoic and mm -hmm. and the, the older white lady kind of smiles at everybody. And the older black lady, you can't see her facial expressions, but she pays attention. Okay. Those two kind of worry me. Uh, I think the, the, uh, the, I think... the expert calling JD an idiot. Yes. Did you see their faces on that? Yeah, they kind of, they just looked confused. Yeah, I think that's what it was. That's I think, the, okay. I think the older woman is probably going to be uh, also in the bag for, uh, for, uh, yeah. And the reason Sweet. why is, uh, you remember that psychiatrist that they brought out? Which one? Uh, Dr. Curry? No, not yeah. Curry. The, uh, yes. uh, the video depth position, uh, depth psychiatrist. Oh, uh, yeah. Tom Selleck. Tom Selleck, yeah, the Magnum yeah she, she was sending a lot of like really sympathetic like she had sympathetic looks directly at Depp during that mm -hmm. and I mean I think I think she's uh, kind of I think she's leaning heavily in that direction what was interesting though is when Dr. Spiegel started talking about narcissistic personality disorder I saw all of them turn and look at him because that's a big like that's a big thing that you hear a lot today and the fact that there's this whole who's diagnosed with it johnny or amber they all really started paying attention towards that talk they did they woke up there. um yeah. because it is a, a weird thing to talk about and they all were their ears perked up for that one all right this is union station right mm -hmm. all right so i'm here my stop i got this is gonna pull you around i gotta here. i gotta start setting up stuff for uber for farron so i gotta i gotta fly but um I will try to catch you guys tomorrow at some point. All right. All right. Oh, Sounds good, Joe. Thanks, Thanks for the report. Thanks so much. Nice to meet you, Farron. Bye -bye. You too. You too. All right. See you guys. Uh, are, are, are sleeping jurors a case for appeals? I don't think so. Um, they've woken juror I up a couple of times. Yeah. Um, yeah. Although so, I, I have to, I have to 
uh, acknowledge one of my one of my fans super chatted or texted me on Instagram with some okay. authority from the Court of Appeals of Virginia that I, I sped read the case, but it looks like promising authority, okay. which stands for the proposition that notwithstanding any sort of generalized time limits, there is a right to cross examination, not just a privilege. So it would suggest that even if they run out of time, they still have some right to cross examination. I know this is contrary to everything we've been saying up to this point. But oh. there does seem to be some authority. This is a 2017 case from the Court of Appeals of Virginia, Higgins versus Pierce, and uh, does seem to suggest that there might be some right to cross-examination, notwithstanding the elapse of time. So if this is correct, because I'd sped read it, and if this is a basis for denying time, it would be a basis for appeal. So there's is a lot that, of ifs, but I just thought I'd bring it to everyone's attention. Is it published or not? It is not. It's Westlaw. It's only Westlaw. It's not a published so, opinion. Yeah, because there's there's another unpublished opinion that says yeah. that Andrea has has posted on in in one of her tweets saying that uh, she says, however, sometimes other judges will say it's okay as long as you give plenty of warning according yeah. to this unpublished pres yeah. president. And she's given a lot of warning. She's there might be some it. division on the Court of Appeals on this issue, which okay. I, doesn't surprise me because you got two unpublished opinions, which apparently contradict with each other. Fun and exciting for the whole family. The other thing I have heard of happening is, uh, and this is from different jurisdictions outside the U.S., but where they've had uh, limited, like, those kinds of time allocations, I have heard of them saying, okay, you have a right to cross-examine. You got 10 minutes for each witness that comes up. Is You get 10 minutes, you get to ask some questions, mm -hmm. um, which is a baby-splitting measure, but it's... Yeah, 10 minutes might be sufficient for the, for the purposes of this Court of Appeals decision. Yep. And, you know, they can say if you wanted more time, you should have taken more time. Yep. Uh, or you should have saved more time. So if they bring that to the judge's attention, I could certainly see her saying, OK, you got 10 minutes. Make it good. Yeah. And good luck yep. cross examining, you know, anybody on 10 minutes. Right. Um, all right. Let's go through some super chats now that we've gotten the 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 jury, uh, the jury reactions and whatnot. Um, if you guys want to stick around for it, great. If you guys need to go, you're more than welcome. I'm not going to be offended. Uh, I'm I, gonna be here, but I'm going to logo up for a second so I can sneak in at dinner. Sure. I sure, shall. Sure. Oh yeah. I'm gonna go I think I need to do a video, so I will catch you later. Uh, thank you for having me on. It's always a pleasure. I really, uh, and, uh, this has been such a wild trial. It's such a crazy, <laughs> uh, crazy thing it's funny when joe's talking about the jurors i can picture them all in my head and all of that um i i have a real i feel that things are really sort of skewed on one side here but uh yeah yeah anyway i will uh try to catch i i got some court appearances i probably can't be on tomorrow so that oh. will make me sad okay well you know where you know where we'll be all day so <laughs> And um, then I got to get on a plane. I got to get back out there. Sounds <laughs> good, right. Ian. Sounds good. We're looking forward to it. All right. See you, Ian. All right. Then otherwise, we will do a uh, basically a lightning round of Super Chats. Let's do it. Okay. Um, got around 100 right now. So I, I feel like this is relatively manageable at this point. Um, oh, and we've got James from court. Hey, James. Hey, everybody. How are y'all? Hey, hey, we were just about up? to go through some super chats here. We just talked to uh, Joe and Farron about the jury. Um, oh, what was what was your? I guess we could talk real quick. What was your overall take on on uh, on the jury in the yeah. in the afternoon? Well, I don't want to step on what they probably already talked about, so maybe I'll give like a general uh, yeah. feeling since I've been there. I have to say, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm still I'm still recovering from the weekend, but. Um, <clears throat> For me, I saw a big change. It needed to be a really strong start for them, and I did not see it with the jury. I saw one jury, uh, one of the female jurors, she was not having any of the testimonies. There were at least three or four who were just not into it. Um, juror two kept laughing, actually, at the last woman who testified who testified for Amber. Um and especially all of that stuff, like comparing her to um, the other actors and stuff. I mean, the jurors, I mean, their faces, they were just not having it. And I think to them, what I've seen is a pattern now of her team exaggerating things and his team kind of sticking to facts. And they give a lot of faces. Like I see a lot of 
um, furrowed eyebrows and raised eyebrows, um, similar to what I've been seeing the past, past few weeks, but they're getting much more comfortable in their facial expressions now, which makes me feel like they've come into their decisions more. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it could just be that they, they, they know that we're in the last week. Yeah. We're, we're, we're round into home base again. So maybe they're just, they're just, they're done. They're tired. I, I can understand that. Yeah. I'll say like during nine, like he was not wearing, like normally dresses, like, you know, like business casual kind of today. He came in with a t-shirt. He was chewing gum. He was like, oh. uh, it to me. And he's the one that I felt like the whole time he's been making expressions, but I feel like he came in today. Like I kind of know where I am. I, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just making, I'm looking too into it, but he came in very casual again, chewing gum, which was un very unusual for him. Gum chewing is very strange. Cause I, I, I feel like, I feel like the parties are maybe able to get away with it here, but generally speaking, courts are pretty strict about that, about any kind of food or gum or drinks or anything in the courtroom um, for, for other people. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised about that, to be honest. They may have not seen, um, but I don't, but yeah, yeah he, he came in chewing it, which I, which I've never noticed from, I mean, just as you said, I've never noticed from any of their jurors. So I felt like, and he just came in with that kind of attitude. I don't know. It's hard to explain who he is, but he does have that kind of like, casual kind of like uh, he just seems like a funny guy but he came in today like relaxed to me like kind of like that's it i don't know hey, wow. james yeah from, from from our understanding this has to be a unanimous verdict how, how, how do you do you think johnny can get there with this jury do you think he can get to a unanimous verdict with the, the way you from what you've seen yeah so i probably i, I guess i hadn't thought about the consensus of 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 that point, but thank you for asking. Cause yeah, I mean, that's kind of maybe where I was getting at. I really do feel like the two or three people who like were, you know, I could tell they made facial expressions here and there. I feel like they are so strong now that they will not let the other group. And as I said before, this is a very smart group. They all look very, they're well-dressed. They look intelligent, educated. They will argue the points and they will remember the evidence. And these two or three people, especially this one guy who I think Personally, I think he will be the commander of the group. He seems to have a very good job. Um, he's like middle-aged. He probably has young kids. So he's used to like wrangling a bunch. You know what I mean? Like he has a family. I think I'm just, um, I feel like he will take command of the group as long with, along with two others. And I, from what I see from them, they are going to go through and remind everyone of all of the different things because I see them and they are watching and they're like, again, raising their eyebrows at certain points, especially when today, like Amber heard, like that woman was testifying all these things about the movies and stuff. And she didn't even know half of these movies or know half the actors. You could see them. He was looking and he's like, I'm not going to, to me, it looked like, how can you make these accusations when you don't know anything? Cause he was literally like his eye, his left eyebrow was so far raised. You know what I mean? So I, I do feel like it's, even though it's unanimous, I feel like there's going to be a few of them that will wrangle everyone in together personally. Interesting. All right. Well, um, let's get some more super chats here. I th think, um, sorry, let me just collect a couple more here. I just want to make sure that we're, that we're capturing all of them and then we're going to ask some questions here. Um, is that good, or 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 is there or is there anything else that any other questions that anybody has has for James um, coming out of the jury? Okay, all right, uh, James, do you have do you have anything else, any other notes or anything else that, that you feel like is 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 helpful or or that that really stuck out to you? I mean, I guess I don't know how much they show the judge on on the camera on the live stream, but she was so upset like very, very upset with not only Amber's team, but with the witness. Um, like visibly, she would stare at Johnny's side sometimes, like stare at them, like almost waiting for them to do something um, at points. And I do feel like they missed the opportunity just because she would like tap her face and look like, and visibly like frown, like frown hardcore. Um, you know, and of course y'all saw how she, she chastised the witness a couple of times, but I thought that yeah. to me, the judge was the most interesting part of the day. Interesting. Interesting. Um, and then, uh, Barbara Kangas wants to know, does the jury see all the fuss over Johnny when they're leaving? 
not only do they see the fuss, they are right in the midst of it. I walk, they walk right behind me. I literally, there's like a juror and we're all taught like, and you don't notice, so you're all talking about it. You're talking, you're laughing. You're like, oh my God, this was so stupid. How could they do this? This is crazy. And the juror is like right behind you, like walking. And I'm like, well, I, you know, I, they let out. Yeah. They this see the, my God. And everything they see the whole thing. Um, yeah, I, I'm. I'm crazy. not a huge. I don't like that. I'm not. I'm not a huge fan of that. Honestly, like I, I, I would have thought that a case like this, that they knew was going to be a big deal, that they knew was going to draw a lot of attention, that they would at least give the jury a separate exit, and wow. have them go through someplace else, not just like hanging out in the courtyard and seeing all of all of this. The so I, Johnny stuff, what? right? Amber Heard's the killer. It's, crazy crazy yeah that's yeah. got to that's gotta th that changes the dynamics a little bit that makes me think if they're out there seeing that 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 can have an effect on somebody and they, and, 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 and it's just not seeing it once or twice they're seeing that every single that's day it. And they see the people online when they walk into court. They see the hundreds online to get wristbands. They see the signs. They see the T-shirts. They see it all. You know what I mean? Do they see that? They see the cheering for Johnny and the booing for Amber. They see um, that. No, no, that right. is that's in the car side on the opposite side of the courthouse. But they see the lines of people just waiting to get in to see Johnny. They know what it's for. You know, they walk right by all of us waiting to get our wristbands and stuff. And there are people sometimes, you know, out there dressed up as Johnny Depp from Pirates of the Caribbean, sometimes with signs, other things. So, mm -hmm. mm. Um, Jenny Richards also wants to know, did they lose a juror? I thought Runkle had mentioned an older Hawaiian man that was visibly absolutely dumb with Amber. I didn't hear his description from Joe. I, my understanding is that there, there, there have been two, um, two jurors that have been, uh, that have been dismissed. No. So <clears throat> there is going to be two d jurors who will be dismissed at deliberation. There's two alternates. So there will only be seven, but there's still nine. And the, the Hawaiian man who's my favorite, that's juror nine, who makes the great facial expressions. He's still there. He's the one that wore that t-shirt um, to court and was chewing gum. Um, so yeah, he's there. And I think he's the one that's going to command the group, I think, personally. All right. Uh, um, real quick. And then Oops, sorry. No, sure. you can ask no, oh, I, I was just gonna thought... say, oh. go ahead, no, go ahead. Really I'm sorry. No, 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 no. You, you, okay. you go. <laughs> well, just real funny. I thought they, you know, they brought up Jason Momoa and Game of Thrones and stuff. So I have a like, you know, they were talking about him in Game of Thrones. And I have a source that actually the judge loves Game of Thrones. She's a huge Game of Thrones fan. So I just thought that that was funny. That ended up coming up. She probably liked that kind of like to herself. Like, wow, that's coming up in court like you know we're talking about game of thrones and she happens to be a very big game of thrones fan herself oh, that's funny that's yeah. funny uh mm -hmm. jennifer ellsworth wants to know will the elimination of jurors happen in front of the gallery and cameras thanks for the fun coverage everyone of course um i believe well normally i would say yes but there's there's been quite a bit that's happened outside of the presence of the cameras so i would i would normally say yes but in this case i'm not sure We'll have to we'll have to find out. You know, Jessica I, Reagan wants to know, James, what was the reaction to the finger picks? Yeah, because that was that yeah, was, was brought up very yeah, quickly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they didn't even warn anyone. I think the jurors were a little bit like they didn't react as much as like the audience. Like everyone in the audience was like, oof, like kind of visibly sick. Well, we had all been standing all night, so we're already like tired as heck, and then we see that. But the yeah, the juror, it wasn't like um they weren't like gasping or like making like disgusted faces or anything like that. Okay, okay. Uh Raina Raina either Lenka or Ianka, sorry. Um I can't tell if that's an I or an L says, Did the jury react in any specific way to Dr. Dracula, forgetting his name, when he was talking about medications, etc.? Yes. I'm assuming that's Dr. Spiegel. Oh yeah, I forgot his name too. But yeah, he was uh, he was a whole lot of fun, wasn't he? It was very interesting. Mm -hmm. When he got off, he was kind of weird. Like, like he, he had to go to the bathroom at one point, and he like went up to um, Ben Chu and said something, and Ben Chu was like, "Yeah, yeah, go here." And he was like, "Oh yeah, you know what's up." It was just weird. His like whole character it was, it was very <laughs> odd. His demeanor, but <clears throat> and then he forgot to go back on the stand. It was a whole thing. Anyway, <laughs> um, yes, uh, the juror nine, the the Hawaiian man or Pacific Islander, or he was not 
I don't know if he's in medicine or he knows about pharmaceuticals or something because he was raising his eyebrows at that one and kind of, and he would do back where he would like lean his head back, you know, and you'll tilt your head up or your chin is kind of up. He did that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Well, uh, and James, you're more than welcome to, to hang out. We're going to go through some, some more super chats. Um, but if I, I understand if you want to rest your voice as well, so don't feel the need to, to stick around, but you're more than welcome to, to jump in, to stay, to stay. And, and if there's any, anything else that comes up about the jury, um, you know, you can, we can, we can chat about that too. <laughs> five more minutes in case anyone has any questions I can answer. Otherwise I'll just keep quiet and let y'all answer them. Okay. Um, Oh, there's here's a here's a brand new super chat here. Um, Frankie Saucier, thank you so much for your generous super chat. Can Amber claim on appeal that she didn't have adequate representation because of how bad Elaine and team have been? No. Nope. No, no, I, I no. don't think they've been that bad, but I think they've been bad. They've been bad, and and, and I think this. You know, we, we were talking earlier about the division of time, and and I think it's unfair because really the time is the time to present your case in front of the jury, and right at this moment in time they've had more time to actually present their case in front of the jury. That's why there's this imbalance. So essentially, we're talking about giving them more time, which would yes. give them an advantage. So it so would. you know, yeah. So I, so so this whole the, the theory of of them not having the them have not having the right. They did, you know. It would actually be unfair if we start if we, if we give them more time. So I don't know how I don't know how this is going to be settled. But right now, Amber Heard's team either <laughs> either they're going to pull some miracle off tomorrow, or tomorrow is going to be their last day of any in, any any credible defense for his case. I I, I mm -hmm. mean for her case. I don't know. I don't know how to do how to do it. Yeah. Oh, and uh, Kath Ford says so confused. How can Juror Nine be guaranteed to be there after? Uh, two are deselected before deliberation. Have I got this wrong? Please explain. Thank you. Uh, love you all. Um, guaranteed. They are not guaranteed. Are no. Not guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah. No. No one is is guaranteed because two of them will be will be uh, they'll they'll be taken out because they'll have been um, alternates essentially. Um, so uh, yeah. Uh, well, James, I saw a headline that the lady claimed JD was the baby daddy. What was said? <laughs> uh -uh. It was an implication, was my understanding, based on what I think. Uh, James, you actually came on during during that first recess, right? We yeah, talked about it a little bit. <laughs> and she was telling everyone that that was his baby, so that's probably what she, she told the cameras outside and things like that. I'm sure she did. She said, um, "Johnny, I love you. Our souls are connected. What would you do if this was your baby?" And she literally mm -hmm. held her baby up like it was Simba on top of the rock in The Lion King. Like to oh a Johnny D who was out of oh. <laughs> that poor child. Uh, poor Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so, uh, the... <laughs> wow. Marilyn yeah. Martinez wants to know question for James. Has there been word of heightened security due to the baby lady? So I don't know about that. I think they are charging her and stuff like that. I mean, that was already kind of a specific rule. And honestly, it was kind of their mistake for letting her in because she kind of had talked her way in with the baby. She was already in the back of the line. She kind of like had cut and then went up to the front and like told the cops a sad story about wow. how she was sick and stuff like that. So I think now wow. they're going like to not let in newborns or anything like that. I think they were just. Uh, However, they that's are not fair. That's a nice yeah. game, though. Babies nice have game. equal protection, too. <laughs> I would have let her in. I would have let her in. It's a baby. What you gonna do, Carrie? They're they're they have rights that are paired by their creator. Yeah, I don't know. It's just the whole thing was a mess. But they are getting more, much more strict now. Just overall, there were some issues with the line last night. So like the cops are done. They're not having it anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Zane, Alita, thank you for the new super chat policy. Really streamlines everything. Question: Without giving away too many deets, what's the panel's most memorable case? I, I, are you talking about covering or actually lawyering? Because yeah. if it's covering, it's this one. <laughs> Definitely is this one. Um, uh, before for, I for was, was actually written done, I've done some stuff on because uh, I'm a patent lawyer. I've, I've touched some of Google stuff. Um, so without getting into the specifics, obviously. Uh, yeah. Um, dealing with Google in terms of search engine development has been fun. Although I've yeah. had lots of fun uh, clients over the years, Blackberry while they were still a thing was a client. And uh, I, I actually, um, yeah. Who's been a client at one point. I, I had a fun, a fun case um, that was a, a trust and estates case that involved doing um, 
a, a donation out of a trust to the Getty Museum, which was yeah. really cool. It was it was really, yeah. really cool. So um, so that That's was cool. That's fun. Yeah, it, it was like, oh, like and especially because like I love art. I love going yeah. to galleries like this is something that Mr. Bites and I connected on very early on was like was like art and that kind of stuff. So so the fact that like I could do that as part of my work was like this is really, really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, P uh, Petra Damas wants to know, James, was there a point where the judge sustained an objection empath uh, empathically? Uh, what was the vibe like when that happened? What does that mean? I'm sorry. I'm not sure. I think it was like, what? Like, was there a certain vibe in the ro room when the judge sustained an objection? Like, did the, did the people without feel like... It's without saying anything. So when <laughs> Elaine just goes on her own, after a brief pause with the judge not even talking that that's what it means <laughs> um unless unless you mean unless they meant emphatically because this says empathically but maybe they mean emphatically oh like when the judge is like sustained but like seriously or like or, yeah. how, or when she says to like the witness like you have to top, stop talking or something. I suppose. I'm thinking the times when when Elaine asks another question, like the, the objection will come in, and the judge what doesn't even have to say anything, and Elaine just asks another question. She'll say, "Well, well, what if anything?" That type. That that's what I'm talking about. So she's yeah. I'm, thinking, I'm assuming like, that's like where like where she's me. like you know no 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 it's absolutely yeah. sustained like that. So yeah, like, I mean, does does that, it, does, sorry. No no finish. Oh no 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 no! I was I was gonna like add more to like contextualized but i think you understand <laughs> um i mean the audience like you know they're kind of they look at that and they're like oh god you know elaine like why like you're still going on or like the, i mean the judge how many times do you have to sustain that question you can't answer anymore the jury i think has a similar mindset again there's like two i don't want to keep going back to these two or three but it's hard because three of them wear masks so you can't i can't really get a good read on them and then Two of the other ones, one of them has a really good poker face. He's pretty young, but like he's just dead stare the entire time. So it's hard to get a read on him. But the people that you can read, they look at, they see those and they're like, I mean, they're shaking their heads at that kind of stuff when she's still trying to ask the same question over and over again. And the oh. judge, I mean, we watched the judge get very irritated too. Hold yeah. on, hold on, hold on. There's a juror in there who is dead stare the whole time, the whole six weeks. This guy is is dead stare. He has it broken. Yes, this guy. He's he's pretty young. He's very tall. I have never seen him. I mean, he blinks sometimes, I guess. But other than that, I don't ever see him do anything. It's literally like his no frown, no smile. He looks and he'll look back. He'll look. He'll look back. He'll look down, take a note, and look up, and that's it. Nothing. It's very it's very interesting. Yeah, that's even stranger than than somebody who's emotional because. Yeah, but to, to hold that type of composure for six weeks, like like now, I'd be like, oh my god, I gotta come come to this again. But this guy is, he's like the Terminator. He's like a machine. He is. Yeah. I've never seen his eyebrow like arch or anything like that. And he's young, so it's not like he's had a bunch of Botox or anything yet. But I've never seen his, you know, his eyebrows move. I've never seen anything like that. It's very interesting. Hey. He was actually really dressed up today too. He dressed up. Interesting. Question, question for you. Yeah. If you if Johnny Depp's team comes to you right now and says, listen. Which two jurors should, you know, if, if we can get them thrown out, which two jurors would be the ones that we would want to be thrown out? What would those two jurors be? This is going to sound so crazy to say beforehand, but I just, I want to say in advance, I'm sorry to the jurors. Like, this doesn't mean I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> like, you really, I kind of like all of them. Oh but I'm going to have to pick. No, I'm, um, well, but no, we could we could do for both sides. We could do for two for Amber's side and two for Johnny's side. This okay, is just you know, yeah. yeah. Um, All right, so so let's start with Johnny's side. Two jurors so, that you would say you has got to lose these two. I would have to say probably three and four, probably three and four or four and six. But I think three and four. Now, yeah. why three and four for Johnny? Um, because three seems like a very, oh no, I'm sorry, four and five. I apologize. Not three, four and five. Four seems very, um, like, like she's going to weigh everything based on what was said. 
and not take a lot of context and like, okay, well, what if someone would lie because they want to be famous? Or what if someone would want to do this? She seems like the type that takes it very by the book. You know what I mean? Like, well, Amber said this, and this di doctor said this, and this person said this. You know what I mean? Um, but I mean, that could, I could I could be mischaracterizing her. Um, it's also she wears a mask, so it's very get on, it's hard to get a read on her. Um, but I don't ever see her like she never shakes her head, she never like swivels or looks away or does anything like that, which you know seems to me more. I mean, partial, impartial. Yeah. All right, so we've got super chats. We're eleven hours into this live stream. Oh gosh, We're do a lightning round now. We can do it. Okay, go all one right. Line. You, guys, you guys, good to do it. Okay, so we, could, we could we could do we could do like a round robin of like of like reading and then passing along and, and answering in as few like someone can can jump in with an answer in, in as few words as possible. Just remember that? for it. Pass the duchy on the left hand <laughs> side. I have to do it in a couple of minutes, but I, okay. I, I want right. to play around. I want to play around. All right, around. let's do it. Let's do it. Deeds call says, is Dennison a specialist lawyer of some kind? I'm curious why he only comes in on certain days. I think he's yes. just for experts. Expert it witness, yeah. He does that. Um, does that. Uh, Rick, you next. Yes, V's from Quebec. Question, how can they go for totally new information on redirect? It's unfair, isn't it? Yeah, they expanded their redirect a little bit there, I think, uh, today. Definitely. All right, Kurt, your turn. All right, let's see what we got. Is it possible JD's team waits until the end and move to strike his entire testimony for all the opening and general babble? Uh, no, I can't imagine that because whatever Johnny Depp is going to testify to, I imagine is going to be really, really good for them. Yep. Uh, right. Uh, Nate. Ian, what do you think the jury thinks in? Or oh, thinks right R N? We don't uh, know. James, I'm can sorry, you answer that? Not here. <laughs> yeah, yeah maybe I don't know. James can. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I think it's not looking good for Amber. Okay. Scott. There you go. All right. Uh, We're lightning round, James. Sorry. James, James <laughs> do you want to do you want to answer this or do you want not answer? But do you want to read this one out? <laughs> um, do you agree JD's usage relies on AH reporting accurately? Did you consider possible bias from either party on the reporting? Do you agree it would come would come to who is more credible? Um, I mean, I think I think generally speaking, it sounds like it sounds like most of the other witnesses by Johnny Depp's or by Amber Heard's side rely on Amber Heard. So it's like if you if you yeah. don't believe Amber Heard is a credible witness, because like because uh, Spiegel Spiegel said that today, like so much of what he said was like just repeating what Amber Heard said. So, yes. of course, uh, yeah. Lori, where can I find a rebuttal witness list for J.D.? Uh, the there, I don't know of any official rebuttal witness list. Mm. I have just been going by what has been reported because if yeah, you go to the witness list, yeah. if you go to the witness list that is on the Fairfax County website, which is linked in the description below, um, or it should be generally speaking, it is, um, and we're running out of characters at this point. That's the only reason why I question. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so if you, if you go to the Fairfax County website, you can see the, the witness list for both sides, but for him, it's just a general, like any witnesses that are needed for a bottle. Um, Bobcat pretzel 31. Hey guys, much love question. How will Moss be that helpful to Johnny? Amber said it was a rumor. So Moss proving it false doesn't really change anything. Well, it materially changes what Amber said on the stand as to whether or not Johnny's got that history. And it's got somebody that can actually attest to what that history was with Johnny. All right. Yep. Yep. Exactly. All the right. Capricorn says, not from the U.S. Do juries get paid? How much is it worth it for the torture? Yeah, no, juries get paid a nominal amount. A little I bit. Virginia is $30 a day. A little bit. Yep. So not so great. So, yes, yep. you can take the $30 and, and But employers it. often have jury policies. Yeah. Check out yep. your handbook. Yep. Uh, James, do you, do you want to read one? Or, or if you want to take a break, I know your voice is, is a little hoarse. If you, if I'm you sorry. Want to take a break, you don't do that to everyone. It's probably too scratchy to read. <laughs> Yeah, All right. no, 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 yeah. that's fine. Chaos is question for Nurse Liz. Is breaking your nose affect smell long term? Could someone mm -hmm. that broke their nose multiple times be a sommelier? Um, I'm not Nurse Liz, and I'm sorry that she's not here for this, but uh, my guess is probably not. I don't think that that would, that would impact your, your actual sense of smell, but I don't know. Emsa, question. Have seen that multiple witnesses have reported bullying, threatening, intimidation tactics from both sides. Does this have an effect on the trial? Are there consequences if proven? Thanks, panel heart emoji. Well, take all reports and rumors that you see on the internet with all this stuff with a grain of salt. We don't have a lot of corroboration on any of this stuff. If it were proven, yes, there would be consequences. That's that's like tampering with the judicial process. Uh, and thank you 
heart emoji to you. <laughs> From Deborah, how's the court record each side's time? Is someone hitting a start and stop every one time speaks? Yes, exactly that. Yep, and it's by the clerk, the court's clerk, actually. So it's totally objective. Mia Mina, question to all, to all, especially Hogue and Kurt. Oh, perfect. We're here. What do you? I know you guys are actually here. What do you think will happen now? I'm terrified Johnny loses and Amber continues to defame and abuse. Amber, him. go down the hole. Okay. Yes. Well, <laughs> uh, I, I think there's a good shot that Johnny wins. I would still warn people it's a difficult case. Yep. Uh, uh, Rick, you read. Sure. Warren Lee, question. Apologies if Forty asks. Since JD is allegedly going on the stand again, does the asked answered reset? Meaning, could you ask him a question about during his previous testimony? I am going to lean on the litigators, but I think you're going to have potential objections and complaints if you already had a chance to ask those questions. Because then mm -hmm. you're getting into oh, yeah. badgering the witness territory. Yeah. Uh, question for Kurt. Perfect. Yes. Do you also do trademarks only patents? Right now, only patents. So, and more specifically than that, computer database and search engines. I have a very esoteric niche. Patent so Google, lawyers. The way I like to say it is Google and people who want to be Google. Nice. Patent lawyers are the smartest of us. They have like 6,000 different uh, things going on in their heads. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> Anthony 2, 1993. Did AH's team forget that AH took drugs and alcohol also? It seems like it. <laughs> John O'Rourke question. It obviously looks extremely unprofessional how Elaine overspeaks the judge, but does the jury see it as a weakness for the Amber Heard team? We'd Ooh. just be guessing, but if it bothers you, it might well bother a juror. Yep. Can you give an opinion on why Amber Heard's expert witness seems so low caliber? His lack of funds, lack of homework from the Amber Heard team. I think they like want a rich.com, and this is what you should expect. Sometimes See, you have a hard time. Steve Deacon says, court needs a BS alarm. Question, Runkle. Sorry, he's not here for it. Does AH keep looking over to JD's table or to the jury? Looks like she keeps facing to JD to me. I don't know. Tell. Sorry about that. I can't tell. Cold 24 all right. question. We're all tired of hearing what, if any, what alternative phrases and or strategies would you recommend in its place? There's like a thousand ways to not ask a leading question. That, Who, that what, kinda... when, where, why, how? <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's it. Hi, Legal Bites. First time caller, long time listener. Does the jury have to take experts at the word? No, because the expert seems really unprofessional, unethical, and generally pissing me off. No, the jury, as always, is the finder of fact. They can choose to believe or disbelieve any witness, including expert witness, in whole, in part, in fraction, not mm -hmm. all, or any other combination that pleases their fancy. Exactly. I like, hefty, I like hefty, hefty insurance disclaimer there at the end. <laughs> hefty Hefty says, I think Dr. Smeagol is, sh is shooting for a mistrial. I already mm. reported him to the board before they even brought up the Goldwater rule. I would caution about reporting people to the board anywhere. Please don't do that kind of stuff. But I don't think he's throwing the case either. <laughs> um. No. Okay. Wendy Pinkerton for you, Rick. Yes, everyone is all amped up about Kate Moss testifying. Can you explain why that is so good for Johnny, please? Yes, oh, I can. I did. Well, okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what if the ahead. expert witness would you consider hiring based on our testimony in this trial, the way they conduct themselves? Um, the one psychologist for Dr. Curry was good. I like Ann Surgeon. Good. I like Ann yeah. Surgeon. Dr. Curry was he good. Far, but I like Ann yeah. Surgeon. Yeah. 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 That's um, about it. All righty. Um, oh, Triceranotops uh, says, if he can witness ask for a break to compose. Uh, if it so, if it if it's a lay witness, I would say yes. But if it's a if it's an expert, probably not because they're supposed You're to supposed be to be better here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I mean, uh, yeah. If you can, uh, I mean, anyone can ask for a break if they need a short break. You give a fight, if you like need to minutes. go to the bathroom I mean, or something about, like yeah. that. There's there's reasons for it, but it's yeah. like. But you're I, thinking I, now. I think your answer is better than mine. Yeah. Um. Oh, whoops. Loving Kurt right now. <laughs> Excellent. Rick is the fave, um, though. Oh no! Yeah, Rick is Rick is the fave. I didn't include completeness there. We, we love Kurt. <laughs> Carly loves Big Bang, the German Hogue fan club. What's the best and worst witness for Team Amber Heard? Till now, <laughs> your opinion? Wow, uh, the worst witness is Amber Heard because that was their chance to win and they lost it. Uh, the best witness. This is a short list. Is going to be maybe, sister, Josh maybe a little bit. I think I'm going to take Josh Drew. Okay, I Josh Drew. Yeah, okay. Piece, that's, but I found I him to be a pretty choice. good storyteller. Yeah. Wouldn't Chelsea. it be more effective cross had it led M to EB be more succinct and redirect? Doctor was confusing, combative, and admitted wrong. EB will need to spend money, more time to try to fix this or let him stand. Yeah, I there are so many issues with that cross on so many levels. Yes. Yeah, but her redirect. But it worked because the witness sucks. Yeah. 
DLZ Aaron Arrow and Trippy says your opinions on why age witnesses aren't as good. Is it like a funds, not a represent? Oh, we already we we answered this. Uh, okay, like a similar one. Oh, yeah. which headline is Thursday interview regarding? Was it in today's headline stream? Would like to take a look at it beforehand. Yes, the headlines and hangouts from this morning about Me Too being dead. If we don't listen to Amber Heard, <laughs> that author is going to come on and talk with me on Thursday. From their morning. lips to God's ear. Oh, uh, man. that author is going to come talk with us in that space. So it'll be interesting. <laughs> Kurt, your Where's turn. Kurt? Kurt's opinion, most effective evidence testimony for each side, and how impactful do you think it'll be on the jury? Uh, the sister had some parts that were in there. The uh, first doctor this morning, the ortho guy, had some points in there. Uh, the first, there was another doctor in there, I think, had some decent points. I think I complimented at one point. It's it's a short list for Amber Heard. It, it, you're, you're trying to dig among the, the shells of destruction. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jen Manning says, are they required to switch attorneys between witnesses or is that a choice? I.e., why couldn't Camille do cross or it's a, it's a choice. It's a strategic choice. They're trying to, to spread, the, spread the work here. around, spread the work around. And also she might not be the best effective person for an expert witness. Of course. So, yeah. Sam Brunker questioned, does this judge have experience with both criminal and civil cases or is she just a civil case judge? M from the UK. So six, if a stupid question. Deep no stupid questions on this channel. And I don't um, know the answer. I, she's definitely civil right now. Yeah, I don't know the answer either. Judges yeah. often work in some sort of rotation. Rob Rob would know, but yeah, we don't know. I'm All so Rob said, lawyers have to get a practice run for lack of better with their experts to get an idea of their performance. They can. It is not uncommon. Well, lawyers at a bare minimum should definitely talk to the witness, the witnesses, expert witnesses, you know, go over the testimony and get a good idea of what they want to do too. It's not uncommon for lawyers to do a full dry run, even with mock juries and stuff like that. Obviously it gets more and more expensive to do that, but yes, you definitely want to work on it to some very degrees, depending on your time, availability, budget. Yeah. All right. Uh, Sandra T says, hello, lovely people of LawTube. What time will they start on Friday? I need to know how fast I have to drive home from work. Don't want to miss it. Thank you all for your coverage. I think it's 9 a.m. again. I was going to say, is it going to be 9 or 10? That's just, that's I, what I just didn't know. My assumption is that it's 9. Um, otherwise, I'm I'm sure we'll get some it's sort nine. of instruction from the judge the day before. Yeah, the judge is hating their life, but it's 9. Lauren yeah. Fairbanks, attorney here, but I only do administrative law. Why is JD's drug use coming up so much? Because it's Amber Heard's theory of why he might become a violent monster. Would it yes. not be stipulated as an undisputed material fact? They're trying to establish the monster aspect, not that he used. You would never stipulate to that because you can get out. He's a monster 8,000 ways. Why would you stipulate to it? Yeah. You never stipulate to it. Question. My last super chat. I'm broke because of this trial. Please don't Aww. become broke because of yeah, us. We appreciate don't. all your love and support, no. but don't do that. Would yeah. Dr. Hughes' testimony fall under unethical as well? She didn't see Johnny. Yeah, I don't buy the unethicality of it. It's just the doctor was really snidey and didn't have a great answer. I don't think it is unethical. It's just the well, doctor sucks asked answering the question. When Hughes quasi, yeah. uh, quasi diagnoses Johnny, I did not love that from that seat. Yeah. Lauren Fairbanks, attorney here, but I only do special ed law. Wait, I thought you only one. did admin law. Um, okay. Uh, anyway, it seems oh, right. that both sides right. don't, yeah, <laughs> strange. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, it seems that both sides don't dispute JD's drug use. Would it not be stipulated as an undisputed material fact? Nope. Okay. We already answered that one. Kelly Gustad <laughs> question was the audio from the Australia incident used some of it heard audio of Ben King discussing finding the finger and may have said Amber did it. We didn't get that piece of audio. Certainly. From Jennifer question. You may have already addressed this, but could you could or should the judge have stepped in? See something like help pull it together, guys. Also thoroughly enjoy every, each and every one of you. It depends on the judge's temperament and uh, the judge is letting them be asses, which, you know, has them let the let the lawyers do the lawyer thing and just sit back and enjoy the show as an option. A toenail thirteen thirteen. Don't these actors and actresses have insurance for defend uh, for the defense cases? Uh, I know Michigan personal umbrella policies cover this. Uh I don't think for, for defamation, though. It's an intentional tort, right? It would depend on your insurance policy. But if you do have that, you're paying a premium. So, w oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would say I would say insurance for for something that happens on a film set. Yes. But not not something like not something like this. A ladder falls on your head. You're covered. You intentionally defame someone. More difficult to have a policy for that. Uh, I'm used a lot of on... defaming. I, I, the, OK, never mind. Question is Elaine's redirect of Spiegel. Proper use of this expert. Why does this seem off? Stop the what if any, please. It's because she went outside the scope. Wishing me so. 
while she's doing the Spiegel re, uh, redirect. For A.M. Lagat, question. Last week, Peter said facts cannot be argued in closing. That's not true. So can you explain that currently canoeing on the Yucatan River? So what he might have meant, what he might have meant is that like what they say about the facts can't be questioned in the in the closing because right. the time for that has expired. But all of all the facts have been developed up to that point. So each side in closing are going to use the facts that are most favorable to their closing. Mm -hmm. So they're going to use what they're going to use is hopefully uncontested facts in so much as they've been presented at the trial. So everything they say will have been presented at some point. So that makes them uncontested. And then wrap an argument around that. And that's sure. sort of the strategy for closing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and to to wrap up that that bit about the closing argument, that is when you when you argue the facts. And when you argue when you when you take the facts and you argue your theory using the facts is what I should say. Mm -hmm. Uh Josh Sanderson, how well known is Brown Rudnick in the law world? Really? <laughs> really, really, really well known. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Viking React question, can his lawyer ask a hypothetical starting with, assuming everything Mr. Depp says is true, insert question. Uh, there's like a lot of things there. It depends on whether it's direct Possible. or cross, what, you know, what's happening there. So maybe? maybe. <laughs> what was the objection for when expert witness is just quoting testimonies of another fact? Or can they just do it also, Tim, re burden for rebut? So the thing you're looking for is hearsay. The, when it is and is not hearsay for an expert, um, an expert, it is not hearsay to the extent that they used it to form their own opinion because it goes to their opinion. So like if they used things that they saw and it, it factored in their opinion, basically, it's basically a bias question at that point. What's biased you towards towards this end? Um, if they're just simply quoting another expert, not so much. And we saw quite a lot of that today, which infuriated the shit out of me because, yeah, we're just like, it's just hearsay. Oh, this Harvard professor who has all these credentials because I'm just saying they do. Said these things because I say they do, and I didn't necessarily use it to form my opinion anyway. It's just things I like to bring in for the jury for no particular reason. That was totally improper. So yeah. Samantha Rachel wants to know if James noticed Amber looking back at Whitney like Joe noticed. P.S. Proud of all your milestones, Law Tube. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And actually, before before we have James answer that question, guys, if you have not already, subscribe to Kurt's channel. We want to get him to 100K. He's less than 20,000 away. Yes, we want to get him there. And we after this, get after this stream, we are going to have the Uncivil Law stream happy hour, as we always do. So we're going yes. to have more commentary for you tonight, as always, when the stream ends. So fun times. Yep, yep. yep. Um, so James, did, did you notice that? Yes. Yeah, they were staring back and forth at each other a lot. They do this thing with a like, They'll look across the courtroom at each other, like you know. So okay. they do it quite often. Okay. Um Ken Vedic question. Has anyone on the panel listened to the herd depth recordings outside of the trial? If you did, how if at all did your opinion change in the case? I think that's for you, Lita. I had heard I had heard the tell the world Johnny tape um bit. Like not not the entire tape, but I had heard those those most compelling parts. And so yeah, it it definitely helped inform my my opinion and i also saw the body cam footage okay. as well all right great is it weird that eb calls the judge by a first name when asked for evidence to be polished yes very weird don't do that <laughs> yeah trey okay. nelson there is no smear campaign from jd people have heard the tapes and seen the evidence yeah matthew balfour runkle what's more frustrating canadian firearms law or lanes what if attempted cure all i think ian would have trouble answering that honestly <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel like life if you not show up witnesses in the box of courtroom are missing? It depends on the feed we're using. We're trying not to use certain feeds because uh, we're boycotting them because they don't play nice with others in the sandbox. Yep, yep. Uh, Aristelli says, question, is Ian going to be present for closing statement? It sounds sure like hope it. sure so. Avaravich, question, do you think JD's team has proven that he absolutely didn't abuse AH? No, I don't think he. they can prove that, honestly, no, but it's a standard. It's not beyond a reasonable doubt. So he, he's doing very well on the standard before him. Yeah. I agree with Kurt. He's really connecting more with how the average jury perceives, not the cerebrally gifted lawyer perception. Sally, Kurt, more on par with Outlook. I mean, I tr I don't know the degree to which I am or I'm not connecting with the average juror. I think my my look in terms of how I assess things is, is skewed because of my analytical nature. But I am trying to give credit to wherever credit's due. I think, I think people somewhat misunderstand this because they think I'm saying more than I am. Like, I think this is the best witness ever, or I think this is this sells the case for Amber Heard or any number of things. Like, no, I yeah. just think this witness did a good job. I found some of what they said to be credible. I think they were good here, here, and here, which, you know, to be honest, you would hope 
from Amber Heard's side. The fact yep. that I have to reach as far deep as I do to find things that are good for Amber Heard is is and should be distressing. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, Nicole B. wants to know, is how E responds to objections appropriate? Nope. Not in my opinion. She explains and responds before Judge does. We don't see the same replies from JD's team on objections. It looks Very unprofessional true. in my opinion. I don't like it. LM, do rebuttal witnesses know they are going to be called? If they don't and they are called, do they have to prove they didn't watch the trial? Did they know Moss could come in? And did she watch the trial? I think you've told me that some of the rebuttal witnesses know. There's then an umbrella term that says any rebuttal witness we need. Uh, and then I think you've basically talked about a kind of de minimis. As long as you didn't see too much, dive too deep, you can come in and testify. Something like I that? Think I think I think you're uh, well. I think the same rules apply for a rebuttal witness as as other lay witnesses. Um, assuming that that it is a lay witness, it's the same rules apply. Don't watch any of the trial, otherwise you're going to be excluded. All right. Um, so yeah. So my 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 assumption is that anyone that they had any possibility of including in the trial, they probably told them stay away from it. Don't watch any of it. Just just uh, don't go on social media. Essentially. Um, Marilyn K says question for James from court. Um, also, thank you for the very generous super chat says, can you please break down the altercation with the guy cutting in line and then sitting down uh, on, on someone? Thank you so much for doing this very important independent journalism work. Hashtag justice for the line. Ugh. yeah. So I'm actually, maybe, maybe she saw from Twitter. I'm on Twitter right now. There is this whole altercation where apparently it is, we're finding out it's an Amber fan who came to the line. We, no one knew that. Um, they were like in the, like in the midsection of the back and this, the, I guess he came in cut and then there was a girl who was there like sleeping or something. And he was like standing on her and pushing on her head with his, his knee and like basically assaulting her for a long period of time. And it really bothered her. And she, she did get up and she grabbed him and like pulled him to the ground, like knocked him to the ground and stuff. And then, you know, uh, I guess he he sent out a tweet saying that he was attacked for being an Amber fan and all these things. But no, I had asked her specifically because I heard about that and she told me what was going on out in front of the courtroom. And I was like, do you like, do you know, like they're saying it's an Amber fan. Do you know? She had no idea. She thought it was another Johnny Depp fan who's just trying to cut the line because there's a lot of altercations. I mean, it's not the only one that's happened, although it's the only one that's ever been physical like that. Um, but he was, he was, um, pushing her in the head and kneeing her. Yeah. So, um, the police came and everything. So uh, it's not good. That's why I said the sheriffs are, they're getting upset with how, with how it's turning out. A lot of people are just showing up randomly and yeah. Hmm. Man. Uh, Marie Rex says, if you're, if it was your field of expertise, Nate H could, would approach you to be her lawyer for this case. Would you do it? Thanks for the amazing streams and recaps. You're welcome. It was your field of expertise and age would approach you to be her lawyer for this case. Uh, if it was before the counterclaims, maybe, but yeah. not afterwards. At six million dollars. Let's talk. Uh, <laughs> Elliot Henderson Carter question. Can Johnny's team move to revoke expert status of witness if they're falling below the mark? They tried with the voir dire. They don't really get to reexamine that. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, from Chris Cross. Is it significant Amber Heard's lawyers aren't objecting that much in Cross? No, not in particular. Different styles suit different lawyers. I'd have probably object less out of my style, but Camille's crushing it, so follow her more than me. Mm -hmm. Renee Clayton says, correction, would this be a good witness to discuss Botox in Hollywood? Uh, this is the last witness that that came up today. I remember seeing it when it came in, and no, because she's not a doctor. Ms. Arlandria, question, why not bring up the audio tape of Amber Heard punching versus hitting comments that came out at the same time as the Waldman statements uh, to the person about damages? Might have been a way to go, but they went with just talking about Amber Turd, which he really likes to do in open court. Is it common for a judge to help form a question if the judge is really, really irritated and sad with one of the sides? If the judge is helping you, you've done something wrong. Yes. Yes. Sapitron, question, would you argue the lost the money, lost the most today overall? Oh, who would you argue lost the most today overall? And what do you think was the biggest single fumble? We saw weakness on both sides today to a degree. I do still think it's Amber Heard's to lose because it's her witnesses and she has stuff that she needs to get out. And I think, I think that, I think that the biggest, probably that the, the biggest one today was, well, I, I didn't like the finger guy because I didn't like like the way that he was assuming that the that the glass came in through the nail. 
that was something that was not according to the testimony. They got him to say, whoops, whoopsie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they got they got Dr. Spiegel also to say, whoopsie. They also got the the third witness to say, to say, oh, sorry, I don't know their filmography. <laughs> These other people that I'm comparing her to, I don't know their filmography. So I don't know. Take your pick. <laughs> Rebecca Dini question. Have you seen the vehicular manslaughter rumor on Amber Heard? Her license was suspended from age 16 to 21. A friend of hers died in a car crash at age 16. Nope, that's not entered. Haven't seen it. Also, I think it's immaterial to the issues, to be fair. Exactly. Um, do you think Amber Heard's team brought in a lot of crap witnesses, deposed, or replaced time? They meant for a lot of Musk Franco. No, uh, I, don't, I, don't no think I think their case sucks balls. I, yeah, I don't, I don't think those two were ever going to come in. Uh, Darla says, have you, have any of you ever seen or had a witness change sides when testifying? Thank you all. No, it's pretty dramatic. That. Yeah. No, I don't, I think that's more of a Hollywood thing than anything. Lauren Fairbanks question. These witnesses do not seem prepped to me. Do you think that Amber Heard refused to pay for her team to prep the witnesses? No. It's a weird not, with $6 million dollars of, not with $6 million of cost. They didn't. I mean, I don't know what's going on. Is Amber Heard's team making the same arguments as JD's came? Brad passed lots of movies. The other party pay, needs to pay me. Can you explain the difference? There is no difference. And the same it's the same of the old. Opposite yep. direction. Yep. Jason Lazati says, do you think the judge should have said something to the female witness about talking back and asking counsel questions and making comments? Uh, not really. I mean, it, it's, it was interesting when she shouted down Denison. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was. It was, uh, uh Rebel. Oh, sorry. Yes. Go ahead. No, absolutely. How much do you think both parties spend on the case? Thanks for good commentary. We now know that it's in the, uh, middle millions of dollars on the Amber side. As I would expect Johnny's case has been going more on. expensive. Yeah. As yeah. long as the case has been going on, that seems very, very plausible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hi, second time caller, long time listener. How come neither side mentions AH's reviews critiques to counter lost earrings? I mean, I guess they could, but like she's not making her numbers anyway, so why bother? Yeah. It's Thursday. Hogue, where's your join button? Uh, YouTube makes me put a video out and then like a, a blog post and like it's coming. All right. It's coming. Uh, it David Walker, I don't, I don't question. have a video out for it. You didn't do a video intro? They won't even no. let me hit the button until I give like a video. Okay. David Walker question. Amber Heard counterclaim gets last word in closing. No. Yes. According to the court TV leaks, Amber Heard will be the last to talk to you. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, there's four sections. Sense. There's four. It's um. It's going to be. Rebuttal. Uh, okay, it's fine. Johnny's, Amber's, fine. Johnny's rebuttal, and then Amber's rebuttal slash only counterclaim. With what time? Moving on. It's two hours for everybody to do everything. It's yeah. Everybody, each side gets two hours. Okay, Christy says we're missing part of Dennis's work by not seeing him. Find a clip of, clip of his reactions to witness answers. Jury's game more than we are. Oh, okay, Dennis. fair enough. I think Dennison. Dennison. Okay. <laughs> um, Ayana Sorry. L says, "If age is your client, what do you say when she turns and asks how JD's team has so much time <laughs> left? Can that turd be polished?" I'd be upset if I were the client. I, I would, would do. Yeah. Uh, Asylum of Mutiny question. If anyone from LawTube goes to trial, are you going to stream or request it? Uh, like if we get sued or like uh, represent or like somebody? <laughs> I'm not going to trial, okay? If, if something has gone horribly wrong. Uh, Conclusion to law says, if you read Amber Heard's responses to MSJ, basically just as the evidence of vicarious liabilities that it was JD's attorney at the time. That seems to be what they're going for, yeah. Good yeah. luck. Which is not enough. Uh, Matches Bosveld says, but even if counterclaim stays alive, if JD has 12 hours for itself and therefore they win the primary case, the counterclaim alive is moot anyway, isn't it? No, no, sure. it's definitely moo. There's a thin, <laughs> there's a thin avenue through which they can still win their counterclaim. Even if Johnny wins the primary case, just trust me. It is technically possible for them both to win. Allie, uh, Allie Hargrove, could JD waive privilege? Recall Waldman to question him when Amber's team can't cross. The only question needed would be, did JD tell you to say this? No, they should not breach the attorney-client privilege. You, do that. All, you open it's up all sorts of Krakens and Pandora's boxes and things. Don't do it. Alita, this is you. Uh, what's your association with West Point? So I've had this sweatshirt since middle school before I knew anybody at West Point. Then my brother went there, and then I met my husband through there. Uh, like there you say, go. Love the logo, How do sanctions against Amber Heard go? Uh, the fact I'm sorry, I skipped because I passed anyway. Yeah. How do sanctions against Amber Heard the factors go now, especially when she testified to the jury? She submitted them all. Her lawyers didn't show them. I, I think the jury's going to wonder why they didn't see these magical, magical photos that showed so much. I think they're going to get a jury instruction that says, "Don't assume anything else exists." Uh, Ian Dunlap, Hogue promised to explain 
why SN award is not dischargeable by bankruptcy. Hogue, please share your expertise with us. It, it depends on the exact wording of the of the uh, of the order that court will ultimately give. The generalized rule, which is very generalized, is that compensation can be discharged but not punitive. But because willful and malicious conduct is part of the overall charge here in the case of the uh, defamation, depending on how the award is given, it may not be dischargeable. You're going to need a bankruptcy lawyer for that one, though. So I'm answering yeah. this with Kurt. Please refer to Kurt. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Kurt, you want to read this one? Sure. If JD gets called, can he mention something that's not been in evidence? Name drop on the slide. Then we'll be admitted to rebuttal. Like, I'm not even sure what form that would take. Yeah. I guess to the extent that, you know, new evidence comes in. I, yeah, sure. I think they were thinking at that point that Amber would call him. Yeah, it's not happening. Yeah. Amanda Diane says, do you find it poetic that closing arguments will be six years to the day since Amber had walked into a courtroom with her fake bruise? I do. Play six Peter six 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 in your mind. Law yep. University grad, super lawyer, question, did they factor in Amber Heard marrying Johnny Depp as part of her helping her be on par with Zendaya, LOL? But serious question. I don't think uh, Zendaya was a thing at the time. Uh, well, she was kind of. I mean, it doesn't matter. Zendaya is a terrible match for Amber Heard. So, Renee Enough Johnson time. says, when J.D. Wim, can Amber Heard recover on a human level? Yes. Uh, sure that's up to her, really, on terms of the recovering on the human level. Uh, with some hard work and diligence, maybe. Yep. Uh, Denny makes things says, please read RSC's super chat with, oh, with, uh, with law tube sent messages and SC's asking, but no crazy busy law tube sub to all no. want to be sure to support all of y'all gets all the money. Alita gets well, for, all the money. Every time that somebody hosts one on their yeah. channel, everyone has, has already agree agreed that it's Alita it's, takes a hundred percent of the money. We're just here for the laws. And, and when we, arbitrary. when we go, when we go to Rick's channel, Rick yeah. gets all the super chats. When we go to Kurt's channel, yeah. Kurt gets all the super chats. So it's, that's why we try to rotate around, share the love on other people's channels and all that kind of stuff. So and Alita's been importantly, we do it of our own volition. Alita doesn't have anything on us. It's not extortion. We're cool. <laughs> Uh, Richard Carrero, hi Alita, excellent coverage. Is there a way this case could go through jury nullification? Can you explain again if Amber can't pay? I missed that. I don't know what the jury would nullify here, so that's really a different kind of. It concept. doesn't really make a sense. I, I'm not sure what the how people are using the term jury, jury nullification. I think they just what, mean what, go off the beaten path and decide something yeah. completely off of what they've heard. I mean, what it means on a tactical level is the jury's vote doesn't correspond with what they really think. So in this hypothetical, they really think party X should win, but they cast votes for party Y. But on a 51% standard, why? So, yeah, yeah, it doesn't really make sense. And uh, and if, if Amber can't, if Amber pay, can't pay, too bad. Too bad. I'm taking her so stuff. Bad. I'm going to her house. I'm going to her house, and I'm taking everything that's not bolted down to the floor. That's what yep. I'm doing, because I hope I roll deep. I'm taking Kurt, her read cars, Snapple Nose. I'm taking her clothes. I'm taking All right, everything. Kurt, next one. Read Snapple Nose. Did, Amber, did Team Hurt say they were going to bring a text expert through the photos were authentic in their opening? Did I miss that? Well, it didn't happen. I think they did suggest it, actually. But Maybe on rebuttal, though. Maybe on rebuttal. Beth Kalaus, because they only started bringing in those photos through Amber Heard's side, so maybe on rebuttal. Beth Kalaus says, what can each side claim for purpose appeal? I don't for know. purposes of appeal. Amber Heard can claim sadness. I um, mean, maybe, maybe the fact that the jury is able to see all of the Johnny Depp people outside, that could be, yeah. like, influencing the jury. Yeah, neutrality. D due yeah. process. I think all of her stuff lives in due process land and what she can claim about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then on Johnny's side, I don't, I don't know. I, I can't think of anything, honestly. Um, you think he's going to win. That's why. Eric's son, question. What if JD waves privilege after Amber Heard comes out? It's silly. He will not waive privilege. Don't. No, no, no. He won't, he won't yeah. Anyway. yeah. Stupid question. Amber's team has been playing dirty, intimidating. How and Debbie. And jury's been out and about. Could they approach them? Please, for the love of God, no. Uh, they shouldn't yeah. approach anyone. No one should approach them. Please don't. Please don't. Carla loves Big Bang. German Hogue fan club says, uh, you always mention that the specifics for defamation are high. Why? What are they? P.S. I love Hogue and TBH, all of the panel so much. Well, we love you too. Um, so it's because of the actual malice standard, meaning that they have to prove that they that the that the person lied about the other person uh, with actual malice, meaning either knowing that what they said was false or with reckless disregard as to the truth or falsity of the thing <laughs> of the thing. Um, so, yeah. Um, Conclusions of law. Have you researched if under VA law assertion of a privilege gives presumption like assertion of Fifth Amendment in a civil case? 
Uh, I haven't looked under Virginia law, but I don't think that you can assume attorney-client privilege against the party invoking it um, anywhere. Yeah. Um, but I it can't, is I, I can't promise in, it. It is possible in the civil case. I don't see it here. Okay. Um, but why H team didn't sue JD and Waterman? Otherwise, it seems to defame someone safely. You just need to hire a lawyer and have him do it for you. Well, I guess the problem for Waterman is you don't have jurisdiction to sue him in Virginia. His statements are all in in the UK. And this so, is why I we mean, have to only sue him in the UK. He, you don't have jurisdiction here. Lawyers could do a lot of bad things uh, because of stuff like this. That's why yeah. we have ethics rules. Yeah, that's right. Marie V. Sand says, are the, are the final jury selected randomly? Yes. Or maybe Judge Oscarati is aware of jury number two not paying attention and will be dismissed? No. Nintendo Gaming Channel, perfect for me. Question, how can Amber afford her legal team? She Good pledged it. Question. She pledged it. <laughs> Why did Jesse point out Doc Brown, Amber Turd was on the same meds as JD+, Plus, or Xanax and Ambien? So if the drugs were a reason, violence age had the same issue i mean yeah i mean everything that's what we say you could just read on to amber heard he's saying stuff and you're just looking at amber you're like uh question is a four hours including closing says i hope so I, nope. I pray to god nope. whatever god it's there not. is but no it's, it's not it's not it's julia not. zaleski question kate moss was called so late during the trial and probably saw other witnesses testimonies etc is that a problem alita says yes yep. i remember that they dismissed one because she saw some stuff online alita continues to say yes yep <laughs> uh, do you think amber turd's I did that was unintentional. I'm sorry. Amber Heard's <laughs> team strategy is really just to have her play Silent Woman in the end. MSM already reports her as this. It doesn't have to be true. It just looks like it is. Yeah, I'm sure that's where MSM is going. I'm I have no, no that's, doubt in my that's mind. That's her final play. I could have predicted that six first. weeks ago. In fact, I yeah. did predict that six weeks ago. Ricardo Carrera says, Can we have a case of jury nullification? I don't think so. Or no. an Alfred plea. No. Sorry, don't know much about law. I love your coverage, Lita and panel. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, it seems like just no. Alfred Petra Petra Donna, thing sorry if you guys days. answered this already, but the judge seemed very annoyed by Elaine today. Would another judge allow such argumentative personality? Judges are all human beings. They all allow and disallow different things. Yep. In your opinion, how much is each side paying? Millions and millions. Six million yep. for Amber Heard and at least that for Jaya Depp, if not more. I think he's Casey more. Pavelka yeah. says, odds of jury awarding JD $7 million to prove a point if they side with him. Possible. Good. They're well aware from case facts that H would need to pledge $50 million and Depp is more concerned about refuting defamation. I want to take her stuff. Sir Lacrimus, please call out on civil law. We just need 17000 for 100000 Yes, please. Yes. Subscribe to civil law. law. Kurt, subscribe. the man, the myth, the legend. Ooh. He's down there in the bottom right corner. Go like, subscribe, and check out his after party. I will just direct him work. Random. What arguments can the team have? Random. Yeah. What arguments, true. reasons can the team have for? Yeah. Yep. 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 Uh, Groves Russell says, "Why are none? No legal teams allowed now allowed on AH front row early in the trial. People were thrown to back. What do you? One other person is not on legal team. I don't know. I don't I know. I they did it as a courtesy. I am fine. Hokey girl. Maybe because question. she's finished testifying or something. Yeah. I don't know. Hokey girl. Question. Better for JD to use every second of extra time or. Get juror love by getting evidence in and potentially ending early. Florida lawyer been debating this since Friday. I think ending early could work. It depends on what they actually want to show. A whole bunch of hashtags. Case. Next one. <laughs> uh, question I'm from Europe. So not fan jury trials. The trial gave me a better understanding. Still don't like that they are trusted and no influence. What's your opinion? Well, I like jury trials because it's the best system. Well, as, as Winston Churchill would have said, it's the worst system except for all the others. Yep. It's, you like, yep. it's we We need some system to decide and we hope that we hope beyond hope that the jury is the best way to go. So that's what we're going with. Coffee Stone, thanks so much for your very generous yeah. super chat. And Shiro Knight says, James, was there any reaction to the movie spoilers? Yeah, Alita uh, was pissed well, about Dune. No, that was fun. No, not really. But they liked it. Um, the jury kind of liked that part when they were going the back and forth about the movies. So Juror 2 laughed a couple times. Um, he got a kick out of, I don't know if it was that moment specifically, but it was during that sequence. Um, of them talking about that movie. Uh, but again, uh, yeah, no, we're, I know we're going fast. Actually, I should jump off too, if that's cool. See you, James. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see ya. Thanks so much for joining us. Miriam Cotton's asking Alita here. Actually, oh, wait, sorry. Wait, there's there's one more for James. Sorry, yeah, 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 I can yeah. see you here. Uh, Elizabeth Green says, James, what was the jury's reaction to Elaine asking the doctor about him drawing and eating candy? Oh, God. Yeah, I mean, again, the ones... <laughs> Juror 9 is so funny. He, yeah, he likes to lean to the side... And that was especially like just, just a weird moment. Why did it, why does I don't know why her lawyers are so weird and these witnesses are so weird, but the jurors, it's not resonating with the jurors. It's really not. So that's what I'll say. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, Rick. 
<laughs> see you, James. Uh, right. Miriam Cotton has yes, a question see you, for you, James. Thanks so much for joining. Covering make cover making a murder, especially Brendan Dassey. I view. You're going to cover making a murder. Brendan Dassey is an interesting case on the Court of Appeals. I covered the Court of Appeals case. It was it was kind of heartbreaking reading the court reading the Court of Appeals case because I was like I was with the Court of Appeals and it, I kind of hated myself a little bit for it because mm. it's such a sad case and you're like you really want to decide from Brendan Dassey. And it's like, you know, it's one of those cases that if I'm a judge makes you question everything you're doing. But it's it was, a, it was a horrible, sad case. All right. Yeah. All right, Kurt, next one's you. Who's most likely to see an email? I have some legal research to share with uh, that makes a counterclaim seem more viable. Yeah, we're not sharing that with anyone. There's no chance in this world. And anything that you thought of, they've thought of, I guarantee you. I, I I will see an email. I can't guarantee that I will read it. I will I absolutely not time. forward it to anyone. I guarantee you. All right, Alita. <laughs> Deeds Callie says, Rodderborn, Rodderborn versus Chu. Panel thoughts. Thanks a lot, too, for everything you're doing. Both I like, I, I, they're both good, but I, I like Chu's style better. I love I like Chu. His, I like his vibe. Scooter McDooter, is it possible Amber Heard's side is trying to run out their clock so they can't cross on rebuttal and use that to better their chances for appeal? Sounds like it's a possible nuclear armament strategy. Who knows from them? Allison Kurt. asked, uh, JD and AH themselves and their attorneys allowed to watch streams on this? Yes. Or go on Twitter? Yes. Or is that not allowed? Except for the fact that they ordered them not to talk to the media, which, you know, seems to be happening anyway. But other than that fact, yes. It mean they can Groves Russell says, why are Whitney and others not on the... Oh, uh, earlier... In the okay, no, we, 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 we saw this one. This is a duplicate. Marie Campos says, has either side requested a lie detector test? No. Not a not, That's... that's that's not and a Zaji Ventress, Star Wars reference, new here, loving it, heart emoji from all the remaining JD witnesses. Who could be lethal for Amber's case? Do you suspect any new shocking discoveries? The, the internet has told me that Jennifer Howell is just amazing, and I'm looking forward <laughs> to seeing whatever the heck she has to say. Kurt. Sure. Do legal teams have a decade someone who watches judge juries, their reaction temperament, to know what they're doing on a stand so they can just stress? Sometimes, yes. It depends on the, uh, the, the lawyer, although many lawyers, including myself, are of the once the game is on, like I don't want any other voices in my head. Sure. For better Carl or worse, man, we're just carrying on to the end. Carl Magnus Blendheim says, as a male survivor of borderline IPV who also has ADHD, bipolar, and a history of addiction, I'm offended by the expert, quote unquote, testimony of Budget C. Lloyd. Please <laughs> invite some experts for a mock cross like C. Hart and B. Alexander. Possible. Stuart Ellis, too. Why was the UK trial so bad? Different statements, different justice, standards, different The justice judge. system is a farce. And also, like, just stuff that didn't come in that should have come and in. Evidence I'm wasn't shared. I wear, I wear wings on my head, and I know justice <laughs> because we invented it. Questions All marked right. up rebuttal witnesses is Morgan <laughs> Treme, a former TMZ employee. What happens is she confirms the perjury on the stand with video. There is no perjury charges happening in the U.S. Maybe the U.K. if things go really south. Yep, yep. Uh, but as it far as really the, bad the, for the Amber TMZ, if she actually says you were the leak. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, uh, that would be very bad for Amber. Uh, you're up, Alita. Oh, sorry. Tony Marie says, my only redirect of this talent witness would be <laughs> question. Isn't it true that you reap what you sow and then sit down? <laughs> I will Nick, I'll ask the next one, too. Nick Meadows sure. says, the Amber team did well today. I could tell by the looks on your faces. Comments? I don't know why uh, what, you what thought great. that based what, on what, the looks on their faces. I, yeah, you're seeing what maybe you they're see. trolling. <laughs> Jay, do y'all think Camille gets the admission out of the apparent hand expert? I may have represented that if she had been more gentle in her approach. I'm not sure if she would have love her. I, I think the tone could have been like slightly notched down in the beginning. Camille is perfect in every way. Kurt <laughs> has a big crush on Camille Vasquez. Camille, call me, please. <laughs> All right, well, be, uh, not like I'm not eight simp number eight four three seven eight over here, but you know, still, is that Paul figure requiring mouse? Yes, but I think you're there. Morphe Stone, thanks so much for your very generous super chat. Kurt, go. Is that a public figure requiring mouse? Yes, but I think you're there. <laughs> we just yep. read that one. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay. Old Doc says, love you guys. Wishing more success to you all in the future. What are the chances Dr. Curry gets to say, I told you so from the witness stand? Pretty, <laughs> pretty good. We'll say pretty it in good. psychological terms, but Teresa yes. Savile, what happens to depositions when defense runs out of time? Uh, do they cut their questions out of the recording? I guess uh, it gets weird if they're doing video depositions that they've already agreed to, which we know they did weeks ago. So good question. Question for the panel. What do you want them to say in the time that remains? I don't know. I, want to, rest? I don't know, man. I want, I want this to end at this rest. point. I'm ready for it to be over. Peggy Cole says, question. Did you catch how much the last expert witness was paid over three months, $60,000 for that testimony? 
Yeah. Good gig if you can get it is what I say. Carrie yep. Staley, would a handwriting analyst be helpful to compare handwriting on mirrors versus journals? I don't think it's terribly compelling. Hurt. No, I don't think so. JD is a Kentucky Colonel. Awesome. Goodwill ambassador today and I received for service. Original Colonel's dressed like age today. She was dragging JD, maybe. Yeah, the Colonel thing in uh, Kentucky is more of an honorific for uh, people the governor likes. But still, you know, nice to have if you can get it. Uh, Attorney Tom happens to be one, as a matter of fact. Oh, interesting. Jennifer Mathis says, do you think if JD wins, the MSM headlines will finally change to support him? Or is the HPR team going to keep pushing? They're going to keep pushing. That's what they get paid for. Gecko Gamer question for Hogue. That's me. Perfect. Any thoughts on the leak of upcoming PS Classic games being PAL only? I didn't see that. That makes it more god-awful than it already was, Gecko. Thanks for asking me. Kurt. Do we rebel? Can Depp's attorneys use lean questions? No. If they're still calling them, same rules apply. Uh, no, but, but if they do call Johnny Depp as a rebel, if, if Amber Heard's side calls Johnny Depp, then on cross-examination, yes, they can. Yeah, they, yes. yeah. Yes. Uh, Chris, do you think this trial will improve age dating prospects? Also, will this affect her future superhero roles? Wonder Turd, Aqua Turd, or Bat Turd? I think, uh, improve her dating prospects? I have no idea. I, I don't, probably not. But yes. also, I think that it'll impact her roles in the future, too. S. Painkiller, any word on Jennifer Howell? Love spending my days with you. She's coming. Get excited. Kurt. Yes. First Next time one. chatter. I love you guys. If one of them is found liable, are they also liable to reimburse the other party's legal fees? Uh, it depends on the specific cause of action. I don't know exactly what the rules are here. If Amber if Amber wins on her anti-slap claim, then then yes. She gets yes, that's right. That's support. the right answer. I forgot. Yes, because they yep. both have anti-slap claims, right? Uh, only she does. Uh, okay. Kristen says, why does Elaine think, I think the witness can answer and its context are exceptions to hearsay. I Your guess is as good as mine. Chris L, question in depot. She was able to advise Waldman not to answer. If JD is put back on the stand, how is this done in court? Objection I advise not to answer? Yep. I believe so. Yep. Objection Percent. privilege. Michelle, if you're on Amber Heard's team, what would you, would you have gotten rid of today's witness for more rebuttal time? Otherwise yes. you couldn't prove the case overall. It's hard to know at this point what I would have done in retrospect, because it's all kind of garbagey. I think, I still think that Amber Heard had the best chance when they were crossing Johnny Depp and, uh, and uh, Curry. And if you could have sold, if you could have sold that narrative, you could have won the case. I could have won with that. 